Can't wait, I need right now. Just watch how I move. Just watch how I move. Move. Hated it, love it. I came in, I pack up the room. I pack up the room. I spend all my time in the lab. Right like I'm getting big time in a half. Right now. We finally made it. I know that they hate it. We carry this right out of the bag. Right now. The timing is right now. Right now. Right now. Just watch how I move. Right now. Right now. Right now. Just watch how I move. Can't wait, I need right now. Just watch how I move. Just watch how I move. Hate it, I love it. I came in, I pack up the room. Keep your eyes on the clock. You might miss on your chances to rise if you blink. Got a vision, your way to the top. The chamber alert, attracting the things you deserve. Just know I do this on the regular. The hustle keep calling me up on my cellular. 5 a.m. stuck, hot and arrested. I'm sleeping, that's why I'm still all the way up. I cannot be top, block, head on the clock. Marathon running and making no stops. I came from nothing, my days on the block. This just is why I just gotta do it. Right now, right now, just watch how I move. Right now, right now, right now, just watch how I move. Can't wait, I need right now. Just watch how I move. four of six invitation of 24 here for the group stage and we continue our little mix-up session that we've got going on <laughs> yesterday i was able to have a bit of fun with des and ace and you know what i said let's keep it going with our eu talent crew i wanted to hap i wanted hap and fluke fluke's with us at the moment we've gone switcher rooney's here they're on the a stream we're here on the b stream we've got some big games here today hap excited i am very excited yeah and not only because we're now getting at that point where teams can actually find themselves eliminated, mm. but also because we're going to get that clearer and clearer picture of how the group is going to be shaping up and how each of these teams is going to be for the remainder of the tournament. Yeah, 100% yeah, right. We're getting to that kind of like finite margin where two days to go, these games matter for two different reasons. Top of the group, bottom of the group. Let's go to the schedule here and really see where things will lie. Group B, sorry, Stream B, Group A to begin. GK, NIP. Interesting stories there for our first game. We'll, we'll probably come back to that one and we'll maybe just quickly go through Dark Zero, obviously, Fear X. That's a, a, a probably a bit of a freebie for DZ. They've got really uh, a team that's clearly struggled this event. And then later on, on this particular stream, Liquid and W7M. Someone's mismanaged the schedule here, Hap. That should be on, that should be on the stream, mate, but that's fine. It's here on B. Yeah, that's going to be a, a banger of a match as well uh, between those two. Of course, W7 and taking their uh, their first loss as well mm. out of nowhere. So that, that might actually be a very important matchup for the group. And the team that beat them as well to round out the end of the day for Stream B, Bleed Esports versus M80, a team that's clearly struggled a little bit from North America. So that's going to be another challenge for them. Over on the Ace Stream, if you do happen to obviously jump by there later on today, of course, uh, as an Oceanic person, Team Bliss versus FaZe Clan, that's uh, kicking off over there very soon for Team Bliss. It's all been about close, but not close enough a lot of seven fives yeah. a lot of eight sixes phase a different story though of course uh ssg then d plus lost one and scars and fury sonics to close things out gotta say stream is looking a little bit nicer i mean i'm gonna hop over to the a stream uh, after this game so <laughs> 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 i'm just here for this very very good matchup but liquid uh, w7 and definitely very uh, very fun one to look at 
Big, big games again. You kind of touched on it a little bit as we go to the standings, at least here for Group A, as this is the first matchup that we've got. And in terms of these kind of matches now, Hap, it, it goes both ways. You know, you kind of look at G2, Dark Zero at the top, right? I, I know for a fact tomorrow they, they're very likely going to be battling for that top spot. Yeah. Um, one of, I think it's uh, G2's kind of got the day off today. So, yeah, they got the five points, but Dark Zero will be playing Fear X, as we can clearly see. Fear X have really struggled. So, you would imagine DZ get the job done, which does kind of now mean then for our game, GK and NIP. Now, for NIP, probably not too much. They're, they're in that middle portion. They can't probably yep. get that top spot, probably not going to get that bottom spot. But for GK Esports, there's a world in which if they lose this, they have a dual die match tomorrow against VRX. Yeah, that's it. If they lose this against NIP today, who, I mean, realistically speaking, will be finding themselves in the third seed. And that's just the way that we're looking at things right now. All they need is one point and they can confirm themselves in the third seed. So that, you know, that's what they're aiming for at this point. But yeah, GK, an important matchup to come through. And, and even if they take a map off NIP, it's not enough if they don't win their game against Fair X. Uh, so there's a little in line for them. Yeah, I mean, this is a game where there's probably not that much pressure for GK Esports in the sense that they do still play Fear X tomorrow, the team at the bottom of this group for Group A respectively. And I think also many would, would favor GK uh, over Fear X as well in that matchup. But you probably just don't want to get into that kind of scenario. Win today against NIP, and it's very much likely that we actually send Fear X home today, of course, as they've got to play Dark Zero later on. I mean, if you don't actually literally send them home today, they still have a game to blame tomorrow <laughs> afterwards, of course, as well. But it will be the tournament over for them. But that's also a dangerous scenario we sometimes see. At the moment that teams have nothing to lose anymore, mm. they become a very dangerous opponent to play up against. And it's valid. It, and we have seen that like a lot over the last two, three years where a team has been eliminated, basically just comes in and upsets some of the bigger teams who still there's needed no more those pressure. points. Because there's no more pressure. Suddenly, they play like they belong to go towards the playoffs. So, you know, it's, it was a bit of a shit. And then you always sit there like, where Why was this? Why did you do this before? Where was this day one, day two? <laughs> exactly. We'll see how that plays out. And look, not wanting to sort of write home either of those teams, obviously there's every chance Ferex could maybe cause an upset today against DZ in terms of this matchup though for GK and NIP where do you kind of sit in terms of not so much the prediction but more so the two teams because NIP have clearly not really been maybe at their very best this tournament yeah. there's been some question marks for GK I think we all know they've got high ceiling high potential as we get the map fans coming through consulate bank and border good news for those fans that are maybe just a little bit sick of that ultra super defensive sided meta because so far at SI24 consulate has has been the most attacker side of map and even still doesn't quite cross that 50% threshold. It's 47% yeah. in favor of attack. So it's still, still a bit to the defense, but it's close to that 50 50. No, of course. And then everything is possible. And of course, GK, I think they pick it because they've managed to win it quite convincingly against Dark Zero with a 7 to 3 earlier on in the tournament. And I'll be obviously, they will feel confident that they can actually take them on as well. There was a single play on it. It's a while back. Managed to win it with, uh, I think it was a 7 0 back then. So wow. they, they definitely feel quite confident here as well. And that is now what we're going to be looking out for. How is that going to be eyeing up between each other? Because NIP do have three hammer lifters that inside is true. the roster. It's not like it is, you know, of course, they've been on a rough patch, but there's a lot of experience on that team. Yeah, there certainly is. We saw the predictions there as well in terms of the fan vote. 53% in favor of GK really does kind of nail home the tournament that maybe NIP has been ha having. As you said, three hammer lifters, but clearly not quite happening at SI24. We get into the bands, though. Four consulate, map pick for GK again. You mentioned they're taking down Dark Zero on this particular map. 7-3, pretty convincingly. Amaro gets banned down, probably not too surprising. Certainly an operator that can have an influence on a map like Consulate. The Montank and the Valkyrie, though, banned out by GK. They clearly know what they're doing here on Consulate, and that's going to be the tough ask here for NIP. Of course, Bank after this will be their map. They get rid of Solus, and we're getting ready to get into this game. NIP start on the defense. Keep this in mind again. 47% attacker yeah. win rate for GK. So ultimately, they'd be aiming for like three attacking rounds here. That's it. If you manage to get three attacking rounds or three defending rounds, you're basically still in that sweet spot in the middle. So it wouldn't be surprised if this does end up going towards an overtime in the end. And I said this before as well, like NIP, you, you would expect them to be able to dispatch of GK fairly quickly. However, but the tournament that they've been having, the year that they've been having, this could just as well turn out to become like a 40-45 round game over the course of three maps finally decide who that victor would be but th th that's kind of the point like sometimes you look at matchups and it's like okay yeah that's a clear blowout or this yeah. is definitely going to 15 rounds 
And here I'm like, it's either going to be like a quick 2 0 for NIP, or we're going to get like a 40 45 round game that GK just manages to uh, drag across the finish line. Yeah, looking at some of the stats here as well for the teams, respectively, was as we're just in the prep phase. So looking at mainly the attacker win rate on a map where obviously attack is going to be a little bit more prevalent 34% for NIP, which is actually not that bad, surprisingly. When I say 34% is not bad, it really isn't in this uh, current meta. But 38% for GK is actually pretty decent. I'll bite they're playing obviously these kind of consulate maps, uh, and that those stats will be a little bit inflated from, yeah. say, that consulate win against Dark Zero. But something to keep in mind is they are decent at attacking. But the defensive goal between the team is 15%, 57 to 42. So clearly defense for GK has been a bit of an issue this tournament. They're not winning a lot of defensive rounds in a very defensive-sided meta. But something to keep in mind as we then eventually translate to the second half. Guns is going to go straight in on the Clash immediately to watch this main breach and be a bit of a nuisance. With that shield play, of course, no Montang. It has to be banned out by GK. So NRP are like, well, you don't like the shields. We'll bring one on the defense. Uh, she's going to be trying to, you know, hold off the actual breach from the balcony. There's not much you can do. And if you, if you stay up there, you're asking to be shot at some point. Because, I mean, again, like, all you can really do is just jump over the balcony and hope for the best at that moment in time. So now it's up to uh, GK to try and find himself some entrances left, right, or center. And it seems like there's quite some pressure coming out and onto the admin side of the map. Three players up and repel out there, looking to try and find themselves with a little bit of support. But as soon as you take that part, it's not done yet. Like, okay, you have admin, but that's only a portion of the map. And there's still so many rooms that you need to be fighting yourself through. And especially with the rework we've had of Consulate, it is just such a pain to have to clear every single corner. Bomb located by attackers. Just over 90 seconds. A little bit of a slowdown after that main breach over in the balcony got opened up. Shots here from Hashon, oh. but shots back are even better from Wizard. Clean. A little response, though, from Trix as he's able to get the tray. Makes it a four versus four. Still got that third out of the main bridge on the balcony. If not mine, gets shot out by said Thermite. Obviously throws the flash in response, maybe anticipating that the Fenrir was going to peek off of that F not mine. That's Muzi, of course. Just over 60 seconds. And to admin, they go now for GK or GK, however you want to say it. They've got themselves into a decent position in terms of the map, but they've still got to deal with this clash. And yeah, the clash is going to be the big tr uh, troublemaker here, especially because you want to get out of the admin area. But as soon as you do that, you come in that long hallway with the vending machines. Often it gets played by one of the defenders. Not actually going to be the case now, but because of the way that Khan's is playing this, it's going to be very difficult for these attackers to try and collapse onto the player. And for, don't forget, they've already lost the Capital. They've lost what is probably the best piece of utility they would have to try and deal with that Clash Shield. So now they need to try and get in close at the same time. Maybe force a bit of a mistake and, and, and a crossfire that can allow you to take down Cons. Only 30 seconds remaining. Shots from Noodle down below in Lobby trying to get off oh, of this uh, Clash. The Yellow Ping's perfect. Good information. Took them a little bit of time, GK, but they have eventually dealt with this Clash. They've been able to just circumnavigate it, work it out as a team. They're trying eventually, though, for Muzi onto XK, they lose the Thermite. Where's that Diffuser? It's on Trix. He's got that on the Hibana. Someone to keep an eye on. Trying to just get in towards meeting. Again, the Gas Babes, though, from Pino. One more still available. There's no time. We're into red time. Not going to have any kind of chance to get this plant down, especially with the angle that Muse has got. Good shot from Noodle. But again, that time was a factor in the end. Big start for NIP here on Consulate. Get used to the smoke canisters as well because they were lining up on the exact same door that the canister was popped on when they wanted to go in for the plant. So that really forced them to go for a complete rotate. They didn't want to take uh, and tank that damage and then still have to take a gunfight right afterward. I am a bit confused though by, uh, of course, Khan's only clash was being shot at from underneath, a hole being opened up. He just stood there, didn't even respond whatsoever. You see it right here from Noodle, had the opportunity to reload and then get the second magazine in and, and take down that Clash. Of course, it eventually was still won by NRP and I think that is, you know, something that the Clash really contributed to uh, mm. because there was so much time wasted. It took a long time before they had admin, a long time before they were able to get the, the hallway with the soda machine uh, under control as well. And then it's on the site, so you cannot really try and then push through instantly. Great start though for NIP, considering this is the map pick of GK and what they've been able to do on this particular map already in the tournament. Down to the basement they go for the second round. Great start, clash work, they won't bring it again. I think that was pretty much intended seriously only for that main breach on balcony and then was able to pivot late in that round to still have an influence eventually as well. Those, those gas babes were just absolutely suffocating GK's offense. I, and to be fair, I didn't think GK had the worst of rounds either. They clearly understood they needed to deal with the, the clash. It just took them a little bit of time, too much time, and that was 
was the biggest downfall because as they're pushing into site, it's almost like a three on one, three on two kind of scenario anyway. JK eventually got the job done, eventually dealt with the obstacles in front of them, but they just did it too slow in the end. And we'll see if they pick up the pace here in the second round as they go in towards emergency. First floor away, immediately can try and get some pressure in towards this basement area. Not wasting too much time. I see three outlines defensively for NIP on site, which means a little bit of presence up above. Yeah, but Pons does have this mirror window to play with here. So he's going to have a good opportunity to get a nice early spot out on these players that came in from the emergency side. But this is also going to be giving away the opportunity for the rest of the NIP roamers to come in, start putting up some pressure from above or come back towards the side that the pressure is going to be truly only horizontal. Now, we do have one player up above, it's Hasham, uh, of course, playing around with Ram, has the Bugies, is going to be opening up everything above the side that he possibly can. But Psycho has already done some of that himself. He's like, I want to make sure that we have that verticality so we can stop that plant from happening if they do it's manage to not. break through. And as they are actually engaging onto the mirror windows right now, it is a bit of a, you know, one directional push that we're seeing in the uh, basement floor here. Yeah, this is a massive horizontal stack here from GK. I'm curious to see the effectiveness of it of course if you do eventually get this to work it's going to be more of a cafe side really in terms of where they want to go for the plant pretty much ignoring garage and then the vert that comes with it noodle can't win that battle in con though tries to go for the self revive doesn't come through though the shoddy from cons is successful throws out a nitro cell no one there though in response three versus five in favor of nip and this horizontal push from gk has been thwarted eventually though those bees are buzzing xk gets the kill onto cons and just maybe salvages the last 30 seconds or so because it felt like nip had done a good job of just really halting this push from gk Definitely a good job done there indeed, but Cons couldn't really go anywhere. Went up in the back, exact same spot he managed to get that very first kill from. As they start pushing through, taking care of the default cams, the smoke canisters again start popping. A little bit earlier this time though, as there's only one left in the pocket of Wizard. That means there's about 20 more seconds where one of the entrances is going to be stopped as a Sham comes in from above and the hatch manages to shut down one. There's still three more to be found, but as long as he's up there, that's going to be vertical pressure. Psycho will take down Kado, and we do see a rotation coming up from Muzi, so he's going to be trying to take care of a Sham, which means that that vertical pressure will be gone. Seriously, sneaking through Dungeon in the back, bye bye Psycho. Go, and now it's a two-on-one with Vert as well for GK. Moosey by himself needs to probably deal with the fact that Hashem's up above on that ram, making those breaches off the boogie or breaches. Hashem has opened up the floorboards now through dungeon and back in towards site. They've got the, the kit. They can basically just plant this right now because Moosey's nowhere near it. This is a free plant. It is going to be a free plant. Flashbang's coming through to know where Muzi is going to be coming from. And you now we are in a flashbang meta, all three being expended out here. But he has an idea of where that player is now. Just didn't know he was prone. That is going to be GK picking up the round against NIP. Yeah, strange round because it starts off with that kind of horizontal push. And you kind of think about basement or consulate. You really do want that vert up above and towards Expo. Open up the floorboards. Put pressure on Garage. Typically, you'll try and get Main Breach opened up. They ignored pretty much yeah. most of that until the very end. They sent Hashem, obviously, on the ram. He's job was eventually to get into expo open up the floorboards but he did that late then they played the hatch game and i think the reason why it probably worked despite the fact that nip got a lot of these early kills was the fact that nip then kind of drew away those members from the vert in down back towards basement that then allowed gk to take that a little bit easier they get a couple of kills from the vert and ultimately they're in a position where it's a two on one and the one's actually up above for nip the two are on site easy plant and it's an easy stop on the retake one one here gk are on the board I mean, Musi decided to go upstairs as soon as the one kill from the hatch came in, but it was a long way up. And in the meantime, his entire team died on that ground floor. And he saw him a bit hesitating, like, do I go back? Do I go for the top? Like, because if the plan goes down, then there is someone still up above. There's no way you're going to be able to get that counter the fuse on the way, right? Because they, they just have that verticality. It's a ram. You can almost guarantee that, they, that they've planted in a safe space. Um, so... He had to go for that top floor and clear it out, but lost a bit of time because of it. Then realized they went back down, and well, it'll be a, a very difficult and long fight to try and find both in that area. Yeah, I think they'll be a little bit disappointed, NIP, with the opportunity that they actually had there. Two early kills on a, a basement site that uh, at various times is uh, not always the easiest to defend. In fact, it's the lowest site defensively for Consulate, 40%. Every other site is definitely a little bit more preferable. Into the third round we go. So far, good signs though from both teams. And it goes a little bit back to our pre-match discussion where that sort of 3-3 three, three score line, bit of 50-50, that's expected here on Consular. And so far, playing out that way early on. Seriously, now onto the Ying, a very prominent operator when it does come to Consular. As obviously, 
for NIP. Yeah, they had a good start last round, just couldn't finish it off. They'll need to do that a little bit better here in the third round. I want to take some control up top, or at least blind whoever's going to try and play for someone to convert a connector out here. But the diffuser is going to be dropped as soon as they try and go for the execute. As it is going to be Pino dropping two comms, finding one as well. And suddenly the quick push attempt that GK wanted to go for got completely shut down. As it is only up to one man standing, and NIP with a pretty clean clean up. They didn't get the entry, didn't really matter though, as they just completely shut down everybody walking through that one doorway. Yeah, I mean, probably an overemphasis there, I think, on just simply the Ying play in terms of those Candelas being like, okay, that's good enough. We can all just go in towards site because GK... It's also on the top floor rather than on yeah. the actual site they were pushing. So I, I think in that instance there from GK just got completely overaggressive, didn't probably have all of the information necessarily required to make that kind of push that early into the round. In saying that, it's really difficult to be too critical because we, we do like to see teams go for these kind of plays, but... Uh, evidently, NIP were just very much set up and ready for it, and that's kind of like the second round in a row. I'm, I'm going to reference that basement side again, because it was a similar aggressive kind of push from GK. They sent two in early, they lost those two. The only difference is they then were able to stabilize a little bit, brought it back to 3-4, slowed it down, and eventually played the map a little bit better. That time, though, they just lost way too many. Too quickly on the entry, yep. didn't get any kills back. Really good job from NIP, and two defensive rounds early on a console. It's a good start for them. Of course, and, 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 you know, going back to the utility usage, I understand why you want to flash the person up above because verticality is often a way to shut down the jump in for the actual site they're at. However, if then there's three people jumping in from the window down below, walking through a single doorway, if there's a player out there, they manage to get the first. This early in the round, you expect the second to be following yeah. up quite quickly. It's not. There's no surprise factor, really, as soon as those candelas start popping. Well, I think we need to, to see a little bit more from GK. This is their map pick. They've already beat Dark Zero in this tournament. They only allowed Dark Zero to get three rounds. Back time, on, uh, back time uh, day one on, on Consulate. So for NIP to already have two rounds, clearly a good sign for them. A team that's probably left a little bit on the table so far at SI24. I think one thing they've done really well, though, is just sort of these early contact fights. They've contested them really well. Not giving up a lot of key positional map control. Happy to take these fights at the entry points. Uh-huh. Nicely done from Wizard, gets rid of a couple of drones, little keeper barrier to plug back up. And four drones already gone for GK. Quick uh, use of the x there as well to uh, break out some of those uh, keeper barriers. In the meantime, someone already made it into uh, the side of Admin, though. So Sean playing quite close. And this is the exact same way that it went in the last round as well, but he got taken down quite early. This time it's Wizard to drop, though, by his hand, but he's going to be picked up right after. Wow. No, Hashom able to find a double kill instead, almost dropped as he moved in. Psycho taking loads of damage as well. And it seems like a complete turnaround from a dominant like NIP round into GK just completely destroying the defense of NIP now. Yeah, it goes against the grain from the last two rounds prior where NIP were really solid in those contact fights, winning in the map. Both rounds in a row. This time, though, Musi, he had an opportunity to even it up 4-4 over towards managers. He lost that battle. Should have won it. Hashom should never have been able to get that flick turnaround. He does, though. Opens up that full admin site. Now they can put pressure into site. It's forcing out the cast base as well early from cons. So only has one left. In fact, now none. Because he's dead. Headshot. XK. 5 versus 2. Better here from GK. Just simply winning some of these raw gunfights. Pino trying to respond now with a couple of impacts. But to no avail. To no real success. And GK very much in a strong position to close this out. Psycho's not even close to sight. Big wrap rotate over towards yellow. Bob White gives away his position. And GK will make it 2 2. And it's a very convincing round for GK. And if you then look at the hand of, of what NIP had, they had the Afnats, they had the Kiva Barriers, they had the Goyo Canisters, the, you know, and, and the Smoke Canisters. And all we really saw was the Kiva Barriers to be used to try and reinforce his position. But at that uh, moment, someone already managed to make it inside of Admin, and we saw a single uh, Smoke Canister pop off. So it's like, where did all the other utility go when they tried to move in so quickly? You really had to slow them down a bit more. Was there no Afnet on the door where Muzi got pushed from? I don't know. Maybe it got destroyed. Uh, we didn't quite see it because we weren't really watching Muzi's perspective, but Hashem was able to just flick turn around. I, I, he it was a beautiful flick. Should never have really been able to win that regardless. And a tech pause, by the way, as that's just come through. And probably in a timely matter, maybe for, for neither of these teams. Like, cause, hey, you cannot no really talk. There's no real momentum. You can't talk things over anyway. But it's not like one team sitting there, like, itching to get back into it anyway. It's a very kind of, like, back and forth, 50-50 kind of game. So I don't think this really does anything for anyone, to be completely honest, which is always good. Nothing worse than when, like, a team gets, like, a super mem momentum-based round. And yeah. then it's like, oh, tech pause. Yeah, you can't talk. But still, you kind of get to then have that get dissipated a little bit. But... 
I think the issue for me there was it was a two-man front over towards admin side. None of them could get trades. Musi only had the opportunity to get the trade because Hashram pushed through into managers. Yeah. He doesn't do that. There's no trade potential anyway. But even when he did push in, and that was quite fortunate, he still couldn't hit the shots. Because if he hits that shot, 4v4, and you've still got a bit of front contact over to admin. Instead, they both die, opens up the site. Everyone can then flood in, and then they can start to play the util game. That forces gas babes out. Really nicely done from GK. And that's kind of the thing with, with the admin side, right? Like, sure, it's, it's a pain to get in because you have three windows you need to repel from. However, with the way that the keeper barriers are set up, it, it protects the player, like the Azami. However, it also gives them a safe repel in if there's no other challenge coming in from copy or from uh, from the position that we saw music playing earlier. So it's like, if, if no one is out there, it's a free repel in. You can just, you just can go and, and, and try and put the pressure down. So mm. that is something uh, to keep in mind. And of course, before the rework, um, when console was still in the map, sometimes we saw mirror windows being placed in yeah, that door. Yeah. Uh, and then, you know, of course, you, you would have like a mute jammer behind it or a bandit wire just to make sure that there was no Xcarls going on. But keep us this time. Didn't work out. I think you can kind of see the idea there with the Azami and the Keeper Barriers yeah, playing yeah, a kind yeah, of yeah. similar role of just trying to, again, really stall out. That's the. the it's just to waste time. Waste time. Make it be difficult. a nuisance. Yep. But life was lost pretty early at least enough in that round and then no trades come through and then because you got everyone else kind of stacked on the you know back towards site no one else was really able to get involved there and then it becomes that tsunami because it's a five on three at that point nip can just get overloaded on site really comfortably even those gas babes aren't going to be able to you know dispel the attack for too much longer and speaking of too much longer hopefully not too much longer for this tech force i am noticing everyone getting back inside of the lobby here for the fifth round to come been a good game so far two two scoreline set to begin three three is probably what at least yep. GK would be aiming for. So as we go into this fifth round, at least one of these teams is going to kind of meet that pass mark. Yeah, for sure. And, and we do have to say, though, like if this is a 3-3, it is slightly favored to NIP, but not by like a round's margin, but by like percentual <laughs> margin, right? It's like, it's like 3% in their favor. So Gash yeah, is moving in there. None of the Afnats have really seen activate. And, and of course, they could have been destroyed, but it's like they weren't stalled whatsoever. They, they basically encountered the exact same setup as they did in round one. And this time, they just put a lot more pace behind it. There was no clash this time slowing them down either. And that really allowed them yeah. to just take those gunfights. That's true, actually, because I think pretty much from GK's perspective, played at the same open up above the breach. This time, though, again, no clash. That was a bit of a nuisance last time. It was really just that raw push in through admin. Yeah, they dealt with the keeper barriers. Obviously, they were able to win those gunfights. Hashom just goes big. And sometimes that's all it takes in season. It's just some raw individual gunplay that can really turn the tide in a round. Uh, Wizard, by the way, did drop out of the lobby. So he goes back to 0 0 zero, But everyone else was able to reconnect and never dropped out. So, I don't know. Maybe something happened with Wizard in that push when he was playing the Azami in the round prior. We'll never know. Five versus five. Two, two on the scoreline here in the fifth round. So far, I think we've seen really good signs, at least from both teams. I think if you're a fan of either, there's, there's definitely good takeaways. Yeah, for sure. There, there's always uh, something uh, that you can be looking at here. And NIP finding those two early rounds is always quite helpful, of course, in, in all the current meta that we're playing, but also due to the fact that this is a 50-50 um, kind of game. So you, yeah. you, want, you want to get those three rounds in as soon as you can. 50-50, though, that is, of course, on GK's map pick. A map that they've already won successfully against Dark Zero earlier in the tournament. Balcony Breach opened up. Run comfortably. This time, Musi doesn't miss. The SMG 11 onto Noodle. Just went for a bit of a run. Musi holding the close angle. And, well, unlike the round prior, yeah. he obviously makes amends. And they've got themselves another early start. And again, this has probably now become a trend. Throughout the first five rounds, outside of like one or two here or there, NIP, for the most part, are getting a lot of these first kills in the round. And it's also a little bit of a lack of droning out there. Noodle just face-jacked the room and, and, and found himself caught off because of it. Now they're on a man down. Logic Bomb's being used. However, no one's left on the top floor anymore. They fall back towards the first floor, towards the basement, just to set themselves up in a bit more of a turtle position because they do have the man advantage right now. All they really need to be taken care of is the fact that they are not going to be shot through a hatch again. Um, like, unseen, because they lost two members to that yeah. last time round, and they weren't expecting it. Suddenly, it strikes them, and boom, suddenly you lose the round, because it could have been a 3-1 to one for NIP if it wasn't for the player up above. 
This time around, though, you don't have that extra play. You also don't have the, the ram. In fact, really, when you look at that operator lineup for GK, in terms of trying to maybe rotate someone over towards Expo, open up, get floorboard pressure, they don't really have that, per se. The Grim is nice, can dislodge, say, the mirror a couple of positions on this push, but... Uh, ultimately a little bit concerned here and there is the uh, hive launcher being used here quite seriously as they now push through service pretty aggressively there's a not opting to really hold back too much but hashram has gone for a bit of a flank pushing down in towards dungeon no real response just yet from nip they have been pushed back though and cons is aware that the close angle has got an enemy yellow ping went out 30 seconds left contact to come shortly the same position he was in before though and falling back now but Kings are coming through. Seriously, he's going to start to move through. He's going to be strong as well. His teammate dies. He gets the trade. However, not finding the second. Mira, that was actually the crucial one they needed to find because Pons is literally in the middle of everything here as Wizard shuts down the back flank to come through. He will finally die, but it's only up to Kano in a 1v3 situation. Five seconds left. He's out with the pistol. It's going to be shut down by Psycho, bringing it up to 3 2 in favor of NIP. Yeah, really strong from NIP in that position. That time, I think they did a better job of actually falling back. You think back to the last time on that server push from GK, they got overwhelmed. They tried to take the contact, lost out. No one could trade. Eventually then, NIP hadn't had the numbers. Everyone else was running around. Instead, this time, it was a 5 on 4 Hive launcher gets used, clears out that mirror position. What do you do? You fall back a little bit at least. Try and relieve that pressure. Force them into you. Time became a factor. There was only like 30 seconds remaining. Really well played from NIP. And it starts here a break from Muzi. Opening kill onto Noodle. Catches him off guard. You kind of said before, Hab, maybe a lack of droning in that situation could have been the reason for it. But you could even see here on the highlights, went to red time. And it's still like a three versus one in favor of NIP. Clearly strong defensively on site. And they were able to make amends after losing out on Cafe last time out. Three to two in favor of NIP going into the sixth round. They've got themselves an opportunity to take a decent little lead going into the second half. No, that's for sure. And, you know, whilst we're talking, it is overall this tournament has been a 61% defensive tournament. So you are expected generally to find yourselves with a 4 2 split. However, Consul, was that one exception we were talking about? But we also have to mention it was only 19 rounds played. That is true. Small so sample. it's a very small sample that we're working with here. So I'm just going to tell NIP you need to get that fourth round in to find yourself in a good opportunity to lock off this map one. Then you have the opportunity to start looking to map two, which. To be fair, isn't looking too hot for NIP. Yeah, we'll have to see. Still plenty of rounds to come here on Consular. Hash on with the shock drone trying to just make his way in through lounge, get some information. Noodle, well, a good response after losing his life very early on in the fifth round. He gets an opening kill here on the Ash in the sixth round. It's the Maestro, Pino gone. Nice start here for GK. They get themselves a bit of a rare opening kill. Normally, you wouldn't say that the Maestro is going to be the opening kills, like, especially with the utility that's available. Like, you've just lost three of those cameras, and a ping onto the Legion as well coming through. The rotation somehow managing to make it out. I'm not quite sure how he left unscathed there. Yeah. Missed opportunity. Will that come back to haunt GK? Had the yellow ping. Let's stay. Walked right out in front of the windows and managed to jump over the desk and then and, and take out the drone that was spotting him earlier on so lucky for NIP though because they need to find themselves in the best possible position um, and uh, considering the fact that they've just lost a man can really afford to lose a second wizard though very close to be taking himself into a fight as cons takes some damage goes into dbno as well but it's still salvageable as they're trying to wall bang him uh, from a long angle out there Wizard, tough angle, couldn't quite hit the mark. Of course, Cons is still knocked down. Seriously took some damage there, but with the numbers, nice swing. Seriously, headshot onto a Wizard. Cons is down, so it's essentially a five versus two. Muzi was big in the last round. We'll need to go big here as well. Psycho, nice kill, at least onto Seriously. That trade eventually comes through. Cons is still very much by himself. Psycho again over towards Spiral, and suddenly the round has just flipped on its head from a five on two. What has happened here? Hashrop can't make his way in. Finally shoots down the barricade, but that reveals his position. Finally, what is Psycho running around doing? The one versus two now. Back and forth we go inside of the final round of this half. 
Plan to turn to all be made. However, the evil eye is going to be giving information out to Muzi. He still has two impact in his pocket, which he can use to try and find a long angle. We'll get it down, but he's moving up across and K able to find himself in a safe angle right now after the second impact has been used. These pings, they oh are no. not working. They're wrong pings. Muzi exactly, trusted exactly. too much in them. And now 45 seconds counting down in favor of GK. Muzi needing to make a 1v2 clutch stand. Smoke canisters were used. Flashbangs still being tossed in as well. As the wall bangs are being attempted as well. Is it going to be able to find the very first opening? Has an ID, but cannot quite connect. Takes a lot of damage in the process out there. As a second smoke will be used, and he just finds himself <laughs> stuck now. The super shorty is being pulled down. He's like, I don't know what to do. I don't know where to go. But the time is running out, and it seems like GK is going to be able to lock in their third round. Smoked all on the left side. Absolutely no chance. No time here now for Muzi. Ten seconds left. Nice headshot into K, but is not going to see this be a round win. It will be 3-3 three, three at the conclusion of the half here. First map of the series goes for a bit of a stat pad. Probably shouldn't have in the end. It backfires and in the end, it's GK that get a much needed round because that was a doozy of a round. At one point, it was a five on two in, front, in favor of GK, brought back to a two on two, but ultimately they get the job done. Yeah, and again, the rotation and when you have to play around Spiral was a bit of a I don't know about that, uh, because you, you lost down on an important player out there. If you would have stayed alive, if you would have stayed in that corner, it would have been a 1v1, basically on the side. Because as soon as Hashem gets him here, he has the opportunity to move off. You would have stayed in that corner, yeah, yeah. it would have been two 1v1s on opposite sides of the side, but he cannot really plan if the other person is in that 1v1. Just needed to even just delay a little bit of time yeah, there. Yeah, just delay the time. Call for a bit of help. Lots of things maybe could have gone a little different there, although you could say that for both teams. 3-3 scoreline, I think a very apt and fair one as well as we get into the second half now. We've kind of been talking about the fact this very well could be 3-3. Happy to say, it is, it is a 3-3. So we are going into GK's defense now, though. Of course, their defense hasn't quite been that strong at SI24. Something to keep in mind. And also on a map where, of course, attacking is a little bit easier. So we'll see what NIP are going to cook up immediately to a, a four attacker repick. Epic. They bring the Grim as well. Not too surprising to see the lineup that they have brought. No hard breach per se. In fact, not even any secondaries, but not really needed anyone on this site. No, like it's not really necessary on the map. Maybe a garage, right? That's, yeah. that's the one yep. where I would say bring a hard breach just so you can open up the garage wall. Puts up a bit of extra pressure that they have to worry about. But for the others, you're generally okay. If you're just moving through the ballways out here is... Hey, almost had the opportunity to toss a nice C4 up the skylight there, but decided against it in the end to find himself with a 2k if he knew. He's going to be able to break this one open. 3-3. Three, three. It's been legitimately back and forth. One for one so, out, uh, so far throughout the first six rounds to begin with. No one has been able to win two in a row. NIP, one thing they did really strong back in that first half was those opening kills, early kills, contact fights. Maybe not every single round, but for the vast majority of them, certainly was a big part of their win conditions. For GK, though, it's the opposite. With those late game moments, they were able to scrap and get themselves back into rounds, get plants down. I think that's exactly what NIP are going to need to do here as well. Pino in towards Piano, shooting down below, trying to make that skeleton key useful, breaking up the floorboards, getting some pressure onto those up above defensively for GK. But right now, when you kind of look at the health bars, it's all NIP losing numbers. But of course, they're, they're working on that scrappy fight right now. All they really need is to find themselves that first opening kill so they can start push themselves through in a different kind of way. And we see a completely different kind of approach from NIP. NIP is trying to take fights all over the map, whereas what we had with GK is they're just going in from admin and they're pushing in as a team and hoping that that would stick. So NIP, they're, they're just trying to find themselves a pick, like all playing across the map, all trying different things. Maybe one of them will stick, wow. and indeed it does. Spina will find Hashem up above on that hatch. Yeah, big, because Hashem was kind of looking down below and trying to maybe backfire there onto NIP, but instead gets caught on a bit of an off angle. Wasn't really watching that right-hand side. Second one comes through with the DMR from Wizard. That's a long-range shot, oh. not an easy one. Nitro Cell, it's good, but not good enough. Only gets music to just about half up. Tricks will go for his own one. That will finish off Cole. Brings the round back a little bit, but at top yellow, it's a win from Psycho. Keeps NIP with the significant advantage, with the bees now buzzing as well, providing the path forward for NIP. And that gives them a clear idea of what is going to be safe and what's not. We only have one man left standing, but not for long, NIP. And that is a very 
dominating round, you can almost say, from NIP. And, and not because they just rolled in and killed everybody, but because they were very surgical, right? They were trying to mm, open up I these agree. angles and then, like, slowly pushing them out of position. They find the first, and suddenly they can collapse all around the opening that's just been created out there. And, and, and sure, some of the gunfights maybe should have gone in the favor of GK there, but NIP, again, they're, they're good gunners. Like, three of them are hammer lifters. They have the experience. They know when they can take these 50-50s and come out on top. Steo and meeting once again here. Back-to-back -back opportunities for GK. NIP continued this trend going one for one round between the two teams, which now means the onus is on GK to keep that trend going. Otherwise, 5-3 could be on the cards if NIP can kind of break that little streak that has developed here on Consulate. And one thing again that just continues to go the way for NIP are these opening kills. It's been the difference maker, I think, so far, but a difference maker that hasn't been ultra impactful when you actually look at the scoreboard. I mean, the scoreboard just says it's a one round differential. For me, though, I think NIP has probably been the better team, but the scoreboard's not quite reflecting that. Yeah, no, I agree. It could have been 5 2. Let's, let's, let's put it up like that. Yeah, it's a one for one trade. It nicely continues on. But we do have to say that the first garage uh, that GK won in round two, that should have been an NIP round. They, that's probably the one hap. I Th think that's, that's the a good one, one we're looking at yeah. indeed. Because they had the advantage. They were able to shut them down. It's just that the one player unseen up top, able to find two kills from the hatch, rotate mm. back around and basically draw Muzi out from the anchor. Like that, that is what we're looking at here as the potential difference maker. But we're continuing the console takes for now. They've decided to run it back on the GK side of things. And uh, NIP probably will just be approaching it the exact same way again, trying to find themselves in an entry. However, it's Noodle that finds it. Yeah, big though for GK. They need to get these opening kills flowing their way and done so here by Noodle. Nice little angle here as well. Oh, shot back from Pino. Watching back up through said floorboard that Noodle was trying to also abuse. Brings it back to a four versus four. And I don't know if that's like the exact same angle we managed to get the first kill from because you shouldn't be staying in that position, right? Because they're going to be calling it out. Oh, it's it's this angle that he shot me from. Oh, that's a really good position. He just got shut down. He must have been droned out as Muzi will find him. And now suddenly NIP in favor again. That They clear out admin. Now have the complete opportunity to move all the way through Soda Hallway. No one there. Nothing there to stop them. There's just a Mew Jammer that's inside the sink that is giving them a bit of a, is there still someone inside? We cannot get a drone in there to confirm. Yeah, I think Hashem wants to push up on the water and maybe look for something back here. Oh, good angle. Oh. Seriously, how does he not win that? How does Pino win that twice? Like, that's the second time he's getting the kill from above. Conswell go down, though, by Hasham. He's now found himself in a bit of a forward position and is basically holding off all pressure from admin. Hey, down below is... Looking to find Pino. He's been such a menace this round for the side of NIP. If you shut him down, suddenly that vertical pressure is gone. Yeah, K towards Spiral. It was Hashem up above. That was maybe a big win condition for GK. The fact they had one up, one down, but now what? one down is dead. One versus three. K back up towards top Spiral. Needs to pull off a miracle clutch here to keep this sort of one for one trend going. Otherwise, NIP can look to get themselves in towards breakpoint. Three versus one, and and obviously K feeling like he needs to make something happen, but he's spotted towards Long Desk. This is going to be his life. Someone should swing. Flashes go out. It's a three on one. They can overload his position, or they can just go for the plant. They, they, they can do whatever they want right now, NIP. I, I like the red ping as well. Usually I'm not a big fan of them, but it's making him worry right now. Like They know exactly where I am. I cannot stand still. I cannot afford this. It means I'm Moosey putting down the plant 45 seconds now, counting down. They still have an idea where he is. Just gets shut down as soon as he tries to go for the very first peek into the actual try and retake but he's alone and you get red pinged and you're like they're all around me i'm gonna die any moment that's literally the first thing that goes into your mind at that point yep tactical timeout has been called by gk actually of all teams so they've obviously got and uh, seen enough throughout the last two rounds and that 5-3 scoreline not really pleasing them considering what we've had so far it's not been a horrible game obviously they've been okay in patches but for the most part i think nip yeah that that one game that one round back on basement that you mentioned early on at the start of that first half if nip had been able to get the job done in the round then we'd be looking at like a 6-2 scoreline and i think yeah <clears throat> is a 6-2 score an app? Is it fair? Maybe, maybe not, but the 5-3 certainly now is. I would have been I would have been a little bit yeah. odd. It would have been odd to me if this was 4-4. So I think NIP deserves lead. But GK, they've seen enough. Talk things over, see what they can maybe change.
And I think that like if we if we look at round two and how the vertical was a crucial factor here, we have to also look at the round we just had, round eight, with Pino finding three kills from below, no one being able to challenge him. You saw K going down, being like, okay, I'm, I'm gonna try and find a way out if he rotates up. But then you lose another member and you lose another member. It's mm -hmm. like, well, I'm alone now. Okay, so you're going to have to start moving. And having a good buck player like that that's just able to win all those vertical fights whilst fighting up, that is a, like, such an important tool to have on your team. Yeah, very incredible shots from Pino. The standout in that last round and probably the standout so far throughout this map of Consulate, 11 and 4. But particularly in that last round with the double vert, put, uh, double vert angle attacks that he was able to win, considering in both instances, GK were actively monitoring those floorboards. It's not as if they were just sitting there, completely unaware. They were yeah. trying to shoot back down below. Pino they was just, first. Uh, exactly. Pino was just a bit sharper, a little bit quicker, more skilled. And NIP so far being the better team now. 5-3 scoreline on the map pick of GK. Bank to come after this. This is certainly the kind of game that if I'm, looking, if I'm NIP, I'm thinking so far, look, this tournament hasn't been our best. It, it, it's been a bit rough around the edges, yep. but a 2-0 against GK could be a bit of a confidence booster. Of course, that brings them back in, right? Like it basically takes them out of any risk that they will find themselves, first of all, in the lower bracket as things go on, mm. or even like the the the... I would say that it's not disqualification. You just kicked out the tournament because they, they grouped. Yeah, grouped. There you go. It's like, so they lose that little bit of pressure that's upon them. They can really yeah. start focusing on what is up next in the next stages of the tournament. And, you know, it is a long tournament. If you start slow, it's fine as long as you're still in the tournament to really heat up in. The Lagoon Mine's being taken out here pretty comfortably by Pino. Asian from Noodle. Noodle probably being one that's been very. Influential, but maybe not always for the best reasons. At times, he's getting some of the opening kills, but also it goes back the other way. He's certainly trying to make these contacts. Gun barrel sticks out, bot spiral. Muse, he tries to get a decent little angle here on the ramp. It's been a bit prevalent on the consulate map. There's Blue Auto Breaches being able to get a lot of damage done, especially coupled with Buck. And really playing to that vert as consulate usually does play out in that fashion. It's a very heavy first floor hold that we're seeing here for GK, considering the fact that we're in the garage. Wizard takes a lot of damage, is not able to really con return any shot towards Noodle. Uh, none of those landed. None of them landed. Opening kill will go towards them. Trellix will be shot down though right afterwards by Pino from that long angle. And this is kind of what I was going to be aiming at. They're all playing in that first floor, but there's lots of long angles that they've set up for themselves to play with, and they're getting punished by them. Of course, they're finding some kills themselves as well. But if, if NIP realize that there's only a single person on the site, they could just as well go for an execute as Pino now finds Noodle. Yeah, off the back of his own Candela, Pino pushes in eventually from Consai, gets the kill onto Noodle. Three versus three, but back and forth here in this ninth round off the back of the timeout from GK to talk things over. Yellow stairs double stack now. Hashem also making his way down below. There's a Soto canister. Like the way that was used. I think that might have just caught Pino off guard or at least threw him off guard a little bit as he was picking down Yellow. Couldn't really move. Couldn't move into a better angle. And because he was very stacked in, easy kill for Hashem. He goes to double ditches. I liked what I just saw there from the Dubra. 45 seconds remaining. Advantage for GK. Can they capitalize though? To close out this round. The thing we do still has Psycho up above now. He's going to be playing around with that bug. So if uh, seriously goes for a bit of a misstep, especially when you throw that key, but I know exactly where you are right now. Flashbang's coming through. It's going to be opening up the opportunity for Cons to move through, but Psycho gets shut down from the player. That's a yellow, and Asher. okay, just shuts him down indeed in the end. GK will find themselves with a return round after their tactical. And I'm, I'm just going to say, though, they were very heavily focused on that first floor. I think they were very vulnerable to a direct side approach if NRP would have read that. Yeah, potentially. I, I think you're right. If it had been a bit more of that server approach, GK, I think they're more than happy to, to maybe give that up, feeling as if, okay, well, we can maybe deal with that because we can always rotate eventually through bot spiral into dungeon and then maybe coming from the backside anyway if they do offer that. Love this little moment here again with the Zoto canister. Yeah. Yeah. Then eventually went back up yellow, knowing full well NIP still had one up above playing the vert. He's like, well, at, at that point, you kind of have to go and deal with that. And, and he does over towards that yellow stairs position. So a big round win for GK. On a map, obviously, that they, they, they've picked. They've already won so far at this tournament against DZ. You give them the ability to, to come back into this one. No one's certainly putting a line through them. And now at 4-5, into the 10th round we go, they've got themselves into a position where, all right, the scoreboard looks a little bit nicer now. It's not, you know, that 6-3 kind of territory. It's only 5-4, and certainly a lot better from them defensively. Hashem 11-5, Pino 13-5. They've been the two standouts for their teams, respectively. 
It's funny how Pino just swaps from like any any given operator, right? Like he was playing the Burk, it's a huge 3k. Uh, then then Psycho's playing the Burk instead, so he swapped off. Now he's playing the Hibana. Uh, but he's able to find that impact on every single given operator that you really put him on. Again, like really standout player for the game that is currently going on so far. Now we find ourselves in exhibition after console went wrong twice. The Garage was of course won by GK, so... Not really any other viable opportunity that you uh, you have at this moment in time. Uh, so they do decide to go out there. Now, this is where GK went for a bit of an aggressive push themselves when they were attacking it. But again, NIP probably going to try and, and split themselves all over the map. Try and go for some 1v1s. Try and put some pressure down. Try and put a dent into the defense somewhere so they can start looping around the opening that they hopefully would find. Yeah, and look, I've been very, very happy to give the plaudits to NIP. But right now, it's starting to also kind of look like the Pino show. And if it's not Pino, who else is it going to yeah. be? And if he's not getting these really sick kills and opening things up and able to win the vert battles, then uh, I feel like NIP maybe are lacking a little bit in that firepower. And GK can exploit that. And I, hence, I, I if I'm Noodle and I'm 5 and 8 and I'm happy to play the contact fights as he has so far. It's like, can I go and find Pino? Can I at least go and get that kill? Even if I get traded, even if I die, that's kind of a mission he could try and embark on. As the shock zone thrown over towards yellow, Mute Gem is in place though. And Sucker like won't be able to get really anything from that at all. Eventually dealt with by said Mute anyway, over towards bot yellow. Minute 40, time to factor a little bit here. A little slow going for NIP. Wizard out towards his window position. Did spot K, who did want to obviously go for a something there but shot back little dear marshall always does hurt you know well again he's the man to kind of watch in this scenario and he does maybe find his way close by to noodle and they're definitely uh, eyeing up to go for an impact because shut down from above wasn't aware of the vertical being out there you lose your big impact player as a result now the others will have to step up as wizard will find seriously though that's the warden gone so always a big pick especially in the metal with the amount of flashbangs and smokes that do get used for uh, executes every now and then and a the psycho will find one more as well it might still be nip that can really bring this one across the finish line. And it goes back to what I was saying, right? No Pino and no NIP. While well, they're going to prove me wrong here with the way that they've been able to at least get things back after losing their star man, they've been able to get some really good responsive kills, especially from Wizard, low on health, getting involved on the Dockery. Hashem, though, he's already shown so far, at least in this series, he's got the ability to find a couple of kills back, go for a bit of that counter pun late in these rounds. He couldn't quite push up server stairs, though. Couldn't quite get involved. 30 seconds is all that remains here into the 10th round. Noodle can't win here. This fight, it is now only Hashem left in the one versus four for GK. Otherwise, NIP will find two match points here. Hashem with only 20 seconds to try and deny plan. That's his best win condition. Try and find cons, but no, Wizard finds him. Head has been taken off. Two match points for NIP. Really showing up huge here. And, and we said it, you said it before, Pino goes down, the rest needs to show up. And that's what they did here. But again, like, okay, you might lose that very first one, but they're pushing and pulling at every single given corner of the map, trying to force themselves an entry, and they find an opening, and they start utilizing that. And and you see the entire team just rotating around the area that they've just started to get. Yeah. And, and you know, this is uh, what what many have been talking about before. It's kind of what you need to do every now and then. Well, GK on their attacks, and we're really attacking from one site. You see the complete opposite from NIP, where... It, Everybody's taking their own fights on their own. Yeah, and again, I think very much a deserved scoreline. 6-4, NIP looked a little bit better. Did beg that question a little bit. Is it the Pino show? Is it only down to that one play for NIP that's really winning a lot of these rounds? Well, they were able to obviously highlight in that last round that no, it's not just the Pino show. They've got other weapons. Wizard got involved in the DMR. Psycho's being good. And even despite that, Moose has had some impact kills too. And sometimes you kind of look at the numbers and you think, oh, only five kills, but a, yeah. a couple of those kills have been quite impactful. So for GK now, they've got to offset too much points. On the defensive consulate, their map pick, NIP have certainly looked a little bit more clinical here today. Day four of groups. And I think right now they are the favored of the two teams to finish off consulate here. The onus is on GK to change that narrative. Now, after the technical timer, they haven't picked console office anymore. And... After we've just seen Garage, we've just seen the Exhibition, they've now gone to Tellers. Mm. There's the opposite side. And, and, you know, I'm still a bit mixed about that. Split sides, different floors is always a bit difficult to, to truly get a good hold of as a defender. As if you lose one floor completely, that means that an opportunity for the plant is going to be there. Uh, especially if the bottom floor gets taken out first. C4 really help Hashal. Oh, Hashal? What are you doing uh, there? What? Why are you outside? That's a free hack as well. I mean, the pulse is still out there. Noodle must have been guiding him with that with that pulse, telling him where he could find those free kills. But 
gets picked up for it, and that is a crucial Obama pick in a very located. important round. It's strange for a multitude of reasons. One, you're on the lesion, so you don't necessarily want to be getting too over-aggressive. You've got utility that's going to generate throughout the round. Now, at two minutes left, none of those goo mines are going to generate and get thrown out inside of the server. Not only that, hashem has been their best player. So you probably don't want your absolute best going out in a bit of a 50-50 do or die go up in flames kind of play and gets punished and now you lose a lot of your firepower as well as being just typically a man down as well. NIP are in the driver's seat, the box seat, to try and take out this map of consulate away from GK. Of course, if it's a guaranteed kill for the jump out, you might want to consider it, but you still have to walk outside quite a bit and you get spotted and it's just the, the perfect like 100% ping that is going through live. It'd be very hard to not pick up the kill as the attackers at that point. Kato, yeah. ready with the C4, is hoping for Sol to step in so he can toss that in and hope for the best. Pino taking a little bit of damage from the player that's on the spiral stairs, so he's going to be falling back, going for a different approach, realizes that he needs to stay alive, so Nita will find a kill onto Wizard. So we will be going back to that 4-4, four and four, very heavy hole onto the ground floor here for the side of GK, but that doesn't really seem to be the priority of NIP. Yeah, I think NIP probably anticipating more of a Talos hit here at the moment. Seriously, again, top spiral. 50 seconds, so time's okay, but it will dwindle very soon. Oh. Pino, oh, the oh. drop, and guess who's watching? It's Trix anyway. Four on three now, advantage for GK, looking to offset these match points. And so far, first go, and so far looks like it could be successful. In towards Talos. I do have the diffuser. Cons gets rid of the BPC. Can they get this plant down and then force GK into a retake scenario? Keeper Barry is blocking the doors. Seriously over towards Spiral. Has the red ping, has the info. Couldn't get the kill. Impact won't be successful. Now he's full white, but he gets the kill anyway on Tamuzi. Psycho to go down and GK will be able to offset at least one of these match points straight away. 5-6. Again, it is difficult to attack their split sites, especially if you do not have the bottom floor under control because the verticalence is just shooting up at you the entire time. Really gave them the opportunity there to, uh, to, to come back into that round. 5-6, one more opportunity for NIP. Certainly can be a tricky site. Surprisingly enough, servers tell us goes both ways, right? You think, okay, well, we can get into site, we can get into that palace, but we haven't cleared server, and therefore yeah. they've got the vert down below. It kind of started again with that really strange run out from Hashem off the back of the pulse. Play sure, but needed to do a lot more. Thought maybe from that moment it could be all that crumble mode for, for GK, but they actually kind of held their nerves a little bit, focused back over towards site. Didn't get too over aggressive after losing Hashem. And I thought they actually stabilized for that round really well. Now they get to go back down to basements to try and send us to overtime. You know what would have saved that round? A Thatcher EMP in the middle of the room. The pills could no longer use the cardiac sensor. The C4 they got tossed out wouldn't be exploding. The bulletproof camera wouldn't be able to see. Gives you about the time that you need to go for a plant. And they would just be blind. They just have to fire blindly. Try and get the, uh, the shot out. Some... Absolute like 4D chess thinking from <laughs> yeah, you. I mean, that's what they're thinking of right now. Like, an EMP from Thatcher would have been Not able wrong. to just completely disable all the utility and information they had. Because you usually think of that of just making sure that the walls, you know, open up and that you get rid of new jammers and then uh, and bandit wires and electro claws, but it's, it works for everything. It even works for like the scopes. Like you lose the reticle at that mm. point. Luckily, these players don't need that reticle to shoot in the middle of their their, their screen. But it's like. It could have worked. It's all in the past. Big change up though for NIP. A bit more of a roam clear setup than the Ying Jackal. Nope. Seen Pino already use those Candelas at times to just kind of clear out rooms and just then be able to peek off of that. You see hunting down. Based off of a little bit of information, thought I saw maybe a red ping or so. Pino secondaries available to open up the hatches. And there's one more available for two still as well on Pons on that box. Like a, trying to get some information from huh. above. Really smart. Catches the Legion. That's going to be Noodle. Now being tracked momentarily off the back of the Inox skin. He jumps all the way back in towards Eagle basement. Go. Throws out a Kumite. A little bit of information there from Hashem with the Yokai. Drone on drone action here towards Spiral. And Hashem wanting to retreat with his drone alive and intact. And a bit of a different round in terms of the makeup. It's a 5 versus 5 hat. We haven't had that early contact. No crazy runouts. No early... Kills for yep, either of yep. the two sides, especially from NIP. Is Pino using the Kendalas just to push down Yellow Stairs again? Kind of did that earlier in the previous rounds, clearing out, pushing rooms. Now doing it for Yellow. Less the 
you know, obviously use them for sight, but I guess to get himself into a good position cleanly and safely, it's not awful. These are the little shots that NIP were doing much better. The vert angles, they were winning those a couple of rounds ago. Now GK getting some good shots onto cons. Could have just used the drone as well, you know, for the yellow stairs. Could have. We saved your four candela for the execute, but that, that is what it is. Still some utility left to play with here. Yokai drones are going to be problematic. I don't know if you see it, but there's lots of vertical angles. They might even be able to get that sonic burst down all the way through there. If the first one drops, that's actually on the site. So NIP, they're going to have to dig in deep. They're going to have to go all the way towards the kitchen if they want to be able to lock this one off. And as some shots are coming through, some shots are being returned by Pino, not really connecting anything whatsoever. Moose is still looking to find a player. He's going to get some yellow things to come through. He's just the leg, just moved out of the way. And again, they, they kind of failed to get the opening that way. 30 seconds, they need to start to make a push happen somewhere. Yeah, there's not a lot of time remaining here. Psycho again off a, a miss ping. They just keep moving around GK, not sitting still it's been absolutely annoying for nip now it will server side push for them but there's just absolutely no time keep the eyes on cons he's got the diffuser one for one track there well there goes cons and here come gk four versus one an absolute slaughter on side they have been able to off stand and withstand the double match point that was set up by nip they send us to overtime what is it we said in round one that this was most likely going to end up in an overtime game. Is it 3-3? Three, 3-3 three? Three, <laughs> yeah. three, three halves? Three, three, overtime? Three, three, yeah. It, it, it probably hasn't eventuated, though, the way it was shaping up in that first half. Because the first half was really sort of that back and forth, one each yeah. round. NIP got that two-round buffer and, and at that point certainly deserved it. So GK, off the back of that tactical timeout, they flipped it. And I think you mentioned it before, Hap. It's about maybe feeling as if CO was not working for him. Let's move away from that. Let's yeah. try elsewhere. And it's worked. It definitely worked. And, you know, NRP to try the best. Didn't have to go back to console again, which they, of course, have a very good plan. But you could see how it worked out. Everything just, like, to perfection almost. You couldn't quite make it stick. And that's where the trouble comes in now. It is going to be GK that starts in the defense. And yes, it was a 3-3. But they've been able to find two sides where they've been able to find victories on. So they're not going to be going back towards console. I can I can mm. almost guarantee that. It's going to be probably Garage that we see. Insertion. And I think the Tellers maybe even to come up. And then the question is, how will NIP be able to transition to that? Or are we going to see them go out like lights out right now yeah. for a quick take on the side? Because if you look at it, there's loads of roamers out here. One thing I haven't touched on, Hap, and I'm only just brought this up, is the fact that this is NIP's last game of the group stage. Last series mm. of the group stage, right? So if they lose this, they'd be stuck on four points, which means Fear X would have two opportunities, one against DZ That'll later today, it. and then one tomorrow against GK, to maybe send NIP out and last. So they really would love at least one map to get that one point would be so crucial for them just to confirm that they won't get grouped. Big overtime coming up now for NIP. The attack has been stalled out. They have not been able to break down this GK offense. Last time out was above, then eventually through server. This time a bit more so towards the garage side of things. Yokai there in place from Hashom. He's called off a little bit individually, but everyone else on GK, look how even. Seven kills to eight kills for Noodle. Everyone is pulling their weight for GK. Slightly less than NIP and Cons not having the best of games so far. The rest is doing quite okay. Now they've opened up the garage wall, but have decided to go for a rotation afterwards. There's two minutes left on the clock. It is plenty of time. However, there is a roam game slightly on there for the side of GK. We have a couple of players on the staircases. They could easily just step out, start doing some pressure up above. Hisham is currently droning around, trying to get some information as well. That verticality that could potentially be used is going to be waiting off now. It's like, what are you going to be doing? Let's see when you start opening up. Maybe even prepare your C4 as a result of it. Yeah, that trigger discipline, I, I would just be bursting that. In, in, in ranked, I'd be like, ah, screw it. I just got to cause yeah, the screw concussion. You specifically. Yeah. <laughs> Minute and 15 seconds remaining gk i think i think gk would be pretty happy with what they've got so far the information off the back of the yokai's good position on site and up haven't really gained a whole lot a little bit of vert now coming through here through pino he's gone a bit quiet in the last two rounds c4 gets shot out ping is still there over towards piano hashem continues to just play one thing i will say gk haven't been able to do much off of that information 
No, for sure. They haven't really been able to reply to it. Like, he could have prepared before. <laughs> okay, he wanted to throw the Candela. The Echo Drone just stunned him there, so he's got pooped back in pocket. I think he found the uh, Yoka Drone. The call comes in now, and that kind of means that an Execute needs to start going through. Seriously, Wolf on Pino is the opening kill of this round. 40 seconds left on the clock. They're trying to force themselves through the breach, but they also need to make an entry point elsewhere, and that's really not happening so far. There is someone watching all the way through the hatch, but if you're not getting anything done, you're not going to be able to get that plan down. As new the Wolf find comes as well. Some shots being sent through the floorboards by Wizard, but again, NIP, oh, what are down. you doing? Where are you? Why are you not trying to take the site? Yeah, Psycho was the backup man for Khans. It's GK flawlessly to kickstart this overtime on their map pick. And in response to this little three-round run from GK, NIP's seen enough to call the tactical timeout. Starting to feel like this map has slipped away from their grasp. They were up six to four, Hap. Three rounds in a row now for GK. Four of the last five. Where has this come from? I don't know. I mean, of course, the tactical timeout that was called by GK. Basically, I, I assume what they were told, do not go back to console and play your game on the other side. And that's been working out for them. They've been able to get the important picks and basically make life a little bit uneasy. And if we then look at NIP, Pino hasn't dropped a single kill anymore since round, like, 9. But that is such a strange round last round. Con's coming in through Main Bridge Garage. You're playing the Buck. You've got Diffuser. Like, you want your Buck up above playing Vert, opening up floorboards. Instead, he's just kind of, like, slow crouch walking through with hit, dies. Then Psycho does basically the same thing. He's like, well, okay, I'll come in now as well. Slow crouch in, pick up kit, die. Two players essentially did nothing there for NIP. I obviously get you want to get the plant down, but they haven't really cleared out sight. They haven't really done anything with Vert up above. That was just a really stagnated attack from NIP. One key thing for GK was they had a lot of information as well. The Yokai's up above, Piano, they kind of knew what was coming. They understood that there was a larger focus on garage that side rather than server, which means you can bring everything from server side to garage side, deal with the Vert. GK played it perfectly, and like you said, basically haven't gone back to CO. And ever since then, four out of the last five rounds for GK. Whatever was said in that tactical timeout has just done wonders. Yes. And I also have to point out, though, NIP, whilst the rounds that worked, of course, were console um, and was the exhibition that they managed to win, their approach was all over the map. Everybody was picking their own fights, everybody was doing their own thing. And of course, it's risky, right? Because if you lose your 1v1s, there's no way you can really trade. However, that was working out for them. What we've seen in these garage takes is everybody kind of pushing in the same direction, but they weren't really doing the work for it. They've opened up the garage, they've opened up the hatch. Where's the rest? Mm. Where's, the, where's the smokes? Where's the flashbangs that go through? Where's the person pushing down from like the yep. back to try and sow some chaos right before you hit? Like it, it was only half done that execute. They, they didn't have everything they needed. Whilst well, the men were definitely there. Well, they're on the defense now for NIP, but even if they win this, they have to go back on the attack once again. And clearly that's been something they've struggled with. Noodle. Probably the kind of player that's just going to really benefit from these rounds, the confidence that comes from it. He was already someone. When GK was struggling a little bit down a couple of rounds, he kept trying to make things happen. Well, eventually the damn wall will break. K to open up main breach over towards balcony. They've done this a couple of times. GK, when attacking into this site, eventually then the focus will be on the admin side. Repel, try and flush out Wizard on the Azami. Kind of done a decent job of that already. Still two minutes to go. And... Wizard probably not in the position he would like to be, instead just roaming around this hallway position. He might have just decided that it's not worth holding on to, because you are just finding yourself vulnerable as soon as they do get themselves inside of admin, because there is just multiple angles they can find you from. Best way to do this is to just put cons on that clash and let him waste as much time as possible and be there to support him if he needs it. But what we also need to see is that they cannot allow Noodle to just shoot him down from below again. And he's going to use his s jar. He's going to be holding the door because they know that there's going to be a clash out there. This needs to be challenged by his teammates. Three cons feels like the win condition here for NIP defensively. 3 and 11. Take the gun off and put him on the shield. See if he can be that nuisance. Stall out. Buy some time. So far, successful. At least in denying any kind of push up through service stairs. A bit of admin pressure starting to come through now from GK. Noodle still down below. And they've done this before, though. You think back to that opening half app. And they were able to deal with the clash. They were able to shoot it out from down below. Flashes, both of them, <laughs> the full wide. The player, though, tucked in. Left side corner is GK aware of that. 
Oh, they knew he fell back. They just checked the balcony, so they are going to be aware of the fact that that's going to be clear now. Noodle still trying to put up some pressure from below, but all he's really going to be doing Time's is opening himself up. an extra. Yeah, 40 seconds. They're repelling up on the Valkyrie right now. That is K with the Diffuser. He's just sticking out there. And Hings are coming in on this position. They if have they don't to overload find Muzi, the they need to find Muzi. Yeah, they have to overload this clash. Allow K to get in towards site. Under 30 seconds. Cons very low, but not dead just yet. Seriously, massive there it is. kill. There's the trade, though, from K. K, hit down balcony. That's where it is. Double stack coming through the doorway. Tricks, though. Big kill on to Pino. Second one from Seriously. The clash is all that remains and remains for no longer. GK Esports for the second time in this tournament will take Consulate against one of the big dogs. They beat Dark Zero here they take down nip they take their map pick they deserve victory in the end because whilst nip was leading in the majority of this game as soon as like those last five six rounds started to come through everything just kind of started to fall apart ever since the timeout that they've that they've called in things just started to click for gk they decided console that is not our site anymore we are not going to be playing that we know how to win everywhere else yeah what a game fascinating all the way through it felt like at least for large portions of that match hap that i thought nip were yeah, probably definitely. the better team at least through maybe the first nine to ten rounds or so then we get this magical tactical timeout and then it's like five out of six rounds go the way GK and they just looked so much better, so much cleaner. I mean, even in that last round, you could see what they were trying to do. You could see what they felt like was their win condition. Deal with that class, yeah. allow for K to get in. And once they did that, then they basically won the round. Overloaded position, they had the numbers of three on one. And uh, in the end, a really well-earned victory for GK because there's one thing to win. And it's another though to win when you're kind of losing a little bit. They turned it around. They definitely turn it around there. But before we break this down any further and head towards the next map, we are going for a very quick break. Don't go anywhere. We'll be back with you shortly.
one hour to watch that first half again and then walk away from the screen because that was where things looked so damn good, Ollie. But unfortunately, after the first half, it went downhill. Bump, bump. Yeah, we can see there from FaZe's celebrations after map number one. It did go the way of FaZe, but not through lack of trying. I think Bliss did a great job in the opening half of that map, as you say. They did a lot of the hard work, Fox, but they weren't able to convert a lot of those rounds. I know, I really loved the ability of the Grim being used out from Bliss, the way that they were pretty much locking down FaZe from being able to move and help each other on the trade on their attacks. But I just really thought that I I'm going to start calling it the side swap curse. I really think as soon as the side swap, everything goes downhill for Bliss. Yeah. They show a lot of potential, but once the side swap, I don't know if it's the fear settling in. It isn't dependent on map or side. It just really starts to creep in the, you know, maybe it's the getting so close, but not finishing out. Yeah, look, coming into this, Oli, I think 23% attacking win rate for uh, Bliss. And we went to Clubhouse, a map that only has roughly 30% attack win rate. Then they go on 4-2 the first half on their attack. Can you can you explain to me? Hello? I mean, it wasn't just a case of Bliss doing fantastically well on the attack on Clubhouse. We've got to give props to FaZe as well, because FaZe did an equally good job. It just so happens that Bliss did it They did a better first. job. They did they a better, did a better, job. better, they did a better job. job. It just <laughs> happened that Bliss did it first, and we weren't really expecting it out of Bliss as much. Yeah. But they did a fantastic job. I love the way that they were focusing on exploiting some of those players on the side of FaZe that weren't only over peaking, but were getting a bit too overzealous. They did a fantastic job of just holding the line on that attack, utilizing things to really give themselves the advantage in the push a couple of good occasions of garage getting taken really nicely there from Bliss. I've actually got a question for you, Fox. Yes. Could you tell me what the difference was between the attacks of Bliss and FaZe? Because it felt like FaZe were far more dominant. Even though we saw some incredible rounds from Bliss, FaZe were in more rounds, more, more often than not, had three or more left alive. Absolutely. I mean, once the sides were swapped, Bliss actually only was able to get one opening kill. FaZe was doing a really good job at just staying alive. And I love to see that because we highlighted a player like Cyber, who was playing very aggressive in the past games, and he wasn't able to find too much success. But in this game, he actually was tidying up and just playing with his teammates and not allowing him to lose and give an advantage to Bliss and just strengthening the whole dynamic of FaZe's attacks. You can see it there. I think uh, Cyber ended up with uh, three and one on entry. So, you know, that kind of maybe paints a picture as to how things have changed a little bit from the pre-show, from the discussion that we had. Look, a close match overall. Um, and I, I don't know how much we need to, to dwell on it. It's 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 done. It's dusted. Phase of now pretty much gone 1-0 up in the series. They're looking very, very confident. Faze looking great, you know, it's a classic phase, right? They they are never out of the fight. They can go down a, a good number of rounds at the start, come out at a 2-4 split, and, and still still come out there and perform. Um, we've got some great highlights here from Bliss and just some of the ways that they were looking to get around on those attacks. And, you know, maybe a few guys, a few times where it maybe just didn't quite work out, but their success in taking Garage was fantastic. One thing I would love them to do is start looking down on the floor. You were saying that Aussies don't like looking at the feet, but we saw so many Frost mats getting brought in there. Yeah. Well, how many How many did Enon have getting hit? I think it was two or three. But yeah, there was a three couple. Too many, was right? a couple. They're definitely, I mean, you hear it, right? Like, you're going to hear it. You're going to hear it no matter where you go. There's always a pop and the, ah, uh, you know, like, there's pain. There's pain. Look, Wettables is in good uh, in good standings. He's got a smile on his face. I guess you kind of have to. You are up against, technically, the second-seeded team coming into this. Speaking of the second-seeded, let's go to the second-seeded map. We go to Bank now, Fox. Does this make it even worse? I don't think so. I mean, okay. Bliss has been very strong at the start of their games. It's just about converting it onto the half. They've been very good on their attacks and their defenses on Bank in their prior games, but against FaZe, it's just, you just can't let the ability to them execute, just struggle against Bliss defenses. We've got to look at the Wolves game that Bliss played on Bank. Yeah. It was, a, again, surprise, surprise, a 7-5 to Wolves, but it was another occasion where we see Bliss come just so, so close to getting the job done and not managing to get it over the line. Yeah. This was actually, the clubhouse that we've just seen was the, the least close map that we've seen Bliss play so far. So hopefully now going into that Bank, hopefully they're going to have something to show us. <sighs> Hope. That's what Ose is built on. That's what I'm built on. And I'm hoping that Bliss can do something here because otherwise they are looking down the barrel of a very scary final day here for groups. It's time to get underway with Bank. Emmy and Guts to run you through it. 
They say happiness comes from many different avenues and bliss is sure to follow. I think the only bliss that can come right now for Manic and maybe a couple of others is bliss getting a map. But they were close and then everything fell apart. Yes, and Bliss have struggled on the attacking side of Siege so far at the tournament, much like many others. But on the previous map in the series of Club, they actually got off to a phenomenal start. Unfortunately, their defense fell apart and they head into Bank. Phases pick now trailing. Um, as you mentioned, Em, this is a map synonymous with Brazil. So if Bliss wants a chance of pushing it to a third, they're going to have to play the best we've seen so far. It's just a slightly tall ask. I think always going, look, we need you to play at your best, especially after the first map. Now, if these two maps were the other way around and they were sort of coming into club with a little bit more heat, you do wonder if things might have been different. Club itself was, I believe, statistically the most defender-sided map of the pool that we'd seen over the tournament until that last game, which shows how impressive Bliss were on their attacks. As you said in the break, it could have and maybe should have been a five to one. Welcome back to the B stream here for SI24. Day four of the groups, we've got GK versus NIP, and it was a little heater that we had on Consula. Went all the way to overtime. Felt like NIP started really strong. Obviously, it was a bit back and forth as really we kind of anticipated Consula to be that 47% attacking win rate in a defensive side of mana. It kind of makes it at least a little bit closer to that 50-50 margin. It was that way, NRP started to pull away, and then there was that magical tactical timeout. Yeah, for sure, and whilst it wasn't like, you know, they, they didn't instantly win six rounds in a row, but they won one, and then they lost one, and then they just continued winning until the end of the game. So that is something uh, to keep in mind. Definitely a good turnaround. They realized what wasn't working for, uh, for them and what they needed to change to, uh, to start turning things around. But... We do have to say, NIP, they made some mistakes. Some big mistakes that have led them to basically allowing GK to get away with some of these rounds. Yeah, a couple of moments that spring to mind. You know, remember back early on, Muzi probably should have got a trade over towards managers. Didn't yeah. get that. No F not, uh, F not mine usage. You think about the way that some of the Candalas were being used as well by Pino to clear out things like yellow. I was going to say, you can just drone and see it's clear, right? Yeah. It's like, or, or get one of your teammates to drone and you see it's clear. Now you use four Candelas. There's no one there. <laughs> like, sure, it's clear. It's like you could have used that in the execute because they lacked. They just walked in and got shot as soon as they wanted to go for the execute because they had nothing. Yeah, one of the strengths as well to begin that game, I felt for NIP, was they were constantly getting a lot of those opening kills from their engagements. That kind of dried up a bit as the game went on, and I felt like GK started to get involved there and started to dominate. A big factor for that was probably Noodle. Noodle ended up 9-9, but he started out at like 4-7. and seven. So he actually came strong towards the end, and I thought he became very influential. Hashem was insane pretty much the whole way through. I thought he was incredible. And, and seriously, probably in the uh, overtime portion, picked up right half of his kills in that fashion. Yep. So, um, you know, really solid team performance, I felt like, that we got from GK. In terms of the opposite end of the spectrum for NIP, it was kind of the Pino show until it wasn't. And then when it wasn't the Pino show, lo and behold, like five <laughs> out of six rounds were won by GK. I mean, you, you can see it, right, when that happened. Round eight, he stopped being the Pino show, and boom, GK suddenly went like five out of six rounds. It's, it's, Insane how quickly he ended that 13 changed. and 10. He started like 12 and 4. And yeah, that's exactly like a 40% cost. So a big change there, I think, from Pino. I'm not too sure why or what was the, the main difference. You kind of think back opening half, what were the strengths for Pino? He went some really sick vert angle shots where you know he was already being watched, still was yeah. able to win from down below. He was hitting some really good clean shots. That opens up the map. That makes it easier on a map like Consulate, but it just dried up really as the game went on for NIP. We head to bank next. Now Hap, you've got some interesting kind of stats here as well for this map. Yeah, I'll, I'll first let's start with the history between these two. Um, they have played this map before against one another. Back then it was 187 by GK. Ooh. Now, if we look at the overall bank stats, GK over this year, uh, so from the 1st of January 2023 to now, have played it six times, won it four times, lost it two. They actually have a uh, plus six round differential. And then if we go over to the side of NIP, they really do like the map um, to some extent. They've played it 10 times. They've only won it three times, however. So it's, it's not it's not the best of maps for them, but a lot of them are like like eight seven eight six losses. It's mm. never like a, a true blowout that they've seen. So it's interesting you say that because it's like for GK, there's a lot of these overtime wins, but NIP, there's a lot of these overtime losses. 
You're starting to see what I'm putting together in terms of what might actually yeah. eventuate here. Could you imagine a world in which we get a GK overtime win against the NIP? Do nothing. In terms of what that could set up, right? The storylining of like what this game really means, especially now into this map as we go through the bands, is the fact is this is NIP's last series of the group stage. They do not play tomorrow. They find themselves still only on four points. One point at least confirmed there for GK by getting that win. If they win the series, they get all four. More importantly though, Fear X still play two more matches. One again against Dark Zero later today, and then tomorrow against GK. If they go on and win any of those, there is a world, a very possible world, and NIP could get grooved. Now, that all probably changes with at least one map win, which makes this bank so important. That's it, right? Because a full-on victory 2-0 is four points. Um, if, if you win in a 2-1, you get three points, and the opposing team get one point. So mm -hmm. if you manage to get that one point out of the way now, you have your silver five, and that basically forces uh, like a, a completely It means Fear kind of would have to get a, a clean 2-0 and something else. And a 2-1 yeah. or a 2-0 uh, yeah. like t tomorrow. So <sighs> it is definitely possible, bomb. though. And, and the thing back. is, like Dark Zero, they're currently five points behind on that first seed. G2's not playing today. They are also almost like confirmed, depending on how this game goes, they might be confirmed for the, like, the upper bracket at that point. We might realistically see a team where, and I'm not saying they would, but I'm just saying like when there's nothing like really on the line anymore, like G2, for example, tomorrow, they probably want to get first seed. Mm. It's like if they don't need to, we're going to see them slow down a little bit. Other teams could do the exact same thing, right? Like it is a long tournament. You cannot play. Nicholas could said it as well. You cannot map play off today? every yeah, they they could. single game at 110%. That's just going to tire you out. So we might just see a bit of a sloppier game happening, and suddenly NIP could find themselves in the elimination zone at the end of tomorrow. The good news for NIP, though, is to avoid all of that. It's in their hands. Simply it's in just, their own hands. Just currently. win this map. It's your own map pick. Get bank over the line, and then even on border, it's probably less ineffectual in terms of what actually happens there. So for them, and also I think NIP are, are far too far away from being able to confirm any kind of upper bracket placing, especially since they can no longer get all four points here anyway. So really for them, it is quite a simple task. Win one map, you go through, you're not going to get grouped, but you're not going to get anything higher than that. So the task for them is set pretty comfortably. There is a world in which they could also still lose this map and very much still go through because Fear X would have to get results, and that's something that they've clearly yep. struggled with. But just pretty much laying it all out into the table. GK will be starting defensively here on Bank. NIP to begin on the attack. Bank in its heyday, in its spike on errors. Yeah, usually one that you can see attack do quite well. But like every other single map of this tournament, defense has prevailed. So expecting GK to start well here. Yoko Drone is here to guide the Nitro Cell. It's flown early. There's no one near that. <laughs> it's, I'm not quite sure what they were thinking about that one, but... You know, starting to open up some uh, verticality. And of course, we do have to go all the way down towards the basement. We are starting off in the top floor. That's standard procedure. You need to make sure that there's no roamers out there. You just make life a little bit uneasy for whoever might be out there or might be thinking about going back out there. Do you still have a C4 prep there? No, one C4 they had got blown up. So it's just wondering what Felix is currently doing with the, uh, the Yokai drone all the way upstairs. Yeah, interesting. Not okay, getting too much information that's useful out of this. There's no roamers. So we'll try and get that drone back to Earth's site. I don't know what he's doing because there's no one there that can challenge. In 12 seconds, that Yoko will eventually make its way back down. And you're right, it's probably a bit of an overfocus. To be fair, there's other players that are doing other things. Shock drone to get rid of the Vulcan canister. In fact, get rid of both Vulcan canisters, or sorry, at least one of that one. One more available for seriously. Yokai is going to be super important here, along with those gas babes as well from K. In terms of just that denial, if this ends up being that kind of server side push from NIP, go for that I default did. plan through the, the doorway, which is exactly where they've got that diffuser, then again, time denial is the win condition now defensively for GK. And really? not afford to, to screw up this yokai. No, definitely not. You need to have this yokai to be alive. And whilst he's trying to stick it in the right place, you we see got the it. person slowly starting to back in. And the smoke canisters are starting to pop. They're definitely sticking. No damage was actually taken by cons from that one. So second smoke canister tossed as well. Third one might be coming through. It's all going down quite quickly. As Hashan will be the opening kill on the hands of Psycho. Yeah, Yokai is going to be the biggest factor though. Gas babes seem like they're off the mark. Cons again sticking, but again, this is another Yokai burst that has been successful. They're not going to be able to get this plant down. 
Double red, they all just stack sight. One oh no. more chance here for the Yokai to finish this off. Gone. Up he oh, goes. Doesn't stick. doesn't stick it. Oh, no. He goes to the hatch. Oh no. A serious misplay. Plant down, but it's a two on one. Despite everything that's going on, GK still have every chance of winning this round. Did he use the drone to try and figure out where Collins actually is? It's not going to be in server. There's only one way he can really be there, and that's inside of blue. It's going to get stunned, but takes out the yokai. Still active and able to fight those. He sees one go by. The long oh, no. arrow He's down. fails. He needs to rotate, swaps over to the bearing nine. Is the first to go Collins gets the crunch, and Ooh. that is a huge misplay with the yokai. The hatch was opened up. You were not able to stick it there. Oh. What has happened there? We're praising good positioning. Yokai's effective. It got two plant denials. Just needed one last one. No one could shut down the drone. And then, boop, straight up through the hatch. That is plant successful. Then it's a retake, Hap. Even still, despite all of that, it's a two-on-one retake. They get information towards blue. You know he's in blue. It's a two on one, and they just solo. One just goes on the plant, the other one's honestly not in the best of positions either. Oh, GK have thrown that round heavily. I mean, you, know, you saw it, like, there was going to be a long arm attempt, and there was only, like, a little bit showing. And of course, Khan's being stunned. It's a difficult shot to hit. But what you could have done is protect the president, just stand right in front of it, <laughs> yeah. and you would have been able to actually get that shot off because the Type 89 is not the biggest of uh, magazines. Like, probably as soon as he takes you out with a difficult shot it is to hit. It might already be over at that point, but... <sighs> Let me just uh, set the scene straight. 62% defensive win rate this map. It is quite defensive. It is over the average. This side that we've just had... That's the side. That's the side that you need to find your defense, first of all. Yep. And that's a huge fail coming out from the side of GK. Well, yeah, I mean, I mean, for, for basement on, on bank, it's essentially a freebie the attacking teams in terms of what they can try and get. The other sides are going to be more, your more tertiary sides up above top floor, uh, staff and open area, for example. But the fact that they were able to get one early, basement straight away, in the fashion and, and world in which they did, I mean, that is a mental tester for GK. An incredible round. But for NIP, I, they probably needed something like that after losing Consulate in the fashion that they did. Not just a yellow ping. I'm not too sure what the yellow ping is here. It's probably like, uh, the preemptive yellow. Taliswender here. Now, what I do want to see is uh, the Twitch drone, actually, from the side of, of NIP to do work earlier. They need to get rid of those 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 Falcon canisters way earlier on because, realistically speaking, they should have ran out of time. I'm a little surprised he's gone for the pre-place. I, I would have liked to have them hold it and play off of the Yokai and then get the yellow ping in a more live fashion. What is that turning into gender for? What is that impact right afterwards as well? It's just, it's like misplays coming through. Like they don't have the full map knowledge. Hashem taking a little bit of damage as well as the uh, skeleton key is starting to open up. Muzi's trying to hunt some information, some utility. And as he's headed over towards the blue stairs, you know, it's going to be... Maxwell in his drone. There is a player out there who is playing quite close towards the actual engagements on blue stairs. They are unaware of his position so far. It is the smoke. That's a huge pick if you manage to find him. Reloading. Yeah, I mean, smoke over towards blue. Pretty standard here on a map like Bank. Typically, we'll have a deployable shield. But if you want to be less aggressive, you don't really need it. And this is the moment he has to run, considering the fact that the hatch on site is being opened up. There is no safe way back, unless you're going to stick yourself inside a CCTV, which might actually be what they're doing. You can stay top blue stairs. I mean, it's not awful if you've got someone watching in towards site. And then, yeah, I think catch the psycho off guard, because as you say, you're right. You know, typically you want to fall back when that hatch is opened up, but he kind of just holds the death area. It's like, okay, I'm probably going to die, but can I take one with me? The only problem is you're playing the smoke. On this site, you really want to be getting those gas pipes out in terms of denial. One still inside a server as well. Noodle just can't survive the angle from Pino. Opens him up, gives them the advantage. Looking to open up that wall, going for the plant. Hashem will fall too. It's all falling apart for GK. The fact that they're about to lose basement two rounds in a row. This is an awful start for them. Down to just tricks now remaining. Cons, Pino, and Wizard. And Pino makes it three. And makes it two. Nothing start for NIP. The bounce back here on bank has started early.
It definitely started early. And, and okay, let's go back towards the blue stairs. Is this psycho be a bit annoyed by the way he died there? It's like I just flashed him fully with the candela and he just swings me, gets me with the SMG. Like you saw him like just sit back and be like, okay, there's nothing I can do except for call now. Of course, his team still managed to clean it up. You see this right there, he's fully blind. Had no idea where he was going at that point. Tried again with the shotgun, but failed. But the rest of the team still managed to just clean up afterwards. And again, Smoke is such an important character, especially in the last minute of the round. As soon as the hatch starts to open up, you basically need to start rotating back. Mm. Because if you are playing on that staircase, sure, you have a shotgun. Sure, it's easier to hold. But your utility is so much more useful to be on the side. And also, why didn't he smoke himself when the first Candela came out? Yeah. Stops you from being pushed. Worrying signs right now for GK on bank to begin with. But I will say to play devil's advocate, just a little bit hap was back on consulate. They also started a little slow, didn't they? Right. Yeah. Changed things up really as the game went on and they were able to have that timeout. Second half was much better for them than the first half. But in saying that, the fact that you're losing Locker CCTV twice in a row on bank, that's certainly concerning. More than just kind of losing the first two rounds, it's losing it in that fashion on defense. I mean, one of them they should have won. The other one, they had no business winning whatsoever. Like, the second round was just NRPs from the get-go. The yeah. very first should have been a GK round, if we're being honest. I agree with you there. If you go up above, though, top floor, second floor, here for another opportunity over towards CO. You know, outside. Get these claymores in place if they've got any. Don't see any, actually. So this will be interesting to think if GK maybe want to go for a bit of a jump out play. We do typically see it when there is that heavy re repel presence outside of CEO. Hashem with a very acute angle up close, but he is playing the Azami. Probably more likely to see him maybe go for a swing than block with the Keeper Barrier. Goes prone. Would not be anticipating him to go for a jump out. Surely not on the Azami. You kind of don't want that, right? You want to you wanna make sure that all those keeper bearers are being used and, and have the opportunity to uh, well, basically help your team. However, as everybody's going up to the roof and there's no claymores, as soon as Pina starts tossing out these candelas in the side, I wouldn't put it behind the side of GK to just try and go for a jump out. Wizard, this is interesting. Over towards front desk. Hive launch was successful. Nice little red ping. That one to Noodle. Hon's now making his way towards top main, but he gets shot. Nice little swing through the call corridor from Seriously. K got one as well onto Pino. In towards Janado. Psycho, he's got the kit. Into Janado. Can go in towards site. Rotate hole available. Tricks as well with the kill onto Wizard. GK have the advantage, similar to their opening round, but this time they look like they're going to be able to get the job done. Psycho's gone all the way through Janado, past site, in towards airlock. Minute 15 seconds, and he's eventually shut down by Noodle. Okay, GK's on the board. Again, going to a different site, not backing up for the same site for a third time in a row. And now my question is, are they going to do the exact same thing, right? Just completely <laughs> avoid CCTV and yeah. go, go staff room open area, which is a normal turret tree site, and then go tellers? No, I don't think you'd go tellers. I think at that point, if you win staff and open, you, you probably got to go, go back, basement. Right? you got to yeah. go basement. Well, we'll see what this round does bring for them. Certainly a lot better there from GK, NIP. Yeah, interesting round, though. Clay Moors didn't really go too overly aggressive, though, on the repel anyway. One thing I like, though, from GK, right? You bring that, that castle you typically see on CEO uh, to block up those windows, but it was actually then the Azami with the Keeper Barriers re-blocking them every time. So they made it very difficult for NRP to play the repel game, forcing them to try and then push in over towards, like, top square. Yep. Didn't work. And in the end, GK, which is a little bit uh, more efficient on the defense, staff room uh, and open area now for the fourth round. It is funny to me how, uh, you know, back in the day when we only had a single hard breacher, uh, we then got Hibana, of course, to be added to the roster and, and really used, you know, opening up the walls mostly and, and hatches, really good at opening hatches. But now, every single time there's a hassle available, it is going to be Hibana that opens them up with the x -Caros. Just shot, shoots two on them and manages to get it like that. It's, it's funny how, like, the, the gadgets shift in, in, like, what they're good for. It's the same as, like, flashbangs. Usually we're used to waste the ADSs. Now it is the leading meta. Just completely blind your opponent mm. so you can take those fights. It was fun to see, like, the transition that these gadgets and metas go through. Well, a good start from NIP. Not too sure whether or not two attacking rounds might actually just about be enough, all things considered, when it's said and done, the defensive win rate being above 60%. I'd certainly love a little bit more, though. They'd certainly love to be able to bounce back here on bank after losing Consulate, a map that was their pick. 
Oh, sorry, no, that was GK there, Pete. This is their pick. You'd want to win your yeah. own map. Certainly would not want to be losing this one and losing 2 nothing for your final day of groups as well. Then you're sitting back and waiting. What's the future hold for us? How are things going to go in the playoffs if we do even make it there? Ash on with the opening pick on to Musi. Can't get involved on the Ash. Good janitor control. Good top floor control still for GK. That for NIP momentarily are just a little bit stalled out. That's what we do not like to see from NIP because that's when things really started to go south. As soon as they started doubting, started, you know, not knowing where to actually go. Noodles using his smoke canisters to stop any push coming in from oh, the top square. Sure. Hashom, I'm not sure what you're doing what? here. Gets himself in trouble, gets himself killed by Pino. Surely that was a bit unnecessary. I don't think that was a play that was needed, but what I think he wanted to do was get to the couch unseen, unaware, and then catch someone on the rappel. Kind of like the idea. Execution clearly didn't work. Seriously, a couple of shots to the back. It hurts with the DMR. Uh, DMR from Wizard in towards Long Desk now. Sight being opened up, unfortunately, for GK. If they really do lose this top floor, especially towards Stock, it's all in control now for NIP. That's going to make it very difficult. Staff and open, really hard to hold when you do give up that vert, when you don't have Stock, when you don't have the hallway. Are there going to be any kind of reinforcements? Maybe up main. Depends if they've still got a bit of beepers control. Could go for that push. Look at the HP, though. Pino. Under half. Psycho basically a single bullet away from death. And there's still two keeper barriers left in pocket for the side of K. So he can use those to basically reinforce whatever. And look at the beepers out there. There's a keeper barrier out there that stops them from basically being able to safely take control off this area. Unless they can get a flashbang behind. He sees them, but actually gets shut down. Pino with a huge shot to come through. Cost taking loads of damage as well as Noodle goes down. It's only up to K right now. In a 1v4 situation, the plant is starting to collapse. One. He gets one. Yeah, doesn't get the second in the first attempt, oh. but does it in the third. In the third, the it's winnable. Go down in the meantime, though, but it's definitely winnable. Both are about one HP away. Down. He gets it down onto one. Psycho coming in from the kitchen area. <sighs> Cannot connect the shots. And NIP will be able to take the round away. Away in a very close fashion. It's not often you see a 1v4 that's winnable. No, not often, but he was in a perfect position to do so because they really. Couldn't really get deep into the site yet. You know where the plant is going now because there's only one position where you really plant in that situation. And it's just the fact that he didn't know about the kitchen player being that deep in yet. If he had that information, that would have been a round win potentially for well, GK. Well, that start there from Hashem. I'm a little bit confused by that with the push in. I yeah, think why he, he probably just wants to go prone behind the couch, maybe catch someone on the rappel a little bit off guard. Didn't quite work. That was a, a straight one versus one, by the way. Psycho clutches up, but... I mean, seriously, another strange round here between these two teams. GK will feel as if they, they had an opportunity maybe in that round. Doesn't come to fruition. But NIP, they're just scrapping here a little bit on bank. You mentioned the very opening round. Locker CCTV. Is that a round they should have won? Maybe not. But they did it anyway. Same thing, I think, there in that last round, too, of staff and open. You know, not the kind of round where they looked ultra-dominant. It maybe was a couple of mistakes from the likes of Hashem from GK. But ultimately, they were able to punish that. 3-1 lead here on bank. And so far, for what's been a very successful attacking half from NIP. Definitely has been a successful half for NIP. But again, like really working into the mistakes that were made there by GK in the last round. Because for a second there, it looked like NIP didn't really know what they wanted to do up until they got the openings baked. Well, not really given to them, but they managed to get the down. They managed to get another injury up on the top floor. And as a result, finding themselves with another round win. One to three. Two rounds to go inside of the half. Two opportunities for GK, and they must get this. Next round or two, absolutely one's not going to be enough. NIP looking to redeem that performance in Consulate where GK was able to win out in overtime. You know, just outside front desk towards top spiral. Drones going out, information to be relayed for the rest of the team as they make their way towards basement. Noodle sitting first floor elevator. Last time out from GK, heavy emphasis was on that yokai. That yokai cost them the round. They've opted to go against it. Instead, they planted the Oryx of Noodle to try and maybe be a nuisance on this elevator side. And go up and down. And that, they still got delay, at least with the Goyo and the Smoke. So it didn't really need the Yokai as well. Yeah, and of course, we have the Kade uh, that is going to be making sure that some of these hatches do stay closed. Uh, which really is, in, in the end, an advantage. Now, there is a Thatcher on the side of Psycho. So if they double EMP, there shouldn't be an issue whatsoever uh, with getting these hatches open. So let's hope that they do. This one. 
Doesn't seem like there's any juggling going on whatsoever. So uh, it should just open up. I'm curious because I thought as well, you're playing the Oryx here, Noodle. So I, I would have loved to have seen him now jump up elevator and then eventually go for a flank. But Wizard's still around main stairs. Nice shot back from Kate. Bottom hatch. Good. Into cons. There's actually three players inside at the moment the hatch opened up. Like they were all falling back and trying to get into a safe ground. And all of them were just quickly taking a peek at the hatch to see if they could find themselves a fight and eventually finding cons uh, for the second time around and, and shooting him down. 50 seconds left though. Fire is currently burning out. They still really haven't got any good control to go for a plant. So I'm not quite sure where they want to go with the diffuser. I mean, I assume it's still upstairs in the hatch that just, uh, you know, saw cons lose his life. Muzi now recovers it. Bro, is Noodle going to do anything? I've been watching him bottom basement this whole time. He he's could waiting easily... until they go for an Yeah, execute. he's making a very long wait though. But to be fair, right now he's not necessarily needed because all of the shots from those defenders on side have actually been really good. There's that jump up now towards that first floor going for a long rotate. He's nowhere near the action. To be fair, the action's pretty much done anyway because it's a five versus two. 15 seconds left. Fuser with a Fuser in hand. Hashem gets a kill. It's flawless. Clean as you like. Finished off by actually the Vulcan Canister of Hashem. He'll get the double kill to close it. I wasn't being overly critical of Noodle. I was just sort of like, no, at some point, I, he, I at some point he's going to make the move. He did. He did it a bit late because his team killed everyone. I think his plan there was to just stay hidden for as long as possible because if you jump up too early, they're still going to be on flank watch and they're going to be shutting you down. Yeah. As soon as the execute comes through, everybody needs to be watching the, the one person that's planting to make sure that they don't die. And I think that's the perfect moment to get yourself into the mix so you can make sure that the verticality is going to be in control of your team and then you can just clean them up via the hatches mm. so i think that's what he was waiting for out there and of course like it helps when your team kills everybody so it does he, help. he didn't really need to get an action there's nothing nothing worse when you're playing flank and then you make your move and then and everyone then dies on side and then yeah. you're like the last one alive and you're like oh god or the other way around you make your move but everybody dies before you can even make your move yeah uh, and, and the round's over and you win so two three do we get another 3-3 three, three half? We've already had three of them. Yeah, might, might Sorry, be two possible. of them. Obviously, back of consulate. It was 3-3 three, three into 3-3. Three, three. Sent us into overtime. GK will be wanting to do that just again as we go back up towards the EO. I, I love the way they played this last time with the, the castle and the Azami blocking up those windows and really kind of forcing NIP to either go into the airlock or go all the way around to the other side of the site. They bring the Kaid again. And jump though for NIP with that Ossa. And this time around, now last time there were no claymores. This time there are through Pino on the Kali. One placed already. We'll place the other one for the jump outs. Noodle gets caught by Wizard. Didn't quite see where that was going to be from. If that was a, a full blown jump out or not. Either way, that is an early death. In towards front desk, maybe? Didn't quite see. I don't know if we can find it. But either way, not the start that GK were certainly aiming for to begin this fi uh, final round. Now, this is an operator we do not often see, especially on LAN. Kali. Using the Kali. Of course, the SPSMG9 is a, is a good secondary to play with, but the CRSX, I believe, all oh, 300. Uh, the sniper Just rifle. some letters and numbers. Uh, no, no, get no. It. It's CSRX 300. I believe there's a sniper rifle. Either way, uh, you know, one shot, and then you have to recycle the bolt. It just takes a while, and um, if you miss your shot, you're basically guaranteed to die. I know that uh, Tex has been a big fan of Kali since making his return into pro play. Been really using it, abusing it. Okay, and towards Janitor. Keeping an eye on that repel. This time around, GK haven't really been able to deal with the repel as well as they did last time. Last time out with the Azami Castle Barricade combination, I thought that NIP really couldn't deal with that. I think bringing the Kali has certainly helped them. I go on the Capital to get ready to send in some incendiary bolts, can certainly clear out some of this utility. Along with the fact that he's got the Gon 6. Minute 20 though for NIP. They've got the player advantage, so it's fine. Cool, they can take their time. Kit is on the repel for cons. She was in such a poor position as soon as that fire comes through. It's basically being forced to go aggressive before on the repel. Surely is a danger. You don't really have any direct support. And as Shom is now digging himself in deep on the opposite corner, how are you going to deal with him? You have more fire arrows? No, they don't. They have one play inside of the building hap. It's Musi, top square. That's it. Everyone else is either outside or on repel. He's trying to... Find a clean kill, but he's just seeing suppressors. He's like, you he keep seeing like the feet passing by, the suppressor just swinging out, but he's not able to find anything. And as a Sean Wolf find Psycho, it might fall apart a little bit for NIP. Oh, here. no, it's scrappy. He's in a scrappy fight and drops as well. Wizard has the Spider Man himself down. He's the last man standing. 30 seconds, though. It is some time to work with. Perfect flashbang to go through. 
gonna be able to find anybody on the back of it yet, but at least he finds himself closer towards the action. He just needs to isolate these players. Okay, he's gonna win this. They might, but Wizard got shut down. Yeah, GK. Kit, Kit was stuck over towards top square. He was never really gonna get there. K was just watching anyway from just outside Janitor. So he had too many obstacles to get through in that instance for Wizard. But what was that attack from NIP had? What in I was the saying hell it's like was going everybody's on? on the repel. I don't know what they're thinking. It's like, what, what are you trying to find? Because they knew Hashon was close. Fair enough, right? They knew he was behind the boot closet. That's why they put the fire there. But they weren't able to catch him and he was able to just continue playing in that corner. And then you have four people on the repel. It's like, okay, we haven't opened up anything. What's plan B? Yeah. <laughs> it's like, just, just go. Plan and B was to send one lurk in towards top square, four players on a repel outside and just hope for the best. And then, and really everyone on the repel was actually dying. Then we actually saw a couple of jump outs from GK. Pino at least got one because of the Claymore, but damage was done. And in a round as well, the NIP had the opening kill. Like they had the numbers yeah, advantage yeah. and didn't really find a way to abuse that and use that. A little bit disappointing. And we do get that 3-3 half again, third time in a row in this series that both teams have just been able to go with that 50-50 margin. But I'm going to say, a little disappointing, because if you think back, NIP, you win the opening two rounds, attacking into Locker CCTV, and then you could only get one yeah. more for the rest of the half. I really do feel like they failed to capitalize on that half. I don't know if three is good enough. In the grand scheme of things, it's probably fine. But with where they started and what they had, I expected oh, I agree. more. A 3-3, statistically speaking, is great for NIP. Yep. However, if we look at the game, it could have also been a 5-1. Yeah, easily. So, like, you know, they've left some ground there. They've left themselves a little bit vulnerable uh, towards GK now. And, and GK, well, they are going to have to go on the attack themselves. They're going to have to attack the exact same signs that they've just defended themselves. Let's see if they find any more success. Now... The first one again. That is a fail from the yokai. We can we can toss that one over uh, to to oh just a user error. We can almost say on the side of GK. But NIP were very much attacking from a single direction, and there's often like a stylistic difference in how this side can get attacked. What we sometimes see is every hatch to be opened up. We see pressure coming down from every single hatch, which really uh, eliminates the pressure for the actual planter. And the other option you have is just everybody's focusing on getting that plan down in the A-bomb chassis. I think the goal right now, though, for NIP is make sure that this hatch does not get opened up in towards CCTV. You can see how much utility they're actually oh. applying into it. You've got the 2-brow, you've got the cage claws as well. You've also got the Aruni laser gags that were applied too. So that's kind of their goal. Try and keep what? this. The fact that it's been Missed? opened up means that they've absolutely screwed oh, no. up a big part of their win condition. They brought like three, four operators to make sure that hatch doesn't get open. Well, 90 seconds to go on the round. It is open. So for NIP, they don't have much more of that conventional stall out for this particular site, right? There's no smoke. There's no echo. The Vulcan canisters is pretty much all you've got. I think what happened there is the Tuberau, when it was placed in the hatch on the opposite side of the wall, actually managed to freeze the electro bar that was placed yep. to try and get the uh, the Excaros as soon as the other Tuberau had finished with the Zoto canister. So they kind of messed up themselves out there. And now there's an opportunity for GK to really open up these hatches indeed, start putting down some early pressure. Peanut going aggressive though, with that shotgun onto the blue stairs. This is the warden. This is the right operator to play here because of the flashbangs that are all around the game every single time. And he will be able to get that second kill off the round. You know, still aggressive out here. Activates his glasses, knowing that he's receiving some pressure. Yeah, I was going to say, very aggressive. He still had a Nitro Cell available. Eventually, it does get flushed out. They've still got two more, though, in the back pockets of Cons and Psycho. 30 seconds left for NIP. Player advantage. But they've been in this position so far throughout the series. Far too many times where they've got that extra player number. But GK just find the presence of mind to be able to get through these scenarios. But maybe not this time with seriously losing his life to Cons. Long range angle. That's kicked down over towards server on the CCTV side. The rest are coming towards elevator main stairs. Noodle can't make his way down. Oh, it's only tricks left in elevators. Long way from the kid. NIP, close out basement. That's clean. That's very clean, uh, for sure. Managed to pick up the kills wherever they were going from. It felt like a little bit of a lack of information on the side of GK, which didn't allow them to, to fully play into that round, not fully get control of where they were going. I mean, you saw quite a couple of people just face-checking the rooms and being punished for it as they did. Of course, when there's, you know, 30 seconds left on the clock and time is ticking down, you don't really have time to go for a drone, but... You know, for example, you could have at least tried to follow that one up with a with a, with like 
the flashbang first. Yeah, what's interesting in that round though, again, it, NIP clearly had a focus to try and keep that hatch closed in towards CCTV, bringing that two out. You've got the Kai Claw as well. Uh, the Aruni, Sawyer Gate too, placed on that. That's more utility that can be denied the whole way through. The idea was try and keep that closed as long as possible, make it very difficult, because really one of the big win conditions of that site is to get that hatch opened up, eventually get the plant down, then you have someone play from the vert watching the hatch down. Really difficult to then get the retake. So their idea was let's keep that closed as long as possible. That wastes a lot of time for GK. They still got the hatch open anyway. So I thought NIP failed to actually probably do their win condition, still yeah. won the round anyway. On uh, the gun skill Attackers afterwards, of course. And, and of course, like you, you look at the Surya laser gate, it was placed as well. It's placed on top of the hatch rather than underneath, which mm. means that as soon as that gets popped, there's no reactivating it for the defenders. That's just that's No, just but it. you want it on top because if it's on the bottom one, then the hatch No, of course, the hatch will open up. But <laughs> yeah. if you put it on the bottom, then, you know, they're going to have to use utility first before they drop in or they take damage as they drop that's in. True. That's true. So it's, it's a bit like, and you can reactivate that one. So if they do open it up first, you can waste a couple pieces of utility. Yep. Um, I actually did like the Goyo canister with the Surya laser game because the fire might have made it more difficult to see the lasers out there. But um, it's what it is in the end. Is that going to hit? I think it'll fill. Oh no, we'll get it. Yeah, it does get it. Just get it. Towards Kanto. Was he playing the elevator position now for NIP? They got themselves that lead once again. Only the one round lead though here into the eighth round. UK have really been toe and toe with NIP in this series. It just feels like at no point neither of these two teams have been able to gain a, a significant amount of separation. What are they going to be able to do? Well, they got the Thatcher, so... Honestly, should be able to open up Kanto pretty convincingly, unless Wizard can hit a very good trick. That shouldn't work. That's going to obviously get opened up. Still going to be uh, putting up one little bit of extra stuff. Oh, another EMP going through. That's unfortunate. All three used there, and every single time, right after the Electric Claw get placed. Now, it's not going to be opened up much more than it has now, because uh, the Electric Claws will be activating more, and uh, that one should be destroyed, unless... There's somehow... Oh, no, there we go. So it has been activated. Still Ooh. an angle, though. Wizard has to be very careful trying to challenge Dan. Yeah, nothing more that Wizard can really do now besides probably just sit here, wait for that eventual push-up towards top spiral. Minute 12, again, time has already been wasted in terms of the pressure being applied towards Kanto from GK. Wizard will just happily sit inside of Elevate in terms of the rotate for GK. Well, Kit has been taken top square with K. Musi obviously on the mirror inside a janitor. Not necessarily sure if he's going to peek out towards that stock hallway. Inside of stock is still con, so a large portion of this western side of the map is still very much filled defensively by NIP. It's a slow peek, though, from K, anticipating the swing from Cons. It did come through. He was smart in being able to just get away from that second trade. 40 seconds, though. Again, time will be a factor, as has been really in this series for both teams. They don't know what they're trying to do here. They don't really have the opening from the top of square. So I think they just need to start pushing themselves into the janitor area. But there's so much pressure out there for the side of NIP. Cons being the first one that they need to take down as he's playing around on the swivel position. And definitely uh, is a lot of pressure that is going his way right now. But he's playing this perfectly. He's just sticking back, not really putting up too much pressure as the main push is coming in from the main stairs as well now. But everything just seems to be falling apart on the hands of GK as NIP are just locking them off almost without any trouble whatsoever i kind of feel like doing my at uh, my uh my parker impression here happen from, from that round because that might be one of the worst attacking rounds i've seen so far <laughs> Just bizarre in, in its approach. We we clearly got to see at the very beginning of that round emphasis on opening up Kanto as you typically want puts that uh, that hallway a little bit into the sidelines yeah. and so it means that you can't just kind of lurk and linger in that if like you want to place it. Yeah, and <laughs> and in the end, it didn't matter. And then they didn't do anything else. There was no real vert play down below. There was no real pressure main stairs. They eventually had K. I, the one thing I didn't actually mind was the, the lurk from K, but he's also, got, he's also got the kit, so he can only get so aggressive. Like if he gets the kill into Janitor and then pushes in like, and then dies, then Kit's in a really bad spot. Just a really strange round into attack pause. 5-3, NIP take the lead. I think, honestly, this one's probably got 2-1 written all over in terms of the series. I, 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 it's a third I, map. I, I think, I think this, this is shaping up to be a third map. There are a lot of similarities to Consulate, though. I will add in that we got to this kind of point in Consulate, where it's like NIP's been the better team, NIP's looked better, NIP should close this map out, and then came GK out of nowhere, seemingly. Could that happen again?
I don't think so. I, NIP is feeling a lot more confident on their defense out here, and, and GK honestly look a lot more like they don't have a clue on how to attack this. And that's not attacking GK. It's more of a, like, okay, so let's just break down that round. All of the hard breach was used in opening up Kanto. Player goes off Kanto hold. So you basically lose all the advantage you got from it. Of course, they need to need to be being careful of the fact that, you know, that there might be a player still holding it, so it is a bit of pressure onto the defense. But after that, you see them take very heavily towards the top of square. But there's reinforcements. There's also a soft wall. Did they have anything to open that up with? No. So what do you have left? And that is just to push through janitor. And and janitor is such a key position in this whole, no matter what this strategy is, because it holds off all the repels, it holds off the pressure that comes in from the top of square. And you also have a player that's on long desk, and you have a player that's on the side. So even if you manage to get janitor, it's almost guaranteed you would die right afterwards. So it just felt a bit like, okay, we've done we've done opening Kanto. But they didn't think about step two. Mm. They just didn't have the utility for step two. Hard to disagree with you there. Certainly one of the more strange rounds offensively from GK. It felt like back on Consulate that GK definitely had more of a plan in their attacks. In their approach in those rounds, I felt like they understood what they really wanted to do. I mean, they obviously picked the map, rightfully so. They should obviously know what they want to do. But right now on Bank, to begin the first two rounds, there's been just some question marks in the way in which they've kind of approached the first two rounds. NIP, though, also looking a lot better defensively. And I think, again, the overall consensus for me, despite the fact that GK's won nothing up in this series, NIP's been the better team. They haven't been the better team. For the most part. It, it, sh it could have been a 2-0. Let's just put it like that. That first map should have been theirs. But they started making some crucial mistakes, which GK masterfully punished. We have to say that. We have to give credit where it's due. But NIP, realistically speaking, should have locked that map off way before that went to overtime. And now you start seeing uh, their true class. They're on the defense, basically not receiving any pressure whatsoever from the attack of GK. Like, it comes down to 30 seconds. They're trying to make a push happen, but there's... There's no real pressure onto the site, so it's only one or two choke points they can really try and utilize. Mm, very curious to see what's going to happen out of this tech pause. Again, they can't really talk. They can't, turn, you know, kind of talk things over. I don't think GK has taken their timeout yet so far on bank, so it's something that will no. be available for them. Opting to hold it for now, I'm, I'm, unless they take it after the tech pause, I don't think they would. In going, case. going into the ninth round, though, they are down two rounds. If they lose this one, then 6-3 becomes a little daunting. Then you get a couple of match points that you've got to overcome, but they did that back on Consulate. This is the thing. NIP had two match points. They were up 6-4 on Consulate yeah. and ended up losing four rounds in a row. No, I, I definitely agree. It's possible for GK to bring this back. There's no question about oh, it. Oh, I was right. Uh, we are headed into it. I mean, I, <laughs> I did think I'd see it because I saw the coach of NIP like start wiggling the microphone as in yeah. getting it ready to speak. Uh, you know what? I actually think this is really smart. I like this tactical timeout from GK because one, you get to kind of halt the momentum, a very small amount of momentum from NIP through the tech pause. Now you get to also then talk things over after everyone's had a little bit of a break. Yeah. No, for sure. Like, you can basically completely reset the mental out here, or at least try as much as you can during a game. Of course, there is a bit of pressure on here because GK know that if they manage to win this, they basically find themselves out of the groups and go towards the playoff stage and find themselves in elimination matches. Instead, if they lose this now, uh, they might find themselves in an elimination matchup later on um, tomorrow. So, we get back into it. Here on stream B, open area is going to be the site that NIP will be headed. Of course, due to the fact that both CCTV and CEO have been locked off due to their victories. And then the big question remains. GK, how are you going to be approaching this? Because in the previous two rounds, you felt a bit, not completely clueless, but underprepared. Like, you get your step one done quite decently. Mm. Uh, in the first round, or round seven, I was opening up the hatch, setting yourself up, wasting a lot of the utility. And in round eight, that was opening up Kento and receiving yourself some long line of sight that you should be able to utilize to stop the true pressure from coming through on the player that was playing on stock. But after that, it just falls apart. And that's what we need to see click now for the side of GK. They need to be having their first step complete, but they also need to be able to find step two, three, four, and five. Another part of the equation now is we go to staff room and open area. The tertiary site here on bank. An opportunity presents itself for GK off the back of a tech pause into the tactical timeout. Clearly, this feels like a big round for me. You lose this. You don't have your tack. That's done. Three rounds that you then need to overcome. 
Not easy. Yes, they won two to close out Consulate and send it to overtime. It's a different figure, though. You can't put a foot wrong. And there's there's sights on this map, most notably Basement. And NIP's played Basement really well on Locker CCTV. That will be difficult to win. It will open back up at some point if the run-through does come for GK. So this becomes an ever-vital site. Must win territory. Pino front desk. Unspotted so far. No drone has seen him. And GK currently not on their drones either. Lost quite a bunch of them if you're even looking at two left. How do you have two drones left at this point? Where did all of them go? Attackers have dropped the bomb to yeah, that is that is interesting. We haven't really get to see it ourselves because we've been kind of watching Pino a little earlier. But the fact that it's down to two drones. Solus is on the board, of course. Wizard on that. Pino with a pistol gets the kill on Decay. The one and only hard breach as well. Dead. 90 seconds into the round. Advantage NIP off the back of this tactical timeout for GK. It doesn't spell good news to begin with. Plenty of time to still turn things around, but clearly they're going to go hunting as well. Shots from Uzi. Hunting is what is going to be the aim of this game. For a heavy roam game. Solus, Malzi, Legion, Pulse. All of these operators happy to just be running around. Come find us. Search. Each end of this map, essentially. And Musi gets involved with the kill onto Hashem. Start to get ready to head us to border, I think, Hap. Oh, for sure. I mean, there's no information game. And while Pino does get taken down, it's at least a little bit of a strike back. So all they really have left is those two drones. So actually one drone left because Phil uh, just lost his. But they do still have that one logic bomb. So that's the one, one piece of utility they really need to make good use of here to try and find themselves back in a three-on-three -three situation. Because as it looks right now, Lots of information on the side of NRP. Just Musi on that Pulse, for example. That's just a living like drone that's just going to be able to spot you through the walls and, and give that call. Look, okay, push seems to be coming from the kitchen side, or hey, push seems to be coming from the hatch. So they can really reassign themselves accordingly. 20 seconds remaining, heading into the deeper stages of this ninth round. NIP looking for three match points, seriously through archives. Kit over towards the main breach wall, in towards Staff and Collins is holding on for dear life on that legion just making sure they can't open up triple this is going to be big noodle gets a big card to psycho there's a trade though three seconds got to start getting the plant down who's got it no one's going to be able to get that done it's an easy win in the end for nip a struggle on attack for gk once again even after the tactical timeout they can't find a way forward even on the tertiary site this one looks done it looks indeed like NIP should be locking this one off, but we said that as well on the previous map, and then suddenly GK managed to come back. Although that was also slightly on the back of that tactical timeout that we have just had, of course. So, as we go back towards lockers, again, I mentioned that this should be the guarantee win for defenders. With the amount of wasting time that you can do. The GK really need to bring the best game right now. And usually, sometimes what you see is like at a 3-5 three, uh, three, score line, maybe a rush comes in, right? Because it's like it's not the end of the game if we fill, but it might be at the right moment to surprise them. I don't think that is something that you even want to be considering right now as GK. No, I don't think so. Uh, and looking at the lineup that they're bringing, I think it's going to be about just heavily overload that server side. You've got the Aussie, you can open up the wall, put the Talon Shield down, plant behind it. But then to do that, you really got to get those hatches opened up. Would love to see a little bit of pressure maybe from the other side. Go for that sort of lobby hatch, open up that. Maybe go for a, a bit of a, a flank in from behind. Yeah. Do something a little bit different. Because right now, at least from even both teams' perspective, it's just been that kind of default server side push that we see time and time again get stalled out, especially from the smoke and the gas babes. The thing is, though, there's no Twitch on the board. So there's no early taking care of the Goyo canisters. Those are going to be lasting up until like the last minute, minute and a half. Basically depends on when the hatch opens up. That's when they can actually try and find a way to get those canisters. So it is going to be a time game in the end. Or they need to go for a bit of a different approach. And that's what they're doing now. Trying to take that garage control. Seriously, he's using the officer shield to try and guide himself some safety. He's going to be setting it up so he can now try and challenge Wizard. He's playing around the back of the card. Of course, they both know where each other are. Both can look through that talent shield. There'll be a bit of a support coming down as well from the opposite side of that garage. So he always has to challenge too and seriously just what? gets his head removed by Wizard. I think that was just value the uh, side of the shield. It was, but like, my goodness, it's like a pixel hap. 
Uh, that would have been so yeah, close. It is. It probably is very close. It's hard to see considering, yeah. you know, that there is the card that you're looking through. It's too... Was that electrified? I'm not quite sure, actually. Like, Okay, no, it wasn't. Okay, I was, was going to say for a second, that would have been a very unfortunate loss of x -Kairos. But this is also an issue I was going to be pointing out. Even if they were able to take Garage and they still wanted to go for the default plant, look at the heart breach potential they have. Six x -Kairos left. Yeah. You need to be opening up that wall on the side. Shuts down a, a big win condition as well now for GK because you really want to get that talent shield deep into garage next to the ambulance and make sure it's looking in towards loading dock. Makes it difficult then for the defense to be able to run across, especially from bot main, try and help out towards CCTV. Instead now for GK, they just don't have that at all. They're down a player already. Now they just have to kind of go back default, server room push, open up. They don't even have any kind of talent shield because at times you can go and open up the left side wall, put that talent shield down and plant behind it. They don't even have that as an option. Like their second options are gone it's not just the goyo canisters that i was worried about right now because we also have the evil eye still on the side we have the smoke canisters still on the side there's a c4 still available as well for the uh, defense to be using it is looking very dire right now for them to actually try and and, and get this plan down i don't think this is going to be working this must be an nip round yeah they've been absolutely taught a lesson here gk this is going to be nip's round and nip's map 30 seconds left unless gk can find a way to do something miraculous here in salvaging this round. It's not over just yet. Funny things can happen. Some good shots certainly can be hit. They've got to try and get their way in though. Rotate hole has been opened up. Final gas bay being thrown out by Pino. That'll be his last one with 15 seconds again. He can stall this out. What you've got to do now is K is push past it. Go to the bomb chassis. You've got to get in there. You can't just sit in the smoke either. Now he gets to that bomb chassis. There's the evil guy. K's dead. That's the round. We're going to border, baby. Let's send this one to three maps. I was gonna say, it's just, it's not enough utility on the lineup to try and get themselves in there properly. A Twitch drone would have been helpful. You could have taken out the Goyo canisters. Something to get rid of those evil eyes. For example, something to even open up the wall. I mean, sure, you had the Maverick out there, but it is so time consuming. And if you did that with like 50 seconds left, you're just not gonna be successful. GK really struggling on the attack out here, not winning a single round. And they haven't looked close to winning a round in any single of those rounds. Four rounds in a row from NIP to close out this second map of the best of three series between these two teams. And what that map gets them to is to at least five points minimum, which now means for their sake at this tournament, very unlikely to get groups from here. Have, well, I'm not going to say impossible, it's not impossible. Definitely but possible. It's, it's very unlikely now that that's going to happen. And it puts an emphasis now back onto GK. Close this out, otherwise you only get the one point from it. Then you got to play a do or die match against Fear X tomorrow. If you do win this still, uh, probably, again, means that for Fear X, that would be very much likely their tournament done. So a lot, really, to, to ride on this next order coming up for, at least now, GK. Yeah, that's for sure. They, they really want to be making sure that that border is going their way. But I think they need to have a little bit of a trap because the attacks looked poor on back. There's no other they way did. to put it. It's like they, they, they thought of one step and then just not about what's needed afterwards. And that might be a bit harsh, but it's like, sure, you open up the hatches, but you can open up the wall, you can get rid of the utility in sight. You cannot expect to get a plan down on CCTV that way. No, certainly not. I mean, full credit to NIP, though. I thought they played a lot better on Bank than certainly what we saw from them on Consulate. But even then, Consulate wasn't that bad. I think you said it as well during that game. This could have easily been a 2-0. It's not, though. It's a 1-1. One, one. We go to a short break. When we come back, though, we continue on in this matchup. We head to Border. Way that pick, it's under the... The, the, the bubble is underneath his feet. Sage is going to get down by a Maestro, probably can't see. Souls goes off of it. But he has no idea that that bubble is underneath. It gets pinged out and Brendo gets Vidaking from the hatch down. They don't know that Brendo's in that position, but suddenly Cyber, he's sort of saying, hey, we're sitting pretty or whatever it is in Portuguese. And at this point they're going, uh-oh, or whatever that is in Portuguese. Five to three now, and it's still not over. They've been in this position and things have gone wrong before, but this is some of the best sort of conceded attack that we've seen, the concerned effort towards the players in the place. You just got to keep your eyes on the kit, the fight, either side. Do they know about Cyber? Because the Cyber NATO is about to swing around the corner. They have the pings on the player, but the drone has rolled through. The C4 does get the catch. Oda again still struggling in this fight, and the fight goes back against them. Handy is able to take care of Wet the three versus three as Souls slings his way back towards and gets Fisher through the soft disaster. Starts the strike. Brendo 
Boyo all that's left with 50 seconds. They can't quite get the confirmation phase sit on map and series point. 5-3 for Bliss. And again, we're privy to info, but there was hardly anyone on the objective. There was one player deep inside of Lockers Bliss. All they had to do was consolidate, ensure they had square control, and default could have begun to be worked. Instead, Oda gets caught in lobby. That was not really a particularly good playmaking position. And then another outside of that push through to open area. So again, Bliss slipping up. Obviously, they got into the round with a couple of slip-ups from FaZe. Nice shot there from Brendo, who again worked into that position, but... So close yet so far. Once again for Bliss. Attackers and unfortunately the for them, they now are staring down the barrel of series point. Twice they've attacked that site and twice you would describe it as a situation where it was close, winnable for sure. And again, that pressure just strikes. As you said, we are sitting here able to see that there's no one on site. Getting that second kill that they got that round, I saved Sage's life from that Maestro bubble because the Maestro popped off. There was about three zaps left in Sage's foot before he hit the ground and they got what would have been one of the worst ways to go. Sort of like death by a thousand Attack drops. Is to a bomb but in that easy. situation, suddenly the Maestro is the only one on site. He's on the opposite site. The default is unwatched. There was a little bit of a rotate towards the site, uh, the hatch above itself around open. Attackers but that's where Wet was putting on the pressure and was holding onto it. Again, just these tricky moments, these tricky reads that are going against them. KDS on the job that I said they sort of struggled with towards the middle. I mean, we've seen a player die to a cap can trap. They're going to try their best to make sure it doesn't happen again. Yeah, cap can in play. So important that that information is relayed effectively by phase. Cyber again going for a swift entry. He's been so deadly, especially on this buck roll here on bank. And in particular on this objective, often sweeping in through open area. At the moment, just making his way down bot square. His eyes now on Brendo. Probably the first target on his hit list. Brendo needs to be really careful because I don't think Bliss have any sort of a read that Cyber is being able to sneak into this position. They are either side of a very narrow fight here and the Sam cams are getting some idea of the rotations onto lobby and as you said Cyber's unchecked right now. Brendo does not know they're on the other side of a soft wall but both these players are more than capable of it. You sort of have this wish to shake them and say, look, you know how close Swapping you are nuts. to each other. Like raptors in Jurassic Park. Stay still, unfortunately not still enough. There goes Brando, the first off the board. A player who has had many moments swinging into the favor of Blist right now is unfortunately the first to find himself on the opposite end, sitting watching cams. Fitter King rolling through and getting the read on the next player for Cyber to tear his way through. Sage does find Vita King. At least makes it not an entirely clean take, but wet. He's under a bat of pressure here. He has the shield. The drone is going to give some of the game away. He's waiting for the swing to come round either side and just takes the drop and thinks, nah, not going to sit around and see what happens next in this story because green is under pressure. There's the barb to stop some of the motion. But again, the top two floors have been cleared at this point. Yeah, the drone work from FaZe in this round, impeccable. Hunting down these players off site. Brendo, the first to fall immediately after. Oh, pardon me. Oda then immediately falling after. Again, off the back of really good information Attackers gathering from FaZe. Drone's now in sight. They know what the utility Attackers is in the place. Diffuser. They now have 30 seconds to formulate this push. Everything has been prepped here for FaZe, and they have been very good at this specifically. Getting the kit down at the dying throws and knowing where they need to watch things. A C4 from Fisho does get the down onto Handy, and Wet gets KDS. Suddenly it's a three versus two, and the 10 seconds are left. They're getting the player up, and Souls drops and tries to rock one, but Fisho has the trade out. It's a one versus two, technically, as the other one's got a plant. The vertical gets the kit. We're going all the way. And Mingarang rallying the troops. Really well done at the death there from Bliss. It wasn't the best of starts. FaZe dismantling the roam. However, once again, they fall to a retake up above. It happened very early on in this game. If we cast our minds back, FaZe allowing the retake, I believe once more, up the main stairs. Hatch presence there, able to deny the plant for a second time. And with no time or manpower left on the 
have recovered their Pops defense. Phase. They do fall. And the scoreline, 7-7. Five seconds left. I mean, the, the sort of perfect cover when they've been playing a hell of a game throughout this so far stage as well in those situations. And this is those moments where you sort of say, oh, Blister's games before, there's been a player that's popped off and sort of set the pace here. At this point, you're up against Cyber, who's been having a hell of a game. But to be honest, you look across the boards here and it's sort of evenly matched. The, the one or two missing moments are being picked up. I decide seven apiece, as far as it could possibly go. They're breaking records right now. They've taken an overtime round. I was going to say they've doubled their overtime win count, but you can't multiply by zero. So. <laughs> I'm sure, I'm sure there is at least three people that are I'm actually in right now. Well, they could double it now because they have finally captured one. Yeah. But it will have to be in the attack and we go top four for round number 15. What will the push be here from Bliss? They brought the Monty once again, so they're not going to revert back to the Oster strat that we saw previously. Yep. It would probably be Monty up Banana. But once again, Cyber playing the Valkyrie. And if he's using the same camera and it isn't spotted out by Bliss, it could make it a challenge for the Aussies. I mean, the it, it, there's this almost frustrating Swapping thing next. here about the Aussies not bringing IQ, right? And obviously, Cyber has played... It's the Valk. same one. Yeah, and they've played Valk every single round. Every single round, and they've played it very well. They're 15 to 10. They have been decimated multiple times by players coming up around the back, not knowing about these surprise strikes. And instead of going, oh, we have an operator who can just get the read. It's such a big room lobby. That's why the Sam cams, that's why the Valk cams are so powerful here, because there's a bajillion different places to tuck those little cameras and make things tricky and sticky to see. KDS takes the first scrape of damage here. Hey, Monty, you're on cam, called in 4K, yada yada, said before. I feel like I shouldn't have to keep staying again. I mean, if, if Bliss split the attack properly, this could actually work out in their favor if it draws phase over to Ward's lobby and then they can hit, you know, top square and stock. There is, though, utility standing, and I don't know if Bliss have a particularly good read on that half of the map, so I don't know if that will be an option. It does look like there is a bit of presence outside top square and obviously the Rappel game from Bliss at the moment. Ooh. I don't think that castle got no, it I think No, it didn't. might have just rolled underneath, I think. So I'm looking Grenade. at Brendo here. I'm looking at Brendo to probably be the one to really help unlock the round. If he can sneak a pick or two, whilst everyone on FaZe is, you know, honing in on the Monty, it could slip up here for FaZe. Handy the first two fall actually from that front desk position, and the Monty advances forward. Now Cyber needs to try and make some work happen underneath, but look how deep Fisho's gone. He's all the way towards the side of CEO. He's fancying a new title and job, and that might be to try and get the kit down. The coverage of the plant could come together, but they want to keep pushing for the kills. There's the smoke. And Cyber, the big rotate round the back is Oda. He's able to strike into action when he's needed the most. KDS still taking these scrapes, but it's Brendo to get the end of Vita King and Handy goes down. They're going for the plant. Cyber, he's had an exceptional series so far, and this is his moment to shine for FaZe. As he's trying to rebuild and restructure with KDS, he's just sitting, waiting inside the smoke. The cover and the swing comes out, but there's Cyber over the top. They're going to see if they can stick it as the final blow comes together. Three versus one. Many of these have gone away from them. A post plant, Monty. This is one of those situations you say is impossible, but Cyber's one of those players who can make that happen. He cannot this time round! Bliss, baby! You take your first map at this SI, you take your first map at SI Australia in about three years. Can you take your first series is now a question being honestly posed. Oh, they did it. They actually <laughs> did it. I cannot believe it. Yes, finally, Bliss. They convert a map, and I could almost hear the sigh of relief from the boys downstairs all the way up here in the studio. What a way to close it out. I mean, what a play. I mean, the fact that Fish pushes all the way to the other side to try and get the plant down. They got stalled out for like a good 30 seconds, and I'm like, guys, please, 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 not like this, not like this. But they got the job done against the number two seed, one of the favorites to make it to the final of the event. So a monumental result for Bliss, and I cannot wait for this third map. It's also the last time an Australian team has beaten a Brazilian team, was against FaZe at that SI I talked about before, but the series is still yet to play for, and FaZe can very much still take this on labs after a very quick break.
One of the biggest wins at the tournament thus far. And no, it's not NIP over GK. Bliss with a big win over FaZe on the A stream. Not going to lie, I did add a little extra to the timer just so I can go and watch it. But a big game happening here as well. Obviously for NIP in terms of the storylining hat, that map win pretty much means there's yeah. very little world in which they're going to get grouped. But it does also mean a lot for GK for all of the negative reasons. Because now if they do lose Border, they have a do or die match then tomorrow against VRX. Yeah, that is what it will be coming down to in the end here. So GK really want to be setting themselves up in a uh, a good way for Border. However, the attacks that they've shown on Bank do not make me happy. Yeah, and doesn't probably set you in a good mood going to Border, where attacking is going to be something that yeah. you need to be good at as well. Similarities probably across the entire series so far. Consular into Bank, into Border, and it's about that attack. Who can be a little bit better on the attack? And I've got to say... We, we, when we closed out that last map, we were both in agreement. This feels like an NIP 2-0. We go to border now. The good news for GK, though, is they did win a map clearly back on Consulate where they were able to turn their fortunes around in the map. Now they're going to do it, though, for the series. Yeah, that's always going to be uh, the big thing. They need to do it in the series. They need to turn it around now if they want to get themselves an opportunity Um to basically confirm themselves and not have to fight such an important matchup tomorrow against Fair X. But again, I wasn't looking too happy about what what we just saw now. It's like they, they weren't thinking too far ahead in their rounds and everything was just falling apart after the first steps were completed. Now we're headed towards border where luckily it's a paper thin map. It's not as many steps as you need for bank, for example. Like, you, you take one room and you basically have half the map already under don't control. You don't have to overthink it as you much. You don't have to overthink it as much. You can basically just rush plant every single time. <laughs> That's what it can come down to. Like, you can just bring a, a shield. Of course, Monty's been banned, but Osa could work. Mm. Um, just place it down wherever you want to plant. Have a glass to back you up. Ying to go through. It's definitely possible. Yeah, we'll continue our little pre-match discussion of this map as we go into a tech wars uh, imminently here. Armory and Archives will be the first site. No one really would be surprised by that. But GK are going to be starting on the defense first. Now, that's interesting because, of course, we've been kind of maybe not really liking their attack that much. So the good news for GK is they can kind of go on the defense to begin with. Board has been fine defensively at SI, of course, so far, as has been all of the maps. And so it gives them a chance to maybe just kind of get their feet set, right? Get inside of the server, get some rounds, get a bit of a lead. Because one thing that's been a bit of a, I guess, a, a trend over the first two maps, for NIP on both Consulate and Bank, they've been the team that have started well and got rounds early, and it's always been GK kind of chasing behind. Now, yep. they chased well on Consulate to the point where they got the, the win, but it, clearly on Bank, it got to them. No, for sure. Like on console, they managed to keep up and then eventually take off themselves and NRP couldn't follow. Um, not the case on the other hand. Like the first half, really back and forth. 0-1, 0-2, 1-2, 1-3, 2-3, and then 3-3. Three, three. And then afterwards, it's just NRP deciding to, uh, that's enough. And we'll take it from here and, yeah. and, and taking that win. So we kind of need to see the opposite if GK want to be taking this victory here. They need to be continuing that chase or just even get ahead of it. But Again, starting off on the defense, it is 57% defense-sided. If they would be only getting two, then the game's over. Yeah, I think I agree with that one. In terms of like a player that I'm looking to for both teams, Hashem for me, for GK, I thought he was sensational back on Consulate. Very influential. Noodle as well, someone too who probably didn't rack up like a super high amount of kills, but I thought was very impactful. When you kind of think about Bank, I felt like those two were missing a little bit, at least in that impact. So I really want to see a little bit more from them for GK. In terms of NIP, the good news is it's not really just been the Pino show, right? Like we've seen actually a, probably a decent little team effort from everyone across the board. So I really enjoyed that. Maybe Cons is the one who's kind of not quite been able to really get going, but he's also been the one that's like, you know, with kit, supportive role, not really like the frontline man. So that's not really a big issue anyway. So for me, NIP, I like the fact that they've got that kind of team focus. For GK, it's probably down to the likes of Hashem and Noodle to get the job done if they're going to have any chance of winning here on border. And again, in terms of what this map means, for NIP, essentially nothing. Like, all things considered, they're not really going up, they're not really going to go down, they'll stay in the middle pack of this group. For GK, a win means that's pretty much unlikely likely that we're going to be able to see Fear X get out of this uh, group alive. They will most likely be eliminated uh, later on this afternoon. Yep. A loss for GK though it means that sets them up in that match. Do or die against Fear X tomorrow. The stakes and thus we get underway. Now we do see, I was talking about the rushed plants to some extent uh, and how you could bring an Ossa for it. We're going to get a nice demonstration from NIP right at the get-go. 
as they're setting themselves up. Double claymore, just to make sure if the first gets shot, you turn the corner. The second one will blow you up. And now the Yosta slowly creeping up. It's going to be opening things up. But you start looking on the left. Oh, there's no C4. Five impacts, though. Yeah, I mean, the impacts alone are, are okay enough. The main thing you can do with those is firstly just even open up the floorboards. Then it's really difficult to play Huge from. But pick Pino gets a big pick into sight. Yeah, and onto the Legion as well. So this is a good start so far for NIB. Nice shot back. Seriously, very acute angle. Gets the head onto Pino. So that's decent because that could sort of a, a pretty aggressive play outside window. Nice shot as well from Psycho. Good aggression early on from NIP. In towards uh, sight, straight in towards Armory. And a bit of that archives control as well still. I mean, really, for GK, it's basically like the rotate in towards security with a bit of fountain. Seriously trying to keep the pressure in towards archives. I think what happened here is Cons was actually trying to get that plan down, but he was receiving some damage from the fire. Pino not really able to get the shot in properly and uh, thus taking that damage later on. Now, he is still out on the Archives balcony. Now, seriously, he's rotating around, of course, has the opportunity with the Solace to find some information. The off, uh, armory control is there for the side of NIP. Are we going to see a full rotate coming through? I don't think they would. Seriously, we'll take down Wizard, though. So it's back to a 3-on-3. Three three. He's still playing below. He can see when this plant is happening. They should also be aware of this, though. So Cons, he's going to be planting himself up onto the concrete, which means that there's no pressure from below coming in. Yeah, a little bit more difficult to get out of this position, though, but if no one's really watching it, and I think seriously might be in a position where he can kind of punish Cons a little bit. Get someone on that window, though, and that's exactly what they're trying to do. NIP just not rushing this. Get Musin in a good position, maybe on the upside-down rappel out Outside the window. Cons will go for the plant. No real response. Again, you mentioned it before. No, uh, no nitro cells makes it very difficult to get it up and over and try and deny that plant from going down. Eventually has been successfully planted by Cons. Again, no real response here from GK. Whether they want to or not, they just don't have the utility to deal with this kind of plant behind the Talon shield in the corner. Seriously, a noodle. I mean, seriously, he's got three kills. 30 seconds, still something in this round to be won with, but across the angle, and Cons just playing from behind the shield. They've looked everywhere, except for the man behind the shield. Yeah, and I mean, you've been looking at the start of this round, and you already knew what the plan of NIP was going to be. Just slightly went wrong a little bit, but, you know, not wrong as in crucially wrong, but wrong as in, okay, this is a setback. We need to slow things down now. And, you know, I mean, you see the Ying going in the middle of Armory basically puts the defense already in a little bit of edge because it's like we, we don't have control of the biggest part of the site. Mm. And it's like, they could plant at any given moment, but we don't have a way back into the site because it's like, we don't know where they are. And due to the fact that you lacked the actual C4, the plant could go through. Cons could just stick it and all they could do is go for a swing. Would have loved to have seen like some kind of vert play down below with a nitro cell. That's typically what you'd uh, see from defensive teams, yeah. but it doesn't come through. And, and clearly NIP have just read into that. They bring the ulcer. You can also bring the, the Montang, but it has been banned out in this instance by GK. So maybe they kind of like just forgot that you can bring the ulcer in this situation to do basically the same strategy. Because they've banned out that Montang. Montangs typically walk in. Someone then walks in behind the Montang, gets the plant yeah. down, and then that's basically it. And then you, you have good luck. You know, but to counter that, you still then have the pressure from down below. They didn't have that. And they won't have that again. No nitro cells, just four impacts. The impacts are fine in terms of that initial doorway entry. But once it's like on the concrete in the corner, good luck. I mean, it's fine if you want to take down the talent shield. But if someone is on a ventilation balcony, mm -hmm. There's just going to be cover there. You need to deal with that first before you can even try and think about stopping that plant from happening. Now, we do have the exact same site we're headed to. However, Attack if you look at the side of GK, again, basically Attack no changes. They, they picked up one set less impact. No C4s either, so... Change, though, for NIP. Not yeah, going no to go also. for, obviously, yeah. the same play. No also, and I think that's fine. You already won at least one of the rounds with that tactic. You're not going to probably overplay that. Bit more of a clear room here, I think, with the Grim, the Finca, the Bark, trying to maybe get a bit of that security control. This feels like they want to take control of Armory mostly and start doing that vertically first. Like Half Fall, for example, is a very important part of the map, so start clearing that out vertically. But as they open up the hatch, Pina is going to be much aware of K, who is uh, located in that area, deals just a fraction of damage to Pino. Nothing too much. He's not going to be worried about that, really. But, you know, he, he's just going to continue his plan. Start opening up in the half-hall, start clearing that out. In the meantime, CCTV is being taken control. They have a flank drone set up with the uh, with the Argus camp. And they find themselves on the side. All they need to do is take down Trillix here, who now does go down. Team kill as well to happen from the side of Cons onto Muzi. That is more unfortunate. 
but they do have the opportunity to go for the plant now and it will just stick it. There's yeah. nothing they can do about it. Yeah, Wizard just straight in through the doorway. He's going to be able to get the plant down left side Attack of it. Okay, gets to come to Pino. Wizard immediately just runs straight back out. Yeah, impact from below. A little bit too late. Wizard was able to get out of it. Certainly winnable here. And a kill onto seriously changes things dramatically now for NIP. Can't as well. Oh, he was the support player in the first two maps, but it's a double kill to clutch up. Talk about just walk in, plant. No retake available from GK. Worrying signs here for them defensively on border. NIP continue to be the better of the two teams in this series. And it was even with like a team kill to come through, right? Because their decision was to, okay, armory is pretty clear. It's just one guy standing on the close corner. What do you do? We just swing him. And if the first one doesn't get it, the second one will. If you then team kill the second one, then the third one will eventually get that kill. I mean, it's, actually, he was down, and then Khan's just yeah, no, you're blatantly right. yeah, he was executed down. his teammate coming in from so the. That's uh, not as bad. <laughs> that's not as bad then. And in the end, Cons was the, the player who was able to then go on, get two more clutch yeah, kills so at the end. Yeah, he salvaged it. Yeah. He salvaged it, but he, he could have cost a round For the greater there. good, I must put you down, <laughs> my dear friend. It's a sacrifice I'm willing to make. Five kills for Cons, which I think is probably more than everything he had back on console. Because if I recall, his console was like 3 and 11 or something like that. To be fair, he was playing like um, support Bark with the, uh, with the kit most rounds. So he wasn't really someone who was on that front line getting a lot of those kills early on. NIP, the really clean start. And on, a, on obviously a site that typically on border is going to be one of the more profound defensive sites when it's armory and archives. So really disappointing right now from GK in the way that they've kind of approached these first couple of rounds. So much so that they've gone down below, given up on the primary. Yeah. You know what this reminds me of? Defense bank, first two rounds, locker CCTV, lost them both. So many similarities here between the, first, no, uh, the second map and the third. It's basically just a, a complete rerun, but then on a different map that we're seeing. But what I'm worried about now is the fact that, you know, they're going to ventilation. And that B bomb site is quite difficult to hold. It's just a window jumping. If you're not paying attention, you might lose out on an early plant again. But this time, Cons does go down quite early. I believe that might have been a spawn feed to come through. The diffuser kit has been dropped as well onto the balcony. Uh, so that's a huge pick coming in for the side of GK that they now just need to convert into a round win. Yeah. <laughs> you obviously see in the chat there, Noodle just saying WTF. <laughs> I never saw that from Cons. Obviously... Random one tap. I, I, oh, that's I, why Noodle said yeah. that. He's like, so I, even I he fired a single <laughs> shot. I I really hope we have the, the single POV of that. We I don't know if we will or not, but still that I don't was think we do. clearly the kind of kill though. That's like one in a million. You don't really look at that and be like, oh wow, amazing from as he even said it himself. Random one tap, and he just happens to get the head of cons. I, this is the thing, right? Like these players, they do that like a thousand times yes. in the head of yes. once. And yep. that one time, it is worth it because it's like in a very important round right now. Yeah. And for us, average Joes, it's like one in one in 10,000. One in a million. In a million. <laughs> <laughs> well, 90 seconds in and uh, it has probably shaken up the attack of NIP. Just even the time wasted in trying to retrieve this uh, kit as well. Not really a whole lot of map control. This is much better from GK off the back of basically a random one tap. But they're also just defending up above perfectly. NIP have not been able to get a whole lot. Only just now Pino over towards top the east stairs. And trying to see if he can find some information. Has a red ping to the right-hand side here. I think that's seriously on the lesion. Yeah, that is definitely him. And, you know, he was thinking about going quite aggressive earlier on. But the goo mine did actually hit on the top of the east stairs. But wasn't able to find him because Pina just moved out in time. Now, oh, as we go through, Pino will find seriously. That is going to be bringing things back towards equal numbers. Of course, we still need to go downstairs. There's 50 seconds left on the clock. There needs to be a lot more done by the side of NIP if they want to get a plan down. As Noodle finds Muzi, that is going to be complicating things a bit. Yeah, it certainly will be. Still a bit of time, 40 seconds. Uh, NIP is still only that one player disadvantage. Blood thrown out from Pino. Plots the observation block over towards top metal side. He hasn't really seen a whole lot here close towards uh, this top floor. Of course, still need to go down below. Wizard towards top metal. There is still Hashem. I don't think he got spotted out. Maybe a bit of a mistrone. Over towards Sui. And Pino doesn't look like he spotted him. I think, yeah, indeed it was. A complete mistrone from Pino. He did not check that. 15 seconds. Round should be done from here. You would imagine with a two-player advantage. Not a lot of time either. And not even remotely close to site. Psycho towards bathrooms. That's about it. Drop down from Wizard. It's okay. They have survived it momentarily. And he does get the kill. But no time. Needs to stick the plant. He needed to get that kill. Then the plant doesn't come through. And GK still had a player up above. Big round from them. Started all off with a bit of a random one tap, which I've been given word we might have footage we of. We might have footage of it. Later great. on, not now. Now, again, GK managed to, uh, on the back of that, convert it. So that is a good thing for them. They really needed that. 
and IP. They took too long. They were they were attacking top floor for the majority of the round, not really making any progress. The Mist Drone comes in and just things go wrong at that point. And it's just something that is uh, unfortunate for them. But again, they managed to start off with some great two rounds up onto that top floor. Now, it is GK that will have to decide. Do we go back from Tellers? Which they do. Or would they go back up to the top floor? Again... I said it before, 3-3 three, three is a good round for NIP here. If they manage mm. to get four rounds, then basically this game is over. So the pressure is really on GK with NIP already two on the board. Yep. At least for GK, it kind of stems the bleeding a little bit after the way that things went on bank for them, losing the first two rounds here on border, especially on Armory and Archives. It just kind of felt a little bit begrudgingly that it was going away from them, but that was a round that they sorely needed. They win it out. We get a bathroom in Towers. How does this get played out? Heavy emphasis on the drone game from NIP, bringing the Rateros, which is really solid, being able to clear things out on site. Clutch drones now from Pino as well. They don't bring the Twitch, probably not as necessary when you kind of look at the lineup that GK is bringing. So I don't mind this. They do have a couple of Nitro Cells too this time at least. Obviously playing the Pulse now with K and Trill with the Nitro Cell too on the mute. At least a little bit more impact on the in terms of the utility for GK. Top waiting being held as well. So extensive up above Hashem on the Azami. Up there as well with Trill. I like the map control that GK have got right now. First Pulse was there last round as well. We started seeing a little bit more of it over the last couple of, uh, of rounds. And it's just a, such a problematic operator because of the fact that you just, you know, you have that information as soon as you do use that cardiac sensor uh, scanner. And it, it just... In related to the entirety of your team, so they should be Ooh. aware of the fact that where all these players are on the attack. Nice little hole here from Seriously. Catches out Musi on the balcony exterior. He had no idea that that little death hole was in play. Patience is a virtue, and he does get that kill. Start again for GK's good, and a five versus four, two rounds in a row. Cloud Drone goes out. Bit of information, saw a couple of red pings, and the information so far has been good for GK. K, though, losing out towards the tension. That pulse, you mentioned it, has been in play, but it has been shut down. I'm not quite sure what he's thinking there. Like, the wall has been opened up. Like, surely there's going to be someone playing there, right? Like, you activate the cardiac scanner and you just die instantly afterwards. And NIP will take it happily as, as they're also going on with hacking some of the default cams right now. It will be more useful later on when they actually want to go for a bit of an approach onto the site. Uh, because it is, you know, of course, in that corner area where you can just look into the bathroom. You can see whoever is coming in from the metal stairs. So you basically have your flank watch cam set up now. But in 10 seconds, 4 versus 4. Still one Nitro Cell available through Trill. Impact as well for Hashem. Not the worst map control either. Still for GK. And a lot still needs to be done for NIP. Off the back of the EE1D now from Wizard. One more available. Cons is able to move through. Has the kit in hand. Noodle roaming around on that Oryx. He's someone to keep an eye on as well. Cons a little bit unsaw, uh, uncertain where he wants to go. Now towards bathroom. But a nice swing and peak from Trill is successful. On to Cons. Two player advantage. Brought it back though with the trade for Pino. A little bit delayed. But it comes through regardless. Noodle in towards service. Still hasn't been dealt with. Drop down from Psycho outside. So focus now on site for NIP. Good shot from Pino coming through and now really the player inside of the workshop needs to make some work happen but also Noodle still being above of course. The smoke comes in that's going to be covering the plant. Seriously aware of the fact that someone might be outside the window but they need to make something happen because the plant has just gone down. 45 seconds and Psycho has the perfect cut to basically shut down any of the rotations to come through unless he gets free fired oh, which he does. Noodle. Noodle with a great pick to come through. Pino now in a 1v2 standing. He's trying to dig himself in deep in a position they might not really expect but he could be flanked. He could be double swung and that's exactly what they need to do are they coming in from behind that is that big question of course he jumps over oh finds God. the first will oh! find the second pino a huge clutch to come through oh in the two versus one back against the wall quite literally a soft wall for pino dk trying to blow it up and try and force him out he does come out and he hits the double gk will be kicking themselves and they look a little bit dis Dispressed. I mean, they, they obviously feel like that's a round they probably should have won. How many times have we said that about GK throughout the series? Obviously, well played from Pino, but it's all set up early on. Good plays from GK, good map control, won the battle in the hallway. That's kicked down when Cons is eliminated as well. Three on two at this point, let alone the fact, yes, they do get the plant. That swing's beautiful from Noodle. Then it's just about a pinch. You just have to go together. Instead, it's two one versus ones that is yeah. created by Pino. Big win, 3-1 to NIP, three attacking rounds here on border.
And so far, they've put themselves in a much-deserved lead, because all things considered, for this series... Uh, I'm sorry to say, but NIP should be winning this series. I will be absolutely <laughs> surprised if GK win this, because throughout the three maps we've played now, NIP have looked better. I agree, I agree. It should be NIP series, by the way, that things have been going. And just to quickly relay back on that last round, why didn't someone push an open area and then the other one through the door at the same time? There's no way you're going to get that 180 flick at that point in time before you can uh, you can at least strike back. So, again, you know, slight mistakes, but this time punished by NIP. They find themselves at a bathroom round, and we're back towards the armory now. This was won twice by NIP, and it wasn't like a, a tactical master play where they completely picked apart the entire defense. No, it's just they oh managed to find a first kill as Muzi just staying alive against seriously the other way around goes as well we'll find a second onto wizard though who decided to go for the repeak gets punished for it so yeah. opening kill again for gk four one in a row now don't hate it because music obviously got seriously quite low wizard then thought he could play a bit of an off angle to maybe going for a repeat but seriously was just you know gun up ready to go hits the nice headshot so they lose to zofia obviously the adrenal surge kind of doing its thing music will get his health back but they don't win out again seriously that's the soul is still alive as well not ideal in terms of drone denial that can come through and again though Fascinating. Third round in a row now, by the way. GK have got the opening kill. They just have not been able to get these opening kill conversions in terms of oh, round yeah. wins. That's it. Like, they've been getting loads of opening kills uh, here and there. Just not able to find that little bit extra that's necessary to uh, to drag it across the finish line. Seriously, just use his last impact as well. Of course, he's playing on that Solus. And the reason I'm pointing this out is the fact that NIP has been repeatedly been able to just walk inside and go for a plant. There's nothing that was being done about it. Having that impact could have actually been quite useful to open up right below it and see what else could be done as Kunz will be able to find K. That's going to be the Legion gone. No one knew Goo Mines to be deployed. And with that, it's back to a four and four. Yeah, I love that though. Pushing in with the uh, Boogie Auto Breacher, mainly because of the sound cue, makes it hard to know whether or not he's gone in. That's kicked down. Nuzgill again from Seriously, standing up at an individual level, but eventually shut down. Trade comes through from Musi. Low on health is Cons and Musi, but no more Adrenal Surges available. Those have been expended. Gone. 60 seconds remaining in the round. And a three versus three, where it's a still slight advantage for GK. Not a whole lot of map control for NIP. But they've been so good at hitting these shots. Pino is still inside of the server. Cons has been playing really well. Flash into the hallway, straight into the arms of Cons. Hello and welcome, says Cons to Hashom. And a three, one, just like that. Suddenly, big turnaround. It's only Trill in the one versus three. No smokes here either. The other day I saw a team throw a smoke into a warden and it turned into a 3k. Won't happen here. 40 seconds for NIP to gain a 4-1 lead. The diffuser is down on ventilation balcony. That was in the hands of Psycho and he died out there. So it was a really good opportunity to actually just win this by stalling as much round as pos uh, possible. But that okay. is definitely not helping. Uh, jumping into the uh, air jab. <laughs> the drone spotting out as well is definitely giving him some more anxiety by trying to fight it through. And Cons eventually will be able to pick it up. He didn't know that that diffuser was outside if he would have known you would have fallen back as deep as you could into armory after you take out that drone because that leaves them guessing that forces them to take the fight that puts the time into your advantage but nip able to bring it to 4-1 and again that, that is like that was the fourth entry kill i believe in a row that that Geek game made? And that was definitely three. Yeah, Don't know about four. I, I have four written down. But you've down. got four. And so if you've got four, then I'll, I'll go with that. And they've only managed to trans like, translate one, one of them into a round. Yep. Yeah. Uh, I mean, that's obviously been a bit of a story here on Border, which has not really been the case in terms of the series. I think back to Consulate, and it was actually NIP that was getting a lot of those opening kills, right? And then obviously on Bank, they too were also translating a lot of opening kills into round conversions. But here on Border, it's kind of gone against the grain of the series. GK getting opening kills. They look good early on, but they're just not able to close rounds out defensively. We are seeing four attacking rounds to NIP on Border. Mind you... Historically, you think of border and you go, well, yeah, attack is fine on border. Not at this tournament. Now, it's been 57% defense sided so far. And as I mentioned, if NIP managed to get four rounds, I think this series is over. I think they're just going to be able to lock it off from here. Especially they've already got four rounds. They, I know that they already got four rounds. So I have the opportunity for five, especially if we keep in mind how GK attacked during the previous matchup. Need to do better than that. Mm. Yeah, a little bit disappointing here from GK. Of course, Consulate was closed, but they brought it back. Bank, yeah, quite one-sided to NIP. So far again here on Border, shaping up to be more like the second map rather than the first map in which GK were able to just clutch up against NIP. They were down too much points, brought it back to overtime, won it out.
bank though. Yeah, 3-3 three, three first half. We thought we had another close game. Then NIP won four in a row. Water though has just been a total onslaught from NIP offensively. Pino oh. straight in. Look at the pressure that they are able to create early on in these rounds. Well, there's no opening kill this round for GK. Now it goes to NIP and they double down as well. Elsewhere on the map through Museon to Noodle. Noodle hasn't been able to get too involved. Three and five. And for NIP now in towards Passport, they've got good map control. They know how to get the job done from here. It's such a good opening, and they make it even worse for the side of uh, GK as Muzi finds seriously. I mean, they saw the pulls, they saw he was isolated. You just go in from Passport. That's the, the beauty of the book. Like, it's just four shots. You're into the door, you're into the wall. What was that shot? <laughs> I don't know what he's trying to do there, but... And, and you find yourself in an opening engagement, and suddenly that pulse is out there without any support whatsoever. Now, as it is only two left, you know, just still continuing to make ground. He's just clearing out the entire ground floor. However, because they went so quick, they don't know about the presence that's still up on the top floor. It's not like there's going to be much presence because there's only two players left. Their question is, where are they located? Mm. Uh, are, they, are they in a position where they can challenge the plant or are they on the opposite side of the map? And I think that's what Pino is going to try and find out. Now they know with that drone, by the way. Yeah, I like this as well from NIP. Slow down. Get the drones going and find the, the final bits oh. of information. Musi, that is disgusting. Softball headshot onto Ashom and really just kind of driving the nail into the coffin of GK. Not so much for this tournament, but definitely for this series. Trill through customs. Yeah, he'll get one. Knocked down onto Wizard, but he will eventually get traded. And it does count as a flawless round because he hadn't been eliminated. It's 5-1. It is the NIP show right now on board up. We've seen some very gloomy faces as well on the side of GK. All smiles for NIP. And that looks like, honestly, have faces of, of defeat. They, they don't look like they're, they're going to be able to get back into this one. Something crazy would have to happen for GK to bring it back. They go into the attack now. They call a tactical timeout to talk things over. I mean, just looking at this, right? Like, you haven't played an attack yet. So what is it really you can talk about? Just the mental. The call-outs. Yeah. Fundamentals like, hey, you gotta talk to one another, you gotta call each other. Like if you if you need help, you cannot just take these fights alone. Like strategically, there's nothing to talk about yet at this point. It, it's an interesting thing that always fascinates me in Siege. You think of like, oh, it's five one down, that's too much. How many times have we been like that? And then how many times have we also Often seen these, come back, com yeah. these comebacks? Uh, they're very much possible. Very much possible. Uh, um, the only thing for me, though, is when you kind of look at the statistics of the tournament, right now, Defender sided on every single map. So far, the maps we've had in this series are actually all ones that, sure, have actually looked okay for attackers. They're not quite 50%, but close enough to it. But so far here on Border, it's the nature in which the rounds are being won and how they're being won. NIP have dominated these rounds. They're getting opening kills, when, and when they do, they get conversions. If they're not getting opening kills, as they're you mentioned before, they're still getting conversions. Yeah. And that's really the worrying sign for GK, is they haven't been able to close out when they get something. So I'm not sure what they're going to be able to do here on the attack. It's going to have to be something very special off the back of the tactical timeout. It's not going to be a quick plan. We can uh, basically already count that out if you look at the uh, lineup that you're seeing. There's, there's almost no support for it. This looks like a, a usual try and take control, uh, try and open up and, and just take it room by room kind of uh, lineup that we've been used to be seeing like over the last half a year, a year or so. Um, not much of that quick pace. So that might be back to fundamentals for the side of GK. Whereas NIP, you know, they're going to try and then make life hell for, this, uh, for their side. No early openings. It's a bit of a concern there, as you saw with Hashem, just quickly checking all those windows and like, did any get punched open? There is a little bit of information out there as they do see uh, some pings to come through. Yeah, I'm very curious for GK, more than anything. NFP's kind of done their job now. They're on the defense, so it's all about just sitting back, allowing GK to come into them. But for GK, yeah, you're down 5-1, you're attacking, you got to make things happen. Each round's going to be very difficult. Oh, it's one cam. thing to do that comeback, but look at this from Hashem, straight up top east. No one's watching at all. Pons. Completely caught napping for Pino with a good response on the Nitro Cell. At least NIP woke up very quickly after they got startled with an entry and intruder into that location of top east. Good response, rapid response. Psycho then gets with a trill. And even that little momentary glimpse of success from GK gets absolutely squashed like a bug. I don't know what to say. Like, I... 
Okay, so first of all, I was going to be mad at NIPs. And no one's watching the cam. Like, someone could be sneaking up. You heard a gone six. You know someone's in a building. And they get that first kill, and then it's like, it's like a little push, and then they just slap you over the face and be like, no, back in your place. <laughs> oh, like, no. That is just such... I will say this I mean, one th thing. That said enough. Just that, that eye roll that you have right yeah. there. That's like, we don't know what to do. I want to say, because there might be some people who've only just tuned in, and obviously it's a beatdown here on border, but this is a deserved beatdown because NIP probably should have won this series 2-0. Yeah. In fairness, obviously, for GK back on Consulate, their map pick, they played well, but they were still down two match points, and NIP probably dropped a few rounds here or there, that it could have easily been three or four match points to even get to that point. Credit to GK, brought it back, really had a good turnaround. No one's going to take that away from them. But admittedly, then we go to bank, NIP, far superior. We come to border, extra extraordinarily far superior. So clearly being the team that has deserved to win this series, they certainly can take some confidence from this. And for GK now, they're going to have to obviously go to yeah, tomorrow in a do or die elimination match against Fear X. Yeah. Now, of course, it isn't over yet until it's over, but we no. are starting to lose hope for GK. That last round bit. of the eye roll says it all. That, that says it all because it's like you have such a good opening and then it just falls apart like momentarily after. It's not even like, you know, you're, you're waiting like up until 20 seconds left and then it's falling apart. No, it's, it's five seconds after that opening and everything's yep. falling apart. The round's over. And then you have the eye roll like that and it's like... Just clueless. It's like, what can we do to stop these guys? And Hashem will open up. We'll get a great oh, opening right. kill again once some cons. He manages to survive as he exits the building. Mm. Because what you see NRP do here, there's two people currently that were trying to challenge him. So he managed to escape with his life. Now they need to try and translate this into a round. Ironically, seeing that someone from NIP was watching that default top piece this round, not making the same mistake, but Hashem does get the opening kill. But we said that time and time again for GK here on border. They get these opening kills. They're just unable to capitalize. That's been the downfall for them. Certainly one of the weaknesses. The strengths, though, have been they've been able to get these kills. Freebie low for Pino. Seriously, just unaware. Caught napping. Little push out of bathroom. Obviously, it is bathroom Talents here for this uh, potential final round. And a four versus four. Hashem's low uh, from those earlier response when he did th get that opening kill. And K just waltz into workshop with the kid. Almost dead. Not using their drones. I mean, sure, like five of them have been taken down. There is four out there. But no one is like droning into these rooms or just face checking it, assuming that it's clear and l taking damage from like lines of sight that have been set up before. And those are like fundamental issues that you need to make sure are not plaguing you because right now you have two players that are a bullet away from death when you're already basically at an equal point. People flashing themselves as well as they try and go for a bit of an execute going on the draw. Muzi trying to take a fight will be shut down. That's at least something to hold on for here. But they still need to go and cover so much ground. Yeah, they certainly do. Still need to get top floor control as well. 60 seconds left. The other part of the equation is troll, K, Hashem, all low on health. Or it's a full health NIP despite being a player down. I actually consider this about pretty even in terms of where the round is concerned, especially with the fact that NIP still have really good map control for the site itself with Psycho up above on that thorn. Still needs to be cleared. He can't be cleared. They probably can't win the round, GK. So they've still got to do that. K now droning through. Getting some information. Pino will get droned out over towards waiting. And then Wizard is there as well to double stack up. Site a little bit vulnerable and has now just been droned out. Noodle was actually in a good position to jump into the window. There was no cover whatsoever from the side of NIP, but he just decided to rotate all the way to the there's opposite side left. of the map. They're going to get moving. There's, there's 20 seconds left, and Noodle just rotated all the way to the opposite side of the map whilst he was right at the side. He's going to be leading the charge, though, from the workshop area, but keep in mind there is still people out there. Psycho still has that top floor under control as Pino shuts down the first before he gets punished himself. Five seconds, the diffuser drops. This is over. It is going to be NIP that will take it because the plant is not going to be stuck and that is an absolute beatdown of gk on this third map yeah disappointing for gk but very promising for nip a very dominant series yes it goes to three maps hat but ultimately should have probably been a 2-0 learned their way throughout the series as it progressed and you know what 
for a team that has clearly not been at their best this tournament, maybe playing an extra map here or there is not that bad. Getting some extra rounds and games under your belt, because this was their final series as well for the group stage. For them now, it's all about playoffs yeah. moving forward, so maybe getting that extra game wasn't a bad thing, especially when it was a beatdown, gives them some more footage, some more VOD review potential, etc. 7-1 victory, 2-1 ultimately for NIP over GK. Look, there's some positives here for GK as well. Their consulate was good, they showed good mental. Clearly, as the series went on though, they were the inferior of the two teams. I think no, that became quite evident. No, for sure. And I'd be, again, like, there is three hammer lifters on that team. They yeah, have... They are formidable. So much experience. And, of course, they didn't have the best of games, lastly, or best of tournaments over the last, you know, couple of years. But they are still a formidable opponent to go up against, and they really warm up as the tournament continues to go on. And it's just painful for GK that it ended this way. Yeah, at least it, this game. <laughs> it is certainly painful in the way which border closed out, because I think... Do we have the one tap coming in this round? Well, I'm not too sure. I got told we'll, we, we've got it at some point. I don't know if it's in this highlight package, <laughs> but hopefully we will get it later on. Either way, for now, though, it's all about the fact that NIP just very cleanly dealt with GK. There were some rounds, again, you kind of think about the fact that we mentioned, what was it, four rounds in a row that GK got those opening kills for basically one yeah. conversion. So from four to one, those are the kind of little things that at, at six invitational, you just can't get away with. Like, you've got to be able to convert on those rounds. When you get the advantages, you've got to capitalize. And that's what we basically saw from NIP. You can kind of see, an, even on that instance, right? The Lurk push in, get the opening kill, and then everyone else starts winning their ones. Bang, it's a flawless round. So, really disappointing from GK in the way Border went. But I think if you kind of look at the series overall, you could clearly tell that while NIP certainly were the better of the two teams, it's not like it was this massive gulf in difference. Probably not 7-1 territory. That border was probably more of the extreme end in terms of yeah. the gap between the two teams. For sure, but I think Bank on the 7-3, that was also a very just score. Might have even could have been a 7-2, but it's like the attacks. Where were they mm. from GK? It's like on border, they just weren't thinking further than their first steps, like the first goals they wanted to reach. And... Well, I mean, they were obviously thinking further, but they couldn't get further than their first steps yeah. that they were able to reach. And that, I think that's partially due to the lineups that they brought, because they just weren't suited for what they were facing at that point. And, you know, you have a little bit of that on border now as well, but they started off on the defense, absolutely annihilated by the side of, of NIP. Who Look just at those first kills. Didn't care. Like, imagine winning 7-1. <laughs> And your one yeah. round that you won, and you had a 2-0, a 2-0, a 1-0, and a 1-0 for first kills. No trades back, only K went 0-2 in terms of only negative Pino entry. positive entry kills. That is insane. And yet they won 7-1. I think it really kind of encapsulates and highlights NIP as a structural team in terms of the organization throughout the rounds that it doesn't just come down, at least for them, as just like, oh, we didn't need to just enter and win gunfights. Like, they're actually able to win because of the way that they positioned around the map, used their utility, had yeah. good strategy. We saw that at least, especially in the first opening two rounds of border that they won the same site in two totally different ways yeah for sure pino being the uh, match mvp and i think a lot of that can be handed over towards his consulate performance which was of course the 13 kills he managed to get there sadly he dropped off a little bit after round eight i think if he could have kept on that same fire we would have never seen border yeah unfortunate for gk certainly some good moments i thought seriously ended up actually having yeah really good performance hashem yeah started really hot probably dropped off a little bit uh for nip it really was that kind of team effort across the board wizard probably a little bit quieter than i thought pino dominated especially in a map of uh, concert which they actually ended up losing i thought he was still an absolute incredible standout um i have been given word we do have that one tap coming up i'm very curious to see what this is going to look like and the reason for it is because it even surprised who, who was it in the end was it noodle it was that got noodle it that po yeah that, that fired it so even noodle was surprised he typed immediately in chat wtf he rotates back reloads the bailiff surely swaps over to the mp9 mp7 oh <laughs> I mean, again, this, this is just uh you do this like just every now and then because you never know and he hits it, and he probably didn't oh. even realize it until Steve was like, how did you get that? Where, yeah. where, where did you take that fight? Hey, you got to shoot your shot. You never know. It could be that one in a million. Let's go to the standings now for this particular group for A. It's G2, of course, on top. Still, they play tomorrow. Dark Zero not only played today and also then tomorrow against G2. So that top spot still up for grabs. Uh, for NIP now, they go to seven points, and they are firmly going to be locked in for third place, you would imagine. For GK, though, we mentioned it before. Now they play Ferex tomorrow. Mind you, Ferex still also played today. Yeah. In terms of like 
the possibilities. I'm not going to go too deep into it, but like if Ferrex were to win 2-0, then GK are out. Like that, that is one of the, the pretty easy ones there. So I'm looking forward to that matchup tomorrow. It's essentially an elimination game already. It is going to be uh, an uh, elimination game. That's going to be for sure. No matter what the Ferrex uh, response is going to be today, even if they win 2-0 today, uh, -oh today, if they lose 2-0 -oh tomorrow against GK, then it's also over. Yeah, so it, I, it is I, really coming down to just that game. Yeah, I haven't really looked into the tiebreakers all that much because obviously we want to focus on the first couple of days. But if uh, Ferrex were obviously to win 2-1, then they're both like tied on three points. So then it obviously comes to the tiebreaker. So we won't obviously spend too much time on that. Those who cover it tomorrow can certainly talk more about it. But it is certainly one to watch. I, I would say to to tune in for that game. It's always fun yeah. in the group stage, final day, who gets eliminated, who's going home. Um, and it's unfortunate that that's the situation now that GK find themselves in because I think they're a really, really good roster. I think they had some good moments today. There is every world in which on a different day they could have probably even won bank if they just played a bit better. And then suddenly it's a whole different storyline. No, of course, it would have been a different storyline and they would have already been find themselves secure. But... I think that is it for now for mm. this game. So we will be tossing to the Intel play. And then uh, after that, the next game will be on. See you a little bit more health in the pocket of wet but at this point with both these guns and players it is the connection that matters and wet holds on against one of the best players in the world to get a second round and how many times have we seen around almost a carbon copy of that right where it's a 1v1 bliss trying to clutch up and it doesn't go their way finally something does. Now, arguably, it shouldn't really come down to that. The smoke complicated things on the 2v1, made it a little bit messy, but again, the groundwork, especially early on from Bliss, not all that bad. The clear was nice. Obviously, Cyber pose a threat, and Brendo got caught, but Wettables yeah, had the a clutch thing. some information, oh, able to hit that prison. Yes, Wettables! Wettables! What tables? Is Wettables a reference to, like, is it a thing? I couldn't tell you the origin of his name, unfortunately. <laughs> I have no like, idea. If I was to put something to a Wettables, I would think like a face wipe, you know, like a... Well, apparently Wettable is a genuine English word, the ability to get wet. Um, <laughs> I mean, I mean, yeah. Where the S comes in, I don't know. <laughs> All right. Ten seconds to go. <laughs> All right. I mean, starting to try and work out where players' names Five seconds left. come from. Sometimes it's easy. Mm. Guz. Attackers must Surname Gary. Very Australian. It's very Australian. Yeah. The fact, I mean, yeah, easy. Hap, that's his name. He um, used he's Dutch, so he's kind of boring. Yeah. Well, he, he used to have like his full name was his cool name. It was like all in one word, and it and we did one like one cast with it, and they went change change your name. <laughs> change this. Uh, and then others, Wettables, Fisho guy. Loves fish. And it's a guy. There you go. They, yeah. <laughs> two minutes, 20. Remaining in two. Burrow is slowing things down a little. It's been very problematic in good and bad ways. The trick is going to get not the exothermic. You know that it's one apiece. It's a stand weight. At that point, what you're gambling on is getting the exothermic. It, it's more, it's sort of value for money in terms of removed utility at that point. The Ball will still fall and it will become a little bit less playable, but you can impact trick against the single Selma breach. You might even be able to get a peek back into it that you wouldn't otherwise get. Here, the roll on the Thatcher on the opposite end, and this is sort of what the Maverick ban has led into. You look at these lineups of how much utility has to be dedicated to hard breaches and the Thatcher. The they usually bring the Twitch anyway. It's really turned into almost old school siege fighting over reinforced walls. Well, once again, we're going to see the tube around in play for IT wall. It's Kai Yid and the tube to combine. And we'll see if FaZe are still able to open up the wall. Unfortunately, no EMPs remain. So that may make things a little bit trickier, but the timing was good from the attack. The exothermic does pop, exposing Oda, who's pretty much now playing for his life in IT. Oh, Cyber, continual danger man is sat 
ready and waiting to pounce as soon as the swing comes out. Handy goes down first though. Oda, he might not know that Cyber is so close, but there's the big reveal. The Danger Smoke gets rid of him and Souls gets rid of Oda. The swing onto the player trapped in IT from the back end. They double dip and almost catch him mid reload. He swaps to the pistols. It's faster than reloading. Wet gets onto Vita King and goes for the freeze against the back end of it. Buying themselves a second and with 40, it's all precious. There's the swing right onto the back of Bandit who did not know Cyber had been able to get in towards that IT control. Brando, though, makes sure that they keep this body into their favor. The open door becomes shut into the face of Souls as Sage is able to get another connection. 20 seconds, none of it seen as the first defensive bliss round goes into their favor. I mean, this side is posing pretty big issues for both teams on the attack. We saw the hard breach actually quite efficient from FaZe. That was not really where it went wrong from them. Oda playing an off-meta position inside of IT. The off-angle, good for one, was always going to die and eventually did. But in the four versus four, Bliss did a good job in just maintaining those crossfires again, despite there being no army on the board. They had the confidence to oh. find those kills. But it was deep give away his life a little bit but it didn't matter in the end, the other three hold on. So good work from Bliss. Trying that defensively on that side, they are quite sound. It's almost a little bit of map one, Bliss, a little bit of map two, Bliss there on their defense. We got some of the sitting in place, some of the little uh-oh moments of FaZe is able to set themselves up, get into position on top of rafters as well. Very clean, a little bit unaware, the swing onto the door on the bandit, but then those little dabbles with danger. Oda holding onto IT, waiting for that Selma to breach to get the kill through it. The leaning back in, the things that took FaZe by surprise on bank that Ten led to Bliss remaining. keeping the fight going. Here, we go down to the basement, and as I said, it's going to be a battle on those hard walls. They might not bring the Thatcher. I mean, it, it's nice to have, but they're very good with an IQ and there's a lot of soft above these walls. You need to get the vertical control anyway. You wouldn't be able to get the single very easily. However, the double wall, which can put a lot of pressure on the combination of that RAM and that IQ should make pretty quick work of it. Yeah, we've seen a decent amount of IQ play from FaZe in the series. That's perhaps been a point of critique for Bliss in the face of the Valk that they haven't in most cases. So we'll see if FaZe is able to get value from that here in round number eight. Castle in play, a grenade to deal with that particular window, which is to weaken this roam up above from Bliss. Both teams employing roams on this objective, and we'll get some answers as to which team is perhaps a little bit more proficient at it. Sage, now top blue. Of course, he can now swing down the staircase alongside Oda, but Cyber seemingly aware. FaZe perhaps having a read on this position from Bliss. An ill-advised peek there probably would have been to the demise of Sage, so he'll fall back to connect with the rest of the team. They haven't been caught, and this was one of the problems on Club. Remember how sort of handily FaZe removed those Rome players, whether it was two, it was the triangle of three. They're supposed to be the strongest shape, unless you're phased, and they're very easily smashed to pieces. The building blocks of success Locate might be survival bomb. here as they get themselves, again, to this room I talked to you about, above the breach. They're going to look for potentially any stop on any sort of band tricking, anything that locks the wall, but they're not entirely sure they're safe yet, so the drones are still roaming out. Precious time wasted. We saw the difference was about 15 seconds last time for Bliss, and Cyber wants to try and get this show a rolling. Oh, silence across the map. Doesn't really feel like a whole lot has really happened so far, at least in terms of engagement. As I say that, though, this shows very low. Cyber with the read, bottom of staircase, and now this defender on an island, a flash to flush it out, and a clean pick. I mean, there, v5. there it is, phase three bodies, three different places all around the rooms, and that's that sudden strike I said they were so excellent at doing. A player does go down to the cap can in the middle of the room, and Cyber's able to pick up the revenge. They don't quite get anything more than the confirmation on the already downed player phase. This is where they excel. Their ability to sort of weigh up what's in front of them, weigh up what seems like a hold with not a lot of time, and sort of go, ah, we got the plan here, and we got the approach, three to five. They're not quite in the proper danger zone yet, but Bliss, they're thinking about doubling down on the same side. Yeah, I think upon reflection, they'll probably fall off the roam a little bit faster instead of you know, doubling down on it, especially going in blind. It's quite challenging for them. 
Good read though from FaZe again, stacking that single breach late. Oh, oh. Man, advantage, not missing any shots anywhere. So they was not really given, you know, any freebies in that round. So a challenge for them, but a round of consolidation for FaZe. Now, it's still a bit of a back and forth. They've got, obviously, the Kai Claws. The Tuberau is in pocket this time round to try and maybe slow down some of the approach, the breach onto the walls, or on the stair sets, get yourself a little bit of a deep freeze. It was three engagements that happened almost simultaneously that came through from the side of phase there. That is that ex excelling in split theory that is often cited in podcast form, in newsletter form. In Twitter, do you believe it, it's real? Uh, uh, I mean, I'm sitting next to Fresh in the green room, so uh -huh, uh -huh. I'm going to keep my opinion to myself. Uh huh. Uh huh. Uh, I had Fresh invented split theory. Which, am I saying this out loud to irritate Fabian? Maybe. Maybe. Five to three. Face and well, they're starting to find this map one pace again. Bliss. They seem a little bit more tired, a little bit more concerned. Obviously, as I said, the pressure is always mounting, always going their phase. If they win this map, this series, even though it's a little bit of a scratched win, losing the middle map, they still confirm themselves in the playoffs spot. They will not be able to be caught by either of the two teams, depending on the D-plus result later on today, but definitely not Bliss, who only outside of this have one game tomorrow could get another four points. Needle so set. They need to see if they can try and thread some of these rounds. As you said, they're holding on a bit longer this time here. Whether that comes to success or not, I guess we'll see. Brando ready for the swing round. Cyber's having to do some of the buck work on the top floor down. And as the calls come out, Sage has taken a bit of damage. But otherwise, you're just always worried that FaZe is sort of readying themselves for another 3-2-1. Yeah, minute 30. And a big commitment over towards Cafeteria, but it's Cyber to find the first. The tuba row will fall. Does KDS enter the cross here? Well, that's a question we're about to get an answer to. He does, kind of. Well, the cross was never really established as Brendo was forced forward. Oda not in a position to trade, and now he's being hunted by FaZe. Yeah, this is it. The spray down, I think. Uh, KDS actually passed by. A Fenrir mine as it got activated and deactivated. Cyber does get picked up by... Oh, team kill. Fisho and a team oh, kill. Okay. Something's suddenly gone into their favor here. Fisho did dabble with getting one. He's been rewarded with two. A bit of a crossed moment with 50 seconds. They've lost Cyber, who is having an excellent series, as I said. Handy's gone as well. They've lost the Dockery calls. They still have. Three very powerful players and a hard breach necessary to try and get this broken through. Sage and Fisho. They're waiting for the first dabble, the first drips of the players to come up against them to try and hold off and stave off map point. The walls are solid. The only drop is via the stairs or the hatch itself. They'll hear that being passed and Sage decided he wants to try and step into the fire in the fight, but just seen the split of the player there. A bit unlucky as they're opening up more and more angles. He's surrounded, but they've got to surround themselves inside the idea of putting the kit down. KDS almost goes down, taking the drop and a bit of damage. Where are they going with the plant here? Vita King's blind. He's trying to tuck himself in. KDS does get his third for the round. Fisho, he's able to get one down. Vita King's going for the plant. If he swings now, it's a one versus one, but he's not quite confident enough to get the take. He gets it. He gets it. Oh! fish <laughs> well he's gone fishing and he's found all four <laughs> what a play from fisho guy clutches up only a fraction of hp remaining had to pull out the pistol what a play they stalled out a little bit of time towards the end i thought it was probably going to be sage the one to step up in the moment but he was slain Fisher guy, definitely not a player that we look at typically in O's to be one to frag out big, but he can play that ankle roll really well. And that's a big result for Bliss. That's the first time in this series of almost clutches, almost misses, almost hero moments. One has actually come together. The haunting one versus threes that were so close on the first map by Oda twice in a row that sort of led to the downfall on club. That has been broken a bit here when it needs to be broken more than ever. Fisher guy goes from one kill to five, suddenly finds himself 
up and amongst his teammates in performance and can get about a confidence. A confidence that FaZe wanted to break there. Oh. Time out is called. Yeehaw. <laughs> He's just like, yeah. Another day, another, another day, day at the office. Another day at the office. He was actually uh, in the last time FaZe played against an Australian team back in Yavle. He was the player that was on that roster that was dismantled 1-7. I was there, I had the pleasure of being there, and I saw the team leave after that game, and they said, oh, they're bleeping good at siege, aren't they? <laughs> <laughs> hey, so are you. Five to four. Bliss, they're still fighting for this phase. As I said, they've had that Attackers conversation. They're only two rounds away. Ying on the board. Well, something we've massively seen today. And Kitchen, a Five site we also left. definitely yeah. haven't seen today. Ying definitely um, an Attackers intriguing point, but actually picked bomb. off so this time around, maybe in response to the Warden. And the Clash. Holding on to the back end, they've been able to get themselves a little bit more solid, whether that's, as we sort of talked about with this site before, there's not a lot of meat to it for a kitchen. Meat is probably not the word that I would use. <laughs> that's it's a, it's a, an interesting description. It's a thin cut. It's salami, baby. And you want the rough steak. Fisher guy will have that important thing. We often actually talk about shields, and you know, you said you talked about this with Tim Earsapai, right? For what words you can understand from him, is you're putting someone into this position where they don't have that gun. They have to have a little bit more of like a less active, but also proactive role of trying to keep that front line put together. Cyber, as the buck has sort of pinged it out and played the place of that position, he is thirsting for this first engagement. Do remember that in the previous round, the one that Bliss got, there was a team kill as well. So, there is a ferocity here of face to sort of say that was a blip on our radar and we are about to smash through your kitchen. Yeah, so I think Fisher is gonna play side to try and draw in this attack and then feed information as to what phase are looking to execute upon. Don't drone hole. Please don't get them through the drone hole. I'm just, I'm having a premonition. And they obviously don't know how much they're droned. There's one single sort of window as the quick hop in. They, they're getting the full eyes on the players. This is how FaZe does it, by the way. We get the great taste of how come FaZe can suddenly just go from five seconds, they've killed three people in different places. This is why. And this is what they've battled against as they get themselves on the upside down Aussie Repel. <laughs> it's actually called an Aussie Repel. Really? Yeah, yeah, 100%. In the documents of the game designs, this is called an Aussie Repel. Wow. I know. I never knew that. Really? Yeah, fun fact. Yeah. Okay, well, let's see if Bliss can take it down. The vault to come through. Aggressive from KDS. Oh, but Flisho puts the shield on his back and turns around to survive the next engagement. So it's a three on three, 40 seconds, and the push stalled out, but Handy steps up. The Clash is getting aggro. He's trying to just do some damage onto Handy here. Sage gets souls on the hop in. Now you've still got Handy and Vidiking in the two versus two. And again, with the shield, this is that sort of monkey's poor wish. We have a little bit of safety. We have one less gun for the important point, but they've already done the turtle swing before. And boy, that turtle can move. Sage is doing his best to get the cover, gets the drop onto Handy. They're beating up on the shield. You've got to offer some support to that class. And there it is. Suddenly. We're level. Suddenly, there's some Vamos. Five apiece. Both teams have used their timeout. Mm. All we have ahead of us is Siege. Well, the Clash there definitely providing value for Fish and the team. Not only did the shield flipped onto the back actually wow. allow him to survive what was all but a certain death, but then also stalling out that push and Sage with that information, the yellow pings, the calls coming from the team, did his job in supporting the rest of the roster. Shut down that fault. Then here in the two versus two, able to find the down onto Handy. And Vidiking, unfortunately, not a whole lot he could do in that position. So Bliss flexing their muscles. Welcome back to the B stream here at Six Invitational 2024. We've done another mix and match today. I'm here with Sam. 
What's going on, buddy? buddy? You were actually one of the first people I casted ever at a live event. I think it was DreamHack Valencia all those years ago. Yeah, it was. That was quite some time ago as well. Pretty fun event. (laughs) (laughs) And now here we are back together. And you know what? Sam's even come dressed out for the occasion. What is this all about? Uh, You know... Non-biased caster here, you know, I, it was a good fit. DZ gave me some stuff a while ago. I figure with Bolo playing at the tournament, maybe I could slide it by, but All I can't get anything past you. All I'm hearing is, is your loyalty is easy to buy. <laughs> Let's take a look though at the group just so you can see what's been going on. Here is how things stack up for today in terms of our schedule. As you can see on the left-hand side, we have got Dark Zero versus Fear X coming up right now. And next up, it's Team Liquid versus W7M. Before we close out the day, for Bleed versus M80. A day of very thrilling games, no doubt, leading into a very exciting conclusion tomorrow for some big elimination games and speaking of elimination games this is really squaring up to be something that leads towards that for fear x as you can see at the very bottom of the standings right now coming up against dark zero in second place i believe if dark zero win this game as well they actually give themselves a shot at jumping over g2 and taking first spot because those two teams play tomorrow yeah and that is going to be a bout that we are really really looking forward to but we got to cross a few fridges bur- uh, first darian fear x is obviously going to be one of them they haven't had that great of a tournament so far here they are on your screen it's going to be Mephi red good boy a uh, good boy rather Arakaze and good boy. Uh, uh, Arakaze <laughs> and Demic. Uh, yes. But yeah, I mean, you know, through the history of Rainbow Six Siege, Jerry, we've seen some things out of these players. We've seen some highlight moments from people like Rin, from people like Arukaze. But this event, it just has not been working well for them. Arukaze currently sitting at the top of the heap with a 1.0 rating, and he's still negative. Granted, it's pretty close, but when your entire team is already in the red, things are looking pretty dire for them in the current yeah. moment. It's very hard to find a positive start about these guys right now you touch on it every single player is negative they're minus 16 on entry they've got one of the lowest round win rates in the whole competition unsurprising when you're at the bottom of your group of course that's to say it's been rough despite a little bit of the kind of light hope for them coming into this they had a three-week boot camp out here in brazil they've got a new coach behind them a brazilian one dark as well used to coach mibr for 18 months prior to about november time when he then joined this roster and actually asked him you know what was it about these guys that got you excited and he was like well they're clearly one of the top teams in korea i can see the potential i can see where there's loads of room for growth and improvement and despite their results i do think this team has grown and improved across the event we're seeing them pull off some brilliant things there was a brilliant like four and one split execute onto border top floor yesterday where mephi on the amaru just completely deleted the warden that was sat behind art wall and that was it they won the round off the back of that play we would never see that from old sandbox or current fear x mm-hmm. in their regional leagues so you can see the growth and development and plays they're bringing to the round but a lot of the fundamentals start to slip as series wear on, and that is what keeps on costing them. And personally, I don't think Dark Zero are going to be the team that are going to let this slip and let them get away with it. And speaking of, let's have you talk about your boys. Oh, man, <laughs> it's Dark Zero. We're going to save the best for last, and yes. I know who you want to talk about, all right? <laughs> NJR, Pambazoo, Canadian, and as everybody knows, Bolo back in action. Jason Doty, an amazing player. That is a hammer lifter. 2021, actually, TSM, I do believe. Might have gotten that off by like a year, but it doesn't really matter. We all know how damn good this guy is at the video game. But last, and surely not least, at the top of the heap right now for Dark Zero, our British boy, Nafe. You guys just can't stop importing our boys, can you? Oh, we gotta steal them, man. You got Spoit, you got Nafe, you got Citizen. Like, you just can't stop. And to be fair, like, Nafe has come in as a, a really interesting role where it's part IGL, support as well. He's helping out Canadian with some of those duties and leading and calling for the team. But despite being this more backline player, he's basically top rated. He is the dog right now. And what I love is I've seen him and Bolo over dinner a couple of times and over lunch. The banter those two have got going, the relationship they formed is really wonderful to see. And it feels like the vibes in this team right now are ripe for a really deep run in the tournament. Oh, man. Well, do you see what we have on the docket here, Derry? Yes, I we, do. We got some map things to talk about folks skyscraper chalet and clubhouse is what we have in front of us here specifically though skyscraper and clubhouse des are the things that stand out to me these defensive win rates are insane 70% 70% on Skyscraper and Clubhouse. I think he's like 71%. They are the two most defender-sided maps at this competition so far. But looking more at the stats around these two teams and how they've played it, Fearx haven't played Skyscraper since Stage 1. They have almost nothing for DZ to go off of. And DZ, despite getting 7 0 on this in Atlanta by loss, who of course oh, wow. we know went on to make a grand final run. Before that, hadn't played it since the end of March. Mm-hmm. So both teams have got you know, nine months of kind of coverage and secrecy around this map that... 
I think can lead to a very explosive and chaotic game, which arguably is the thing that VRX don't want, I think. They've been a little bit chaotic, a little bit messy, and surprises from DZ, I think, could upset the apple cart here. I think most of us are expecting a 2-0 coming into this. I'm hoping we get some competition out of VRX, but it's a big if as to whether we see that. Most definitely. Everybody at home, Derry, saying, uh, well, at least 95% of them saying that Dark Zero's going <laughs> to yeah. take this. Yeah, uh, yeah. The biggest uh, social poll difference I think I've seen this entire event. A Maverick ban. That might be the first one we've mm. had, at least, that I have seen this event. I think prior to the two-brow nerf, this would then absolutely mandate a two-brow ban to come in on the other side, and you may well see still see it, uh, still see it being a thing. Mm. But with the recent changes, the nerf that came through to two-brow, maybe you get away with it here as well. It's kind of trying to bait Dark Zero into having to ban it away. The KB coming in first. Last one is going to be the Azami. Another one of those big power operators that we keep speaking about alongside the Solus, alongside the Fenrir, alongside the Tuberau, alongside... It feels like an endless list of things at this point that we keep on going through. You just can't ban them all. Yeah, we got the power five right now, you know. So, we'll to see how they try and utilize some of these, even though they got an Azami off the board. But as you said, there's a laundry list of other things that they can just toss in here, like Solus, like Warden, you know. There's just so many damn good operators on defense right now. It's really difficult to try and dictate exactly what you want to get rid of. But obviously, these teams have brought it down to the wire here. The Kaid ban coming through, a little surprising on top of that. I'll be real. But, I mean, just trying to hold up a couple of these walls. Wouldn't be too, too hard with other things. More than likely see some Bandit come out and things along those lines. If they do even want to concern themselves with it in the first place. As you can see, Dark Zero, obviously not concerned with it at all. In fact, this is more than likely going to have them opening up quite a few different angles, especially for Pamba Zoo's Miras. We saw on the other stream now that things, spoilers, I want to give you to the end result. Oh. So three seconds, you're going to mute the stream, you're going to find out now. It has just been won by face. 7-5. Wow. Bliss cannot help but go to like the max number of rounds of regulation or into O. So I think they've had one map the whole competition that has gone 7-4. Everything has been 7-5 or an OT end. Oh my. Heartbreaking for them, but phase with a good win there and one that they sorely need to get on the board given their slower start to the competition. Here we go though. Let's get focused in on this round then. Arakaze straight across onto the Monty. Something we've seen them employ a few times across this tournament. I think when teams are feeling a little bit Mm, apprehensive about the possibility of them getting decisive round wins. It can be a nice thing to bring along. Chuck it at the front, have it be the spearhead, collecting information, making sure you're not getting shot in the back too much by Dark Zero. But the big thing I'm really looking at is that Ying. You don't really bring the Ying unless you want fast, rapid executes. So you've got two different styles of kind of attack uh, possibilities coming out here, where the Ying is that much quicker one, the Monty, the much slower. For me, it feels more like getting everything around that execute is going to be the focus. So a slow start, but a fast end from Fear X. A lot of value sitting in the basement floor skyscraper right now from Fear X. We got about three bodies around this area. One outside, a couple in here towards the barbecue. It's going to be a good boy that takes out Canadian first as they're trying their damage to clear out these roamers. The operator list dictating that they'd really want to try and take things from Black Stairs slash the balcony over on the far end of the site. But they're trying to concern themselves with what Dark Zero is doing down low as of right now. And at least to start, it's working in their favor. I think you have to really as well. There's a Solus on side. You just know that as soon as you try and get that Diffuser down, there's going to be someone below just like, oh, hey, I see you. Impact in the floors, mm. break it through, and that Diffuser's down again, and you just end up in hot water. The Monty, of course, not able to put that shield downwards, so it's of <laughs> no use there. Absolutely, and Canadian, one of the best in the biz when it comes to that. As we all know, he's a big fan of Pulse and Solus by proxy. Mm -hmm. So, looks like Firex does want to try and make that adjustment now after they got that pick. Soul's down, won't have to worry about any of that <laughs> verticality coming through. It's very slow and controlled so far, right? Like, I'm looking on a... We've got a second screen. We are blessed as cast as we get a top-down view on the left-hand mm -hmm. side. And eight players in the server have not moved for about 15 seconds. Yes. Because Dark Zero are like, okay, are you guys going to do anything with this 5v4? Or are you going to keep just standing still and then deciding what to do next? Like, we've got to see them get some momentum going. And the problem is, Fear X have a history in this competition of throwing 5v3s, even 5v2s, or even in general, man advantage situations. So even when they get ahead... I still find it hard to get excited about them closing out a round. Oh, man, look at this setup right here, Derry. They've like opened it, up the entirety of T, opened up the entirety of karaoke. This is going to make it really difficult for Arakaze to try and find a place to place this case. Smeffy's going to be able to at least find one on Debo over here. Oh, gets a second one, almost a third on the transfer. This case is going down inside of T as well. Arakaze should be able to secure this. It's NJR and Pambazoo in the two versus three. That's clever as well. They've got right inside of sight and just gone off to the spot that's a little bit covered out here by gold and managed to get it down. Oh. And Monty's up. But how has he given that one away? You've got a Monty and a man advantage. He's the strongest thing going at that point. But instead brought down to a two versus two. 
I've got trauma from their previous games at this point. It feels like it could still yet go against them. 15 seconds for Dark Zero to recover this one. Out up the stairs they come. Rim finds another. It feels like they're going to start strong here, but NGR finds one. Won't have time, I think, to get the kill and the defuse down. Good boy. Just got to hold and wait. Hold and wait. Got himself a couple of seconds. Now makes his move. Gets the close. It's close, but Fear X take round one. Very well done from Fear X. Their offenses have not looked all that spry throughout the tournament, but that one right there, I think, addressed accordingly, especially, uh, you know, with that old coming in from Dark Zero down the stairs with that Solus. They needed to make sure that they got that off the board before they tried to move forward and get that plant down. I also really appreciated them quickly finding an answer to where to put that case down, given the circumstances of the setup on that top floor. I mean, there's so many angles for them to worry about quite a uh, scary circumstance. For me, it wasn't even just that. That was absolutely great, and I agree with you there. But for me, that's the kind of play you wouldn't see coming out of Sandbox or Fear X historically. Mephi being able to get himself through the single drum wall, get down, get two kills at the back of a Candela, and draw the attention of the mirror. Uh, that's not the kind of thing they do. And I'm starting to see a trend where Mephi's actually now becoming this air quotes backstab player. I mentioned mm -hmm. earlier on the example of him using the Amaro on border. It feels like whilst the rest of the team is focused on getting set up for the execute, they're happy to have him be this backstab player. And that has not been the case historically. So again, it's progress. It's not yet really generating results. But we are seeing a better Fear X turn up than what we've had at the two majors and many events before that. Absolutely. You have to abuse that presence. If they're going to pull their pressure over towards one portion of the map, they're going to leave a little gap like that, especially with that LMG of Yang. Just yeah. let that chopper sing, right? <laughs> Able to take down two. Almost got that third on the mirror there as well, which would have been... Oh, if it had flicked onto the head of the mirror as well, I'd have been like, mate. You and mate. I would have stood up immediately and been like, <laughs> okay, all right, Fear X. So that's the game we're playing today. Indeed, okay, indeed. Okay. Wrong day for me to wear the jacket, maybe. <laughs> You'll be taking that off in a few rounds, just like slowly <laughs> like, yeah, I'll we'll jacket that. Sorry, huh? <laughs> get, get, gifted merch? No, no, no. I don't know about it. No, no. No idea. Don't even know who these guys are, actually. <laughs> the North American team. Yeah. I haven't seen them. And never in a million years. <laughs> Good boy's going to work his way in down low. Love this here. We got the skeleton key that's going to try and assist with tearing up this ceiling. And obviously, by proxy, you're going to apply a lot of pressure to Dark Zero setup. Big way of doing it now. You haven't got vertical nades in the game anymore, or up nades, as some tended to call them. Mm -hmm. Instead, you have to play things a little bit more traditionally. And in fact, when uh, Jack and the, or Fresh, and oh, Jack were friends like that, when we were in the green room the other day, he was like, who do you think is the most picked attacker at the tournament? We were all like, hmm. I looked down the list, I had to pull up the list, because clearly I could forget some. And I was like, is it Buck? And he was like, oh, God's sake, Derry. It is Buck. He's the most played operator. I think because of the nerf to nades that we've seen and the need to make defenders uncomfortable, given how easy it is to defend with the current roster of defenders in the game, Buck suddenly is just skyrocketed in terms of not just effectiveness, but also pick rate. Absolutely. And it just goes to show you how unbelievably important verticality is in this game. Buck's mm. the only one that can do that. He's the only one that can go underneath a site and actually strip the entire flooring out from under them. Yep. Sludge can't do it. You can kind of be cheeky with some Rotero drones if you really want to, you know, get into the nitty gritty of Rainbow Six Siege, but you really just want Buck there, and it makes so much sense why you're going to continue to see him throughout this tournament. These Buck players mean so much to how these teams can operate. It's maybe not quite as pacey as what you sometimes see from other teams, but the work being done by Fear X overall from below is great. The nades being used oh. by the IQ up top to get rid of Evil Eyes, for example. Doesn't stop Nafe just finding run out the window, though, leaving just a little bit too much exposed there on the Flores, and Nafe all too happy to oblige. It's going to be run down. Not exactly the op you'd want to Obviously, lose earlier on into the round as well. So, hopefully, Rin dispatched as many of those Roteros as they could. Arakaze. Boys can make an adjustment here. Arakaze. Mm. Gonna try and get some fire going here inside of Terrace. That really is the thing to watch is that gadget use from Arakaze because that's going to be the defining factor. That's the execute in this round. And sure enough, they start making their push forward, but the Femria shoves them back. A second for Nate, but two quick kills in succession from Fear X down to a 3v3. Good, good boy also going to fall. The Darks are holding out <laughs> well for now. And Canadian out of the shadows brings down Arakaze. A 1v3 for Demic. This round looks a little bit closed out. Maybe a little bit too slow and composed from Fear X's Dark Zero have adapted well and will bring us up to a one on one. Very well done from DZ there. The patience play working out swimmingly for them as uh, they just kind of sit on site and let you know, Fear X do the most work they can down the stairs, but nobody really giving them a look until Rin kind of puts their face in a place that it doesn't really belong. Yeah. They've been able to dislodge that accordingly in a beautiful round built off the back of that. I also love the fact that Canadian played that smoke so patiently. He didn't get overly aggressive. He wanted to see if they wanted to try and swing in through Terrace, but instead just plays that edge right there, waits for shot. it to dissipate. It's that nice shot on the M590. It's hovering around, like you say. 
Patience really being the thing that I look at when I think of Dark Zero. And the thing is, Dark Zero of old, like, I'm sure the Dark Zero of today love it as well, but the Dark Zero of old were the team renowned for famously being quite slow in North mm. America. It was very structural, very strategic. It was like playing chess. And here, in a way, I feel like Firex are doing the same. There's no kind of sharp pointy edges. There's no crazy flanks coming in through Shrine, for example, to try and backstab. That round there was about vertical control from below and getting rid of the evil eyes, trying to move a couple of defenders around, and then a kind of all-in flood executes. So right now, it feels predictable for Dark Zero. It doesn't feel like they can't control the situation. How that may change as we go back over towards Bar and Kurt to the west side of the map, down into Barbecue and Kitchen. And that's anyone's guess, but a one-on-one. -on -one. Good start for both teams. Oh, ho, ho. oh, and the Supernova out as well here for Mephi. Fox and I were talking a little bit earlier ah, on, yes. and he was talking about how he was kind of surprised that we weren't seeing as much of the Supernova just because the shotgun is truly, got buffed, truly it, right? insane. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's right up there with the M590. Now, I obviously haven't put that feather in my cap in some time, but... I trust his judgment. <laughs> <laughs> Very reasonable. Very reasonable. Arakazi being on the blitz as well. We spoke about this a lot throughout this competition. All about the pace. When teams are trying to hit fast and hit hard, that's when you want to blitz on side. To seeing the Amaru and seeing the blitz to me just screams that we're going to see pace coming out of this round. And I imagine Rin on the Ash is just in case we're going to see a mirror on side again. We've seen it across a couple of rounds from DZ. In case you missed that update, both Carly and Ash can now fracture or shatter those mirror windows with their gadgets. So you're going to see Ash quite a lot this competition, I imagine. Oh, he kills. Naif, Nitro back on a Demic. Three versus four here in favor of Fear X. A lot of influence to be had. Pambazoo, he tried this exact same move the last time. I was able to take out one player. I was trying to assist the Monty, but this time around, good boy. At least good for this. <gasps> oh my! No way! <laughs> You can't let this happen, guys. He's the oldest man in the lobby, and he's got case <laughs> control. Oh, no, Derry. How can he get away with this? Good boy stepping forward. He's got to watch out to the left. The angle is being held. His life in danger. Canadian must know that there can be pressure coming in from above. And Rin steps round, wins versus the old man, puts him in an early grave. A 2v2. And what I love about this tournament, we see so many scrappy starts to rounds like this. And it comes down to a 2v2, a 1v1, and there's still half a round to play. It's so beautiful, man. Especially, you know, from the Siege of Old, where I was like, all right, well, we're not really going to have any action until like 45 seconds, right? We're <laughs> yeah. going to drone, we're going to work utility, we're going to do this, that, and the third. Nowadays, people really like these aggressive plays. And, you you know, kind of have to, given how the meta currently stands, right? It's absolutely. You, you get, like, ground down to nothing because of the amount of, like, anti-play gadgetry that we have on the side of the defenders, that the attackers have to do something a little bit saucy, and we're seeing it time and time again. Nate, he knows that it's going down, but can do nothing about it. Good boy threatening from up top as well. Rin has managed to sneak that one away underneath the noses of both DZ players. Gets a second kill. Rin is saving this round back. I joked earlier to someone that this would be a, a typical life game from Rin when it matters most and we're starting to see it come online here. Well, Pambazoo, a chance, but very minute one here. Very low HP from those early engagements that he had. And this is practically all she wrote. The verticality now coming in. Pambazoo's just going to stick it because why not? That's really your only opportunity there with the two angles that have been adopted. And Fear X, they're going to take the lead again here in round three. Just really smart end of round play. Yeah, again, I've worried throughout the tournament. We've seen them just constantly throw away man advantage situations. And once Canadian vaulted over that black stairs barricade and got two, I was like, they've done it again. They've let a round slip through their fingers. But fair and full credit to Rin. Really fought to bring it back. And I felt the last two players left alive there just played that to perfection. Really kind of kept it as a constant 1v1 for Rin. Got the plant down, played vertical, didn't get baited in by Pambazoo running past in the hallway, for example. The days of old, you may not have seen that from this team. So again, it's growth, and that's the important thing to remember. But to have two attacking rounds on a map that, as we've already said, has got 70% defensive win rate, this is already feeling like a success for Fear X. Oh, absolutely, yeah. If, the fact that Fear X are already in the driver's seat up against Dark Zero, and they're applying pressure like this is truly incredible. I mean, when you look at the stats of Dark Zero, it is nothing to shake a stick at, especially for Nave. A 1.28 right now, he's plus 20, and you still have NJR to 1.25, and he's plus 15. So you practically have two players that are coexisting and performing the same on this squad, yet Fear X, which, you know, for all intents and purposes throughout this tournament, have not really been able to attack. They're taking it to DZ, which, as you said earlier, Derry, one of our more structured teams in North America, they are going to think through all of these strategies to the nth degree. So, Rear X, this bodes extremely well. Absolutely. I imagine Dark Zero 
I was kind of surprised you didn't see attack timeout come through there. Maybe a conversation about needing to get a little bit more active around the map. Be willing to trip Fear, Fear X up and stop. Don't let them play their game. Be willing to get up in their faces. Mm -hmm. We haven't really seen them do that. Even this round here, Canadian is going to be the only player I'd expect to see running around off site and trying to cause a little bit of chaos. There is like a extended hold as a group of three out towards the east right now. But Canadian is the only one playing on the vertical downstairs. And I imagine Papa and Nath. Oh, sorry, Pamba and Bola will both fall back towards site at some point as this round progresses. So for Fear X, not too much to worry about them getting tripped up. They'll have been well drilled by Dark. They'll be trying to get rid of Canadian as they've already done once before. And it's Napier being pitched out in the middle on drum. Arakaze in now. Oh He's my in god, control. they're already in. Yeah, absolutely. Like, there's like no one here. No, there's no <laughs> like, one engaged at all. We there's there's four here. players from the every, every DZ yeah. player is the other side of the map, and they've got they don't know, but they have got full coverage of this west side. We do have the mirror set up again, so they're going back to that similar strategy that we saw before. But this is where we saw that explosive play come out from Mephi, where he got a swath of kills over inside of Drum. This time, though, he's trying to occupy the terrace balcony, trying to utilize that rappel to his fullest advantage. But you still have to worry about Canadian down low. This is the thing that they crossed off earlier in that first round, where they went downstairs, executed Canadian. And then decided to bring things back up top. Try and figure out that mirror setup. Got that plant inside of yeah. T. So they're really going to have to try and concern themselves with this. Hopefully they've thought far enough ahead. And it seems like they have with Ren now in Kitchen. Yeah, he needs to get rid of the Solus underneath. They know that he's down here Finally. somewhere. It's going to be a oh. shot in the back. Canadian twice playing in this position. He's been caught out from below. In they step. It's not a Monty this time, but the Osser works in through a breach. Getting the plant down. It's a three versus three. No denial from below. And they can do nothing but watch here as well. C4 comes out. Gets shot through. And now they've got the Osser down. They can see everything. Everything. So now suddenly, actually, this position for the Osser is so strong. Good boy put on his backside, ran into a 2K. I said he might have a live game today, and it's coming out. Stokes Pamba once again left in a one versus two. Pamba Zoo will at least be able to get Arakaze. Oh, he does have the one versus one now. An opportunity for Pamba, oh. but he hops the hole instead. And Rin has him from down range. And Derry, I just got in my ear. There's going to be a timeout <laughs> from Dark Zero coming in. I know you're very surprised. Uh, not at all. I mean, 3 1 down twice. You've been beaten on this. Admittedly, I do love the mirror setup they've got used. They're using, right? Reinforcing both of the Geisha box walls, having the mirror looking across both sides, and just holding hard towards the east side of the map is really smart. And you've also got that Solus playing downstairs. But you already saw Fear X bring a solution. They brought the Monty. It completely shut it down because <laughs> he literally walked in front of the mirror window, like, hello, yeah. planted in the corner of the room, and then that was it. Yeah. And this round, they're very simply over. Opened up the Geisha box wall, got the Oster inside, planted it down again, looked at the mirror and gone, hello, and then also controlled that space of themselves because both sites are already wide open. Yeah. So both times, Fearx have brought along a different but equally successful solution. And Dark Zero are probably thinking, well, that strat is not working. We know these guys now love Blitz, they love Osser, they love Monty. There are lots of shields coming. We need to get disruptive. We can't keep on letting them either take this 1v1 or 2v1 onto uh, Canadian out on the Rhone on the Solus. Mm -hmm. or we can't just sit still. We need to get active around the map. Absolutely. I, you know, I love what you touched on inside of that last round earlier on it when, in it when you were talking about the fact that Dark Zero really hasn't applied pressure to Fox. And, and the main thing with that is that the only real, you know, aggressive play that we've seen is in the very first round when Pambazoo hopped out of Temple Window and got that kill on the balcony. That's been it. We haven't seen Dark Zero try and get in the face of Fox or really past that, the strategy really really not being able to allow that to happen because Fox has been addressing it in such a positive way. I mean, that round alone, Derry, extremely impressive, especially with the Osa walking in there. A high level of resiliency once you get that shield down, and they didn't have any utility that they could throw far enough to deal with that threat at all. You don't have smoke in play. You, all you have to your hands is nitro cells, really, and you're not chucking a nitro cell 25 meters. I'm sorry. No, they tried their very best and it got shot outright, and that was the only thing they had to respond to the Osa plant coming in. So, again, there needs to be a little bit more coming out here, and immediately, I'd actually quite like the response three sets of impacts coming up because they're expecting to see shields again but this is where fear x zig while dark zero zag they've gone away from shields entirely the whole lineup has changed and now they've got to deal with a new set of problems yeah i'm sure the first one of the first things that mint talked about was the fact that they need to start bringing lesion you know put something out there where they're gonna have to try and deal with that animation deal with that tick damage if they do end up stepping on one of these goo mines but as you said there isn't a shield here any longer in fact they've doubled down with a lot of really solid gun power Last time round, they brought the IQ for Mephi as well to get rid of the Evil Eyes from below. This time round, it's the Brava and the Twitch on side. So they've still got the ability, of course, the Ash as well. Lots of things still to deal with what's been brought along. So it's just really good adaptation coming out of Fear X so far. 
Dark Zero has said, I want to see them get a little bit more jiggy with it around the map. For now, three of them hovering around site, two playing off, looking towards Canadian and Pamba really being the ones that are playing away and looking to slow Fear X down. If nothing else, that is the one thing that's probably working in Dark Zero's favor is we haven't seen Fear X be particularly quick. Nafe has found himself a lovely little angle out here, right through in towards Geisha and has put Mephi down. Not out though, and maybe savable by his team as long as they're careful and respectful of that long angle. Oh, recent form right now. I'll tell you what, Rin is the Canadian hunter. Yes, he is. <laughs> time and time again. I think Canadian might finally have the shell for him, though. So we'll see if Rin wants to step up to the plate. Ash charge underneath is going to try and force Canadian to move. They got a yellow ping on they him know. as well. Rin's going to try and sneak him behind, but this M590, dastardly in close range. Rin, he's on a timer, though. He has to solve this puzzle very quickly. Ooh, Canadian! Oh, Canadian! Oh, my! That's more than likely means that Mephi is dead as well. Clean out oh. inside of Geisha! I've said it time and time again, Dez. The M590 runs on hopes and dreams. <laughs> and who has more than Canadian? Dark Zero's hopes and dreams in this round. Apparently, massive play coming out. I mean, Nathan the long angle to Mephi finally getting the finish off as well. As he's bled all the way down to zero. But those two shotgun kills, beautiful. It's not quite like hyperactive play out in the map and really trying to trip Fear X up. They had a yellow ping on him. They had the Ash downstairs. They essentially had two, if not three players isolating one man oh by my. himself. I tell you what, who needs rifles anymore? Let's just run shotguns. It feels like it's a new way to play. Most definitely. Would you believe that that thing is actually pellet based <laughs> and not a slug? Because, oh, oh my. You would have thought that was a shotgun too, but it's the SMG 11. Yes, but it's four kills in the round for Canadian as well. It's 1v1 after 1v1 after 1v1, I imagine, is the problem. But I've joked about it a few times this tournament. You know the whole like dominoes mean where it's like someone flicks a tiny domino and ends up knocking over a building or something at the very end? Yes. It feels like that with the very first kill because Mephi really was coming in from the south side pressure. So it would have been him and Rin together pressuring into Canadian. Instead, he's given multiple one versus ones as you're seeing here and all these wonderful replays coming out. And really, Fox there, I think, has shown some of that weakness we've seen throughout the tournament. They didn't really have the... Enough synergy to close things out. They had a yellow ping. They had pressure below. They had a player swinging in, but it wasn't quite all done in perfect sync. Yeah. And Canadian exploited that perfectly. Yeah, it's always the little things with that. I mean, if Mephi doesn't go down to Nafe on that cross right there, that round's more than likely completely different because they can pinch T in a completely different way. Yep. Uh, but obviously, the circumstances were a little bit different as Dark Zero and specifically Canadian with a lot to say there in round five. And Pamba Goomine, legit. That, yeah. was, that was what saved Canadian mm -hmm. there and got the rest of the kills rolling as well. So, two really early moments led to what we saw. Going into our last defensive round for Dark Zero, then they're going to have to face off once again against Arakaze's shield. You see the capital coming along for Mephi, which for me, once more, screams very execute focus. Oh. We got NJR now on the smoke as well, so he can try and deal with that at a longer range. We also have brought Pambazoo again on the lesion for the shield. A couple of impacts, C4 on side as well. So they've brought along some tools to try and deal with what they suspect may be a real problem. Now, if we can see that early round disruption again, just slowing them down, then absolutely incredible. In fact, Canadian and Pamba are once again roaming out towards that side of the map. It's not Canadian playing the Solus off by himself anymore. He's got friends. Most definitely. Always better together. Mm -hmm. Dark Zero, we try and play things out. More uh, horizontally on the top floor, not so much verticality working its way in, but that also dictates that Fear X is going to have to worry about every single step that they take once they try and don these stairwells. And speaking of stairwells, well, Canadian's holding the house down right now. <laughs> Pam is going to be trying his damnedest to lock things up on this far side here. Good boy with the assist, but the main thing is here, folks, is if they take their time on this, this could be a pretty big issue. DZ does have a little bit of pressure building up right now from a handful of different angles, but Fear X do not want to hop in this building. Yeah, probably should get locked into that vault animation as well if you can make use of Arakaze's uh, hard breach opening that's come onto that VIP wall. Canadian very happy to play close, at least for a while. May have to start backing oh, away and a little yeah. bit too slow to back away. Good boy collects his man. Pamba was already out of there, I guess, and that's a little bit of a desync between the Dark Zero Romas. Yeah, Canadian with an ill-advised swing there on the house stairs. And will get gunned down immediately by the C8. Well done there from good boy. Half the round now gone. Fear X do have to make the transition through this central hall that we talk about whenever it comes to this clear. Isn't that right, yes. Des? There's so much utility that's usually built up inside of T as well as drum, whether it be deployable shields, Jaegers, whatever. The defense has to muster. They will toss it over on this end, just like this laser gate right here. They're going to burn that, try and get Arakaze to assist. As you can see, it's even down the little things that delay here, and Pambazoo is going to continue to add to the pile. Yes, just trying to slowly work their way through, but pace is starting to become a little bit of a win. In fact, they've already backed out hard. I thought they'd hold it at least a little bit longer here. 
Imagine because they're expecting some form of shrine control coming in from Rin that they thought it's not really a safe place for us to be. So they've conceded ground here with about a minute left on the clock. I think if they'd held it for maybe 20 seconds more, Fear X would have been forced to start making some mistakes, some unforced errors, and Dark Tura could have capitalized. But he may have just granted the Korean side the time they need. They are going to end up popping things here for Geisha, but 30 Attackers seconds remaining. Nave, be able to check in at least behind the shield for a split second, but it's going to be Mephi that takes down Pambazoo, and you might be right here, Des. They might have given oh, them just enough silly. time to be able to solve this, but no, Dark Zero, they start to fend them off. A nice shot from Nave is followed up by Bo here as he'll take down Rin. It's a three versus three, but remember, Arakaze's on that shield. Unless he wants to slide this thing and try and take a gunfight, that's really the only way that things are going to go down. is going to try and go for the plant, He's got this going right now. Good boy on the cover, but they should be aware of this situation. No, Arakaze is going to be able to steal that, but now it's Monty in a one versus three, something that you Fun never spot. want to see. <laughs> and Bo get him from behind. Dark Zero, at a bare minimum, will at least be able to equalize before switching sides. I think if, if you told me coming into this that Virex would take three attacking rounds on the Skyscraper against DZ, I'd have been like, Nah, they'll get one. Yeah. So the fact they've walked away with even three is brilliant. Admittedly, Dark Zero have recovered well after that attack timeout. They were down three and one. They've gone on to win those last couple of rounds. It's looked far better for them. That key change being that we saw Pamba and Canadian out on the roam together rather than Canadian being solo, opera, solo roamer on the Solus. It's worked well for them, at least in one round with a massive 3K coming off the back of it. That last round there, Really slowing down for X. We saw the hole coming in. We saw them initially playing out towards the east, back towards drum, back in towards sight. Just Attackers really forcing to Fear X to ask questions, though. I think many will look at that round and say, how on earth has Nafe dropped away through Geisha and Mephi hasn't even been looking at him when Nafe has rounded the corner and taken his head off? Mm -hmm. Bit of miscommunication there. Very evident, I think, for Fear X. But we go into the second the half. Now it's Dark Zero's time to shine on the attack. I will say this, beggars can't be choosers. You know, Fear, Fear X are looking much better on their offenses than they have this entire tournament, so we will at least take that, won't we? Well, so, Dark Zero now have to, well, do what we saw previously for Fear X. They have to try and answer a lot of these questions across the entirety of Skyscraper. And although, obviously, the scoreline is, you know, a dead heat, that doesn't mean that this is going to be easy. This site, or rather this map, is uh, one of the most defender-sided maps in general right now. The only one beating it out is Clubhouse. That third map. <laughs> It's worth noting, actually, because we were talking about this in the green room earlier. Um, obviously, we saw the recent changes to Two Brow coming that nerfed him, where most teams are now saying he's not really someone to ban, although he's annoying. Yeah. The change that came in was when the freeze is on the wall, and if there's a bandit uh, battery put onto it, for example, the freeze effect wears off. It takes a second and a half for the electric to come back on. What you can do if you want to be very proactive about it, instead trying to play trick is you shoot out the canister and then immediately put down the bandit battery, and it then doesn't have the 1.5 seconds. So as long as you are perfect with the timing it's like that nerf never really happened but so you've got to be, you've got to be so tight with the timing is the problem yeah, a little bit of team synergy it seems like there as well maybe a little assistance while you're putting that battery down have somebody shoot the zodo things it's, like, it's like that, using you know. a thatcher emp and a breach and charge for example and we saw someone mess it up the other day and it was like oh dear <laughs> pain <laughs> yeah that's always the hard ones isn't it especially after you know whether it be the hard breach has been burned or what have you that everybody just stares at each other like well what do we do now <laughs> like, <laughs> i don't really know i don't yeah. really know some oh. painful moments indeed zero's gonna try and wrap themselves around this top site. We've already got somebody on the western balcony. It's going to be Nate that's immediately traded by Arakaze, but he'll at least be able to take down Demic. A little bit of team play coming in as well. I mean, taking out the smoke as well, definitely not a bad one this early into the round. Not quite sure why he was the man getting stuck into a situation there as the go-to entry. You've traded out for the Nomad on the other side, who I imagine has already dropped down those air jabs around the Shrine side, but the oh. Execute might already be coming in. Good boy, just doming Pamba. Completely blind as well. He stood up into the flash. He saw him for a split second. Uh, but that M590, <laughs> man, that gun is insane. Nerf it, please, man. The range on some of these kills just makes me sick. Oh, man. The instant down is what gets me at those ranges. It's like, <laughs> <laughs> like I guess she's a three armor, but my God, or rather three speed. But geez, so crazy sometimes. It can be indeed. Two left then for Dark Zero and a two versus four. Still got a lot of time to play with, but you've lost all your tools to get the job done, it feels here as well. I don't think they even got Geisha opened up, so it's not going to be a threat for Fear X. Instead, they'll have to play in through the double window. And that's even with two exothermics left in that pocket. Just no way of getting these crucial walls opened up, even with a super round side as well. He's out for Canadian. Find one here inside of gold. 
know if he wants to try and make an aggressive move for this rotate. He does have NJR in tow, obviously. He's going to make an adjustment out for the balcony. Still plenty of time in this round, although obviously under 30 seconds, so they're going yeah. to have to make a decision here pretty soon. But it will give them just the gift of being able to make a rotation if they so choose, and that's exactly what Canadian's going to do. I think he's going to try and attempt to rotate all the way over for Black Stairs. Oh, no, NJR! The influence comes in. It's such a perfect time from Ren. Be able to get the big kill. Canadian knows where one is. Sees one hop outside, but he's dead to rights. It's a good boy. And able to take him down. And once again, we have Fox taking the lead. At what point are you allowed to start getting excited about a Korean team doing well? <laughs> when they win this first map. That's when we're allowed to go over the moon about this. I feel like this. there's tears to this. Like there's, there's, there's Bliss who like get dangerously close to winning maps time and time again and then just let it slip at the very end. They won one earlier, so fair play to them. Then kind of the tier below them, there's D plus and Fear X, which mm -hmm. just feels can't buy a round, let alone an actual map. And then the rest of the tournament, the people who could take maps away from each other. But at least here, it's, again, good to see them playing the way that they are. Is it going to be enough to close things out entirely against DZ? Uh, here, maybe, because DZ have already taken their tack time out. Let's not forget as well. They don't get a second chance to try and figure things out here. It's going to have to be done on the fly. And if anyone's capable enough to do that, it's going to be Canadian. It's going to be Nave coming up with those ideas together. Absolutely. They will be left to their own devices, but that doesn't mean that that's a bad thing at all. I mean, both of these players, amazing in their own regards. Nafe adding a uh, lot of spice to Dark Zero, I would say. I've gotten to see a couple of their games so far at the tournament. Obviously, the first one casting here with Nafe, but uh, this has honestly been probably their worst result, is this skyscraper map that we're seeing right now. Past that, they have looked so stellar across the board, uh, especially for Bo. I mean, Bo hasn't played competitive Siege in quite some time, yeah. and uh, he's at least still got the legs under him. Wait till he actually starts getting hot. Exactly that. A little bit of time to Warming to it as well is the main thing to think about here. Of course, no doubt all teams building for this tournament as we go along. It's been a while since International Siege, you know, three months since we had Atlanta. Obviously, some of the regions have had little small tournaments taking place, but it's not quite the same as getting to a big event like SI, especially when a few of the rosters have made changes over towards the last few months as well. Starting things out towards VIP, at least they're going to get that one opened up. And that really looks like it's going to be a direct to site hit from Dark Zero. Everyone just gathered on this east side. We've still got one player from Fear X. I think it's Good Boy roaming out towards the west. Otherwise, everyone is pretty heavily gathered out towards at least the middle to right hand side. Maybe he's going to be playing this mirror window. Arkaze. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, woo! I'm here, it's a ghost! <laughs> uh, somebody push me! Somebody push! Nobody? All right, that's fine. Oh my, Dark Zero! Popping off to see a blue in the kill feed and Fear X. They can't Pamba. buy a kill. Pamba Zoo. Pamba party time, as we <laughs> say in NA. <laughs> now, good boys, that flank is just like, oh man, everyone's dead. I've got to come back into four. Like, I don't know where they are. They're shooting at me from the walls. This sucks. Like, what do I do? Admittedly, when I saw the Arakazi thing, I realized what he was doing. One, drawing attention, but two, also making sure that the alarm came up. That, oh, enemies outside the building. Yes, because at the same time, you had Rin doing exactly the same thing on the north side, outside of the VIP like hole that had been opened up, trying Very to get players brain. that were on the display window. So again, just a cute little play that you would never normally see from this roster, you know, six months ago. Yeah, absolutely. A little thought behind things, especially when, you know, it's something like that, where you're just like, oh, why is this guy sitting outside? You get shot in the back by another person. Yeah. Outside, Terry. <laughs> things like that that you just want to add into, uh, you know, your, your strategy book there, even if they're cheeky, you know what I mean? Yeah. Four to four here in between these two. Dark Zero, though, yeah, with a heck of a round that yep. last time around. I really love the setup they had around the site, allowing Pambazoo to get very aggressive with those Candelas, opening up the floodgates, practically, for DZ to be able to take that one. Ball's going to start commandeering the mirror themselves as well. Last round, we have Bowler switch over to the Ash to deal with that. I'm curious if we're going to see someone else in this round on the side of Dark Zero move over to an operator that can more come to be deal with those. Answer looks to be no, as I said, but highest pick operator in the whole competition right now. Bolo's going to jump straight over to that one as they do need that vertical destruction, given we're going in towards exhibition and office here in round nine. And we'll be able to deal with it directly, but... Indirectly, they'll be at least be able to deal with the person playing behind the mirror. Some bees, maybe some fire in from Nave, but it also dictates that they get an angle to be able to apply that in the first place as well. 20 seconds in here on round nine. We're going to begin droning things out on the bottom floor. What else would you expect? Just to make sure things are clear, especially for Canadian's sake. He was playing around in that basement area uh, quite a lot on their defensive end, so make sure that Fear X aren't doing the same. For sure. And right now, it's a case of fe feeling out on the Dark Zero side exactly where they need to be pressuring. Two players at the top side on Shrine Balcony. 
A couple playing out towards west, mainly in the downstairs. And then I think you've got Nate holding for the cut uh, inside of Shrine itself, hoping that someone's going to rotate back through there. And could potentially catch out Good Boy, who so far has got himself caught on this side of things. You can see him on the right-hand side of your screen, trying to cause a little bit of bother around Drum, along with Mephi up towards the top side. So that's kind of problem number one for Dark Zero to work their way through. But I see the walls slowly starting to kind of close in around them here. I think he and the players that are hanging around Shrine have got to be careful. In fact, they've brought a third player over. They're really hard holding out towards this west side and wanting to slow Dark Zero down. I like it. Yeah, I love the patience here from Furex as well. They haven't gotten overzealous, not giving Dark Zero any strong looks. Here we go. Could get some big kills. But now, as soon as I say that, Pampazoo is going to try and swing through. Still has oh. one to worry about over here on the drum side. So hopefully he's got some eyes in the back of his head on this angle. Did he see him? I don't know that he did. The flash goes away in good time for good boy. As will take down Pambazoo oh. and be able to at least make it back to sight. Nice let his man get away as well. I think he was too scared of Arakazi winning the gunfight, but it was enough cover for Good Boy to pull back. However, Bolo has been the hero of the moment in that opening 90 seconds. Two kills, taking out both players on Shrine by himself and has opened up the map for Dark Zero. A man advantage, 70 seconds still to play. They can do this. It's definitely. A lot at their disposal still here, especially in the secondary utility. Need I believe Nave. that's what Canadian is waiting on right now. And yes, indeed. That's come exactly Nave, come. what they need. Come on, boy. Bring those EMPs, boy. Get over here. Let's get this go. impact down. Next step, pan opener. Break in here. <laughs> Straight just, him. Yep, just like your grandmother's kitchen. <laughs> Opened up and that starts to put pressure in Nami. Damn it, this is a dangerous spot to be in as well. Ooh. Really trying to play rat up close and just hoping that someone appears at the window. And sure enough, Canadian is there, but admittedly at a distance. Damn it, the one you want going for this when he's 2 and 8, to be fair to him. I don't know. Oh, Has no. a C4 in back pocket as well, but in come the bees. Steps out for the swing, sees his man, oh. and he wins it out. That's exactly what you want. Down goes Canadian, and they hold on to this balcony at least for now. B's just sailing over his head and making it to where he had no idea. Mirror was standing full force in that mirror, or rather window. Arakaze here behind the dry bar, waiting for somebody to try and swing through. Dark Zero, so little time left. We have to get this case down, and they might have found a home. But no! no! The goo mine stops him in his tracks, and he gets gunned down instead. Fear X with another successful defensive round. A great 2K out of Arakaze, and I feel like I'm flipping narratives here because a couple of days ago I'd have said, oh man, Fear X and a 4v3, they've got a minute to play, they're still going to lose the round. And I was optimistic for Dark Zero. It looked like they had the right sort of ideas coming together. Just couldn't quite get it over the finish line. Good boy in a great spot as well to win the one versus one despite being flashed. Here he was really scared of Arakaze off to his left. That's why he flicked in. I imagine Nate was making the call. Arakaze is trying to peek on me. Be careful because he has that cross angle through Drum on towards the door. So he couldn't like just full send down to the bottom of Drum and take the 1v1 on Good Boy. There was a limit to how far I could go. And that was exactly the moment when Good Boy chose to step out. If instead it wasn't a classic siege time moment and he kept the angle locked onto Good Boy. A fair 50-50 in the one versus Bomb one. Just, again, one of those things where timing is kind of bitten them and good boy getting back to site safe made it a 3v3 rather than a 4v2. Yeah, what a game good boy is having as well. 12-4-3 right now. And just as a reminder, folks, the only person on this team with a positive rating at all and didn't even have a positive KD before we got into this game nope. was Arokaze sitting at a flat 1.0, Derry, which is truly, truly insane. Especially when the next three follow-ups Demic, Mephi, and Good Boy all sat at a point nine. Truly insane stuff Fear X has been able to do, especially in just the last 24 hours. Again, the craziest stuff for me was the entry, right, coming into this minus 16, like one of the worst that we have, if not the worst of the competition. Mm. But across these rounds, I've gone blow for blow for Dark Zero. It hasn't been like every single round there behind them having to fight back. In a good number of them, they actually start out ahead, which is really impressive. However, as much as we're praising VRX, let's not forget Dark Zero are only one round behind here. They win this one. We're dead square again at 5-5, five and five, and we're going all the way through to 12. I think it's more that VRX is surpassing expectation here is the reason why it's so exciting. Oh, Bandit battery down here. As you said, Derry, uh, with that change. Will that still go off? It's not going to zap, and it no, should. No, oh. They didn't pop it. Yeah. They didn't pop it. Never mind. We're good. All right. Well... I know there initially it was just like if you had the fuse already going, it would just explode right after. So you have to click it again now as well. I think if it expires, then it takes the full time. If it gets shot, I think it's a different conversation. Gotcha, gotcha. Understandable. And now this one's still jammed. Come on, boys. <laughs> we, need, we need a wall to get opened here. Like just one. It would be lovely. And you can imagine how frustrating these little moments can be for Dark Zero as well. 
Yes, it's just everything getting in their way. It's another speed bump, another hurdle they've got to work their way through. Do you guys have speed bumps? Yes, yes we do. You do. You Not that we do you call them speed bumps? We call them, yeah, speed bumps. Okay, yeah, I was yeah. curious. I thought you guys might have a really stupid name for them. No, we, we, well, we actually use them as speed ramps because nobody respects them, so... <laughs> Speak for yourself. <laughs> <laughs> I like my car, so trust me. I, I abide. I adhere, I adhere to the rules. Yes. Other things getting in their way. Then over half the round has gone through, and no one has died. I'd argue one of the more peaceful rounds that we've had in this game may even find ourselves breaching into the last 60. And uh, everyone still stands up standing. So it could be a very explosive end to the round. The key thing to note, Pamba on the Ying. We speak about this an awful lot. Very execute-heavy operator with the EE1Ds raining out. The Grim able to get involved too. Dark Zero have got all the tools here, but they are coming up against three smokes, a couple of C4s. I think they've either been pre-placed or at least been used. Still one in the back pocket of Arakaze. So Fear X aren't exactly foolish coming into these final 45 seconds. Good boy. Inside of barbecue as of right now. Nave with the stranglehold oh, yeah. on the angle. Very well met. To be able to use that DMR to its full He's advantage. Gonna have to burn Stuns in. out here, and yes, indeed. 30 seconds remaining. Candela's out. I think he's just waiting for this initial smoke to try and burn what? out. There's absolutely no chance, Demic. But Pambazoo, he's good for two. Bo go down up against Rin, who's stuck at the back of gold. That's what Canadian's good for. Three versus one now, all up to Arakaze to try and shut this down. But I don't think he's here in good timing. No good faith, no info, no nothing to build this off of. And the Nitro Cell, it lands on deaf ears. Three versus one now. Dark Zero have absolutely everything in this basket to be able to take round 10. Yeah, immediately every single player pulling off site. You've got one top shrine, one top black, one on drum. Just no one giving Arakaze an inch to be able to fight back into this. And every second that passes, it's ultimately got to get all three kills to make this work. They are no way in hell going to let him stick it out. It feels instead that we are going up to that scoreline. We spoke about a 5-5 Pamba with another 3K. Been going good this game, bless him. Absolutely. It feels like Pambazoo is required to get three kills for Dark Zero to win an offensive round right now. <laughs> yes. It's actually insane. And speaking of insane, I cannot imagine what that Dark Zero player was thinking when they got slapped off of Black Stairs right oh, there. While he was Flash as yes. well. Yeah. His hand is just right in his face and he just gets destroyed. I mean, we'll see how Flash he was in a moment as well, mine. That was a freebie. This is the one that's a bit crazy, just like... Oh, oh, we skip it. That's a shame. I would have loved to have seen exactly what his screen looked like in that moment, but ultimately, easy. Get it over the finish line. High five. We get to see all 12 rounds, and I feel like the game deserves it as well because we've seen that real good grit from Dark Zero, especially from Pamba, as you mentioned. Canadian as well. Brilliant multi kill coming into at least some of the earlier rounds back on the first half. BRX, brilliant first few attacks when they were up three and um, three and one. They've let Dark Zero play a little bit of catch up here, and it's really hard to call which way this game goes. Yeah, most definitely. Dark Zero, I mean, just look at the consistency across the board. It's actually insane right <laughs> yes. now. I mean, the person that's quote unquote doing the worst is Bo at six, seven, and three. I mean, that's perfect. If that was, if that was my rank stag, Derry, I'm over the moon. Like. <laughs> You're all playing great, guys. Keep it up. Exactly. Keep it up. Like, Whereas on Fear X, it's a little bit more pointy towards Good Boy and Rin. Yeah, well, you, you know, we always like to point that out as well. When people start soaking up a lot of kills, I mean, where else are these other guys going to go get frags at? It's not like there's a supermarket for it, right? So. <laughs> exactly. So that may be the battle here. You get rid of Good Boy, and last round he was the first one to fall to Nate. Maybe that was the key that unlocked Pamba to march through the rest of the team. A little raid boss action. Mm, yeah, that's it. Not really much of a raid boss when it goes down in one shot, mind you. <laughs> It's very true. I mean, it depends on your build, you know? <laughs> <laughs> Back in my day. Well, we're here for Dark Zero. They start building things up here on the balcony. They're not going to be bringing the shield in tow, and that's something that we see happen a lot when it comes to uh, accessing this portion over here. But obviously, they're just going to be worrying about this verticality coming in from Fear X. That's what happens with this barbecue site. You want to try and work your way in and rip things up here inside of karaoke, My. making things super easy for that plant inside of barbecue. This is one hell of a stack on the shrine side, and if that doesn't scream execute a bound, then I don't know what does. The main thing they've got to contend with is that smoke of Mephi playing on the other side. Of course, can drop that on the doorway at a moment's notice if he needs to to run that clock down that little bit further and give his time, team time to react. Pamba's ready, I imagine, as well, with the Candelas, ready to sing at a moment's notice. It's just a case of when Dark Zero pulled the trigger, and it turns out it's going to be now, Stokes. There it is. B's in, as well as the Ying, but this time around, Pamba Zoo, the shoe's on the other foot. Mephi matches fire with fire. Be able to take him down. Nadian 
Tries to swing in here for the bathroom, but he's going to take his time. Silence will actually befall the map, all except for that smoke. But as soon as I say <laughs> that, a little ice on the wall Canadian's got to hit him. He's got to hit him. Yes, he does. Meffy is doing such a bang-up job holding onto the stairwell, and it's just so difficult for them to try and find anywhere to gain access right now. Yeah. I mean, Nate's been put on ice oh, multiple how times. <laughs> stuns in. Canadian fights through the stuns to kill Meffy on I love black it. stairs. They've dumped so much onto Meffy. That poor guy has just been sat there entirely. I didn't realize he's second kind of the bottom of bracket back stairs, but I thought both had already gone top, but that's why Canadian was held back a little bit. They wait for it to expire, and they push in. So a really good one-man isolation play coming out from Dark Zero. 4v4. No more of those canisters in Arakaze's pocket. They were all dumped onto this door that Bo is facing right now. And the he kind down of trying to slow them yeah. down. No, yeah, Nate just went down and grabbed yeah. it. So it's definitely going to have to try and transition this soon into an offensive front because yeah. well, as of right now, Fear X have a solid setup downstairs. They don't mm. exactly know where Dark Zero want to address things, but obviously that breach kind of being a telltale sign of what could go down. Ren looking for some more kills, looking for some more NJR. blood in the water, but NJR, a double kill. Dave trying to cover things over here on the restaurant side, but oh that kill is actually going to go to Canadian, and so will the second one. There's no way that Fear X are going to have put in this much much effort to potentially lose to Dark Zero in regulation. Looks like it might actually. They've kind of gone from that kind of Korean tier at the very bottom, and now they're into like Oast tier, where you get so close and then things just crumble when it comes round to more pressurized end of game situations. They do finally take in their time out. Now they're down six and five. First time this game, they've been behind. Yeah, looking like me playing FIFA against the Europeans, man. <laughs> you like, have been sweating that in the green room. Dude, it's dude, been hilarious. They have been smoking my pack, man. I'm telling <laughs> you. But I mean, hey, but I'm, I, listen, I'm like Fox. I'm starting to get closer, man. I'm starting to get closer, you know? And that's what matters at the end of the day. This is a great timeout by Fox, by the way. Just to try and make sure, well, first things first, you don't want to go leave this map with a timeout in your pocket. That's the silliest thing you yeah. could do. And second thing second, let's readdress some things here. You definitely had a chance inside of that round. I think the big thing is, is that Fear X was a little worried about giving control on top floor, uh, you know, in those dying moments. But as we saw, Derry, because we have X-ray vision, Dark Zero just sent everybody into that bottom floor on a pretty one front assault and just gunned down Fear X at every corner. They didn't want shooting in the back by Mephi, so he had to be the first thing to be removed. But really, it was the NJR backstab that unlocked that round four. Then two quick kills, defeated the raid boss. Good boy disappeared as well. That was what they were looking for. So again, a big play from a single player on Dark Zero to unlock the rest of the round. You could look up and down really the roster and saying Canadian, Pamba, NGR have all had those moments throughout this game. And that's the kind of grit and resilience that you so sorely need to make a deep run at competitions like this. Most definitely. Resiliency from Dark Zero as well. I mean, you could imagine how, you know, a million ways how this could have gone wrong from them, whether it just be in game or mentally. I mean, Fox has not looked all that great this tournament. They start doing well against you. You start to overthink things, overcomplicate things. There's big potential that Dark Zero uh, could still lose this map. But mm. as of right now, I think that they are showing a high level of mental fortitude. How good's your uh, Ace of Pyrite impression? <laughs> We're about to find out here in about 2 minutes and 55 seconds, aren't we? I'll leave that one for you, I think. I'll leave that one for you. <laughs> Speak of the goddamn devil. <laughs> and he will most definitely show his face, won't he? Brilliant. I tell you oh, what, that man. room with Ace in there casting with links must be the noisiest <laughs> room in the whole building right now. Uh, most definitely. I've never heard anything like it. Uh, Ace, uh, absolute demon on the cast, and then we got the Yapper himself. King Yap. King the, uh, yap. the volume in the green room does increase exponentially when Links walks through the door. <laughs> it is very quiet normally. He actually speaks at a normal volume. Links. Yes. Does not. <laughs> no, no. Ace is one of those guys you get a microphone in front of them. Then you're you're going to yeah. hear that electricness, right? Then but you get it. Yeah. Lynx, <laughs> if you think Lynx is different off cast, that's really funny. <laughs> <laughs> it is not at all. Bless his heart and soul. Oh, man. Now, a similar sort of setup coming in here from Fear X and what we saw from Dark Zero previously, if you recall. It's that hold on the mirror window looking in towards both sites. Well, what would be both sites. It's not the actual site they're defending, mm. but it's holding that whole west side of the map. And the beauty of it is you don't have to commit players to playing on that west side. It's a little bit safer if you to rotate back through Shrine or down past Drum. There's always the risk that you might have someone on Dark Zero ready to cut you off from the Shrine window or from the double window inside of Terrace itself. But for now, as you can see, they've all peeled their way back. They're happy they've wasted about half the round. And now Dark Zero can start thinking about, right, what does this execute look like? Because it is not looking like a VIP and display window execute. 
the key thing is right now is going to be down to the timing because there's a lot of utility that they're going to have to work through and if they don't clear things out properly and have to just try and throw this to the wall and hope that it sticks there's a lot of different ways that this could go awry even something as simple as a goo mine could thwart them in a proper gunfight and end up sending us into overtime pam bazoo is going to get a nice drone play here inside a dry bar be able to do a little discovery work for themselves as they continue to traverse this map I'm ready for this as well. Canadian's got the exothermics, of course, but one of them's been left soft with a bit of the wall open out at the bottom so they can impact out of it. Here they're going to try and stick it in on towards the west side instead of force their way through. Now, Arakazi has got to move. Is anyone there to get the cut? Absolutely not, but he holds close, gets into a gunfight, not going to win it out, and is forced to back away into the depths of sight. Good boy, though, crucially, is not the entry death this time around. He gets one, and Pamba's gone too. This is good for Fearx. We could be going there. Two versus five, 30 seconds remaining, but Bo's gonna be able to get one. He's immediately decapitated though. It's all down to NJR in a one versus four. And Tez, we're going to overtime. I like it. That's all I got, that's it. I haven't done a British accent in some time, so apologies for my British friends. Please don't set me on a pyre. I don't know. Like. <laughs> <laughs> it's all good, man. You're slowly learning like it's, uh, some, some news to the world and they'll be so, be so depressed to hear this. You are a recently born Liverpool fan. I am. I so am You and indeed. Tim have got something in common and <laughs> it's not the baldness. Thank God. <laughs> yeah. I, I was saying in the green room yesterday, it's so funny. Like now you're really into like uh, English football but you support it like an American sports yes. fan, and it is the weirdest crossover in the world. <laughs> yeah, there's just a couple of things that I was saying. I, I just saw it in your eyes. You're just like, man, this is a weird dynamic. <laughs> 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 this, our cultures uh, for sport are so different between the two countries. It's brilliant. So funny. So funny. But That's hey, I'll definitely tell you this. I'm really enjoying uh, learning the strategies and that kind of stuff of soccer. It's a really enjoyable sport and something that obviously just with the way that the NA brain works for that sport, uh, you, you just don't really give it a good shake as a kid. Everybody's like, yeah. you're not playing American football. Ball. Why not? <laughs> yeah. What I find really interesting, we went to the Atlanta Major and went to go and watch basketball. I think I told you about it there. It was like an assault of the senses. Yes. There's just so much going on at all times. Like, chance, the game is fast. Like, the entertainment during timeouts is mega. It was absolutely nuts. And obviously, American football is quite stop start as well. So, it's always got something going on in some way, shape, or form. Mm. But soccer's quite flowing, is the yeah. way that I think about it, right? So, it's going to be a, a change of pace, to say the least. Yeah, I'm really hoping that down the line, I'm able to go over to your neck of the woods and see a game, Derry. So yeah, I'll have, have to see what happens with that. But we'll go see Liverpool Villa game. It'll be hilarious. Ooh, 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 be anyway, so that's the, the soccer podcast done and dusted. We've got a round to cast. There it is. <laughs> Overtime here between Dark Zero and Fear X. Unfortunately, no, we still got a lot of this round remaining. It's going to be the drones out as of right now to try and clear out Good Boy here over on the office side. Yes, we spoke about this when Dark Zero on their defense, actually, that often Canadian would be the one roaming off by himself, normally on the Solus and would eventually get pinched and punished by the side of VRX. But now things have flipped. It's kind of time to see if Good Boy can slip the net, stay slippery enough while collecting drones, and hopefully a couple of scouts along the way to get himself back to site safely. And sure enough, has done just that. He's oh. up through Shrine. He's drawn out drones, a bit of utility. Good stuff. And Canadian is the first to fall. Ouch. Well, it's going to be put on ice as well on top of Canadian. I don't know if they're exactly going to be able to get that off the wall yet. I was looking at the lineup, and I was like, I don't really know how you guys <laughs> solve this. So I'm yeah. more than likely going to be breached open. And yes, indeed. What a cheeky angle there from NJR as well in the rebel. It's pretty filth. Imagine you can find someone from that as well. Mm -hmm. Unfortunate not to, but for now at least, the Korean side stay in the lead halfway into that round. Five versus four. Missing a grim. Not the end of the world, although you definitely appreciate having it when you're trying to force players that are sat static in pretty difficult positions to move away. I was kind of worried when I saw it was good boy out on the road, by the way. He'd already dropped down, obviously, all of his uh, EE1Ds that have been dropped around. Or the ED, sorry. Dropped them around the map already in the cap can. And then gone to sit out on the roam. But if he'd been picked off again, Raid Boss is gone. He has been top fragging until the previous round where Rin has now jumped over him on 14 kills. Between them going for 27 is nuts. Absolutely. Been soaking up so much of this firepower from Fear X. Allowing the others to kind of rest and make sure that they're just adhering to the strategy. Dark Zero, obviously with Canadian at the helm as of right now, flipping through these drones, trying to do his best to make the right call alongside Nafe. 
They have 50 seconds remaining to try and get something rolling here. Bo spotting a lot of utility through the floor, specifically this Nitro Cell that's awaiting Nafe's arrival right through the breach. They need to try and work themselves forward here, and that's where Bo's going to try and assist. Mephi, we going right. to keep them at the gates. He's looking for this frag right outside the window here, too. He'll oh. get it on to Nafe. A nice little trade, though, as Pambazoo will get one. And JR for one as well. These last two, I mean, it feels like if it's going to be a DZ round, right, it's got to be Pambazoo for two, but we'll just have to <laughs> see. He's looking for one, not able to get that one. It's going to be Bo on the other end, so might be a Bo triple instead. We'll just have to see. Bye. They know exactly where this guy is, and I feel so so bad for him. <laughs> it's going to be Bo on a triple kill <laughs> with the 5-5-2. Five, five, I tell you what, Dark Zero are so good at stacking flashes onto target players, like whether it was Mephi on Blackstairs, whether it was Demic at the end there, just gets absolutely destroyed. Like you're spending more of the round with a white screen than actually seeing color. It's insane. So oppressive to deal with. The Warden of Mephi went down inside of Geisha. They had nothing to offer back towards the other side. And Dark Zero, that team play is looking on Points. They are ahead once again. It's seven and six. Virex move to the attack. If they win this one, it's going to take all 15 to decide who wins on Skyscraper. I mean, I just can't tell you how heated I would be <laughs> with all those Candelas pouring in. And then you also see the flashbang coming in. You're like, guys, I'm already blind. Yeah, I promise on, you, man. I can't see. <laughs> Glasses, no gla I don't have eyeballs right now. They're gone. <laughs> it's nothingness. Dark uh. Zero. Throwing everything at Firex in that round, and I mean, man, very, very fortunate circumstances befalling them, obviously. But now the shoe's on the other foot. Firex looking pretty solid on their offensive assaults here, but they haven't done it in a while, Des. So that's something to consider. Yes. And I think Dark Zero really figured things out towards the end of that first half. They won the last two rounds, and the major change was rather than sending Canadian up on the solos to roam solo, they had him instead playing with Pamba. Pamba was normally on the Legion. Here he's on the Fenrir, so they have made a couple of other changes in terms of what's being played, because let's not forget, Canadian's massive 3-4K in that round on the uh, on the mute came off the back of that Guma and letting him know that Rin had walked into the room, which he could just spin and get the kill. So... A little bit more kind of different in terms of setup. It will keep Firex asking questions. It's not going to be the same as how things went before. And their lineup, to me at least, looks pretty standard. No shields, which is where they found most of their success in that first half. Canadian. Hammers around for him. He'll be able to spot Buck here, working things from Master's side. Going to do his best to try and strip up this flooring like we talked about earlier when Dark Zero was in a very similar circumstance on this site. We do have Canadian all the way over in Narnia in comparison to where the bomb site is, though. So just trying to make sure Fear X, if they do try and go for that full clear, does they have to deal with a few bodies? I do, but now it's been a, a slower start more than anything else. Like we've seen normally, again the Romans being a little aggressive, trying to chew through drones, trying to pick people apart. But even on the drone count, we've only seen two oh. drones die. The Canadian, bless his heart and soul, he, he keeps getting in a lot of these early fights and is being picked off as a result. A good one to find him, Mephi. Stepping up to the plate there and removing him. All five alive still for Fear X, but we were here last round and Dark Zero still went on to win. Oh, those drone mechanics were pretty impressive from Arakaze, not gonna lie. Zip. Not every day you get to get excited about a drone play, right? <laughs> you take what you can get. Exactly. <laughs> NJR, occupying the house stairs for right now. Good boy's gonna make sure that this single panel can be <laughs> utilized. Oh, that was a scary moment there Says. for both parties, respectively. And JR, very little damage dealt to him from that skeleton key, but good boy in turn taking quite a bit from that M590. Well, we all know the SCS shotguns to one, skeleton key, inferior. <laughs> Most definitely. Not quite able to do enough damage. No, I did wonder for a second. I was like, well, they just kind of catch each other here, like at this kind of range, but I do them falling down. At this point, starting to square up for the push through. Again, more stuff being taken away. We saw when it was evil eyes previously, those nades used to remove that here. It's more for the barbed wire. But the two C4s in the back pocket of Nathan Bolo are what I'm looking at here. It might not be vertical denial, but it might be plant denial later into the rounds. It's definitely. This verticality is going to start. We're in a few of Dark Zero's positions, especially with these stuns pouring in, if they can get it in good timing. You can see that Fear X really want to try and work their way in for the most part from Terrace and Office. With that stairwell really being the big issue here, that Nitro Cell is going to get a big play for Bo. But does he know that he still has people over inside of Terrace? Seemingly so. So will try and rotate back in. Bo not good for the shot, though. Zarokaze will take him down. It's a two versus two. This is completely doable for Fear X. We could have every single round here in between these Need two the teams. Arakaze on the cover. 
a move here and Bamba goes down and JR once again very low HP similar circumstances to what we'd seen before it's Rin on a triple but then JR on a heater look at that angle that he has oh! And JR shuts it down in overtime. DZ takes Skyscraper from Fear X. That was absolutely crazy again. Fear X put themselves in a number advantage one situation HP. and give it away. And yes, on the left screen, the man had one HP to his name. What on earth is that? Not exactly high celebrations from Dark Zero, but you understand why. That shouldn't have been that close. They've been taken to the limit by, it sounds bad to say, but by arguably the worst team at the competition. They were the lowest seed coming in. They haven't had good performances. And DZ, who somewhat touted to have a big, deep run here, have really been pushed to the limit. Absolutely. Rin and Good Boy were definitely the standout players oh, here for Fear X. And honestly, considering that, if you have some, you know, those bigger highlight moments for some of those other players, this could be a completely different scenario here. Dark Zero could be down 0-1 on that map. Yes, it was that close. That's why DZ immediately stood up and were like, all right, we got to start talking about this because this could get pretty risky when we start moving over to Chalet. These guys keep this confidence and keep this play style. It's, it's already proven to be a far better series than what I expected. That was a really good map back and forth on the evolution of both teams. You know, the change in DZ in the first half after their timeout. Shield base playing the first few rounds from DRX. Just really exciting all the way from start to finish. And I hope Shelly proves to be the same. But given it's DZ's map pick, I think I still hold to that expectation. This is going to be a 2-0. You like France? Yes. Well, good news. We're heading to France right after this break with Chalet, folks. We'll see you in a bit. Terrible. Putting up the wall directly to the right of her. But again, just like Addict him, does he know? No, he doesn't. Nobody's found the intel. A brutal misplay from D plus Kia and another advantage for Space Station. D plus Kia's drawn in just hasn't been good enough. Um, is the top and bottom of it. You've, six two. you've got six drones left. It's too late now, quartered. It, <laughs> that's the honest answer. You know it's so reactive. <laughs> We've lost somebody in there, so now we're gonna drone it. Right, is it too late? Guys, I don't know if you know this. Uh, there's an Azami inside. Of dormers. We should probably deal with her, right? And Coded's solution is to prone peak the rotate. I mean, it ends up working out, but what have we said? A minute, over a minute, over a minute and a half wasted for D plus Kia on these extensions and these roams from SSG. And sure, they have a 3v3 now, but they're just opening the hatch. They barely even have cafeteria control, and there are still players lurking, like folks on freezer stairs who could undo the execute if. Shockingly, D plus Kia's droning game doesn't suddenly improve in the next 45 seconds. I'm not going to hold my breath that it will do. Uh, we, <laughs> I guess we'll see. Uh, they're going to be heading, still looking to clear top floor. Let's not forget, this is a meeting site. Yes, oh, he's not they're trying freezer. to get the verticals. Yes, they're trying to ensure that they can get in there safely. But ultimately, D plus not even really pushing themselves into a position to be able to put the diffuser down now. They're going to be heading in towards kitchen. That's where they're looking for that final execute. Quarter has it in hand. They've got the man above. There is the potential here. But Forrest is just going to play the smoke game from D. This 10 seconds left to go. Woogie man, he knows somebody might be on freezer, whether it was droned or not. He's gonna check that Goo reveals his position. The first gunfight doesn't work. Volt gets the initial kill, and the trade's going D plus Kia's way. 1v2, but Hot and Cold's got the drop. Coded planning the diffuser. Do they have the intel? He's going too far to the left. He can't quite get the angle on the ace. Just barely sees him at the last second. 0.5 seconds remaining in that diffuser, maybe even less. And that's what separated the 4-2 for D plus Kia. And now a 5-1 half instead for SSG. Yeah, it's tough, uh, it's tough for D plus Kia because you look at it now, and I always say this about a 5-1 half, SSG move on to the attack and they just need to find one site. They're not gonna be happy with the 7-5, which is what it would end up if they can only win on one site, but ultimately they just need to find one site that they can get those wins on and they will at some point double it up and get those two wins that they need. And I just can't see D plus Kia holding on at the minute. SSG, uh, you know, it's not just been about attack versus defense. It's not just been about intel and droning. SSG are just a step ahead of the game at the minute. They just play more as a team, more cohesive, um, working with each other, baiting opportunities out for each other. Hot and cold, great patience at the end there to ultimately find that diffuser, get it shut down. Um, great one there. I think we've just got a slight technical delay um, where we're just going to have to get the players back out and into the lobby, but it shan't be long and we'll be back going. Does mean uh, officially, though, with that half, uh, 
The trend stays true. Only one attacking round for D plus Only Kia one. in all of their maps. Very, very rough stat line, but with their defense is being better, and Woogie Man's still maintaining a very solid performance on that attacking side. I believe somewhere between eight to nine kills by the end of that half. Really the only one from D plus Kia, though, who has, of course, been showing up on the scoreboard, but making the big plays they needed to get them closer to those end round moments. The front and back line, aside from him, it's just not been there. You could at least sometimes say, all right, you know, maybe the droning is okay or the supporting game is there, but it's those entries that aren't picking up the numbers. I mean, SSG four and two on the opening picks, maybe, Maybe the front line is the only problem, but with those moments with Foltz not getting droned, nobody be able to clear Attic, nobody clearing Jane, I know inside of dorms costing even more time and a body by the end of the clear. Really everything aside from Woogie Man so far this series, it's either been mediocre at best, hit or miss, or just outright not good at worst. <laughs> Well, we'll see whether we have any improvement in the second half. It's going to be an interesting contrast now to see SSG on the attack. I'm expecting to see a uh, much better drawn economy, much better um, efficient use of that Intel utility and showing just how important it is. I'd be very surprised to see SSG, for example, getting caught out twice on the flank from somebody on the top floor. Um, I just don't think we'll be seeing that sort of thing happen. So um, as we get back into things, of course, um, D plus Kia, it's just that opportunity for them to have a reset. The, I mean, the technical timeout might not actually have come at the worst time, really, just to let them take the foot off the gas a little bit and just slow things down. Definitely not a bad time just to center yourself. Obviously, players can't talk during a I tech pause. I translated so. that for you, by the way. What? The foot off the gas. I translated it for you <laughs> so you'd understand. What's the what's the British version? I didn't know it was. We'd probably say accelerator. Accelerator? Yeah, we have an accelerator pedal. You have a gas pedal. Well, one is significantly shorter to say. <laughs> so in terms of like communicating it, my way is a lot better. I mean, it worked well. It did its job, I guess. It did. I and you know what's funny? This doesn't have the same finesse. You you say I suppose it's not. You know, it's too erudite for us Americans. <laughs> accelerator, polysyllabic, gas, mono. But also, I didn't even realize that you were translating it. You said foot off the gas, and you're like, I translated it for you. And I was like, I have no idea what you could be referring to. Literally not a not a hint of a clue at what you could be I see that you about. are drinking some tea, though, Carter. I am. I see I, that you've, you know, you decided you were getting involved with the Brits today. Let me take, so let me take the tea back out, because now they're starting to get low. You've been drinking the entire brew, I as have. we would call a cup of tea, with the tea bag in. Is that okay? Is that not allowed? It's generally frowned upon. Is it? Yeah, you'd normally take the tea bag out. You know what else is frowned upon? <laughs> not, I believe, uh, I believe not participating in the afternoon tea. I told you that. If, in confidence. if there were, if there were, I told you that in confidence. Well, I, I, no, I'm not talking about you. I'm just saying. I feel I like. Don't like tea, I, I feel just like, get off my back. I'm not. I, I'm not on anybody's back, Tim. I'm just saying. If you had a theoretical British, uh, I don't know. We'll say somewhere between 30 to 40 year old gentleman, <laughs> and this, this is sounding awfully convenient. <laughs> and if this. If this man... What, what sort of head of hair does he have? Um, you know, uh, there have been better days. Okay. There have been better days. And if this man the did not... The hairline has seen better yes, times. Yes, it, ha it has. Listen, it's, it's, you know, it's not 2005 anymore. It's, uh, it's been a long time. <laughs> if this man did not enjoy the traditional afternoon tea that his countrymen might, I don't know, frowned on such a dereliction of his duty. See, afternoon... You see, you're you referring there specifically to afternoon tea. You know, I'm, I might be educating you a little bit here. In Britain, that's a different thing. Oh. Um, so it's not just a cup of tea that you would drink in the afternoon. An afternoon tea is like a specific thing. So you would sit down with it. It's like a sit-down thing. Yes, you may have tea, but you'd have, like, little sandwiches, little cakes, things like that, little sort of finger wow. nibbles. Um, so afternoon tea is like an actual set like, event, really. It's like you'd sit down with friends and you'd have, like, a little... Yeah, so Very it's not just a cup of tea that you would have in the afternoon. Well, Tim, that's a very astute observation. I, I dislike tea of any variety. Well, I was about to say, it's a very astute observation who, for one who finds a, a cornerstone of British culture so repugnant. Yeah. Just not a fan of the old... <laughs> <laughs> but we are we are back into it. Shall we talk about some seed? <laughs> I suppose we might not be for much longer, depending on what happens on this attacking half. But <laughs> you could be right. But, but actually, to your point about SG's attacking half, again, all they need is two bomb sites. That B is 7 5. But that could potentially happen. Again, SSG's Oregon game against Bliss yesterday, both were incredibly slow. I used the word lethargic to describe them, and not only is it, one, just a very good word, but two, very apt to describe SSG's performance yeah. because, again, they could fall on, they had their fallbacks. They would bring a Brit Blitz to try to either rush elbow or rush down freezer stairs, and now they have the Ying and the Grim as well to try to make this a lot easier. But the SSG drone economy, it was very hit or miss. Some rounds getting great value, some rounds not at all, especially with that Solus on the board. Of course, not used right now, but still, the potential is there for D plus Kia to start picking up rounds. 
Quartered, um, interestingly, at the minute, is just reinforcing Attic, um, but he's in big tower at the minute. He's just sort of playing in and around this rotate, um, and I'm not sure if that's something that SSG are aware of. Going to take a sneaky little move up to T3 here, and it's already likely been drawn and checked. Uh, when also, SSG, if they've done their prep, he he's done that. He's done this yeah. already. He, this is a position that, you know, Coded or Wardens in general will play, because what do you think of in big tower? Flash is being chucked in the windows and just trying to hide yourself. Hot and cold is over that side, but the rest of SSG is stacking up over here. And this might not be a bad call because you're just <laughs> taking Coated out of the equation. Forrest goes in, completely full flash, but doesn't matter. Slings the shield on his back, and he's going to start getting that diffuser down. Almost certainly going to stick it. There's nobody in a position to prevent or deny it. And there it goes. Activated. Woogie Man too late with the Nitro. Does manage to find Fultz, though. J90, hot and cold, one apiece. Four versus two as Ashen takes down Damali. And all of a sudden, D plus Kia, they are on the back foot. They are trying to fight their way back into sight. They have become the attackers, trying to retake that ground soldier. He hears the repel. He knows that there's one there. Manages to take down J9 or two versus three, but only about 12 seconds. He runs headlong into the barrel of Ashen, and this is SSG absolutely snatching and grabbing this round away from D+. The time is gone. Woogie Man, it doesn't matter what you do. The round is over, and SSG, they head to map point. Love that call from SSG because what were we talking about? One benefit of this potential tech pause. D plus Kia, you just went down 5-1. Take some time to center yourself. Calm down the emotions. Take a breath. And How do you think they feel okay. after that, right? And I was about to say, <laughs> SSG were like, all right, let's turn it back up to 11. Let's yep. just immediately launch back into it. And the practical and strategic benefit of that call as well, if, you, if it works out, you've just gone up to match or, or map point, 6-1 scoreline in a match. Forever the Bride, or Forever the... What's the third I'm looking forward here? I've already messed up the intro. <laughs> Bridesmaid. The there it is. Never the Bride. Correct. That's the best way I can describe it. Remember the Bride? Never the Bride. <laughs> Never the Bride. Never the Bride, always the Bridesmaid might be a better one. That's the best way to describe Fear X anyway. So close, at least here. We've seen improvements as the tournament has gone by. They brought us up to overtime. They were up 3-1 at one point. They were given Dark Zero the runaround on one of the most defender-sided maps in the game. But ultimately, the North American side persevered off the back of some excellent rounds from individual players, but also as a team, just ensuring VRX's stream and nothing but full white flash the entire time, it felt like. An 8-6 win in the end on the map pick of VRX. Now we're going into Chalet, which is Dark Zero's map pick, and I think the series will play out the way that we expect, and all history will remember is a 2-0 for Dark Zero. Absolutely. You know, a lot of interesting prospects there in Skyscraper, but it all ended up being for not, sadly, from Fear X. They had a very hard-fought map, and yes, that is their selection, but now we go to a completely different script, Chalet, which has been a pretty interesting map thus far here That was SI. horrific. Yeah. The spray pull-down while he's on 1 HP as well is just the worst. I, oh, my. I, I, I genuinely could not believe that NJR won that situation at all. Not only that he had 5 HP at the start, but it, he somehow took another round and didn't die. Just mind-boggling. You know what the scariest thing for me is? That's probably the first game that we've seen uh, PRX go positive on entry. As mentioned coming into it, they were minus 16 on entry across the whole competition, but looked quite convincing. And you can see really the difference between the two teams comes down to the three lower players on the side of PRX. Mephi, Arakaze, and Demic. Yes, they had a couple of high moments throughout the game, but ultimately, just not at the standard required. And I think at a tournament like this, like you can see from Dark Zero, you really need the vast majority, if not all, of your team firing on all cylinders. Consistency is key, and it's always it been a thing in Siege. You can see those massive gaps in teams when it's a one- or two-man show in comparison to a team that is, as you said, firing on all cylinders. You have every single player in the server uh, putting their hand in the pot and getting something out for your squad. And as for Dark Zero, at least during Skyscraper, they were able to muster that in a pretty convincing way. You know, the first portion of their uh, defensive rounds were not exactly Exactly looking great, but I will have a big shout out here to Mint on that timeout, slowing things down, allowing them to try and reassess the situation and what was going on. If you remember, right after that timeout is when Canadian popped off with, I think, a quad kill in the very next round. You guys have made things even worse and given Dark Zero two more. Or actually, no, I take it back. Three guys, percent. Yeah, three percent given over. Box. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, Fearx have converted some fans. Three percent of them. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, at this point, it's still 92% to Dark Zero. No surprise. Again, coming into this series, 
everyone had Dark Zero down on their predictions, I expect, to walk away with a 2 0. Phoenix have put up a pretty valiant effort so far, but they're going to have to work even harder here. Coming into Chalet, not their map pick, and starting here on the defense. That's the only real bit of reprieve they've got, the little bit of comfort they can take. But I think Dark Zero are still going to make it very difficult for them regardless. Most definitely. No bad ban coming out here as well. That dictates that Firax more than likely wants to try and uh, be aggressive towards Dark Zero. Maybe mm. a run out from Trench Door, maybe a couple of hop outs from Library, something along those lines. And honestly, we don't really see Nomad in every single lineup. She's brought every once in a while yeah. on Chalet when that's something that you can consider. But, you know, for a lot of these doors, I mean, it's just a simple Claymore or something like that, and you're pretty much good to go. Virax is going to ban mm. out Solus here. I really like this idea just with how much Canadian loves this operator. Absolutely agree. And coming back to the Nomad point, like, Gridlock, we saw a little bit on the last map as well. Not the perfect alternative to a Nomad, but mm. as an operator these days, like, Gridlock does so much. Let's not forget, although they've been nerfed, she's got two nades, the ability to get rid of gadgets, has the super shorty, mm -hmm. a decent gun, the track, she's got four of them, like does so much on one operator that actually, despite being a one speed, is still quite handy to entry players who need to get a lot done with the team. So I do think you'll probably see her get brought out once or twice on this map. Let's more so towards things like Cafe, you'll see her picked up, but again, you've seen her a moment ago on Skyscraper. No reason why the teams might not gravitate towards her here as well. We'll see if Mephi picks that up a little bit later on. But now though, we get underway in Kitchen and Dining, as said Fearx start on the defensive side. Dark Zero, what have you been cooking with this new lineup? Because Chalet has been a, a map they've enjoyed for a long time. I think about when they used to play it back in North America. I can think about the number of times that I saw Troy playing out on Office Balcony with the Capital and just cooking whoever was sat on the mezzanine uh, shield alive. Yeah. They just could do nothing. And NGR especially, I think, was... A little bit of a definer for being able to open up the Five rotate hole inside of library box that then moves you through into library itself and you used to dance in and out of library box and Attackers library itself. Mm -hmm. So very, very proficient at this map. Definitely got some hallmarks to it that define or are defined by Dark Zero. And I think once we get them onto uh, or at least into the round, you'll see some of that start to shine. And that is where I think VRX are going to struggle. Absolutely. And I was just about to touch on this as well. Bo here with the Lion. And overall, this lineup from Dark Zero looks unbelievably annoying, especially with their explosive nature with Pambazoo here that oh, can man. potentially fly up the hatch. Imagine. I mean, this is going to run amok of Fear X, and they're really going to have to keep their head on a swivel. Off the back of an E1D coming in, Grim coming out, the Ying's following through as well. Pamba could wreak absolute havoc inside the back line, especially in the sights of Fear X. If they aren't prepared for this, or aren't at least aware that it's a thing that's in their wheelhouse, this is going to stink. It's the only way that it can be summarized. Most definitely. They're doing their due diligence as well, getting these drones fired up on the top floor, making sure they're implemented to and slow down Fear X, or at least gather some information on their next move. Obviously, that also dictates that somebody is going to need to be on those drones. So if somebody passes away a little bit later on, they'll more than likely immediately hop two. Ren's going to be able to at least get rid of one, but now they're more than aware that Ren is playing inside of Master. There we go. Couple of the launchers firing on through onto half wall and into bedroom, just sniffing out what's going on, trying to push back some of those defensive players on Fear X that are holding maybe a little bit tighter to the line than they would like. It gives the room for Pamba to get in. Now that they're sure no one's going to be pushing their way through, as full flashed himself, admittedly. It looks like this flash heavy play is definitely not going to stop coming into Chalet either. It was their thing massively on the last map, and it's carried on here. It's why I'm partly surprised not to see the Ying banned away by Fear X, to be honest. Oh, Pambazoo with a nice kill onto Demic. That was that top floor engagement that they were looking for. Good boy's going to get tagged up as well. I believe that was from one of the windows over here. I have a hop in for the library hallway soon, but they don't want to try and get too overly aggressive. Otherwise, he more than likely will get punished. That stun, Good boy's going to step directly into, and he's more than likely not even going to see his own demise. It's nope. actually, he will get Pambazoo, <laughs> but Bolo's there in transition to be able to take him down. They are honestly getting bullied by these flashes, though. And again, I'm really surprised they don't have more answers to it. I know they've got the Wamai. I know they've got the Ward. And there's not too much more you can do. But ban against the Ying, for me, would have been the play coming into this game. Arakasi oh. with it all to do. Nothing to be said. A very easy first round for Dark Zero. A global operator working wonders with that EE1D. Lion constantly and consistently able to lock down Fear X and make it to where they really can't move. They're a stick in the mud. Dark Zero are in full transition. They're being to the top floor or onto the site. It was very well met by Dark Zero and Fear X not able to hold a candle to their light. Oh boy. All right, so already we're seeing that there's uh, difficulties for Fear X. Admittedly, when Dark Zero come into this with the game plan they've got, Everything being structured and planned out. Canadian, 
Getting the launchers in, opening up a Pam of Bazoo to charge forward, having the Ying Candelas flying in off the side of the back of that. That's really good coherent team play, and we saw this at points back on the last map. Maybe not as consistent as what I imagine we'll see it here, but mm -hmm. if the trend continues like this, I am worried that VRX will just get absolutely slammed here, and it'll be a very quick map. It's really scary as well, Des, because you could see the conversation happening for Dark Zero in the first opening minute and a half right there, because they actually had Pamazu push all the way down into Wine to go, to, uh, go for that hatch. Um, whether it be, you know, Canadian or Nave, we obviously can't, don't know that, because we we're not in their comms, right? But one of them was like, hey, let's just pull this back. We're going to actually have you address Solarium instead, and we're going to take this from the top floor, rip all of this out, because they're more than likely going to be able to stop the plan if we go for it this way. And it was masterfully done. They had to try and deal with that top floor pl uh, presence from Fear X, and they did it swimmingly. Really feeling a bit cheeky. Probably not. No. Sat waiting, hoping someone's going to come from spawn this side, but... Hollow on the 9mm. <laughs> I just think it's not going to happen. No, I'm, you know, I'm, a, I'm a kind of a hater on that. You got the 1.5. I mean, I'm just, I'm just <laughs> it's, saying. It's really. not the one to be running. Well, they're saying that some players do prefer just having the consistency across all guns and just like to run hollow only on everything. I, I, whenever uh, whenever we bring that up, I always think of Shiko because Shiko is always running the hollow site. Within, like, recent history, he's added the 1.5 to a handful of guns, but there for a very long time, it did not matter what site was available. He was running the holographic. What well, you might see the uh, thing we spoke about earlier come through where you shoot the Zotop off and it immediately activates. However, NGR is trying to go in and the wall has been electrified. It will be a little bit of a giveaway though. Now the EMP can come on through and the wall shall be opened up. Round can resume as normal, even with the two brown, the Kaid stack. Very well done. You could see that Firex were doing their damnedest to try and make it to where the Electro Claw wouldn't land in the ice. That's going to allow that to actually start itself up, but it's not going to work out the exact way that they wanted it to. Rin? Crazy transition here. Went all the way over into Trophy. <laughs> yeah. Did not expect Rin to have already been all the way over in practically Asgard. Mm. Is, uh, I suspect they know as well, by the way, because mm -hmm. you saw, I forget who it was that was outside the window, but they were sat watching it, expecting a jump out of some kind. In fact, it was Bolo. So I think they know that Rin is somewhere around the map, but don't ultimately want to invest too much time chasing him around. We've already gone through half the round, for example. They've rotated a bunch of players oh. up towards this top side. Good boy, the reverse, reverse, the delete Bolo. Not far from the end of the world. We've already seen a number of times that Dark Zero have gone on to win a four versus five, but last thing you probably want is good boy running his brains out once again. Arakaze to fall to Naif into a 4v4. He's got the big garage position, but there's so many angles working their way in here from Fear X. This is going to be a big deciding moment, but oh, like two ships in the night, Derry. <laughs> Pass by. Yep. Nobody knowing where the other one is. Pamba, some soul searching, and he'll find Rin. No camera needed, just a solid shot. A little swing there to be able to discover that player on the top balcony. FE working their way up now as well. Might be able to find one here in the kitchen hall, but oh, nice little shoulder peek there from Dark Zero. Be able to keep them alive, at least for now. And now Fear X only have one man on site. Good boy, it's a one-man show for them. FE does have the opportunity to try and hit this flank, but remember, they do know that he's around the space. And GR taken low and finished off as well. Problem is, good boy's probably the last guy that you want sat inside of sight. I say that, naturally cast a curse as he hits the deck. It's all down to Mephi. They knew that he was trapped up inside bar gaming, so they could execute onto the site. That's what they've got undone. Full takeover of wine. It's going to go down here. It's three players left. This is a big ask for Mephi to save. Oh, Nave very quickly nips that in the bud. Mephi not really able to do too much given the scenario, and honestly, it will require a lot of heavy lifting in general. So, Fear X now go down two rounds here on the defensive end. Dark Zero looking indomitable on these offenses. I mean, Fear X, yeah, they get to pick the pick on the bow, but Dark Zero already readdressing things across the board and able to make some very serious power moves. I was just going to do a check, actually, because we spoke about it coming into it, but really the big matchup that's going to come tomorrow is GK coming up against Fear X for who goes home and who gets to stay, admittedly in a very precarious situation, but who gets to stay here in the competition. And I think the way it pans out is GK currently have two points. They've won two separate maps. Haven't won any series, but won two maps. Therefore, they have themselves two points. You get four points for 2-0. You get three points if you win 2-1 and the other side gets one point. And then the reverse, obviously, based on if you only take one map or no maps. And interesting, that means I think if Firex was to go on and win that series 2-1, and one, they'd get three points. You'd see GK getting one point. They'd both be on the same number of points. And there'd be a tiebreak situation coming in. Mm. So... Although that first map has really done a favor for Fear X by coming close, if this turns into an absolute absolute slaughter, that might actually massively play into GK's favor. So every round, although it might not feel too important, 
it could be the difference between staying and going home if we are expected to win 2-1 tomorrow. You got to worry about that plus minus. That's a big thing right there. Because the thing is, based on how they played last map, I could actually see Fearx winning. Do I think it will be a 2-0? No, but I could see them beating GK. Yeah, absolutely. I, I definitely can agree with you on that one. These two teams seem like uh, they're both pretty feisty in their own way, and it'd be a nice little matchup to see. So see if we actually end up getting that down the line. As of right now, it's looking like it will be the case, but... Either way, Dark Zero trying to address things on this top floor with the drone game. A few bodies up here, obviously, as they need to hold on to library for this setup. They do. It's kind of the, the area to defend, the box to hold on to. With most sites, if you can't play them laterally, or if not holding upstairs would be far too risky for you, then, to, uh, then head upstairs. In some wild cases, even downstairs. I think about when defending bar stage on club, for example. We saw G2 playing around that from the basement with Doki tossing C4s up through the hatch. It was a little bit wild. But more often than not, you do find yourself playing it from above. And that is why you can see library being held here. Or at least it was, until they've been forced out. <laughs> yeah, they got some active players over on the office side of things that could try and thwart Dark Zero's game plan later on down the line if they can get a clean rotation. But knowing DZ, there's not only going to be utility or a drone or a body there, but somebody probably willing to try and ice you as well. MP out. You have to put that on the ground. I confused this for a split second. A lot of people using those e impact EMPs nowadays. They're like, wait, hold on. This one, this one's not an impact. This is Thatcher. Yes. So, if able to get that out, and they'll be able to open up the back of bar stock, one of the most important portions of that bomb site. This radius is quite significant. I mean, it just goes to show that even with the mini EMPs being in the game now, the impact EMPs, that actually Thatcher's still got quite a decent pick rate and is still quite... You know, crucial to many in attack, given the radius is, hu radius is huge. The time nice. that Gags are delayed for stays up longer as well. Yes, very nice. I mean, DZ, once again, commanding position, 5v3. He's out here. I'm Canadian. He's the one with the Feel case it. here. A couple of angles here for Pambazu as well. And I love that they're just patiently waiting to see what Firax's response is going to be. Rin takes the... Oh, no. my. There's how? no way. I have no idea how Rin how? Even knew that he was there. It's a triple kill for Rin. It's down to Nave. Nitro out. It's going to deal some damage. Nafe does have a chance here if he can find this angle. Oh, man. There should be one creeping in from behind him right now as well. I'm getting so nervous, Derry. Oh, Arakaze. Wow. The perfect timing and transition there. Swings out with the TCS G12 and lops the head off of the last Dark Zero member. They're really going to want that one back. I am not sure where Rin... I don't know if he came up, like, lobby stairs? Uh, that's the only thing that makes sense to me. Like, is that he where went... else could he have come from? He would have been seen pretty much anywhere else, right? But there was a player dancing up and down library stairs, and I'm not sure if that meant they took their eye off jungle, and then you've just had uh, Rin just run through, down across Mez, and then into library from there. I'm not 100% sure, but maybe at some point I'll have to go back and find out about that. But that was the backstab that Dark Zero were not expecting. We weren't expecting to get it caught us completely off guard. Just danced his way through and has absolutely destroyed Dark Zero from what was a very commanding position. And that's a round snatched away, I think, from the American side. They, they were looking at this game and thinking, we should be up 3-0 and zero right now. Yeah, absolutely. There, there's no way that any of them predicted that Rin was going to do something so magical on that top floor. But sometimes you need a little luck on your side and things. Obviously, a lot of mechanical ability leading into that for Rin. But the positioning there and oversight from Dark Zero that usually doesn't happen. Good lord. Five seconds remain. Normally one of the more composed teams that we see at tournaments like this as well. Good with the info game, but I guess really this is now you're seeing why BitFearX has got the balance of the Nomad. Haven't quite got the same security as before. You need someone to be watching those drones. Maybe the past reliance or the kind of air quotes muscle memory of having those air jabs down to provide enough cover is now. Lighting them, or at least putting them on the backside. However, I do feel like Dark Zero aren't the kind of team to let that happen again. Most definitely. E1D here for Bo. So rocking that 417. Oh, keep harping on that thing as long as that thing is a solid weapon. Because anything you can two-shot somebody with in this game is uh, all right by me. Oh, he's going to be picking that thing over any other weapon I can get my hands on. I can tell you that. We haven't seen the F2 a bit on Twitch once again, which is a oh, nice have. change of pace. That, yeah. yeah, yeah, man. It's, it's well, nice. Because it some of them run in the DMR as well. Mm -hmm. That's yeah. in that mix. Yeah, it's really, really nice, honestly. Whenever both guns are usable, that's really what you want at the end of the day, right? So maybe one day, Papa Ubisoft will bless us with uh, grips again on the F2, and then <laughs> everybody will just convert back over to the church. <laughs> <laughs> that is the problem. Remember that running around and terrorizing ranked games everywhere? Oh, man. Mm. 
I saw uh, Paulu and uh, Ness yesterday on Ash and Twitch, and I was like, this lineup in 2019 <laughs> is crazy. <laughs> this throwback. Rin's got the right idea. Just, uh, again, like ships in the night passing each other by a matter of pixels, and you imagine there'll be a gun battle ensuing at some point, but... Looks like Nafe has already dropped away to go and join Canadian up on Solar Side. So now at least a little bit of a, a pause in the action. Now it's back underway once again. Good boy with a run out. Getting aggressive again, abusing the fact that there is no Nomad available on this map. Well, if they were able to get a little bit of info on that, they'll definitely know that there's two bodies downstairs from Fear X. Great patience here from Dark Zero, utilizing as many windows as they can get their hands on. Pambazoo able to make it happen from the bathroom balcony, but good boy, will be able to take down Bolo here to at least equalize things for now. There's a minute remaining here in between these two. Obviously, Dark Zero are the ones that are in control of this gas pedal for the off offensive perspective, but it doesn't mean that Fear X can't go for some big sweeping rotations. We already see one building its way up on the library side of things. Demic, oh my, Canadian with a find through the wall onto said player. And that's going to force Good Boy to peel back. Yeah, he was really relying on some kind of crossfire or distraction to force a fight there. He's been holding inside a jungle for the longest time, but Demic falling by the wayside means they've only got two left and they cannot leave Arakaze alone in a one versus three. With it all to do, Pamba's got the right sort of idea. Hold for the cover. Arakazi goes down. Good boy's on for a triple, but it would need to be an ace. And Dark Zero are not going to open that window. They slam the door shut, and they take themselves a 3-1 lead. A very clean round there from Dark Zero, being able to keep their head in the game and not allowing themselves to play into Fear X's hand. I especially like that even though those picks earlier on going the way of Fear X, uh, uh, you know, weren't immediately addressed, they were able to utilize those drones, utilize their utility, and start to try and take control over these key pivotal portions of the map that they were looking for to try and get this case down. They got control of Master, transitioned that into a Kitchen Plant, and what... Well, from that moment on, not really too much to say there for Fear X. I mean, yeah, we do have a moment for Good Boy there with a nice little impact from West Main. But even that, at the end of the day, was not something that was out of the realm of possibility for Dark Zero to deal with. It's going to be attack time out here from Fear X as Dark Zero are already up three rounds on the offensive side. Fear X obviously with just one on their defense. Proved to be an absolute mirror of Skyscraper as well. We got to this point on the last map where it was 3-1 to Fear X. Dark Zero called in the tap timeout. Went on to win the next two rounds. That's the big question mark now is will Fear X be able to get a couple of defensive rounds on the board? Like we said, I'm pretty sure every map, I'd have to go back and double check the stats, but pretty much every map is defender leaning at this competition. So you would expect seeing 4-2 halves, even 5-1 halves, a 3-3. Already feels like it'll be disappointing for Fear X, and they've got to go onto the attacking side on a map that isn't their map pit next. So let's hope for them they get something out of this. If they can go the way towards Dark Zero again here in round five, it'll end up being a 5 1 half. We all know that starts to spell disaster for the Korean side and their hopes of having any kind of advantage going in against GK tomorrow. Well, if the map pool was a dartboard, Derry, Chalet would be the bullseye as it's practically dead center in between all of the maps. It's at 57% defensive overall win rate. And I know you're going to be shocked. The most winning site, Bar Gaming at 65. Hmm. Five seconds left. What map, which map is the most attacker leaning at the moment? I'll figure that out for you. We went through Defender. We said it was Skyscraper and Clubhouse. Clubhouse being the first, Skyscraper the second. But Activate. it's Consulate at 52. Mm, there you go. And the Defender leaning. And Everything, the, every map over 57%, uh, over 50%, sorry, is crazy. Yeah, and Think back to the old days when like Border and like Coach used to be like 38% or something crazy. The Defenders? Yes. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Uh, the the uh, times that we've went through with each, the different metas and just the different ways that these maps have played out through history is truly incredible to witness and be a part of. Uh, but actually, crazy thing about that console thing while we're on the uh, subject, the CEO meeting uh, site has the most plays as well. 33% defensive win uh. rates. <laughs> you guys, you guys got to stop. <laughs> it sounds like it sounds like bar cocktail on cafe. It's exactly the same without having a terrible win rate. Yet people keep on playing it on the defense. It's balmy. However, when we step again, very execute heavy and very pacey comp here coming out from Dark oh. Zero. Looking at the blitz, looking at the ying, looking at the movement already coming in as we charge on fours. Demic getting himself on the board finally. However, it's three quick kills coming the way of Dark Zero into yet another one. And Demic, you found one, my friend. You've got to find the rest. It's just not going to happen. Dark Zero. They keep up that pace, and I did say if it goes to 4-1, and one, I expect to 5-1 half. That timeout, at least in that round, did nothing for Fear X.
Yeah, that was the first time that we saw Dark Zero use that operator lineup with a downshift. Just threw that thing right into high RPM and flew into sight. Yep. Amazing stuff. And that's, that's really what I like out of Dark Zero is that they will take an operator lineup like that and play it out very passively to kind of allow the defense to get used to things. Oh, yeah, we have this. We have that. That doesn't mean we're exactly going to try and go for an aggressive look. And then the very next time around, they're like, all right, here's the ace in the hole. <laughs> like We are flying into sight. They're going to eliminate every single target they can in a uh, pretty low amount of time. So very well done there from Dark Zero as they practically batter and bruise Fear X immediately after their timeout. Dude, I can't imagine they're going to let up here in round six. Keep it going. Get to 5-1. Oh, yeah. Give Look yourself, at that. <laughs> just give yourself a momentous advantage going into that second half. Again, as their map pick, you would expect to see them run away with it. But I'll come back to the line I've said all tournament long. For two halves to a game of Siege. You just don't know what to expect when the sides switch. Most definitely. Siege, one of those very finicky titles when it comes to this because it's a complete mental change. There's a lot going on there when it comes to the different aspects of a map and you have to readdress everything all over again. You really can't play it the same way, obviously. So, Nave, gonna be beginning working his way out into the front courtyard. Does have bow and toe. The bathroom window open here. He's been looking pretty stellar so far on this lion, able to find some cheeky kills every once in a while, and just using that utility to its fullest advantage. But as of right now, it's obviously been Nafe and really NJR and Pamba that we've been seeing a lot of, uh, especially now. It's Nafe that previous map, kind of in the middle of the pack, but nothing to shake a stick at. Still, I think he still had 10 kills, but it was definitely the Pamba show as we'd seen alongside Canadian on Skyscraper. Getting themselves in really let the drones do the work for now at the very least. Nate's been rolling on through as you're seeing, catching out an F0, got rid of a couple of cameras as well, almost had the uh, motion sensor, but <laughs> immediately shot out. I imagine I'm on the other side, I don't expect. Oh, we didn't see this last time now, but Pam is straight up. Arakazi was here last time, not here now, and he's just going to walk on through like, where is everyone? Most of them are upstairs, my friend. You found one at least lay down behind the kitchen counter, eating cake underneath, but you can have everything in this round of five and four, four dark zero, and Fear X. They've lost control of the site. They've got to fight their way back down here. But the vertical may work in Fear X's favor unless Dark Zero can unseat them. Rin just post box as soon as he tries to step anywhere near the site. Oh, well, you know, the verticality would assist if they had it open. That's the problem, Des. They don't have any verticality available to them up top. Just some very simple angles working in from the hatch. But this is looking like a dark zero round all over again. The writing's on the wall for Demic. He'll be able to get one, but that's a lot of help going the way of DZ. Naif, Pambazoo, and Canadian waiting oh. and chomping at the bit to take out this last member and transition to the defensive side. And they've got angle from double window basically the whole way through. It's just like, what do you even do here, right? Oh, like, he sees it. It's horrible. He, like, he knows he's uh -huh. there. He oh. gets his man, but he's got to find more than that here as well. Right sort of idea, but not That's enough it. time. Demic, it feels like the wrong time to be picking up kills, my friend. I won't lie to you. Is that half completely dominant by Dark Zero? Five and one. And I think across, outside of Demix's last couple of kills there, there were what, maybe 12, 13 kills across six rounds of Fear X. An average of about two around. That gives you an idea of just how dominant it was. Yeah, most definitely. Fear X not really able to do too much with their defensive side here on Chalet. And it was a masterclass offense from Dark Zero. They were addressing things wholeheartedly and with solid strategy. I really appreciated, uh, I mean, even inside of this strategy, their ability to get that info game working into their favor and discovering that there's really only one person on site. And they quickly transition into this full-blown execute that Fear X cannot do a single damn thing about. Support shorty kills are always fun to see as well. So we might have a reset here maybe in a moment. We'll do uh, see what the uh, admins say, folks, but just stay along with us here for a split second. Yep. The rehost has been confirmed, so we'll hop back in. But you know what the beauty of this is? This one's super, super easy for our, uh, our, our I almost said our operators, our spectators, or rather our uh, <laughs> Easy for our operators. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. So they'll <laughs> really be buying to... into the law here and calling <laughs> the players operators. <laughs> the, bad, the bad thing, too, is I was actually talking about our spectators. So <laughs> <laughs> our operators of the spectation machine. Uh, it's going to be super easy for them, though, because it's it's right down the middle. It's split half, so they can literally practically put anything on for Dark Zero scoreline as long as it meets five. And then you just got to give Fox one round. So we'll be back. <laughs> <laughs> in pretty quickly here. Yeah, not an awful lot to worry about there. And again, just pausing for a second with more reflection on that. Five and one. 
You know, we saw Fear X being really competitive back on Skyscraper, but this, as we expected, is a very different ball game. <laughs> I like. It's just like, no, stop. Did you see that? I, I saw him tap him and say, don't, but what? What did you see? Specific? He was talking. Tut, tut, tut. Can't use those drone rehosts to talk, guys. We no. changed that rule. Ah, tis, tis, tis. <laughs> Tech pause means no talkie. Not allowed. No talkie, talkie. Which is horrible to be fair for players when there's a long, like, tech pause as well, and you have to sit there in absolute silence, and you're... You're not even meant really to look away from your screen. You're meant to stay facing forward and center, so there's no kind of, like, collecting information, no gestures that you can get from your coach or other players on your team. A little bit of leniency sometimes afforded, but overall... Yes, you will get a slap on the wrist as we saw a second ago for speaking during a tech pause. Yeah, you can see the admin behind Dark Zero as well, making sure that they're not talking about the game. He was like, what conversation are you having? <laughs> All right, that's approved. <laughs> okay, okay. Yeah, talking about breakfast. Yeah, most definitely. Everything's going to be code worded now from here on out. <laughs> like, <laughs> why does DZ keep talking about the moon landing? Like, <laughs> Did they say they like lemon cheesecake? What? <laughs> <laughs> Some weird stuff like that. Yep. Ketchup on cottage cheese. That's just weird. Like, <laughs> how would you even do that? All right. Moments away here, folks, from getting everybody in. Bo, just, you know, I mean, fashionably late, Bo. Maybe if you were paying attention to your screen, to fair, we can see you. I right. think despite having done this for years and even winning a world title doing it, they joined in the wrong order. <laughs> <laughs> so I guess the reason... So, so I'm going to break down the fourth wall a little bit for those of you at home. The reason why uh, tech pauses and rehosts can take a while sometimes it's not always strictly about re-entering the match settings. It can actually be getting players back in in the right order because it's all tied up to player camps. It's based on the order they sit in on the desk. So if they're just dogpiling in and throwing themselves into any random order, they start getting messy, and that's not fun for anyone. Yeah, exactly. So that's don't, a... don't blame production. Blame the players when cams are wrong because it's normally down to them not joining in the order they've been told to join. Exactly, exactly. That's how we get those transition cams where it's like, why is Pam Bazoo Canadian? Why? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Look at me. I'm the RGL now. <laughs> exactly, exactly. Oh, man. Well, I mean, that offensive half there from Dark Zero was truly disgusting. I, I love the different looks they gave. I love the different pacing that they utilized to really try and give Fox a hard time. And, uh, I mean, for Fear X, there really wasn't anything that was a big sweeping moment for them. Even the round that they ended up picking up, Dark Zero definitely had an opportunity to be able to put that one in the back pocket, too. I'm really curious, actually. I'm checking if Crash's sheets have any light or insight for us. Uh, not the way that I hoped. Um, I was hoping to find out what their most played operators are. I know that Ace is their go-to most played. That's the case for a lot of teams, as you'd expect. Very strong yeah, operators still. I was curious to what level they run the Ying and whether or not that means they'll start drawing bans against them or against them for the operator. Because mm. as we've seen across both maps here, we spoke about it at the end of Sky. <laughs> Poor Fear X have been abused by flash grenades and by the Ying consistently throughout the attacking rounds of Dark Zero. So the stage that... Half the players when they die, don't they can't see anything. They're full flashed. Yeah, Fear X are literally that flash meme on Twitter where it's like, <laughs> yes. hey, are they're hitting sight? Are you sure? <laughs> Just white screen. White screen. <laughs> That's how I know, right? But I do think if like any team looking at this looks, although it's against Fear X, they could look at it and go, okay, they played it a lot there. Is that just a one-off? Is it they only really run that a lot against Fear X? Because they know it's a team they can sort of overwhelm in a very brute force way with a lot of flashes, and they don't do it normally against more sophisticated opponents. Or if it's a trend they've seen across the competition, I do think you have to start banning it out because their use of it, to be fair to them, has been sublime. Oh, absolutely. I'm in full agreement with you right there. That was uh, some truly disgusting stuff, especially from Pambazoo. I mean, Pambazoo yeah. just constantly gunning down every opponent that they put in front of him. I think I saw him only miss, like, one opportunity that entire game with Ying, which is just actually insane yes. so this again goes to show you how incredible these players on dark zero are and that's before they even made these adjustments for nathan bow yes quite terrifying at the best of times i think dark zero has spoke about on this map historically been very very good at really cooking players alive with a sat on mezzanine with capital here over the side switch though the capital is being brought out by fear x it's a good boy running around on that operator here alongside What's become very popular for them, I'd say, the Blitz. They really like these shield operators, as we've seen throughout the series, running Ossa, Monty, and Blitz several times throughout Skyscraper's attacking half. That's not changing here on Chalet. Interesting set of affairs that were just built upon here for Fear X over on the far side for the uh, wall. Exactly what, know what they want to do with this. Might use that as just an angle to be able to... <laughs> Please tell me you saw that. Yeah, are you okay? <laughs> three claymores <laughs> under that hatch down there. That is actually insane. They've oh got my. six. <laughs> they brought six in the round. Look at the, oh my god! There's another <laughs> one on the door! What is that? Dude, 
Dude! Oh my god. It's, I've never it's s- laser art, okay? <laughs> <laughs> wow. I have never seen something like that in my life. Wow. Um, okay. Well, nobody's flanking. I mean, I, I mean, I hope it works out for you guys, but I don't think it's going to be a thing in this round. That, that's the uh, that's the Oppenheimer Claymore strat back there. <laughs> yeah. You step on that, the whole map just disappears. Yeah, Shally Build just crumbles. That's it. Round over. Modern team. All right. Well, they're pushing in quite heavily from this trench side to the north. Not bothered with the front door, at least for now. He's got to repel that angle, right? You'd hope so. I mean, not up there yet, but you'd expect that to change. Uh, comes in, blocks it off the bottom. Really nice use, actually, the smokes here as well to deny this hatch. We haven't seen this done very often. In comes Arakazi being melted away by a miser. It's like, get off me! Shoves him away, but it's still going to be the blitz to fall first. A good hold so far by DZ. And now the bow's back on that angle. Methu is ready and waiting. They've dealt with it, but they cannot get rid of this evil either. Still sat in the corner. Good boy with a nice kill on a nape, though. It's gonna be a hard back and forth here in between he's these gonna two. Die, he's Pamba gonna die to it. He's right over the top. Yes, constantly getting tagged up. Pamba's gonna go down to Rin, though. And NJR has to try and occupy this evil eye to just constantly be that nuisance. Canadian, he's the third <laughs> player to step up inside of Kitchen. It's constantly been a trade back and forth, but they have once again occupied this space and they will control this hatch. Yeah. Now, Mick, the hatch is not the one. <laughs> it yeah. seems like a bit of a death hatch this game. Most definitely. Canadian now on full transition, though. Back oh, downstairs to try and get an assist. Only Demet looked left at the court. Canadian retreating back down to site, but instead went hard right. And like that, NGR is going to get him down. That's two to the full. Make it three. So many times this series, we are seeing Dark Zero players go nuclear precisely when you need them to. I know Virex shouldn't be throwing that. No. No, most definitely not. And uh, you can see that sometimes it just comes down to that one piece of utility you didn't really consider. That evil eye caused yep. so many problems for Fear X. They can't try and put that case down. They need somebody to try and assist. And yeah, Dark Zero are giving up bodies on the hatch. But that round right there, that was NJR and the Alda in perfect transition on top of Maestro's utility usage. I mean, what a round from NJR. I, I get the idea from the Fear X there as well, was to snack all three players and push him from the same direction together, but again, I come back to Demic when he ran in through lobby, didn't look left, didn't see Canadian, yeah. full sprinting away from him to get down blue. If Demic had turned left and gone down blue and looked for a bit of a sidestab angle to make it not so easy for NGR to look at a doorway and hold down left mouse button. That could have been a very different outcome, and I, I praised Fear X for that previously and talking about how Mephi has been a backstab player for them at multiple points, not just back on Skyscraper, but across previous days as well. And that seemingly has gone out the window with those final three players, and they've made it far too easy for Dark Zero to get the close. Well, now, we set on the precipice of a 2-0 here for Dark Zero as they have made things look so unbelievably easy here yeah. on Chalet. For the most part, obviously, that last round, a little mucky, I would say. I did like some of the considerations as well, Des, especially with the Capitao coming in there and smoking off Bo's angle for the hash initially. I mean, if that goes off without a hitch with that Evil Eye not being there, obviously, then that round more than likely goes Firax's way. But Dark Zero having that layered utility just making things really problematic. Or the offense. Bo, does he want to step up? Oh. oh, Bo's gotten so unlucky on a lot of these swings. I've just been noticing that a lot of these transitions or a lot of these repeaks that he's had, he's constantly been just getting his head knocked off. Yeah, that opens things up inside of office. And Arakate is more than happy to take the invitation and the open door straight through top floor. Trying to find someone to gun down, but at least here two have already gone. It's two on the side as well. It's a fair nape on his backside, oh but Pamba's converting as well. Arakaze. Getting a little bit focused on trying to complete no. the kill. What is going on? Damn it! That is not the time to be having a bit of a misclick, my friend. He's got three by himself to bring down. And I simply do not think it is going to happen. One of the quieter fraggers throughout this series. For Dark Zero, Skyscraper might have looked a little bit messy. But coming into Chalet, they've shown the prowess that many have expected of them coming into this tournament. Just feels like this is where it ends for Fear X. They'll have to face off against GK to have any hope of staying in this competition, and even then, it's a tall order. It's definitely. And the rest of the gang, making sure that they don't get overzealous in this situation. Don't want to make it easy moment here for Demic. No looks, no aggression. Force Demic to try and work his way through the map and check every single corner around the way. Canadian gets him with the super shorty and puts Fox in the grave. Dark Zero, 7-1 on Chalet, folks. 
and a 2-0 victory. We expected that coming in. I think everyone would have said in their predictions, easy 2-0 for Dark Zero. The only real shining and redeeming factor there for Fear X was that first map. They did put Dark Zero to the test and that will draw question marks around. Can Dark Zero figure their way out around all these difficult problems that teams may well throw at them coming into the playoffs? Crucial thing to remember for Dark Zero is with that 2-0, they are in a great spot to try and take that top spot away from G2 tomorrow. I think as it stands, G2 are on 12 points, DZ on 11. It is everything to play for, and the winner of that game, they bought, they get past the first round of the upper bracket that goes straight into the quarterfinals. I'm not going to be complaining if I get an auto buy into the quarterfinals of the Invitational. Oh, no, absolutely not. And uh, with that in mind, I mean, you can think just how big of a series we have awaiting us tomorrow in between these two teams. Why is Troy doing this, by the way? He's handshaking and everyone else is fist bumping. And so the players appear to, He's a gentleman. to fist bump, and they're like, oh, I've got to shake hands. And the next player comes on, they go to shake their hand, and it's a fist bump. And it's just like changing back and forth. Like, what do I do? <laughs> <laughs> he's the captain. He's got to shake hands, make sure everybody knows that he's a, a professional. And Canadian, definitely so. Professional grade here between him and Nave on the calls, especially on Chalet. Skyscraper, they really hope that's just a blip and something that they can address here uh, over the next 24 hours before trying to take things over to G2's camp. But who says we even get to that map at the end of the day? Dark Zero, though, once again, with a fantastic series, at least here on Chalet. And again, for me, it's the rounded team performance that really made it more than anything else. It wasn't like one player was shining. You might look maybe at Pamper and say, actually, he's had two brilliant maps just overall. He's the one who you've really seen stepping up and getting the most multi-kills. But I think everyone's had their moments, but maybe a little bit less so, a little bit quieter across the two maps than the rest. But the numbers don't lie. He was on the board. Everyone was contributing, and it was a good, well-rounded team performance. Yeah, most definitely. I mean, what else can you say, especially with a bounce back like that? DZ a little worrisome, again, when it came to that skyscraper map but once they got into home ter ter uh, uh, territory on their map pick everything transitioned into a uh, pretty straightforward affair and again i'll come back to the main point i mentioned on that second map was the yink it was a staple for them in that series on the attacking side of things whether or not a ban in the, in the second map of that would have made a difference i don't really think so to be honest with you yeah but i think teams will look at this and if they've played it a lot throughout the competition so far questions will be asked do we give them that operator because they do look prolific with it i'd argue more so than any of the team that i've casted so far they look phenomenal with it yeah especially just the way that they build up things around that right you have the globals coming in with the lion you have these other tidbits of info working in with grim and things along those lines and it's just so unbelievably annoying i love this strategy from dark zero because it puts so much pressure on the defense. And at the end of the day, you're not even allowed to move. Exactly that. Horrific. And just to give you some stats so you can see how that last map really boiled down, as you can see, it was a bit of a cruising for a bruising from Dark Zero. 7-1 mm -hmm. overall. Lots of high EPS ratings coming out. Naif on 175. And the entry story completely changed because on the last map we did turn around and say, that was actually the first time we've seen Fear X go positive on entry on a map here. It flipped the other way entirely, unsurprisingly, when a team has won 7-1. Yeah, well, we needed your British boy pretty bad for this one, it seems. Yeah. It's Nave, top of the You heap. always need a yeah, British boy. Of course, of course. Now, I've been very, very impressed with Nave throughout this tournament so far. NJR will be our MVP with an EPS of 132. Oh, quick. Woo! Quick, check your stats you've got. See if any player on Fear X now would turn to being positive. Okay. Don't okay. take this away yet, production. Leave it there, please. We've got to look at this. Beep boop, beep bop. One second. Beep boop, beep boop, 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 beep boop. Where are we looking? We're going for groups. I'm almost there. I'm almost there. Uh, uh, cool. Is anyone there? Arrow tells was he negative? He was ne yeah, he had a bad one. Minus 12. Good boy. What was he on? He was minus eight. He's still negative. Rin. Demic? <laughs> Rin's Rin? definitely negative. Rin was, ne Rin was negative. Uh, what about Mephi? Mephi was minus. Nah, they're all negative still. Oh, no. <laughs> I thought we had something, uh, Fear I thought uh, we had something. But uh, life hopefully, is pain. hopefully, they got something for Geeke. But here you soon, are. Huh? This is what I was saying earlier. In terms of like round diff, G2 are still ahead by a few. But I imagine after that series tomorrow, it will be decisively favored one way or the other. But a classic EU versus NA battle here. The winner walks away with the top spot. And similarly, at the other end of the group, GK versus Fear X. Whoever wins that series, given how close the round difference is, will take four spot and survive. The loser will go home. And NIP are just sat there, like, fiddling their thumbs, like, well, we got nothing to do now. We good. Yeah, it's pretty wild, especially for Ninjas in Pajamas, because look at how even they've been playing, right? Plus one on round differential. That is insane, especially with <laughs> over 100 rounds This played. sounds really harsh to say, but like 4-1, like 4 on the other side as well. They
They are the literal definition of mid so yes, far. Yes, actually. <laughs> they are it is literally the battle bang mid. in the middle. <laughs> oh, unbelievable. Oh. Yeah, I mean, for them, it's not been the dream start to a competition. I think some were even worried they might lose out to Fear X, for example. But they're sitting there pretty. It's not going to be like a dream march through like some other um, Brazilian teams are hoping to do. I think for them and Loss, it's been a tough start to the competition overall. The thing is with NIP, you know, Tim says it all the time, they warm into a tournament. They will get stronger as it goes by. So don't think this counts them as being a middling team for the whole competition. That will change. Yeah, absolutely the case. And uh, I mean, what more is there to say? Dark Zero, an amazing series. Once they moved away from Skyscraper, obviously some worrisome moments to hear for our North American fans. But hey, Canadian and Nave apparently got it. They were able to batten down the hatches, be able to fight through that really difficult battle Battle that Fear X put up. So with that, in mind, my boy. yeah, man. With that in mind, I mean, Fear X. I definitely think they still have something in the tank to be able to hopefully produce against GK. Fingers crossed. Either way you look at it, both games in this group tomorrow are going to be a banger. Yeah. The only way I could possibly summarize it. I'm really excited to see both of those play out. I'm not even casting tomorrow, so I get to sit and watch in the green room and be like, oh, it's crazy. <laughs> Maybe I'm going to stand down there and just watch DZ and G2 go at each other because you can imagine. What the lip is going to be like tomorrow, it's going to be crazy. Oh, especially like, I, I, I want you guys to realize this as well. Today was a very quiet day for Canadian. He didn't, he really didn't say anything at all. You know what I mean? I can tell you tomorrow, that is not going to be the case. It's, it's not quite fun, like shouting down someone that you've like, beaten into submission though, right? True. Like you feel like, oh, I'm like kicking a puppy now. This feels bad. <laughs> so I'm, I'm not surprised there wasn't a lot of it. They got the job done and that was the most important mm -hmm. part. Well, I'm glad that I didn't curse him with a jacket because there for a second, <laughs> I was like, ooh. Ooh, it might have been my bad. <laughs> Would have been painful. Either way, didn't curse them. And that is that series done and wrapped up. We'll throw out to a break ahead of our next series. But before then, here's the Intel play of the game. Push his way in while the defense is focused on hot and cold in the repel. The Yorka drone is going to pick that up though, stun out, and now they are fully away. A quarter has turned his attention towards stock door, and that's going to make things a little bit more difficult for Forrest. We see one of the shields destroyed. Second one goes down. J90 manages to pick up Woogie Man, and here comes the push. J90 has walked up spiral for free. They've tried that third angle, and it's worked. Yes, he's rotating around one versus three. He's got a lot of work to do here. Diffuse the starts going down he manages to find ash and could we see a second one versus three of the game unlikely now after yas takes an absolute ton of damage he's trying to work his way back in from banana but the problem that he's got is that ssg know exactly where he is forest after planting that diffuser gets the kill onto yas and that's ssg taking another successful attack oh that's such a massive gamble from ssg but one that's perfectly understandable the utility they've tried to use inside of the site hasn't really cleared it out, and they're going in with a 4v4. They weren't able to have that advantage and feel comfortable as they push on in the CEO. So that call from Forrest with Diffuser as well. Say, okay, we have 40 seconds about when he started going for that rotate. We've cleared out stock. We know it's clear. We genuinely know the positions of these players. We'll try to push on in. I'll apply pressure to the back side, and then either you guys can push front or you can rotate as well. And J9O and know just goes in, face checks Woogie Man, and while I do like the rotate in terms of the confidence with which SSG engaged it, I still can't overstate how much that came down to a couple key players pre getting lucky pre-fires or intelligent and well-informed pre-fires, but still with a bit of luck nonetheless and winning heads-up gunfights that very well could have gone the other way. Two more rounds for D plus to defend, and they will desperately want to pick up two rounds as well. If SSG can get a 3 3 split here, um, I think honestly a lot of the work is done for them once they get onto the defense. D plus Kia, statistics and maths will tell you, have struggled on the defense so far. Uh, sorry, on the attack here at SI24. I can't see that changing on such a big map like Bank. Um, SSG can just sort of flood the entire map with utility and players and just give D plus Kia far too many problems things to deal with time has been their big issue and it's an easy one to burn away quickly on bank so ssg will i'm sure be looking for one more successful attack as the the mark of uh, a good half for them anything after, after that will be a bonus i agree with your characterization i mean it hasn't had as many plays as say a clubhouse but bank four times played so far and just like most of the other maps is defender side it's 65 percent overall and all of the mainline bomb sites save for teller's archives with only two rounds played have above a 60 percent defensive win rate and lockers 
CCTV pushing into the 70s. So if SSG can get that 3-3 here, at least for the statistics of the event, the defensive side should be a lot better for them. Woogie Man turning off that phone just as Fultz repels on in, takes him down Ooh, through the bookcase. And not only do the SSG get a man advantage, they also get to hack these cameras. So all the, that intel gained by the Valkyrie and the default cameras, that is now in the control of SSG. And that's a tool now denied to D plus Kia because those default cameras, they might feel more compelled to shoot them if they want to go for a flank or a big play. They know that there's one thing behind the teller's desk there. Jay Nano just taking the cam out as well. Predicts that he's going to be challenged by the Mozzie. It's Ashen who actually manages to get a kill. The Mozzie was downed as well. So we're effectively four versus two. But Damali there for the trade onto Jay Nino. Leaves us three versus two with D plus Kia scrambling back to site now. Damali and Soldier, the only two left alive. And SSG, they've got all the time in the world here, Lynx. All the time in the world. And that's the power of a four of the four. 17 when you're given two 1v1s if you can just hit two shots you can at worst down a player from that range and that's what happened we see Coda take the gunfight in elevator three shots and he's down a player tries to swing from the other side of the doorway he's downed as well the benefit d plus kia have i suppose is they have this poles so who can play in gold and find where sg are pushing from so even though they're in a disadvantage they can try and coordinate with the molly and use those t4s to get something done but while ashen's down force just walks on in blind soldier and pushes forward a little more the molly now in a 1v2 1v1 technically with hot and cold the only gun actually up at the moment but he'll retreat to allow force to get the bomb down and force the molly into a very very difficult position that's it forest now shield back in front of his face he can just roam around he's given him the information meanwhile you will notice that hot and cold has fled upstairs to get that superior vertical angle just needs to be careful Careful of the push from Metal, which is where Damali might go now, but Forrest should have that information. The fact that Damali isn't pushing into sight should tell Hot and Cold what he needs to know, and it certainly does. He's going to dip away, doesn't need to take that fight. Damali cannot deactivate that diffuser from up here, so he's going to have to go back to sight, and when he does, Hot and Cold will simply rotate back in. Forrest has made the call. You can see Hot and Cold moving above us, and it is almost certainly over for Damali. And SSG just completely aware of the moves they need to make in that post plan to both force Damali's position and then what they need to react in turn to keep him in this perpetual loop of having to retake, but then Hot and Cold doesn't bite, just lets him run around to the top floor. So once he drops down, Hot and Cold then moves back in. You put it perfectly, just this never endless cycle that Damali simply can't break away from. SSG do get, it, do get an opening pick that time, and one that gives them some intel. And while it was a 5v4, what really makes it is this set of engagements by the front lobby. Ashen also working his way around through Arc. I wasn't aware of that dimension to it, but adding that alongside Jane and Oak pushing lobby, sure, it was technically a 2v3 in that entire main lobby, but because the two players peaking Jane and O gave him two 1v1s, it might as well have been a 2v1 with Jane and O and Ashen coordinating where they wanted to push and what Jane and O needed covered, and D plus Kia instead taking, sure, there was some planning, but still it ended up being solo engagements that gave SSG the true advantage they needed for the execute. Heading into round six, then final defensive round for D plus Kia. And it is going to be open area again. Yeah, we saw them defend it back insertion. in round three, and they defended it successfully. They'll be looking for more of the same. Five They'll be desperate left. for more of the same, to be honest. I said a 3-3 three, three half would be looking pretty good for SSG, and which you backed up with the stats from Elinks, and defeated. it looks like they've at least secured that, and a 4-2 is going to make it even difficult, more difficult. And the thing is, you've, you've kind of got to put on top of those stats. You've got to account for the team that we're talking about as well. So banking is defender sided but how defender sided is it against the D plus Kia side that can't attack you know those numbers potentially go further up and up they get that little buff uh, because the team has not been able to utilize its time effectively Fulton going to head on to the upside down rappel looking for that top floor clearance to kick things off need to deal with Yas who has been a continual thorn in their side so far when D plus Kia have been on the defense these Solus players have definitely caused a bit of problems for SSG, not only in terms of destroying drones, but they have been the wiliest of roamers. Very difficult to track down, often having support, in this case, Coded, who was playing this position before, sitting inside a janitor, and providing support for these players who are pushed far up inside of CEO. So the setup for D plus Kia is not bad whatsoever, and SSG have struggled to deal with it. Ashen just face checking an angle, not once, but twice, does manage to down Soldier, and provides some much needed relief. Damali takes down a force, the Hibana, to start off the round on a basement execute. That can be very, very difficult, but SSG suddenly have a 4v2. My apologies, it's not the basement bomb, but frankly, 
doesn't really matter in the long run. The kills are happening on so many different portions of the map, barely in relation, it seems, to SG's potential plan for an execute later on. And Yas, who seemed to be the most forward positioned player, ends up being the last guy alive alongside the biggest anger you could get on D plus Kia. A very odd pair right now. Yeah, it's one of those situations that I'd describe as four versus one and a half. You've got that shield. Uh, you know, the clash is very... The, the, the more your defense dwindles, the easier the clash is to deal with, really. What you want is that clash to be an attention sponge whilst your other players come in and get the kills of the players that are focused on the clash. That's not likely to happen now, and Yas is going to have their work cut out. They need to find a couple of kills realistically. I like that SSG are being impatient here they're not rushing it they've got five drones left alive they can just take their time see what's happening they can maneuver themselves into position and make sure it's advantageous before they decide to pull the trigger pulse does drop woogie man doing what he can to just keep himself alive with the shield on his back not gonna have any joy though as Fultz takes him out yas is there with one onto ashen diffuser going down at the minute hot and cold is gonna stick this and yas he's trying to do what he can all right we're gonna get we're I'm sorry, I'm losing my mind at Woogie Man right now, but we'll we'll look at this Yas potential 1v3 before we get to that. Yas moves into the small office position, does spot one, cuts down hot and cold. That is an excellent start, but the, in, you put in a post plant, your time is limited. There is a very, very hard limit on your potential for success, and it is dropping rapidly at the moment. Yas doesn't even check the prone angle, and Fultz is able to shut him down. All right, so anyway, Woogie Man is inside of the bomb site, and he makes the right read. He says, all right, in a... If I'm putting Yas in a 1v4 because I'm sitting on my shield and he's kind of playing in his own position, I need to take the gun out. Good call. I like that. And you know what's an even better call? Reading that they're probably going to drop down that stock hatch at some point because they might peek you on the close door as well. But if you, if you have to choose one, that player on the hatch is a lot more vulnerable. And he looks there. And then, and then Tim, he literally shot him. He shot him and then looked away. I get timing happens sometimes. I totally get it, and I imagine that is somewhat of a case of timing as well. But why don't you commit? You could have had it there. You have to make a decision. We've said one of the few strong points for D plus Kia is that in individual moments like that, they can say, all right, I need to do this to work. And Woogie Man specifically will say, all right, I will do it. And then he second guesses himself at a moment like this, especially when he's 0 and 5 at this point, the only positive player for D plus Kia on Oregon. Now, Yas has, of course, picked up that space. I'm not saying they could have won the round. But there's now a level of indecision creeping into the ranks of D plus Kia that is already undermining what has been a very weak team in SI so far. Yeah, it was certainly tough. Um, I mean, I'm trying to sort of, I'm trying to get into the mindset and figure out, you know, exactly what's the line of thought. You know, maybe he thinks that he's done enough to down the player coming down the hatch. Maybe. And he was a little bit, the, the fact that he was looking at the ground, he was trying to put his shield up in the air. And I think he was maybe worried about vertical angles above him. So he's thinking, get my shield. Like, if I point down, my shield's facing towards the ceiling. I don't get that fire from above. I've downed somebody down that. But then he found out to his detriment that he hadn't found. That, that's the only, If I'm trying to find the positive spin and figure out what he was doing, maybe, that's possible. maybe that was the thought process. But one way or another, it doesn't matter. Because round six went to SSG. It's 4-2 on the scoreboard. SSG are now on the fence, and they're going to take us straight down to the basement. Doesn't surprise me in the slightest. If you remember, I suggested get into the basement, get players out, get little mini games all over the map for D plus Kia to play. Just burn as much time as you can before they get anywhere near sight, and you are likely to win. And they've already faltered in the first one. We had eight drones on the board when Damali died, and there's not a single lick of damage done to Ashen, and nobody was in a position to trade him out. So the opening start, just the simplest of puzzles. There's a solo roamer, find him and either push him back or take him down. At best, a one for one has failed for D plus Kia to start. Their main entry has fallen. Now they need to still go about what they were going to do anyway, just down a player. There was no impact gain. There was no control really gained. Maybe you push Ashen back, but at this cost, it's not a very good deal. So they'll move on into the mid round, opening up the hatches that they need to, clearing out some of these barricades to ease rotations. And I mean, they're doing it fine. They're doing it well. They also have a lot of utility, those smoke grenades and those flashes, and a lot of those drones to make this easier. And if they can clear server stairs, maybe we'd have something positive, but Fultz 
kills Soldier with a Maestro camera after Forrest downs him with a shotgun and now has trapped another player inside a server. This is not a great start. Forrest has done a great job there, realistically. Loses his life at the top of stairs, but he's burnt two minutes and taken another life along with him. So it leaves them now four versus three, and it starts coming down to this position that I said, you know, final sort of 30 seconds, 20 seconds, and D plus Kira trying to push onto site. They're now pushing into Vulcan canisters as well, limiting their ability to get in and support even if there is a hatch drop. So again, a nice setup from SSG to just absorb this pressure at different stages of the round. How are they going to get out of it? They did take down Forrest, that smoke, and they popped a lot of those Vulcans, but with the C with those two C4s, as long as SSG Going just in. stay alive in red and stay alive inside of gold, T plus Q don't have the time to bait them out. If these land properly from SSG, this round's as That's good as done. Seconds to go. The Habana pellets have not opened the wall cleanly, and I'm not sure if they can left. actually go in through there. Courted had to rotate up above. He's going to get himself Start. onto that Five rotate, but they know. Out goes the Nitro. Easy as that, as you said. Quite rightly, Lynx, there was no opportunity for them to come off that plant. They just had to stick it Nitro or not, and that's going to be a very clean and easy round for SSG. Yeah, maybe you have Woogie Man who can shoot the C4 out of the air, but how close that gold position is to that plant spot, which I will say, by the way, is probably the position you should go for in that situation, especially because the X Kairos holes were so small. You don't have a whole lot of options, but at least there you're not exposing yourself to gunfights and C4 angles. Playing close on that wall, you're really just exposing yourself to the C4, so maybe you're able to... Okay, he, I was curious, I'm like, did he actually get down by the evil eye completely, or did he get down by the shotgun? But there you go. Woogie Man is too focused, not, not too focused, he just is focused on the doorway because that's where the most immediate threat is. But in the 3v4, you don't have the ability, you don't have the advantage of, well, I suppose personnel to watch all the angles you want. You have to make a decision, especially when somebody's planting, and there's not a lot of good options at that point for D plus key, and it's just a shame that we're starting out with SSG widening that lead further. This game is seeming almost inevitable in some respects. Yeah, SSG going to take open area. Uh, it's not always top floor that's the second uh, choice, but um, I'm not sure here um, whether SSG would normally take top floor or whether they've brought in the third choice site. And again, it's just leaning into what I suggested. If you go to top floor, it gives D plus key an opportunity, almost forces their hand to play directly in towards site. They don't need to worry too much about the rest of the map. Go to open. They've still got a top floor clearance to do. So it's still another one of those scenarios where you can say, yeah, we're going to give you this, but we're going to give you loads of other stuff to do around the map. If anything, I would say that the top floor site in attacking terms is probably the most sort of direct. Um, so again, SSG just leaning into those time problems that D plus Kia continue to have. We had, the, we had the Vulcan canisters on the locker's defense to really punish it once we got into that low time execute. We have the Yokai's here from Ashen who have D plus Kia try to go for a plant. He can just hop on the ceiling, stun him, stall for a few more seconds. And we also have Foltz on that Solus who can do damage to D plus Kia's drone economy because 45 seconds in and four are already down with nothing gained from D plus Kia. They'll have to deal with Foltz, whether it's just a, finding him and even if it's as simple as finding him and just moving their drones around him. If they're not confident in their roam clear, maybe that will help at least a little bit. I like this from Woogie Man. The Brava can be extremely impactful, and look at this. With nobody in sight watching, he's taken out an f naught, hacked in a Rooney Gate, and set up the attack actually quite well for an execute from Square into Cafeteria if that's where D plus Kia want to end. Yeah, absolutely, and they don't necessarily need to take too much of the map for that, so long as they're in control of Upper Square and they can stop anybody coming out of Janitor, which is exactly what they're doing now, Damali moving in through CEO. Once they've got that area locked down, they can just go directly in from Electrical. They need to be a little bit conscious of Tellers, make sure there's nobody in there, but um, it just sort of cuts out about 50% of the map that they don't really need to worry about too much by doing this. So D plus Kia, even though I might have said at the beginning of this that the game is starting to seem inevitable this is a very very good position to find themselves in they just need to watch for now players who are unaccounted for who could completely disrupt their play and those two players are Foltz and Ashen who are right on top of each other inside of blue Ashen can use those yokais to supply intel to Foltz to make a very informed flank up those blue stairs as D plus Kia are focused on opening up this quad wall and eventually moving in through the double door to get a bomb down D plus Kiev also put Wookiee Man on the printer window, but as Forrest is getting aggressive inside the site, the flank not, might not matter all that much because Wookiee Man sends it on in, but ends up going in unsupported, dying to SSG. Yas on a very late flank finds two kills, and suddenly D plus Kiev are back in the race. That's a big mistake there from SSG. They can't allow both basement players to fall to Yas like that. The Hanko will know that he's heading up blue stairs. There's 
No opportunity for him really to move elsewhere given the time he needs to just continue this pressure. J90 gets one. Soldier on the hot and cold kill, Attackers taking him down the off the counter. It's all up to J90 to hold on. We know that he's a talismanic player. Can he do it here? 1v2 becomes 1v1. Could it be another big clutch for SSG? Seven seconds left to go. J90 trying to flirt with the time as much as he can here. Burn it down, force them into something. Takes the challenge, finds the kill. And this time it's a 1v2 for SSG put it on the successful clutch list because they are locking down round after round. Uh, that round could have been very successful for D plus Kia and it's not because of the setup they had at the beginning. It, while that is true, that's not what I want to say. That's not what I want to highlight from that. It was the printer window position because that's a very common position when you're going for a take from square into cafeteria. You have someone on pr printer window to try and cause some chaos inside of the site, find a gunfight where the defense is focused on the front side where the execute is coming from. And Two different players try to fill that spot. Woogie Man and I believe Soldier as well, but either way, two different players. When Woogie Man hops in, look at this. Forrest gets the first kill, and then Woogie Man hops in by himself when D plus Kia are left. not going for the execute. Wait, actually, that wasn't even Woogie Man. That was the second time that a D plus Kia player vaulted into Prinder Window solo while the rest of the team was not in the right position to capitalize off of that. Even if that player dies and he distracts SSG and forces their crosshairs away in a perfect world he distracts it from the players pushing front side and then those players can create a point inside of the site but both players Wookie man and the second one pushed solo when the team wasn't ready and it cost them SSG take us up to the top floor for round nine, then 6-2. They are now on series point. D plus Kia need to win four attacks in a row. Just a reminder, they've only won five in the entire tournament so far. That is the scale of the mountain that is facing them now that they have to climb. It's going to have to be four back to back here on bank just to get them through to overtime. SSG are up on CEO, and you get a feeling that this one is probably going to be short-lived. Swapping mates. Absolutely, and the position at this point that D plus Kia and the, their compatriots, uh, Bliss, are both finding themselves in is that their match tomorrow might become of the utmost importance. There are a lot of implications to that, but this is what D plus Kia are playing for. They're not just playing for a win on map number two, but a chance to dig themselves out of this hole they found themselves in and try and get at least tied with Bliss in this group and maybe just a little bit above them. That is what they need to do, and it needs to start here on a CEO attack. Wookiee Man... To say something positive about last round, Woogie Man was very, very good using these clutch drones to hack the intel inside of the site. He's doing it again, trying to hide himself from the warden, but it's a little less successful this time. And there's also a lot less electronics to hack on SSG's side. Summer Charge is going to take down that Keeper Barricade, which is just going to provide a line of sight through to Janitor. Immediate pot shots taken. Not going to pick up any damage for the time being, though. Ashen just holding a tight angle there for anybody who chooses to repel in, or if he maybe gets a little view of any pixel on the windows there that he can take a pot shot at. Fultz is going to take a lot of damage, but SSG holding on nicely at the halfway mark. Holding on nice indeed. Fultz might take a little bit of damage, but he's still alive in his position. Can still play and use that final Kiba barricade to provide an obstacle for D plus Kia. Shielding their vision from useful information inside of the bomb site. It is a very close setup for SSG. Three players inside of the site or in areas around it, and then the two furthest players away are Stock and, and Circle Desk. They are not far away whatsoever. SSG can play these trades so, so well. Once D plus Kia go in for this repel, that makes the Grim way more important, the Capitown more important, and this advantage that D plus Kia have now of the utmost importance. Woogie Man does manage to take down the half health folks, and that gives them a slight Light advantage. Woogie Man doubles up on that. Five versus three now. Ashen cut down. This is looking like a much better attack from D plus Kia as J90 tries to challenge the long angle there from Janitor into square but can't quite find his man. Forrest is working underneath. Tosses a nitro, just sort of a throw it and hope, but there will be no hope in this round as the 2v5 continues. 20 seconds left to go. Beautiful find from Forrest, but unlikely to be enough as Quartered is starting to get that diffuser down. Will successfully stick it. J90 now starts trying to push back in on the retake. Such a difficult post plant now. D plus Kia getting the kills they need in the very, very tight few seconds between repelling in and putting that diffuser down. But once you've reached this position, this is the home stretch that is not a particularly hard 
Guard Jog. Just go back out on those repels. Have a couple players inside of the building to draw the attention of any remaining defenders while also making sure that their rotations are inhibited a little bit. And D plus Gia at least get one round on the attack. A very slow affair to be sure, but when you are on a CEO attack, as long as that utility lands inside of the site, you have a fighting chance. Maybe they didn't deal with the stock position. Maybe they didn't have main stairs control. Maybe even square control was a little bit difficult. But as long as that utility, that capital, that grim, do their jobs, and if you can get an opening pick, you have at least a 50-50 shot. Well, I don't know about the exact numbers on that, but you have at least a fighting chance to win that round. And even if it is close to the minimum, D plus Kia got it and worked well with it. Yeah, I think it's absolutely no surprise to me that the one attacking round that D plus Kia win on bank is the top floor where they don't have to worry about the rest of the map. They can just go straight to tonight. They've all the time in the world and it's not a big issue. Um, we will see then how they do attacking down onto the basement again because their problems return. And that is the SSG will try to cause them problems problems around the map they will try to give them as much to do to burn as much time as they can uh, D plus Kia they've got one they need another three back to back if they are going to keep this match up going Goyal canisters are it's the Copen Hagen Major Grand Final Revisited, W7M and Liquid here on the B stream, and I'm joined by the very lovely Fluke. How are you? Been late before, by the way. Some may have noticed a little timer got added, and whose fault may that be? Technically, kind of mine. Okay, there's something that's gonna happen in the mid show <laughs> on the A stream that I might have been involved in, I'm not involved in anymore. Right. Because I'm here instead. Uh, I, maybe I was late. I wasn't like Parker late though. Not so. Parker late. Parker I was, was late because I was maybe doing other things. Okay, I won't. I won't give you all of the blame. We've got a really good match though, and I was I mean, sitting here early because of how big this game is going yeah. to be. Little bit of a recap, obviously, kind of past halfway point for today in terms of stream B. Uh, I was here earlier, and of course, had the pleasure with your co-caster and Mr. Hap. We had NIP That's who GK. That is? Yeah, no, you uh, you did have Hap. Uh, I you did. did have NIP GK. You did have a match of Rainbow Six Siege. I had the Guzzler, the Guz himself. <laughs> yeah. The big old well, Guz, they call him. I don't know if he calls himself the Guzzler. He's the U to the double ZZ. Yeah. That's what they call him. Your game, I think, was a little bit more entertaining than it mine. It was pretty intense. It was Australia. Australia? Getting a map. And then losing the series. Yeah, very disappointing game. I got my Oops. hopes up. I, I was like this close. As I was watching that last map and I, it was like 5-5, five, five, I'm like, if this goes to 6-5, match point bliss, I'm like running downstairs and I'm going to run onto the stage and like hug them all. Yeah. And then well, they just like proceeded to lose. You came through after map two and you did give them a big hug after the win and things went wrong. And talking of your relationship with teams, here we are with two Brazilian teams, uh, W7M versus Liquid. Yeah. Uh, you, I guess, trying to rebuild some emotions here. I love Team Liquid. Maybe. You want to know a fun fact, right? I love fun facts. Team Liquid is like my favorite organization. Right. And that's about it. That is just a okay. fun fact. I've just been that like a, fun fact. a Liquid fanboy for a very, very long time. Obviously, I'm completely impartial when it comes to commentating games where they may we be are involved. All so impartial. Yep. <laughs> I also do like W7M. Why? They're winners. I like winners. Bit of a bandwagon <laughs> rider. They've won the last two championships. What? They've won the last two majors. <laughs> he so you know what? I like both teams. <laughs> you delivered that like uh, like Wolf of Wall Street character would. Like, why? I like them. They're winners. I like winners. <laughs> ah, I'll make a deal. W7M. <laughs> they are winners. They've won everything. And as you sort of so rightly put it at the start of this, they won the finals that Liquid had the opportunity to earlier on mm. this year. Yep. Pretty cleanly. 3-0. Three Three yeah, and now I guess in terms of what's on the line for this particular group as we go to the map Vito's Clubhouse uh, is a map that Team Liquid very much like, enjoy. That's probably one of their more preferential maps, so they do get that. We got a consulate, and if required bank, it feels like the consulate bank day. I think you guys had actually got bank as well over on the A stream. I know that me and Hat, we had consulate and bank, so 
Uh, we'll see if that comes to fruition. Now, the group here for Group C is kind of shaping up a little bit nicely. Um, everyone's kind of like had wins and losses, except M80. Sorry, M80. Uh, but, you know, you got like VP top of the group right now, just based on the tiebreakers. That's great. W7M probably don't like that, so they'd love a win here. Um, for Team Liquid, they win this game. Suddenly, they're in contention going into the last day that they could find themselves um, going into that number one spot because they actually play M80 tomorrow. They do. It's the only group where we don't have anyone confirmed. Mm. This game will change that, quite obviously. That's yeah. how playing more video games works. If M80, who are going to be playing on the other stream at some point, whenever that game starts, lose 2-0, they are in very dire straits, but that would... Well, I think it's on this stream, like, right after us. Oh, is it on yeah. this stream? Okay. And by the way, it's wow. W7M's last series for group. So they yes. are the one from this particular group that does not play tomorrow. It'll be Liquid, then uh, they'll be playing M80. And VP versus Bleed, which is going to be a fascinating hmm. game in itself. Now, mind you, obviously, I think when you kind of look at this group in particular, M80 sticks out like a sore thumb. Hate to say it, sorry, but they are looking very <sighs> likely that they could be he he heading home. And that might actually be all but confirmed by the end of today. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it's entirely possible. Obviously, you've got Liquid. Again, if they're able to take a point from this, then that puts M80 out of reach. Bleed, if they take a point from M80, then it can start to make that even sort of worse. And it's that they're one of only three teams in the competition that hasn't been able to get a single man mm. across the entire board, the other being the two Korean teams. Now, the other part of this as well, Virtus Pro aren't playing today, but they will play tomorrow against Bleed. Right now, they're tied with W7M. So this game for W7M and tomorrow's game for Virtus Pro are essentially the two matches that are going to determine who gets that top spot. Now, what do you get for top spot in your group, respectively? Well, you get to go straight to the quarterfinals, which that in itself... Sounds nice. What's even better, though, is the team that you will then eventually play in said quarterfinal will be a second or a third place team, which means you yeah, avoid all the other teams that finish top of their group until at least the semifinal. So clearly you've got yourself a very nice little roadmap in the playoffs. That's what you want. Certainly something that you would like to achieve. For Liquid, they must win this. For W7M, probably likely needs to win this, but not a guarantee. We don't know what's going to happen tomorrow with VP. We go to Clubhouse for this series to begin with Liquid and W7M, and it is W7M on the defense. And, and last I checked, this map has been like the most defender side of map of the tournament. Oh yeah, she is a defensive beast and she has not yet really been tamed. Though in the game earlier with FaZe and Bliss, it was generally over towards the attack. In fact, FaZe were flawless on their attacks, trying to piece together and piece apart Australians. We'll see which of these two brings themselves a little bit closer to Boyle now. Obviously, we talk about Copenhagen, we talk about that being a very big, impactful rematch, but they have, as being two teams from the same country, met quite a lot throughout the year. Generally, the recent history is something that leans a little bit more into W7M's favor, but that is kind of the W7M story against everybody. Sure, yeah. Gets the start off, he's trying to find the hunt on towards Hurt. Juice gets droned out and is going to drop off before he suddenly finds his head taken off by that DMR. Yeah, it's an interesting start here as well, considering it's the map pick of Liquid, certainly their most preferred map in the pool. And for W7M, though, starting on the defense. So don't probably be too alarmed if you are a Liquid fan that maybe W7M get off to a good start. Big thing for Liquid here as well. Don't get sort of overawed by the situation either, considering they are going up against another Brazilian team. Little fight here from KZ, trying to just win this battle through 90. Ness gets the opening kill elsewhere. KZ keeps going on the Fenrir. This is a little bit aggressive. Probably doesn't need to overpeak this. Could just go back down main and does so. Yeah, they're just going to pull themselves back. It's a long fight. It's still two minutes left in the round. You're wasting time, but Parley's on the cat to the loose player. The calls come through. They're well aware of at least one of the presents, but if they don't know about the player, they could swing up at them, top blue, and they might find themselves, unfortunately, set to stage inside stage itself. It's a nade, just on the opposite end, but this is the other bit of pressure, and there's the catch of Palu. Forced down by a drone, well played, well caught, well herded, herds, and Felipox, the first two victims. How confident is Nade thinking he can stick? Yeah, nicely done, play off the logic bomb for Volps. Good little pinch. Clearly for Liquid, understanding they need to deal with the Romas first and W7M showing aggression in this round early on, even despite the fact that KZ eventually back 
down main earlier in the round. They still had a couple of roamers up above. Philippox Hurt's gone. So for Liquid now, 60 seconds, two player advantage. I like this at least from Nade over towards Secret. Can he maybe find a kill? Shotgun up close, bring it back a little bit. He's got to be careful as well that he doesn't kind of get himself into a tricky situation. Nesk does, of course, blow that up. But yeah, I think Nade has to probably commit to this. Only has one more gas babe anyway. So not really too, too much worth going back towards site. Does get droned out and talk about oh, timing. Oh, no! oh, Nade! Double shot, double kill, <laughs> trade eventually from Lagonus, but does the damage. Being caught out mid-animation on the throw, getting the first and then finding the second as the third player. He's on the window watching for that is absolutely devastating for Liquid's approach here. It's a three versus two, but it really should be a five versus two because they drop right into the Fenrir mine and try to find their way in towards the swing on Moto. 10 seconds, JB92 pops up, pops one down, two down, looks for the fight onto the third. They're lost in the smoke, in the fire, and Liquid blown away. Well, that's not the start to a game you'd like. I mean, the start was actually pretty nice for Liquid. Two opening kills, dealt with the roam pretty convincingly. Then there's just the man inside Secret with a shotgun. He's mid-animation. Surely it's an easy kill. Hey, we just droned him out. No, one by one they fall as they pushed in. Volps and Nesk get caught. Lagonis did get the trade, so even then... When they went to site, they still had the three on two advantage. They still had the numbers, 30 or so seconds. So that's plenty of time, but clearly didn't have enough time to get the information of those on site. That was the downfall. And for Liquid, they'll be honestly shaking their heads with the way that that round developed. I mean, to be honest, that's uh, all right. Now the game starts kind of round. It, in a way, it's good that it happened on the very, very first round because you can sort of brush it off a little bit and say, this is us warming up. They had the full catch on that power player, that power position on the swing, and then they just messed it up in the politest way of possibly putting it. I will have to take a little bit more of the criticizing role between the three of us because you need to get in Brazil's good books again. I'm always in, in good books for Brazil. <laughs> <laughs> I've seen your Twitter. Okay, so for those a little bit unaware, for those a little bit unaware, and we're, look, we're on the B stream, so we, 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 can all, we can all speak candidly. We're all friends here, right? We're all right? friends here. Yesterday, I may have put out a bit of a for fun tweet after Bleed's uh, a, miraculous victory, if you will. Yeah. Against said Team Liquid. Yep. And look, in banter spirits, I was like, oh, look, maybe we should take away some of the Brazilian spots because every yeah. single tournament. Every single tournament. Emmy, how many times do I have to hear about Apex shouldn't have even so many teams? Yeah, every, every. I do it once every tournament. back in a jokingly spirit. And someone. And, uh, well, actually, they retweeted it, the old main uh, yeah, account. Yeah, the main account. Re that's sort of when things went a bit downhill. But the fun fact for those watching, of course, here in the B stream, I do love Brazil. It's been yeah. a beautiful time here in Sao Paulo. And I do love these teams as well. Good start as well from W7M to offset what was a bit of a disadvantaged position. Great from Nate. Good individual play. We go upstairs for the second round now here for W7M over towards Cash and CCTV. Uh, electing to avert away from Jim Bedroom, which is typically considered the secondary site, if you will, here on Clubhouse. Uh, nevertheless, though, for Liquid, they'll continue to play that kind of slow approach. The other thing as well, that opening round, Liquid is one of five teams that are over 30% in terms of their plant success rate. They were not able to get the plant down in that last round. We'll see if they can go one better here in the second. About half the time left here, and nobody's been snapped up as of yet. Obviously, the first two bodies that were taken out pretty cleanly, pretty quickly by Liquid last time led to no success, and that is the opposite of success, but they've at least found some instant revenge. However, that's the ace gone. That's half your hard breach taken out of the pockets. You're looking at maybe... Obviously, the break onto the construction wall that leads in towards the site itself. Everything else roughly been done, though you might be a little bit more limited as to your approach towards the bottom of garage and the swings on the holds elsewhere. However, still trying to just find the lead in onto that first fight, get in underneath. It's always the familiarity of two teams that have played each other a lot, whether inter-region or not, that the drives become very specific. Yeah, checklist has been good from Liquid. Jacuzzi, con single wall opened up, main breach as well. Player outside CCTV window. In fact, that uh, is a good position for Volts to try and maybe get a good peek from. Almost had an opportunity to take out JV92, of course, who's going to try and block this window with more key barriers. Not a bad little angle, but you want to get rid of it. Lagonis gets caught, though. That's kicked down on the balcony just outside the bedroom window. Volts as well can't win his one. The CC window, a very important position to be won on cash and CCTV. And W7M do indeed win it out. Two rounds in a row for them on the defense i mean it's the perfect start for them it's the energy you said it before
It's a very defender sided map. It's a very defender defender sided place and play to go to. You you get that bonus of time. And time, weirdly, has been a much more terrifying sort of entity around this tournament. And I think the majors earlier on throughout this year, there seems to be a little bit more trepidation in the approaches, a little bit more caution. However, it's SI. It's understandable. Mm. Very scary. Would you be fine approaching this? How are you, are you good at the game? Am I good at the game? Yeah. See, this is the thing. It's all subjective, is it not, Emmy? No, there's a ranking system. <laughs> exactly, that, there is a ranking that system. That removes the, that adds a statistical element to the question. I think the highest. Good. Look, I'm, I'm like a plat. I'm like a plat. Okay. But that's also like OS plat. Which what's is probably the, like I was gonna European say, silver. What's the OS rankings okay, exactly. of talent? Uh, I would probably put James first. James is dead part of yeah, course, maybe. for those unaware. He can't stop playing. Definitely would put him first. Then I'd have to Attackers definitely go Guz. Okay. But it's. Debatable if it's our Observer Sky. I, I want to include him. He, they're about equal. Yeah, he's part of the talent. Then it's me, and then it's and then it's. Uh, oh well, I mean, including Mandy as well. I forgot about Mandy. Sorry, Mandy. But she'd be about uh, the Guz level. Yeah. And she's... then Manic would be below me. Okay. How far? How far below? Not very far. In fact, probably the same level. Let's oh, be honest. Okay. And That's he, very polite. He would debate that he's higher than. Me. That's very polite of you. Um, but he's a host, so you know, hosts. Hosts don't know. That's why they host. <laughs> I'm going to use that one. Hosts don't know. What do they know? I thought that was going to be a mirror window trick. Onto the exothermic, which was placed. They seemed ready to want to deploy it. And then didn't. I'm not sure if they sort of tried something that would, would have been insane. Either way, the wall's still open. CC, if you're unaware, the push of this, they'll try and get control of the top of red. Fenrir on the board has made this push very tricky. A lot of teams yeah. struggle when they get the swing towards top red. Yeah, it didn't probably touch on the bands really either. Of course, no Kaid available. Got burned out by Liquid. The 2 Brad 2 not going to be involved. No surprise there, especially on a very prominent map like Clubhouse. Okay, from below, Fleetbox with the Nitro Cell. Another really good start for the round for W7M. Liquid have done well in terms of their checklist approach, but unfortunately, they're just not winning. Very critical battles. That's a full white JV, by the way. Top red stairs. The uh, Fenrir, if not mine, not going to be helping out too much oh. there. And good responses here from Liquid, but Parley can't make it back out alive. I mean, the fact that he just sort of hopped in to Jim and sort of went, ah, I can try and steal a kill inside the site itself and then pull back the mirror window going up and then instantly being punched out is a bit of a play, but he still wins the swing. Herds takes off ex teammate Volps, his head once upon a time. They played together on a success and now, well, with the change of jersey, it's a change of fate. So Lagonis stuck outside a little as Nade gets a bit under pressure. Esk is trying to offer some support. And again, you think about how the first kills go, how it starts to fall into Liquid's favor, and then suddenly W7M pop their heads up and pull them apart. No utility for Liquid. No flashes left for Lagonas. It has to be these dry peaks, these triangles, and it is not going to be successful, at least not just yet. Now in the one versus two, Lagonas, Goomine, always annoying. Doesn't even have time to pull it out because KZ gets the kill. Three nothing start for W7M. Fist bumps all around and already forcing out tactical timeout from Team Liquid. I mean, it, it's early, mate. Was that meant to be an Australian accent? No, this wasn't Australian. Okay. I can... Oh, can what, I what, what is your best Australian accent? My best Australian accent... Uh, I need to take off one of my headphones. Can one of your headphones? Yeah, yeah. Okay, so oh, yeah, the ear cuff. Yep. You don't want to do, like, just, like, a stereotypical... Oh, no, nah, mate. Uh, I stream on a bar, but you don't want to do that. No, you definitely don't want to do that. No one wants to hear that either. That's my James Devmar impression. I don't think that's quite... Oh, I love Rainbow Six Siege, mate. <laughs> that is awful. <laughs> that is actually I'm awful. Great this is not even Australian. Playing Ranky. Ranky? That's now... say... That's fresh. Yeah, that's fresh. <laughs> do you say Ranky in Australian? No, no. What's Australian a... for ranked? Ranked. Oh, uh, boring. <laughs> <laughs> I think Fresh is the only one that has a term for ranked by that, calling it ranky. That's so not Vamos of you. <laughs> okay. Well, Australia. obviously... I can't really do an Australian accent. No. Not, not too great. I, to be sorry. Luckily for you, I can't do a British accent, so we're, we're even there. Um, no, neither can Fresh. 3 nothing start for W7M. They do the world tour, and now we head back down to the basement. Clean start for them. Admittedly, the original time we did come to Church and Arsenal, it wasn't too bad of a start for Liquid and arguably probably should have won the round. So, look, 
a little bit of an inflated scoreline. But W7 are so good, you can't make mistakes. And also, they're more than capable of pulling out some very miraculous plays. We saw that from Nade in the opening round. The other two rounds, though, up above, top floor, were pretty clean from W7M. So yeah. they didn't really give that many op options for Liquid. I think... <sighs> okay, this might be a controversial statement. Nah, not too bad. It depends on who you're talking about. I think that sometimes when the teams are of the talent that they can be, when you sort of say it should have been this round or it could have been this round or whatever. Shoulda, coulda, woulda? Shoulda, coulda, woulda, didna. Because the teams are good enough to fight back against the deficit. Sometimes teams get a bit lucky that the better team will make mistakes and whatever. Sometimes I think the onus of pressure is actually on a team. W7M. For me, you're always going to be one of those quality teams at the minute where even if things are going away from them, if the round gets into their favor, mm. even though you're, say you're in like the four versus two or whatever, you're going for the collapse, 20 seconds left, it's a, a lot less certain doing that against a team like W7M than it is, say, doing it against yep. other region teams and, uh, and other teams. But that's all just up in the air. What isn't up in the air? Apparently, the Rome game so much. I have an interesting proposition for you, though, very quickly, Emmy, which is okay. the fact that Liquid beat Virtus Pro back on day one of groups. That yeah. sounds great, right? But then Virtus Pro, after losing to Liquid, went and beat W7M. Mm -hmm. Does this now mean Bleed, who beat Liquid, is better than W7M because they beat Liquid, who beat VP, who beat W7M? Bleed are going to stop the group. They're all good. They do play uh, later this afternoon against M80. Many would consider them favorites in that matchup, if, which mean, is incredible for APAC. I love that idea. Obviously, they are the joining together of APAC and Brazil, with Julio behind the team. But now as well, really bringing everything together. Like one big family. 90 seconds left in this fourth round. Not a lot happening on the top four. No real Rome game this time around from W7M playing more into the mirror. And the Warden and the on-site play, especially with that Azami and the Keeper Barry, which does down me in for Liquid. They can go over towards Kitchen, open up some of these floorboards. They still haven't dealt with the hatches, though, at least in towards Kitchen. They have got Stock. They have got Moto. But no Kitchen hatch. No. It's going to make things a little bit slower, but they've got plenty of time to get through it. They're not really tricking against it. The Habana upside down repel. You sort of do the pellets like this to bait out impacts. It's very easy to impact trick against it. And, well, it just stops that happening. Church wall. Oh, whoops. Oh, whoopsie. Uh, yeah, that's going to be shotgunned off. So you don't accidentally blow yourself up. Nade cannot use explosives to his namesake, apparently. <laughs> um, and church wall does get opened as well. It puts a huge amount of pressure here on towards the remaining W7M players because remember how the swing came through from Liquid last time? They were stuck on Moto just trying to find fights. Yeah, 40 seconds left in the round. Time push down Secret. Good oh, shot oh. from Palu. Talk about an entry play. Where's the trade going to come from? JV, he's the one that will get that trade. Reset though, also continuing this onslaught from Liquid onto site. Four versus one. Just like that, blink of an eye, the round's over. Bleepox. He's got himself tucked onto the default. Swings onto one. Swings almost onto the second, but he knows pressure's coming. And at that point, it was just Liquid flooding around the box of Moto, and that was a better Liquid approach there. Now, W7M, as I said, they did not have the Rome play that they did last time. They didn't have those two early bodies, true. which weirdly worked in Liquid's favor here, because they went, okay, well, we've got the other two sides. We can start our setup. We can start putting pressure onto Church Wall, onto the sort of backside of Blue and all of this area as well. Last time, they just did not have the time because of the Rome taking it out of them. Yeah, really decent round from Liquid. The fact that they obviously dealt with stock and motor hatches really early on meant that they could kind of take their time a little bit with Kitchen. They didn't have to worry too much about time. A lot of teams, sometimes they struggle a little bit around that Kitchen area. And then with like a minute left, they go, oh, we still got to go and get Moto opened up. You know, obviously there's no Kaid, so getting hatches here on Clubhouse is going to be a, a far more easier task than what it would typically be with yeah. those Electro Claws, especially if the thatch is also banned out. It is available. He's been brought as well here by Volps, which is interesting, but uh, ultimately, good from Liquid, and I think a deserved result too, because again, that opening round on base was pretty decent from there. Go back to the coulda, woulda, shouldas. It didn't, but still, nevertheless, <laughs> they get a result here on the board here on the fifth round. All right, W7M, back to CCTV. We're not seeing Jim Bar sight from them as we did before. And Solis is on the board in the pockets of Philippe Fox. There he is. Obviously, a lot of softs underneath this site, and both the second story ones have that problem operator and problem area. In fact, you look around the right hand side of your screen. That's four problem operators in a clash right there. <laughs> that is indeed. Like, this is a lineup where, like, if you come up against this in Ranky, you're like, nah. <laughs> nah, I'm, I'm quitting. <laughs> Zami, Valkyrie, Fenrir, and Solus, and all Special have been heavily banned out throughout this tournament, alongside the likes of Tuberous, of course, who is banned in this instance with the yep. Kaid. Main breach opened up. 
Clash is also a problem. The Clash is like, I'm going to protect my very troublesome defensive operators and make sure <laughs> that they can stay alive as long as possible. I mean, it's quite a position to go there, Clash. Ooh, the and that wasn't a great move by JV92 to sort of... I, I don't know if they just got stuck top of rafters and were like, I've got to take a risk here because of that exact situation. As soon as they get on the back of the window... And as soon as they're out there, that Clash isn't going to be able to pass cleanly without going underneath and risking a fight elsewhere. So they took an opportunity before they got stuck and isolated in Garage, where people have practiced for days throwing explosives and things up towards top rafters. The bottom of the building gets smashed open. There goes the Ooh. death. And JV92 can only just watch now. His army's done. Yeah, that's a big kill. So that's the Rafters player. That's the Azami too. Bit of generative utility with those keeper barriers. And more importantly, opens up that Rafters position and Garage becomes a bit more vulnerable. I was going to say the Capital bound out by Liquid, which, you know, those incendiary bolts can help clear out Rafters on this particular map. And Resets finds another one. It's the Clash, the, the pesky Clash. So a lot of this on-site defense from W7M in terms of rafters and also CCTV has been largely dealt with, which is now leaving these W7M members around top red, around cash, and in lounge. So they've lost a large portion of what makes defending cash and CCTV so successful, and Ness can just walk straight in through breach. There's only one player on side the site. There was one player underneath it, and Herds, he's off in Narnia. He's stuck underneath. Nate is sort of like, come on, Vault mate. this. Go CC window. Do it. Go on, I'm Nate. a little bit alone, and well, that might be a smartest option. They're pushing up red. They're watching for the rotate. They're ready for this fight. They're going for the oh, rotate. Oh. He stops it. Great call and bit of util there. Probably a cam. I mean, almost definitely. But it's hers yeah. on the back end of rafters. Sneaking around. Has he been known? Has he been spotted? Has he been pushed? Nate's pulled off. He's given them a little bit of space so Herx can get in because the plant isn't down. Here's the strike around the back. He sees the plant being put in the corner. Gets the catch. And once again, it's cold. Top red in the middle of sight. Her just dancing around bullets like he's drowning for his life. The rotate round outside. Nade! He heard you. He heard the audience. He heard the players in liquid with one player still outside. Two versus one. Palu gets Palu. the kill. A one versus one. He's close on the swing. Eight seconds. He can't get the wing. And it is somehow W7M. There is too much. Too much to go over. I almost feel like I want to like call Pengu over and be like, come, come, just take this round for me, please. Because I'm no analyst, but I'm no color caster. But the fact that for Liquid, they were able to largely deal with rafters, open up garage, get control of that, dealt with the clash, which is a big part of the defense there for W7M, opens up the majority of the site. Nade's effort there to at least deal with a bit of that on site pressure initially through main breach. Herds with the rotate, Nate then moving around, eventually did then go outside on the balcony, shooting through CC window. So he's constantly moving. He's not just stagnant. They denied plant twice, twice as well in that moment from W7M. Liquid didn't do a whole lot wrong. I want to preface that. I don't think they did so much wrong. Disagree. So you can disagree. You're like, no, no. I just think W7M just went to a different level to outplay them. This is what they did wrong. Okay, tell me. It's the five versus two. They have CC breach open. They know that Nade is off on the opposite eye. Why are they planting or holding onto the plant and trying to push further and further in? They have control of the default site. They have to watch on the window. They can have a player in garage, one top red, one or even just outside the breach in garage. They could have planted, could have just planted right at the entry point. So comfortably. Yeah. And instead, there was this maybe a misidea of where the player was underneath. Even then, you just have that watch on. It was a five versus two. Well, that, that you, you brought that up though. Full control. They hadn't dealt with the player in lounge just yet though. And so maybe there is that thought process where it's like, well, if we just go for that main breach plan and there's the player in still in lounge, it could get de denied. But I mean, ultimately, there's so much happening in that moment for Liquid to think about all these different scenarios when you could just say, let's go a little bit more default, deep into site. Do you know what denies a plant 100% of the time? Not planting. <laughs> four versus four. Vops and herds both trade out, and that's probably a weirdly big blow here to the, the loss of the ace. But I don't know if both mirror windows were deployed. I think only one might be. Yeah, only one. Mirror window in pocket. Who needs it? Yeah, I mean, not really a big issue either because you still had the Ash available. You got double hard breach, so I don't really think losing Volps here was going to be all that influential for Herds. The fact that you maybe lose out on that Nitrosol later in the round, especially playing that sort of key position where you probably do want to keep the pressure on to Jacuzzi itself. Four versus four, like you said. Well, one scoreline just feels to me like W7M has been the better team. 
But uh, to 4-1? It, it, it's one of those sort of moments where the, the sort of little microcosms of things going wrong become these macro problems. Yeah. And they're emphasized because Liquid are on the pressure of attack. They're seeing if they can try and make these. And those little plant moments, those little, oh, we haven't got this swing, we haven't got this player, become lost rounds. If they're on the defense, they might be one rounds mm. here. W7M, they've eked on by, they swing and pop up and pop him down. And they're looking for the second. Takes a lot of damage, KZ. Lagonis does find JV92. So they've isolated one player on the main stairs. Yeah, 60 seconds left, but it's a kind of big stack. Over towards this jacuzzi side, resets out towards the gym window on the balcony. Does at least offer something different. Ness can now make his way in through Brick. Nade though towards logistics. I think he's going to be a big, big factor here for W7M defensively. Big kill from Philippox though. Over towards Con through the doorway. Gets the kill onto resets. That's now one inside the bathroom. Ness inside. KZ down below. Ness trying to just clear that position in Con. He's still got Nade towards logistics. KZ's going for a massive rotate, but he might not even be needed. Down to just Lagunas. 25 seconds of 1v3. That's one, but the trade immediately from Con comes through. Philippox. Two massive kills from that con position understanding that the push there from liquid was rather one-dimensional for on that jacuzzi side he could just sit in con no one's coming from behind so if either of them get one map one point regardless of whether they lose the series they qualify they're they they're out Ooh. of the danger zone they will make it obviously these are two rosters that want to fight is that guaranteed i believe six they would be on nine so there's only a possible of eight total i mean liquid's only got the four points Oh, W7M then. I just can't read my own writing. Oh, yeah, no. <laughs> Virtus Pro and W7M need just wounded yeah. one point. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I uh, just wrote it really f I walk around a lot when I cast. This is something that you get used to. I do a lot of weird poses on furniture. Maybe you can get like a, a dance routine. That would be sick. That would be great. Can I get like a, a dance mat <laughs> to control the camera? <laughs> it's good exercise. Yeah, it keeps me active. Uh, do you know what this is? of a stretch five to one here i mean it as you sort of said it doesn't feel like a five to one game but that is just maybe it's the nature of the fact that w7m have started on defense super yeah. defend decided map it's been like 73 percent or something i don't have it in front of me so fresh he's got the numbers but regardless now for liquid they go on the defense and those little microcosm moments like you kind of mentioned i think will always tend to favor the defense instead of the attack and that might just be the difference maker now for liquid i think they've played okay for the most part but Again, just those little differences. And W7M have been better in the clutch. They've certainly had more high-impact plays. And therefore, that's why the scoreboard has inflated out to 5-1. But Liquid certainly should not feel as if they're out of this. We've already seen enough of this tournament. Like, a couple of years ago, I would have looked at the scoreline and be like, oh, this one's probably over. But not anymore. <laughs> not in this meta. Absolutely not. Liquid are on defense. They can 100% replicate what we just saw from W7M. They get one breath. One chance to not miss their opportunity. Take care of this first map, which is W7M's map, and it is a map that W7M have time and time again proven, hey, we're a very good clubhouse team. Nesk, hey, I'm a very good Valkyrie player. That's been known for the many, many years. He has touched and blessed this game with his presence. At least they're hunting the camera. They're paying him the respects that you know these two teams will pay each other. And the other thing as well, in terms of really nailing home the fact that liquid can bring this back they're like bottom five at this tournament in terms of attacking win rate like that is actually how bad they've been uh for obviously a tournament where everyone is kind of kind of struggling to attack they're bottom five but their defense is like 70 percent so that's actually quite high yep so they've got every chance of being able to bring this back it's not over by any stretch of the imagination the good news though for w7m is by starting on defense first they have this buffer right and it also means they get a couple of free punches here to try and extend this to match point territory the strange sort of confrontations with their own history, the strange sort of comparisons that you're able to make, again, with the directness of them playing at the final. There's actually how they performed at this tournament versus how these two teams played at Copenhagen where they got into the finals. And Liquid have actually been performing better on an average than they were. Palu especially. However, all of W7M are currently performing worse as a statistical average. And obviously, well, they've taken losses, something that they've weren't really used to before. Church and Pipes is about to have the sweet sound of a shotgun pump into it. As soon as Nade gets a little bit closer, he's 
And Ash working the kit all the way in. They've seen the spot and taken a second to get in. I'm not sure if they are. Ooh, Gonna try and duck the kit just close in the inside, covered by the audio. They lost the first fight, but they've been able to do this. A post-plant situation, a four versus four, and Liquid at this point have to try and move Nade at the back and then go for the retake on the vertical. That positioning can be covered and watched so well from above, so it's gotta be a two-story retake. Yeah, I've seen this play. I think it was like D plus key or someone from APAC. It was one of the Korean teams and they kind of just slip in, go bot main with the kit and then go into the rotate hole and you plant it right next to it. You can't be seen from those at the back of Arsenal and clearly it worked again. You get the plant successfully here for W7M, but now it's about defending it in the two on three. Palu, oh, he's hello. found a lion. He's finding hello. the next fight as well. They're going for the defuse. And there it is, the two-story <laughs> retake. Very clever play there from Palu to know the rotate and very good awareness from Liquid to sort of go, okay, well, this is where the kid is. Yep. We need point A upstairs. It's the beauty of Siege, right? Kit's on the ground, basement, and your first instinct should now be to go above. Like, you don't go straight to the kit. You do that, you're going to lose the round. So they yep. understand what they need to do. The win condition there is simply to retake up above kitchen. There's going to be the double stack there from W7M. I don't mind what W7M did here in the fact that they go for the more fast plant, not conventional. How many times have we seen teams like Open Kitchen Hatch go for the drop, go for the default plant? Everyone's watching it. And especially on that back angle of Arsenal, you can watch that hatch largely... Un, you know, uncontested, but one thing you can't watch from that angle is that little slip in on the road tape from bot main. So clearly teams are kind of working that out a bit, but it means you've still got to be able to defend it. W7M couldn't, and Liquid get their second round. There was only about four seconds, three seconds in it. I wasn't entirely precise at the time because we were watching the fight up top, and during that, I think Lagonis went and snuck his way in for the defuse anyway. But Liquid, they had their timing, they had their pace, they have their first, they are... Sort of doing two missions right now. Operation, let's try and get the win on this map, which means win everything ahead of them. Flawless. The rest of this before they hit OT. The second one, try and get as many before they hit OT. There might be one mistake, one slip up, one round that goes away from them, whether it's W7M just play it better or they make a mistake. They're allowed one and only one. The further they can go, the distance they can cover before they hit that situation, obviously the happier and better they will be. The Bandit will be the first port of call here as they go for a classic break onto this wall. With the Thatcher on the board, they really should be able to get this open pretty cleanly. Not too much of a cost. The first roll. Oh, there's the Selma on the opposite end to ensure that the Bandit cannot strip these two sides. Reset isn't even going to Try. Yeah, I just had to go and have a bit of a double take because I was looking at the map vetoes and, and kind of surprised me. That was W7M that obviously ended up picking uh, this particular map of Clubhouse because when I originally looked at Team Liquid, it was, uh, well, this very map that was actually their favorite map. Well, this is W7M and what they do is they go, oh, this is your favorite map. We feel bad for you. So here you go. No, no, no. They don't even do that. They go, this is your favorite map. We feel better than you. We're going to beat you on it. They've done it to BDS here. They did it to Virtus Pro, I believe, at one point. They've done it to G2. And, well, they may as well do it to Liquid as well. Fair as fair in trying to take people. It's a confidence thing. But also, they have a very decent map pool. They have a very yeah. good awareness of what they want to do across all of them. One of the things that's made them as a team so consistently strong and drop such a little amount of maps, Volps. Gets rid of Herds, gets the opener, which has generally been a statistic that has felt like it's gone a lot more into Liquid's favor throughout the series. Yeah, 60 seconds left and resets now because he obviously wasn't able to stop main breach. He's just trying to keep cash from being opened up and did so successfully. That's going to really annoy W7M because that means that they're going to have to walk through this doorway if they really want to make their approach from con side. That's exactly where the kit is as well. KZ still out on that main breach towards CCTV oh. and he does get a kill on to Nesk. So at the very least, keeping Liquid honest on the defense by having one player there, but there's no pressure on Raft. There's double stack from Volps yeah, and Palo. The they do look to overload cash though. Volps does get a kill. A nice little angle from said Rafter's position. Again, there's no real pressure there from W7M. He gets a third one as well. Well, I guess this is why teams do like to clear out said Rafter's position, because this is what you can do. Vault gets four, five, the oh! ace from Vault.
Someone at some point probably needed to push garage or rafters. <laughs> he just had a free firing range in towards sight. There's all five from Bulbs. <laughs> Did he get the last two with the super joy? <laughs> he just screamed in from holding out of position like, oh, that's where they are. And that's where my ace is. First ace I've seen from my personal side of the tournament. I know it's not the first ace of the tournament. But that felt so weirdly understated. It was, as you said, they had this position in garage. Here comes the double. Oh, it's Volts with one and then the super shorty for the second. Mm. Yeah, I mean, in that instance, right, if you're just going to go for a pretty one-dimensional con push, you haven't really got a whole lot. Maybe you got one player on the repel, which is what they had over towards main bridge of Kennels, but there was no kind of garage pressure. And so that meant for Liquid, they had two players in rafters that were just looking in towards site. And W7M, at that point, you know, you're already taking fights in towards cash. You're already taking fights in towards CCTV. You don't have the time to then have to worry about those on rafters. They just needed at some point earlier in the round to probably try and get some kind of pressure over towards rafters. It's difficult. It's no capital. Obviously, the Azami, it's annoying. It's an annoying position to deal with. But nevertheless, if you don't put any kind of pressure there, you see what Volts was able to do. Because the first skill for Volts came from the top of Garage, I was like, okay, well, you know, they're, they're working on that. And you see the body's top red. That's other player. That's Lagonis. That's whoever. And then seeing Volps get the quad kill, I'm like, how has he done that from where he is? Because you cannot see that. And then you go into the replay, and it's like, oh, he just ran over. Yeah. He was just like, I need to I need to be over here. This is this is where the people I need to kill. Well, uh, he, had a, he had a good little murder hole as well, looking in towards Cash from Rafter. So through that doorway. So he was kind of able to watch them push in from Con to Cash as well. I think yeah, he was able was to get like, involved. So you wanted to get involved. Really good defense from Liquid. Jump in. 3-5 scoreline. I think a very apt and fair scoreline as well with the way that this match has certainly played out thus far. Jim Bedroom, we go into the ninth round. W7M's attack certainly have had some question marks here to begin, Emmy, and to the second half. I mean, it's a game of two halves. That, that's really the clearest sort of look of it right now. As you said, they're a team that's done much better on their defense and much worse on their attack liquid. And statistically, that is something where W7M might be suffering a bit under the onus of as well. The quick break, the quick motion into construction as well, but the C4 at least stops some of that parlou. Gets the C4 and gets rid of Ace. Now, that's one of their hard breaches done. A fully reinforced... Yeah, I was going to say, what is that? That's logistics wall. Interesting. Yeah, it, it's obviously nothing you usually see, especially on this sort of side of it. They're saying stay away. There's also like a ankle height mirror window on the external sort of construction wall. It, it's made things very claustrophobic in construction. Yeah, the good news as well for Liquid, and the reason why I think this will work is the fact that Jacuzzi hasn't been opened up. There's no pressure from W7M, so it really does kind of solidify site itself for them. Nade from Ness will get the kill onto Hertz. Two-player advantage, Liquid, in what's basically just a con push from W7M, JV trying to get a bit of pressure out towards that gym window, but that's about it. Right now, W7M are just like getting strangulated here in towards con. They finally start to open up logistics. They're clearly worried about it. Under a minute left, but all of the pressure now on W7M to just try and find something. Double push into logistics. Lagonis though, turned away, right back. Hazy's watching. Nice kill from Lagonis. Oh. Gets the trade. Three on two. It's technically one left for Liquid. <laughs> W7M through just sheer pressure. What? JV in the end. Gets two, pushing in from that gym bedroom side on the balcony. Comes in, gets a couple of kills. Match point now, W7M. I don't understand. What a weird round. Where did that come from? They were entirely full sending it to a locked construction. Lost the opener, lost the follow-up man as well. But Ness getting the swing. It's a five on three. And then they're just like... Ah, uh, let's just let's just double swing Lodgy. You can see one entering on gym bedroom yeah. on the far side. JV, and he got two. I and think it's... I think in that moment JV got those two because then Liquid were kind of like training their attention towards logistic because of the double stack, and so then he's just shooting them in, probably in the back at that point. I mean, what a round there from W7M where it's just like, hey, really goes to show, don't give up on these rounds. Yeah, it's a bit weird. You got to deal with a, a reinforced logistics. You haven't <laughs> opened up a jacuzzi. You don't really have the time to maybe send someone down below and go through main. Plus, also at that point, main stairs is hard because you don't have the angles from say like an open jacuzzi to help you clear that area. Just brute force your way through, apparently. And the pressure on logistics then gave JV the, the chance to push his way in. It's a needle scratcher. Five seconds left. And Liquid would be disappointed because I think, again, to summarize for them, it's like, yes, you can be critical. There's things they did wrong. Yeah, I'm not saying they didn't do anything yeah, yeah. wrong. But they, I like some of the things they were doing. It's just obviously they're going up against W7. I think, I, you know, there's certain matchups and certain derbies where teams have the worst mental possible. 
because you're against someone you're used to playing a lot. In EU, it was usually Wolves versus BDS. Mm. Wolves cannot beat BDS at all. It doesn't yeah. matter the form of the teams coming into the showdown. Here, Liquid, they're making these little moments, as you said, getting blinkered in to that fight and that approach before, something that they haven't suffered oh, before. Nesk. Great takes either side. JV gets one, and Ness gets revenge. The flash over the top. They can try and scream up. Oh, they he's got to die know here. it with the bees, and there it is. Entirely blind. There's no surviving that at that point. Palu is going to be the next point of call. Just ducks. Underneath a bit of fire. I do like the Grim there, but I think the Hive Launcher to clear rafters is more perceived pressure. But you couple it with the flashes, you know exactly where they are because they're getting red pinned. And obviously, again, there's that perceived pressure. It's still actual pressure too. Attackers Three versus four, though, still in favor of W7M. And they've got themselves rafters. As of course, we are going to be down below. It doesn't really mean a whole lot. No, it's sort of wasting time. It's always the... Well, the roam does two things. The first is always going to be take time and utility out of the attackers. If you can trade off loads of utility and a minute and a half towards... Ooh, I mean, the ADDs were spotted anyway. Second drone. Send, send it in. Roll it up. No more cap can. And now? Yeah, good value there from at least those shock drones and so forth. JV gets rid of a lot of the any potential threat. Trying to eventually then push in towards site. And still, by the way, despite all of that, it feels like a lull. But because that entry was so fast, we've still got over a minute 10. I mean, all the time in the world. All the time in the world to sort of pull themselves together. They've only really traded out the Grim for what is, you know, Fenrir. Not the best. You I love the early. cover fire shots there as if that's going to, like, mask the sound <laughs> of just breaking through it's soft like, wall. Like, like coughing for, like, a, yeah. like a gun. Like a... <laughs> 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 Oh, you didn't hear that. Oh, oh they, they didn't good hear shot that. Heard. So, I mean, this is really tough now for Liquid because they got pressure from Dirt, pressure from Blue. Good pinch towards Arsenal. Double stack into Church. There goes one anyway onto Palo. Game's done. Sorry to say it, especially for Liquid fans because <laughs> there is no world in which Lagunas is going to clutch up in the one versus four. Not in any kind of universal world. He does get, though. One kill, one down onto JV. One pushing, but he's full wide. Oh! No way! We might just be living in the one in 14 million and 605 if Lagunas wins this one. They go for the revive. They are double stacked. He can't oh! win it though. Never mind. <laughs> this is not the one. Oh, that was so close. <laughs> so close. So much closer with the UMP. Oh, they didn't do it. They so close to do it. But W7M. You know what, Emmy? The Brazilians right there, the Liquid fans, they just got a, a sense of the APAC edging. They just got a <laughs> sense of what it's like to feel so close, but be so far. It's a 7-3 win for W7M in the first map here of Clubhouse, of course. They did pick Club, and they played it really well. And I think a scoreline that's probably fair when it's all said and done. Liquid did some okay things. They got a couple of rounds, but W7M, far and away better. Liquid did do some okay things. There's no two ways about that. They did. The things they did, they're okay. But it's not their map. It's. But you know what? We like winners. <laughs> so W7M did better and more okay. Things. Statistically, they did do better. They won. They won the game, as you can see on the bottom of the screen. It was a very violent game. There was only really one plant which came into a counter. I think most use. most matches are violent. Well, you never know. I've seen some teams that can struggle to kill. What else I've seen? Wonderful breaks in the future. How about right now? Bye. Hybrid slot for something different. Correct using those Tendels currently over towards top blue. No one to directly follow that up? No, it was for the clutch drone. <laughs> Pion was being hunted on his clutch drone there, and he was calling it out, and they were playing ring around the Rosie on the door. He didn't want to swing because there was people on top. So Rek decided to throw in a Candela so the drone could actually go inside <laughs> and check for utility. I've not seen a drone being flashed in, but you know, <laughs> I guess you know, it's always something new to see. <laughs> Rainbow Six in 2024. <laughs> Well, those clutch drones critical though in countering the Fenrir, one of the more oppressive defensive operators at the moment. Flashes now to come through from Wreck. That's the final Candela. Still a mine on the door. That wasn't hacked. Wreck to push forward. Gets the first. And there's no immediate trade from Loss. 
a lot of damage done into cameramen as well as the flashbangs come through. Double to follow, but it's just the trading game that we're seeing right now. There's openings in the walls and everybody's just running in wherever they can. Cameraman on the flank now with about one HP. He's gone unspotted so far. The plan's again going down. Cameraman needs to strike true, but he misses the opportunity on Pion. And that might actually be the deciding factor for this round. As again, command is the place that they decided to go. And again, Scar is able to get that plan down. Not really being contested whatsoever. Can Cameraman go for that clutch? Is that big question? Well, with the amount of HP he has, I would be surprised if he sticks it and indeed gets shut down. Well, success again for Scars on the top floor, and unfortunately for the defensive loss, in a more convincing fashion, walls opened up early, space created top blue. Despite some utils still standing, Rek was able to get the opening pick, and there was no immediate trade from loss. So good work there from Scars, leveraging the tools that they had available. And now we'll see if they're able to formulate a response again. And it's probably a point brought up by every caster on every map of every series of the tournament so far, but <laughs> attacks come at a premium at the moment, irrespective of the map. So for loss, it's about sort of correcting course as quickly as possible. Yeah, for sure, like the defense has been about 61% of the rounds that were won at the start of the day. Uh, that's only been increasing, I believe, with some of the games that we've been seeing, or at least staying equal to it. So every attack that you manage to put on the board is going to be huge, especially if you're leading when you're on your attack here. If Scars can basically force this into like three attack rounds, maybe even four, finding themselves in really good territory for the remainder of this match. So storage would go then for round number four, and this is perhaps one of the more dynamic objectives I would describe it on this particular map. It offers the defense the ability to lurk down below and vert up into the objective, but also to hold up above and then flood down below. But this is also an objective where equally the defense, if they can strike true and find weaknesses in the setup, are able to exploit that, create a little bit of space, and in doing so, pressure the site quite quickly. So we'll see how Scars look to approach. At the moment, just the Ash Charge down below to facilitate the IT wall getting opened up. Dot Flash. No immediate follow-up, though. Elsewhere, the Breach opened up. More so about, like, using Utility, using the Candela to make sure no one was going to go for a swing. It's always a bit, like, wondering. It's like you used two Candelas, you could have gotten a free kill if they knew that the person in there was going to be flashed. Fishlike does have... A uh, good spot out on one of those drones, so probably will have called that out, waiting for the rest of his team to get into a position where they can actually deal with that situation. Exothermic going off on the opposite side as well, so it seems for now that there's a lot of pressure coming down horizontal from both the Ying and the Thermite. The rest seems to be going up towards that top floor, seeing if they can get that vertical under control. Of course, top down is always a bit more tricky to deal with than bottom up, and that Ash Church is going to be making sure that that mirror window is going to be cracked. Mm, cracked it is, now opened up, and Dash's position now compromised. For Lost, it's all about maintaining this man count and not creating a weakness for Scars to exploit. Rack up above. The Scars look to time something. Unfortunately, they haven't actually gotten a whole lot of map control at the midway point of the round. Yes, they've been able to poke and prod around, a couple of hard breaches open, but they need to force themselves in. And Fishlike says, well, okay, I'll just walk straight in. Yellow ping on Tamaya, collects the kill. And Dots does not respond, nor does Cameraman. He'll fall as well. Quickly exerts themselves as well, and they have a two-man advantage right now with about a minute left on that clock. It is plenty of time to start getting yourself towards either control or towards the storage room and start getting that plan down as well. Dots drops as he gets swung on by two different sides. Dash will strike back onto Pion, but the defuse is going through. As C4 gets sussed out, will oh. blow up, and as Lowen will find a kill as well, we find ourselves in a 2v1 situation in favor of Lowe's. It seemed like this round was going to be a Scarus round, hands down, but now now it's only up to the last remaining member. Shut down quickly as well. Lowe's able to just shut down whatever Scars was cooking up there, even though it was like a 4v2 situation. I mean, mechanically, they just did not put a foot wrong at all. There, every single shot was landing. The positioning as well was on point. Great nitro for plant denial. It looked good for Scars. I think they took a long time to sort of find that window of opportunity. Fishlike was then able to capitalize, finally get a kill off the back of that yellow ping. The rest of the team tried to follow up and it was somewhat successful, but unfortunately it then did fall apart. 
there must have been like a lack of information because as you mentioned like everything was just going right they weren't making any big mistakes they were struggling in getting the uh, the nitro cell taken care of that took out your diffuser plant for sure right but it's like you should normally still have like three other members left but those all fell in their respective own uh, ways as well I love what all the like the what was that? that? I don't know what it was, but it I looked cool. like the items that people bring, like Phoebe, yeah, for example, has like a bionicle with them. Some people have like uh, plushies with Joel and a mannequin. It's always fun whenever uh, we see like little personal items being brought out. Mm. Amy was asking me actually this morning during our game if I was a player, what would I bring? I'll flip that question to you, Hap. If oh, you were playing in SR, what would you bring? Am I ready to go? I have to think about it. It's a tough question, right? It is a tough question. <laughs> I ended up just Such saying a... personal a, uh, statement. I just said a plush kangaroo, but that is very generic. <laughs> I don't know what I would bring. If, if I would have, right, you know, like the biggest... Yeah, it would be branding if I say that now. Do-it-yourself, bricks, you know? You stack on top of each other that have nice, nice clicking... I'm not going to call out the brand. Ah... <laughs> Bring that one with, as uh, we see the entry coming through. Of course, it is the basement. Top-down approach is important. And they do have the Jekyll track to help with the roam clear. Now, they are hunting a player. Surely, they are going to be falling down back towards the side as the second set of pings will be coming through. And they're all just trying to send as much let down range as they can. But as you see it right here, Loban falling back. He's taking quite a bit of damage, but still alive. That's the most important part. Whoa. Yep, especially on that Solus roll. Want to have impact later in the round, but once again, that window is the demise of loss. It's such a powerful position for the attack to lock down. And it's three straight, unanswered. Loss struggling in this round, and the remaining two will now need to try and manufacture something pretty special here. I mean, they did a 2v4 clutch just the previous round. Surely they can go for it again, as it does get a little bit harder, though. Only dads laugh, dots left alive to try and, and find himself something here he's moved himself up the stairs onto cargo trying to hold himself into a bit of a disruptive position and i understand because you do not want to take a 1v5 onto the site you're going to be losing that you need to catch one or two off guard then suddenly it's a 1v3 it's a lot more doable especially if someone goes to the plant but as he moves through it's a flawless round from scars to come in and as you mentioned, those attack rounds are so valuable right now. They've found three. Arguably should have had four so far, Scars. They have been dominating lows over those last couple of rounds. Yeah, it doesn't get uh, too much more dominant than a flawless round. And I think the most concerning element of that for Lost is that the attack never really got going on the objective itself. A lot of it on the periphery. It's all up top, yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's kind of the danger, right? When you go for such a heavy roam, uh, roam kind of play. And Scars read that perfectly. They just managed to find them as they were, well, falling back towards that first floor, really. It wasn't even back towards the site. And it seems all really controlled from Scars right now. We don't see any, like, panicky plays coming through, which we do sometimes, you know, when, when things do start to get close. It is very controlled environment right now. Like, they're, they're doing what they have practiced a lot of times. And for now, Labs to be, uh, seems to be going into that direction quite decisively. I know it's still 2-3, but again, it should have been 1-4. And that was only like because of the like amazing plays that we saw from the two remaining players that they managed to get back into that round. Attackers are moving to defuse the bomb. So we headed back upstairs for the final round of the half. Loban prepping himself for something a little bit cheeky here, perhaps at the beginning of the round. One of the standout players at the Atlanta Major for a standout Great roster. Torch. Still pretty crazy to think that Lost made it to that grand final. Still Loban sitting on a 1.5 at this event so far. Alrighty, welcome back here for W7M Team Liquid. It's W7M who looked like the better team. And as we could see oh. there, they were ready to go into this game. Started off as well with a nice little clutch there from Nate inside a secret. I think it really set the tone for the rest of the game. Oh, a horrifying tone. A horrifying tone of Unfortunately, things going away from Liquid. You could see these sort of little pockets of brilliances of Liquid that we're used to, and then uh, miscalculations, errors, unfortunately. Things slipping away that W7M were allowed to punish, and it almost seems like, you know, you can see the emotion. You can see the heat of this game. It's the derby. 
yeah. currently of two of the strongest, if not the strongest teams in this whole tournament, let alone just in this region. And there's nothing like playing well in a derby. We saw an ace there as well from Volk that brought it back to 3-5. At that moment in time, it really did feel like the script was going to say defensive sided clubhouse. Yes, we've seen that time and time again. But yeah. in the end, W7M were able to overcome those little moments and won pretty convincingly. 7-3 against Team Liquid, who really did struggle in some areas. One area they didn't struggle in is the first kills. It was seemingly continually theirs. I sort of made a comment about it during the game. I was like, it feels like most of these are going their way. Mm. They And then they'll usually get the second as well. There was a consistency to them getting these first pick and then the second pick and being like, okay, this is the yeah. Liquid shit. All right. And then... And then things went wrong. <laughs> and then things went wrong. And that is the worst feeling. That is the worst sort of situation here. That 7-3... You know, whether W7M should have won or not, should be closer. Felt like as well, Herds, you know, six and eight, one and four on the first kill department, low cost. You know, there's another level somehow to W7M when you can think about maybe Herds having a probably more conventional game. KZ was great, Philippox as well. So decent team effort. They didn't have anyone that went like supernova, if you will, especially considering it was a 7-3 victory. Yeah. And uh, it felt like to me, at least W7M were for the most part in control. I always kind of felt like they were probably the team that was winning a lot of these fights. You could trust them a little bit more. Liquid looked okay on the defense defense when they did get there. I think it would have been a very different game had Liquid actually started on defense first half. It would have been the kind of game that maybe could have gone to OT. Liquid could have got a couple more rounds. Evidently, though, they were in a 5-1 deficit. That's a, a deep hole. Even if it is defend decided and they obviously get their chance on it, it means you can't put a foot wrong. Otherwise, match point, as we saw at 3-5, then 3-6, then it's like, oh my god, three match points we're going to deal with and uh, evidently couldn't. Yeah, and, and it's always that question of when is a deficit to Hard to pass. Well, I guess we'll see if the deficit of being one map down wow. is one of those. As the confirmation as well, with that one point guarantee, W7M have escaped groups. Woo! I, psst, psst. I don't think there was ever any doubt. No, not at all. No, none. Literally no <laughs> doubt. I mean, let's be honest. W7M, if they don't make... It's, just, it's the weirdest thing to say. If they're not in the final you'll feel like after the year they've had, mm. they have somewhere underperformed. And I don't just mean that in like, because they'll play some very, they'll play the toughest possible opponents, but they've just been so good. Yeah, but have they played Team Bliss yet? We <laughs> no. <laughs> I can't even continue on with that joke. I'm sorry. <laughs> How, could, could they do it on a rainy Thursday? In a, in a rainy Wednesday at Stoke? <laughs> yeah, could they do it then? Uh, probably. Yeah. Probably. <laughs> I think I think I agree with you, obviously. It's it's really difficult to say for a team, oh, if you don't make finals, like yes. this tournament's a failure. Exactly. Maybe if they're like, I don't know, the semifinals. They, if they make top four, it's probably still fine. And clearly a team that's been able to do so much throughout the calendar year. Uh, oh, but obviously, Alicia. it just goes to show, at least always at these events, one or two teams are going to have those super high expectations. They have got one. Maybe the likes of G2 could have the other. As we head to Consulate, 75% of you guys at home have actually thought that W7M will make this a swift 2-0. And look, so enough maybe on Clubhouse to, to suggest that could be the case. As we do head to Consulate, though, it is actually one of the more attacker-sided maps that we've got at the tournament thus far. I think it's maybe number one, but that still is not even above 50%. It's still technically yeah. favoring the defense. Last, we're just in that old meta again. Remember Shield meta? Yeah. The, the 90 seconds yep. left meta. With, with <laughs> 90 seconds left meta. Yeah, to 30 seconds, 20 seconds Then down left. to 20. 20 seconds, still taking Pixel with three grenades yeah. to burn. Yeah, I remember that. Uh, Legion ban is an interesting one. I think that that could be the first Legion ban this tournament. Nah, surely not. There's been enough games played. We're on to day, we're on to day four now. Yeah, but it's, I think the thing is, mm -hmm. so many defenders you need to ban. There is, and is Legion one of the the Five God Squad? Left. Absolutely no. not. No, it's and like A tier. It's, it's a strange one, and I agree with you because I think when you think about like why you would ban Legion, why would you why would you ban a Legion, right? It's probably more of an annoyance factor. Like I don't want to have to deal with those goo mines. The obviously defense can get a bit of information, but it means like what are you leaving up? Well, you're leaving up the Fenrir, you're leaving up the Valkyrie on a map like Consulate. It's still really strong, even after the fact that you can't throw the Valk cams outside of the building. It's still even now, it's part of that kind of considered tier of God Squad, but. Yeah, it's an interesting one. The dock could be on the Grim, though. Definitely no, uh, and obviously these army as well. Definitely no issues with those. We've actually started to see Grim get a couple of bands. I the love, tournament. this is a conversation I can't remember who I had with on class the other day. I love that in about a 12-month period, Grim has gone from a hilarity 
to a legitimate band. You know, you want even something that's funnier? Is yep. like 12 months ago, probably not 12 months ago, maybe 10, 10 or 8 months ago, I was, was bugging guys. I'm like, Grim's going to be meta. Like, meta. He could not hack. He's like, <laughs> shut up. You don't know what you're talking about. And evidently, Grim evidently. has become pretty decent. Like, it's good. Know, you can dislodge reload. position. You can get information. Look, he's not to the level of some of those defensive operators. Yeah, he's yeah, not yeah, that yeah. oppressive. You yeah. certainly don't need to ban him out that often. Yeah. But he is a relevant operator. Yeah, you have to take him out of certain teams because they're very good with him. This is a, another sort of irony about this. The first time I remember casting Grim, and it was so funny to see Grim to be like, yeah, bees, bees, bees. <laughs> it was KZ that was like, I'm going to play Grim. Didn't even use the bees on their push. Just played it for the gun and the pace. Um, and then now they're, they're having it banned against them. And that was the era of W7M where you had KZ was so good. He was like, I will play any operator and usually make it work. Two minutes have gone. Mm. Now, to recap, not much has happened. Main bridge towards Belk's opened up. Admin side push here from Liquid. Clearly want to try and get their way in towards meeting. Resets will take the first little fight over towards Poppy. And obviously you can see from the gas babes towards the uh, Montang, it's just all about being oppressive here from W7M defensively, trying to deny position. The hallway position still kind of under lock and key. Obviously a little bit of pressure outside that balcony. Lagunas is just really the one that needs to eventually make that entry. Nice oh. shot from resets that onto hers. Again, he did struggle a little bit on the ult uh, on the opening map, but not the best to start either here on console. Well, it was the first gets underneath and starts trying to open things as Volps gets pushed out of the single breach onto the outside balcony. Nade is holding firm with 30 seconds. They're gonna start just popping some of the control around them and outside the back of them. What are you signaling for here with 20 seconds left? Because well, I'm, I was, I'm <laughs> searching for the kit. <laughs> the kit's on the Montague, so you don't have to look too far. The Gonus will eventually try and get that one in. And with 15 seconds, well, eventually it has to happen basically now. They start to make their way in towards sight. I think W7M set up pretty nicely, but Palu, he's able to just get a nice double. Good little run and gun moment there from Felipox. They take it. Nasca's picked the kit back up. All the cover's coming here from Palu, and if there's anyone that can do it, it's him, but unfortunately... Not even his supernatural power can watch multiple sides at once. W7M do just enough. So obviously I was doing a little, not so much a signal, but I was looking and I was like, you there wasn't looking. much main breach pressure in that last stage of the round. So that meant that for the moment that Liquid had to push through that doorway in towards meeting, they didn't really have much on-site pressure. It really was just kind of hope the Montane kind of survives, gets towards bomb chassis and get plant down. And that didn't obviously end up working. W7M had good plays towards long deaths. They were able to then Overload the site at the last second. Deny the plant. Easy round. Ultimately, though, that was a lot of time that Liquid had to obviously deal with, like, pressure that was thrown at them. I mean, Philippe Box at one point was, like, throwing f not mines at the... <laughs> At the Monte, they had gas babes thrown <laughs> at the Monte. And like it was just sort of like he really wanted to get in there. The big moment for me was Volts dying on on the balcony bridge. Yeah, like, yeah, as soon yeah. as he dies there, they lose a lot of pressure in towards site, and W7M were a little bit more comfortable. Now we go down to uh, Garage and Cafe. Especially as you sort of look how late it was for anyone to put pressure towards the yellow as well. KZ was free to sort of at about the 30 second mark pop one of his Goyo canisters and go right. I'll go help and stop this kit going down which gives the wiggle room for the, the shotgun player to sort of do that running drive-by mm. against the Monty and get the take there. I mean, it's always those sort of moments there where they're trying to make sure that they're as cemented as possible before they go for the plant. We go down to the basement here, and you'll generally have a bit of a top hold in that there is only one player on the site as of this moment. The rest are stretched over the top two stories, leaving just a maestro to hang around and hope and nothing too quick comes. And very quickly, while there's a still an ins of irrelevance, as we do actually see Nex get a nice little kill onto Hertz again, caught off guard, and as we lose a bit of that relevance, my point I wanted to make very quickly was on that last site, the fact that W7M really gave them that admin control, didn't try and contest it all that much, gave up hallway, eventually played back a site towards Long Death, had an earlier game today on Consular NIP GK, and those two teams were like really lacked the ability to win that particular site. They just struggled, and both of them eventually moved away because they kept trying to contest admin, and then they kept trying to like play off of side a little bit out towards the hallway and that just gave the offense like so many ways to actually get involved the other way in the second round liquid again with an opening kill as has kind of now been a trend in the series back on club now to start also on consulate they get these opening picks i mean but they just don't know how to actually convert them into round wins it's the statistic that we saw when hey they did this quite well last time a statistic that 
still led to them being pushed aside on club. The time just keeps on ticking. They cannot seem to find, as you said, the momentum and the confidence to start trying to move behind the objective. It becomes that old style of siege. You've set up everything perfect and then perfect the round itself. Here, unfortunately, the only thing is a bit of a misspelling towards the word error to take. Volts just drifting on by, trusting there isn't a player in that position. Big kill, though, as well. And the Ram likes to get in towards Expo, open things up. The Boogie Auto Breacher. So I think a little moment there for W7M, where not necessarily a full win condition for Liquid is taken off the board, but certainly a big factor in sort of what they want to do. Double Hard Breach left with the Nomad doesn't really give them a super amount of firepower, but they got so many flashes still available to be exact eight flashes between the three players for Liquid. So in terms of being able to take these positions, not sure about Parley, what he's doing there. JV gets a nice free kill for W7M. And that now three versus two advantage for W7M. Back to site they go. No real control here at all for Liquid. They're just running around like chickens with their head cut off. Well, now they have had their head cut off. Oh, look at that. <laughs> He's like, what was that? I was like that. I, th that was probably <laughs> a good picture of me at that moment. <laughs> I was like, what? Arms out. <laughs> Two rounds in a row. Two rounds in a row here for W7M. And you, you worry the more that this deficit gets wider and wider and wider here on Liquid's map. Regardless of the fact that whether it's a side or not, the more you're sort of thinking, oh, it's it's an eight to three. Oh, it's a nine <laughs> to three. And there should be more more football celebrations in. You reckon? Like if you get the final kill you that wins allowed. the round, you should be able to like take your headset off, we run around watched, and be like, Soo! We watched the Super Bowl the other day, <laughs> and after every single play, people celebrated. Someone's and, doing a celebration. And showboat. They didn't even and have to score. Sitting here. As Taylor Swift and Travis Kelsey, or whatever his name is. Am I, am I Travis Kelsey? Yeah. That's that's a pretty apt I comparison. I actually like that, yeah. Get that on the lower thirds production. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I, change the, the handles. Change the handles. <laughs> you see what is, in effect, just that sort of energy, right? Yeah. And, and I guess that comes from, like, fist bumping. I'll, I'll take my glasses off when we come back, because then it really will sell it. Because <laughs> yeah, Travis Kelsey doesn't wear the glasses. No, he doesn't. I mean, there's there's, there's, there's some slight there's some slight differences <laughs> between you and me. Nah, that's just the glasses. Just little ones. Just the glasses. Yeah, just the glasses. Just the glasses <laughs> and, and the voice. And then otherwise, it, it's, I mean, it's like they're here in the room with us. We are them. Before I get my <laughs> private jet back towards just the green room 20 feet away. Two rounds in a row, W7. Yes. And unfortunately, those two rounds have probably been, again, highlights to what we saw in Clubhouse, where there's been an okay moment here or there for Liquid. But okay is not good enough. No. We like winners. Okay leads you to KO. We like winners here. Uh, I'm doing the Wolf of Wall Street fist bump. You guys can't see that. The camera adds so much to that bit. So Bring through for the Leapox. And so many bullets to a single player. But now they're fighting inside the site. Palu has stepped in on the roll of the ace. But with a shotgun swing from a Solus and a single swing from Nade, Palu is doing everything he can in the powers of the powerful Palu man to try and keep some handle onto this hole. Well... Two things. They got sight. The other thing is they're still a minute 40. The other thing is a double red ping. So th there's nothing that they can really do. You can't plant because you haven't got any vert. So resets now in a one versus three. Like the Liquid's had sight control for like the last 30 seconds. But, but again, on the way servers and towers work, these kind of somehow need to get control of both. It's really difficult. So it's like they've got two players inside a server. You can't really plant because of hatch, because they don't have vert. There's nothing you can really do in that moment, especially when you don't have the numbers to overload said positions. That was a bit of a nothing round simply because Liquid went too fast on a site where you probably want to go more conventionally slow. It's... I mean, the, the bullet hole swing. The soul is going for the shotgun. That is filth. But it's just... <sighs> nine, nine to three, ten to three. It becomes worse and worse and worse in a series like this. Where every round matters so much. Matters. It matters so... I'm sorry, should I talk like this? <laughs> every single round matters so much. Hello. I'm Can you do that for the rest of this cast or not? For the whole cast? Yeah, the whole cast. Probably not. I would probably get so many complaints. You would be like, this is the worst thing I've ever listened to. Oh, no, no, I would never. Hazy herds <laughs> Philly Pops. I went to private school. Okay, I, you know what? I don't even want a round of it. I'm Australian. <laughs> oh, jeez.
How I almost This cried. is about as bad as Liquid's <laughs> playing right now. <laughs> oh no. I'm not gonna lie, when I saw this matchup initially my initial impression, and this was at the beginning of groups, right? None of the games had been played yet. I was yeah. like I was like, hell yeah, this is gonna be sick. Like, this I is was gonna be so awesome. excited for this like, game. I, I'm pretty certain I got to cover W7 and Liquid back in Copenhagen with Guns. And it was like, back then, Liquid were, well, clearly a little bit better than the way they've been playing at this tournament. It went to an 8-7. It game. did. It did. And it was a lot of fun. And then when I got to see, I was like, oh, I'm gonna get to do Liquid and W7M again. Well, unfortunately, so far, it's like 10 to 3 in terms of the two maps that have been played. And Liquid haven't really shown us enough that they can overpower W7M. Like, they've had some good moments, they've had some okay moments. But for the most part, W7M have been virtually in control of this series without really any kind of threat from Team Liquid. Changing Towards the maps. top, they're going to see if they can try and force out some of this console play. We said it before, fully in control of admin, but only really because W7M let them. And then they spent the remaining 2 minutes, 30 seconds, just trying to get their foot in the door, playing against the smoke canisters, the pops of the Goyo canisters as well. It just led to a little bit of unfortunate disaster here. Some attention towards the top of yellow. Some attention towards the top of spiral. They've opted for a little bit more width and wiggle room in terms of, well, with this going wrong, we can try and take this fight. We can try and do this. However, Liquid isn't handing them an engagement. Uh, or W7M isn't even isn't handing them an engagement as of yet. There's nothing that is coming to them easily. So Liquid still needs to try and find the tip of the spear to start thrusting at the CEO tape. Yeah, and again, nothing really on the admin side. So you've got the Wamira of JV kind of just running around, not really doing a whole lot. Bit of focus towards Yellow Stairs with Nesk, and that's also where the kit is located. Minute 20 on the clock, nade top floor. Good pressure on site from W7M still, and again, really nothing admin does mean in the late round. Don't be surprised if JV gets like a double kill coming in late in towards site because no one's going to put pressure on him over towards service stairs. This is heavy influ uh, influence over towards yellow stairs from Liquid, but is that going to be enough? Still on the roof, like towards Skylight, and then double stacking yellow. I mean, there's not really much to this attack from Liquid right now. Yeah, and against those smokes, the Finker's not really going to be able to do much. they got to try and just take a bit of a risk here, but you're up against Felipox with the English shotgun. He's wasted as much time. JV wastes Palu. Flash him, flash him. With another, there's the pop of the shotgun. There's two! Mm, you have flashes. Like, I mean, in that Fed. moment, you have flashes. It's a 1v4. This is not the 14 million 605 universe either in Manic's that moment. Get mad for the Conus. Manic's going to be furious. I'm starting to understand why Parker was Parker yesterday. In some moments, I kind of want to also emulate that. You know, so In this little instance, you're pushing top yellow, like three or four stacking, one skylight. You've got a bunch of flashes. No one uses any to try and flush out that position, close angle on the shotgun, and then swing. Instead, it's double dry swing, where at that point, the shotgun's going to be the favorite personnel to win that battle, as it did, as we saw it. Time out from Liquid. One clearly needed, because it's a 4 nothing stun. Again, remember... Consulate, if there's any map, it's this map for attack. This is not Clubhouse. JV92 hasn't died, seven kills mm -hmm. as of this moment in time. Do you remember when it used to be KAD rather than KDA? Was that like the old scoreboard system? I yeah, think it might have been. Yeah, the old scoreboard system yeah, yeah. was kills, yeah. assists, deaths, which on paper makes sense, but you look at it and then... It's always been, it's either KDA or there's KAD. Yeah. We all think of KDA. We just swap for the fun of it. Just like... Chaos. Let's just yeah. let's just swap these two around. Sometime in the future, they're going to be like, let's do assists and then, assists, then, then, then because plants, assists matter more. Ping, <laughs> deaths, and then kills. Deaths and then kills. <laughs> and then TMA Sapphire yeah. will be at his best statistically with I mean, plants near the front. Look at look at that result there as well in terms of the facial expressions from W7M and the lackadaisical nature in their celebration. It was like that's a nothing kind of round. It's Why? There's no pressure admin side, no pressure service stairs, no pressure on the balcony main bridge. It's like a triple stack yellow stairs couple in the skylight. It's so just basic attack from Liquid that against a team like W7M, it'll never work. They had the smoke as well to just delay, delay, delay. You still got F not mines you got to deal with. I mean, maybe against some like APAC teams that could work because you've just got the sheer like gum ability to push your way through eventually, yeah. but not against W7M. I was just trying to think there. I see the Thorn. Haven't seen Thorn a huge amount. They are still mad at There's, there's well, specific points, I think. Very specific places. I do love their play against all the little hopping I mean, Thorn's windows. got a really good gun. Great gun. Great razor gun. Blooms are okay. Yeah, they're, they're, you, you won't get a kill with a Razor Bloom, but you'll get intel, which you can, there's better operators at the minute mm. to get intel from 
to sort of read through. But I was thinking, what, what operators haven't we seen yet? There is. I've seen Carly. There's still like two, I think, or one. I don't actually know. I'll text Fresh again. <laughs> Fresh. <laughs> well, well, right now Liquid's bringing in the Glass. We've seen a little bit of Glass so far at SI24. Typically, can be coupled with, say, the Sends and the ROUs. In this instance, though, you've got a couple of smokes being brought. In fact, six smokes available because they've got the Twitch, they've got the Thermite, and obviously the Glass will bring two of their own in terms of Volps. This is an opportunity maybe for Liquid to go deep into the strap book and think, what can we do here in just being able to clear above? Let's create some long angles. Let's get the glass involved. Get a couple of smokes going. There's no Warden on the board either in response. But they lose Lagonus. The Thermite's gone. That's the only hard breach. There's some smokes. Oh. And Nesk is also eliminated. And this is suddenly turning from bad to worse for Liquid. Resets at least. Top Spiral does get a kill onto JV92. That's his first death. I think you jinxed him. You cursed him. He's now dead. 90 seconds left in the round in the three versus three. I'm so sorry. But to be honest, Liquid need all the help supernatural. Otherwise, they can get right now. We've... Got to see if they can try and get the drive here onto KZ. He hits a drone and he oh somehow hits the my. first. Oh, he's fighting a glass with a dance on a door. He's oh. making his way out of town. <laughs> Volpsy, you later, son. <gasps> Wrap it up. Wrap it up. This oh. is a... Oh, hang on. Palu. Suddenly, 60 seconds left in the one versus two. Must win territory here for Liquid. A lot to be done. Doesn't have the kit. It's a long way from home. Kit's not close by. In fact, kills is basically what he will need to win this round for Team Liquid. May know the whereabouts of one. Certainly now knows the whereabouts of two. Going for the flash and the drive. There's no real time to rotate smoke. the smoke even. He's going for a bit of cover. He knows you know he's the here. first you know he's fight. He cannot get it. A glass. A glass was killed by a deeg tap as they dropped through a hatch. What do we call that? Fade away. <laughs> I mean, what a morale well, breaker. We'll, we'll get to watch it back again here. In terms of morale breaker, well, this whole series of morale breaker. Look at a little spin there as well. They got most of the damage there. So Casey actually knows this, that he's got him towards like that body shot territory. Bang, one shot as he falls. <laughs> In slow motion, you gotta, it's like, poetry. Oh, wait, it's social team. Throw some dubstep over that. Add some like slow-mo, some zooming like back a build and up forth. And then throw out and some banging music. There's a video. There is a video that's an edit of Tim, Ace of Pirate on his stream, ranting about Siege that then goes into a highlight clip with the da, 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 that song. I'm not gonna sing. For copyright reasons. <laughs> Please, social teams, I will send you the tweet. Recreate that with that clip. Because I think that would be... It would bang. It would. It would bang. Like Ricky Martin. <laughs> he bangs. <laughs> he bangs. Five nothing, final round of the half. And W7M are really putting the foot to the pedal. Six nothing on the cards of Liquid cannot find an open, open attacking round. They've got nothing so far on Consulate. It's been a largely disappointing affair for a map that they've picked, that a map that attacking into hasn't been all that difficult for teams at this tournament. Clearly for Liquid though, attack has been a nightmare, a nightmare that they have to continue to relive. Because they've obviously been in this situation before with W7M have, uh, you know, given them the old heave ho. It, it's <laughs> Copenhagen. <clears throat> it's so rough, and and it's a tough pill here for Liquid to swallow. Because as I said at the time, you know, the more and more these, these rounds slip away, the harder and harder it gets to pull yourself back in. Because you are looking at the grand scheme of things, and W7M opposite end of it, the confidence is higher than it's ever been. The plays are dropping a deek through a hatch and, and hitting shots and. They'll adventure a little bit more. They'll risk a little bit more. Guz has just come from the other stream, by the way, and I think he's probably anticipated this to be like a 6-6 overtime score, and he looks at it, and it's 5-0. Five nothing. Five and he's like, why are they yelling? 5 nothing. map 2. And the first map was 7-3. And the map, first map was 7-3. Liquid, if they don't win this, they obviously have one sort of more opportunity to get points Whoa. on the board. 
did not know. Davy had no idea that resets had lurked up yellow. Nice start again for Liquid, but at this point, I just don't trust them. I'm sorry, Hemi, but I don't. Too many opening kills that they've had throughout the series, let alone the map, that they just cannot convert into round wins. So despite getting that opening kill, I would still say W7M should feel confident, but Felipox gets greedy. Did not need to swing that window. Suddenly, from one kill to two, but Nate does get a kill onto Palu. Four versus three, 60 seconds. KZ, has he got another fadeaway in him? Not too bad, not too shabby. Damage onto both Reset and Nesk. The impact is nice. They're all so low, and they do <laughs> fall. Trade one for one. Herds on the Thorn gets involved as well. It's only one versus two. Nesk from Liquid getting the Ow. first body, the first lead in here. Nose can't get the player up. Oh Nose, they can't get the God. players down. Six. They're not even celebrating anymore. Six to zero. They feel bad. They look like they're losing. I feel bad. Like, it's six nothing. It's rough. Liquid, what is going on? They're not going to get a single map from this game, from this series, I should say, which is going to leave them, I believe, what, four points? Four points. So that's bottom Do outside of M80. M80 play after this, by the way, immediately if, after this yeah, against yeah. Bleed. If M80 beat Bleed, then the match tomorrow between M80 and Liquid, the loser is out of the tournament. Yeah. Yes. But Bleed's going to beat M80. Bleed could be M80. But no, it's not even that. It's if Bleed beat M80 and M80 mm. are on zero. Well, I then, guess. And then M80 beat Liquid. Well, it depends then, on tiebreakers. No, yeah, well, I think the first tiebreaker is head to head. So M80, yeah. if they beat Liquid tomorrow, so basically, two zero. Yeah, the bleed at M80 game is not like super influential. You want no? If if bleed win two zero, they get confirmed. Yeah, obviously. If M80, for if people at home want the most intense storyline for the game tomorrow, what needs to happen, I think, is bleed need to two zero M80, so they're on zero points. And then Liquid are on four points mm -hmm. because that would mean though M80 would have to two O Liquid. Yeah. So if M80 want to be able to beat Liquid two one That's in the advance, most dramatic M80 they would have to get something from Bleed today. Yeah. 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 Cool. Glad we got there in the um, end. Game. We're not covering the game anyway. We can do math. So that, whoever's going to cover that game can maths is do all the maths. right. Six nothing here. That unfortunately for Easy those maybe maths. having only just tuned in very briefly, uh, W7M won convincingly on Clubhouse seven three and uh, well. Doing even more convincing on console at six nothing. I think Liquid have checked out. I think W7M are a little bit bored as well. They're not even celebrating. No screams. No passion. They're thinking about what's for dinner at this point. I think they're they're very happy because it's uh, well. I mean, dinner's going to be early for them. This has been a speed run. I, it's horrifying that it is because you want it to be a showdown because you know it can be. It has been this year. And yet, here at this tournament, we keep getting these surprise showings of teams coming all in or being knocked right out. Yeah, it doesn't matter. First kill at this point doesn't matter. First kill gets rid of herds. It's, yeah, statistically <laughs> sort of the opposite of the drive of how rounds have gone. W7M, they just seem to like a sacrificial learn for success. <laughs> they like, like to okay. make it harder on themselves. Uh, like. Yeah, herds, this time you die. And then... I will say, though, they're on attack, so it's a little different. Like, it is. If you're on defense and it's a 4v5, yeah, whatever. But attack, it's a little bit more annoying. Still got to deal with these cap cans. Open up the breach in towards break. That's done pretty successfully. Minute 20, not a lot of time here on an admin side push. I won't lie, Liquid should probably be winning this round, especially with Ness getting a freebie down to Nade. Not sure where he went. Clearly didn't drone out break, and so therefore you get punished if you do not go through the checklist in a hard time. Fleepox, nice shot onto Lagonus, but they are continuing to lose players with Palu. Fighting in the kill onto KZ elsewhere. There goes the Flores. Four versus two, 60 seconds left. I don't think we're going to get our 7 0. We'll see whether or not that does happen. The Candela thrown out from Fleepox. To no avail, unless you pick the doorway and you give him a 1v1 and another one through JV. You can't be losing these games, Liquid. Like, come on now, that's better from resets. Resets and Palu versus JV92. Don't, 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 don't let this happen right now. JV92 is a world. I'm gonna walk off the set if, if W7N win this round. World class player, but so are Palu and resets. They know what they can do. They just need to take the breath and get this locked in. It's a game of many many rounds and it'll start with one at a time and here 20 seconds or two versus one they just have to keep their pace jv has all the pressure to plant the site has long sight lines easy rotations they know exactly where he is 
The first dance round, the smoke canister. There's the catch, Parlu. Cool hands, cool positioning. That's the first. Still need another five. Yeah, it's always difficult. Now, I've only ever got to cast one 6 0 comeback. Right. And that happened pretty early in my uh, Siege time. In the 80s? Yeah, back in the maybe early 90s. <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, so it's very rare. That's all I'm trying to say yeah. in terms of referencing that, right? It, it's not something that happens very often. I think we see a lot more like five ones, clearly four twos, but six O's into six six does not happen all that often. Every no. now and then, sure, blue moon, it can happen. It's possible. It's only possible. It's the beauty of this Is game. Is Consulate the map though on D fans where it's no. probably likely? Maybe not. I think there's just too, there's too many factors up in the air. It's not that a team isn't capable of it, but... There are certain sort of... You would reach a percentage of understanding of a map based on how long it's been released, how long people are working things out. Mm. There's a reason pocket strats and pocket plays are a known thing and a known quantity of our game versus, say, other FPS games. There are other FPS titles. What other FPS games? Um, uh, oh, Hello, Skull and Bones. Kitty Island, Adventure 2. I was Assassin's Creed? Oh, yeah. You get crossbows in that, yeah? Um... Beyond Good and Evil. First one. The second one's I've, still in development. I'm not too sure. Oh. You can take photos in it. I don't know. I don't remember. I just remember the trailer. Does taking photos count as an FPS? Yeah, you're shooting somebody. <laughs> <laughs> they were, uh, six to one. And as we crack wise jovially, they set themselves up inside the piano room. The only song being played right now is a somber tune of... Let's hold on with everything we've got. I will say the longer it goes on for Liquid, you go from 6-0 to 6-1 to 6-2, etc. If you can get to like 6-3, I mean, obviously the, the general consensus is you usually take it one round at a time, but set like a little mini goal. Like, I, let's get to 6-3 and then we can kind of reevaluate. Because once you get to 6-3, then at least you've kind of done the world tour. You're on the defense. That's certainly a possibility. <laughs> Don't just worry too much about the fact that you've got to go six rounds. So... Keep that in mind in terms of the mental game for Liquid. Heads over towards Yellow Stairs. He's made his way down. And he can just watch over towards said hallway. Curious about this positioning. Obviously, this is a top heavy hold. If you're wondering why all the outlines are on the second story, it's all soft. Nesk gets the first, gets rid of the Nomad. You wonder if all the air jabs are in position in place. Obviously, not the one that stopped you being killed, Nomad. The flash over the top and resets. We wanted to hope. They're a lot closer, but the player that was actually had already rotated their way away. Herds has gone for a bit of a hunt round on the back of Zulu and the back end corridor. Lagonis might meet them at some point, depending on how aware they are of the play onto Spiral. You cannot really safely plant because of all those angles that have been opened up on the top floor. If you're familiar with how New Consulate plays, remember Old Lobby, where you would hold above it and have the direct line of sight towards the double door, shoot out the Candela. Can you get the player as well? As more players start to fall, suddenly W7M. Only have two players remaining. Palu is the one that's just tucking bullets into the corner of KZ. There's a player around the back and a flawless from Liquid. Yeah, a little golf clap there because they get a flawless round, nice and clean. A couple more fist bumps. You get through to 6-2. And again, it's all about setting that kind of like mini goal, if you will. Get to 6-3 and suddenly, hey, that's not so bad. Look, we've already won three rounds. We can do that again. That's a long, long, long way back. The issue is, of course, along this entire journey, you can't make any mistakes at all you cannot slip up even one little bit play like that though and i mean this is every possibility of being able to to happen i mean this is the thing liquid are good enough the issue for me is more so their opponent is even yeah. better like if, if it was like liquid versus i don't know d plus key i'd be sitting here basically saying this is more than possible my concern is the fact that w7m at some point someone from w7m will probably do something where they get like a double kill and then just open up site service and teller i mean it, it, this is this is an interesting decision here for Liquid to go to this particular site, but I don't mind it because from an attacking point of view, you kind of do need to get control of both, possibly, depending on where you can get that plant down. I'll be curious to see. In terms of what they're also bringing, they don't bring, say, like a Pulse, which can be really good on this site. Now, obviously, every single round is important. There's no two ways about it. But this one means that they have cemented themselves with three viable sites they can defend. Yep. This one... Makes the impossible dream, dream the impossible dream. It's like cross, uh, crossing the threshold. Yes. From what feels like impossible to possible. 
And I wouldn't be surprised if W7M call a tactical timeout if they lose this round. And then 100%. suddenly the tune really does change. You know, from 6-0 and the dominance that we saw from W7M and feeling like, okay, I'm ready to go. Take the headset off. Let's, this one's over. To now 6-2. Interesting round. Can they continue this little march? And the longer they can do it, the more shaky W7M could get. The breakthrough onto the basement here. Now, obviously, that's not the site. They're just trying to get themselves through onto the open walls. They can try and put some pressure up underneath and force any player that might be on the stairs for the swing. That's why it's so reinforced because, well, you cannot have these positions given to the permission of the players. Resets is the man to try to man mark with Nesk watching down from the hatch and they just didn't give it enough respect, but they're lucky to survive. Oh, they don't quite win out. The following fight though, resets. Held on, and maybe the difference was the sliver of health and the bite that Nesk took out the player on the approach. But in the meantime, the Monty has just muscled his way in from the opposite side. Yeah, it could be really interesting now because of the fact that Resets was able to get back with his life. So he, at some point now, obviously, he can kind of just station up, hold an angle. That's an extra gun available for Liquid over towards server. Very horizontal push here. And there he is, actually, to now go for the close swing against KZ. Resets, two massive kills in this round. Bob suddenly just drops to the floor, makes it a two versus three. Yeah, Nade was able to sort of drop the shield and go for the pops and play, but obviously they'll just be giving the calls on the position. They're not even sure where they went down for lead box. And I mean, in this situation when they're just peppering bullets, it's only a slaughter parlu. Well, that's who put you down with the swing, resets with the upward support as well. There's three, there's the halfway, there's the dream, the dream. The impossible dream. Yeah, so what, what is now the issue here for W7M? Where is it going wrong in terms of their attacking rounds? This is where we kind of go back into that very serious mode because we're getting to a point here where I think Liquid is doing enough and they're doing it enough comfortably. Like, these aren't scrappy rounds. No. This, this is not like W7M are getting plants and there's retakes and there's 1v1 clutches. Like, these are pretty dominant. The round prior was a flawless. That round there, I thought Liquid were very good. They sought out that early contact towards Garage side. Resets gets the opening kill. Run back towards site and then repeaks again for a second really influential and breaks up the attack there from w7m so they need to really kind of think things over and i'm a little surprised they haven't opted to take a tactical timeout here just to reset mentally they've seen three rounds they've seen three different sites there's another three rounds to come think about what can we do to just finish this off and just squash liquid like an annoying bug the thing about how liquid is playing you sort of said it before they attack their attack success rate poor poor but 70% defense. The 70% defense. We're, I mean, this game could end up being 100% one side and 0% the other at this rate. There's no attacking round wins on the most attacker sided map at the tournament. And I at one point was thinking, oh, you know, Liquid, this this one's gone. Like, mm -hmm. I think all of us were. At 6 0, just because of the energy Liquid were playing with and how smooth the Covenant W7M were. Here's the heat that's coming in from Liquid, and now you're sort of looking at that number coming together. You're looking at that 70% becoming 80%, becoming 90 becoming closer and closer. Hurts, once again, the Ash getting in quite quick, trying to find a fight on the back end of it. Good bit of removal there of the Fear Mine, the F dot, as Resets is going to be the back end of it. That shield will survive. They're not quite able to get rid of that utility, and the smoke is just going to buy themselves some time. Time is a very, very precious resource. And I did want to just reconfirm it, double check. It actually has gone up to 48% coming into this game. That'll clearly change, though, by the end of it. I but mean, yeah. <laughs> like 48% attack and win rate at the tournament so far. Again, kind of small sub samples, but still, nevertheless, it is number one. And the fact that we've had no rounds. And a lot of these rounds haven't really been close either from the attacking team. Yeah. Is quite intriguing. For legal reasons, uh, I'm just going to clarify. I'm not saying this is a this is not like ranked, but this is statistically like ranked, where everything's on the defensive oh side. My God. Resets, rocks the world of the two players going for the swing at the top of yellow. Confirms that control for them. At this point, Philippe Box has to rotate off because they've lost any of the support. JV92 is tucked and waiting something else to come his way but as they've demonstrated there are many ways and many places to swing that position on the scaffolding so you can't sit there too long here comes that support as i said fleet box with the blinds about to roll around the corner parlu gets one more went before it well, it didn't pop yeah 
So they just swung into an entirely visible man. JV's just going to get executed in a bathroom, which is how nobody wishes to go. Timeout, timeout. Should be timeout. And as soon as I said the word, I got it in my ear. Yeah, tactical timeout, timeout, timeout. has timeout. indeed been confirmed here for W7M. They've seen enough. 6-4, 4, four on around for Liquid. We've obviously mentioned their defensive win rate. Uh, the issue, though, for me is the fact that it is indeed Liquid that are being aggressive. We saw it with resets two rounds in a row now. He's the one seeking the contact. It is resets that is like on the defense. Match points, I don't care. I'm still going to swing. I'm still going to just try and take contact here and be able to get at least a couple of kills before I go down. He's not even going down, though. He's just getting double kills. It's just free for Liquid right now. W7M's attack, they look slow, stalled out. They're not really clearing out key positions properly. I mean, making little mistakes, too, like the Candela bouncing off the wall, but swinging before it's even popped, and so you just get shot out anyway. These are just, like, little things that can be fixed. And maybe off the back of this tactical timeout, that could be the case. But you can see it here, everyone watching along. No attacking rounds have been won right now on the most attacker <laughs> side of the map of the tournament. I cannot believe this. When we got to 6-0 for W7M, all on defense, I took that seriously. Is there are moments where you go, okay, like, let's, yeah. say, let's say Clubhouse. It's like, if it's 6-0 Clubhouse defense and Liquid are going to go defense, I'm not even writing the game off with the way the, the, the meta is right now. I'll be like, you know what? They could probably do the same thing. But on Consulate, that I was like, okay, that is a bit different though, where you can get attacking rounds. It's Attack supposed to be a little bit more 50-50. We had NIP and GK earlier today, and it, this went to overtime on Consulate because it was 3-3 in both halves. They got plenty of attacking rounds. There was plenty of good attacking Siege. We have not seen that in this match, and that is where I'm very surprised and a little disappointed as well. And you've got to think about at this tournament, you can't get away with this against the top, top teams. It, it's been a uh, rough... But hey, they can both defend really well. They can both defend really well. 100% success rate. 100%, man. 100% success rate on the defense. It's almost weird that there's these parallels between the two teams as well. You've got both Palu and JV92 sitting 11 to 5, 11 to 6. You've got, you know, resets putting up the double numbers as well. Felipox not too far away from it. It's that people are having these decent performances. It's only really... Volps, who's a little bit behind the pace, but then so is KZ. Compared to the things that KZ does, there is a mirrored reflection right in the middle of this at that halftime mark, at the 0-6 mark. And the just one more round mentality is absolutely flying for Liquid right now at this point. The breach happens on towards the emergency exit. They've got themselves a little bit of a route into the building. And they're obviously eyeing up towards the breach onto the site as well with that opening over the top. Yeah, the settlement should take care of it. No one's trying to stop it. My concern right now is probably more so resets because he's the one I think has been really unlocking these rounds for Liquid, getting a lot of these opening kills. Yes. Uh, and he's obviously trying to deny a lot of this drone play on the Solus, which means he's kind of got a secondary objective right now by playing said Solus. As aggressive as you can get on the Operator, your main goal really is to deny the, the drones. Like, that's kind of what you want to do, which means he's going to sit over towards Breach and Garrard. Oh. He's not around the map. Oh. Now it's up to Nesk. Nesk oh. is playing that role, and he does it well with the kill on to JV92. Hurts, though, trying to just push his way in through server. Makes contact. But they've lost Nade. Hardbridge gone, still one more available. Herds continues forward. That's resets getting once more. And again, these players are starting to fall apart. Again, it's happening right after a team's timeout. Nothing more demoralizing, wow. but that was a, a great take. I couldn't even see what he was shooting at. And oh, resets gets removed by KZ, but with the control falling back into Nesk on the top floor, he's able to get himself even. KZ's left alone. I said he's been underperforming a little in comparison to the rest of the team throughout this game. Might have the moment to really send it home at this point, but a one versus three when you have four health total as well. Doesn't bode massively well. A minute is the time that they can play with. Volps has a C4 outside of that. It's otherwise just the gun game, but generally all of them have pretty good selection. Look at him go. Staying <laughs> as a unit, the liquid floods its way around from 6 0 to 6 5. Six -five. Wow. Yeah, massive turnaround for Liquid, and this is such good news for them at this tournament. Oh, Volps is saying something. Obviously, I have no idea. Can't even hear it. Can't hear it. Certainly Can't don't understand Portuguese, Portuguese either. It was so powerful. But that is, the uh, camera should blurred. you do that at 6.5, though? Okay. <laughs> there is history there, though. Mm. It's there Volps. is. There it's, certainly it's, is. It's yeah. an ex-team. There, there was some history before. I, I'm i going to paraphrase here. I'm sure there's some Portuguese aficionados. Oh, I should also say, it's very unlikely they would have even heard him as well. But firstly, yeah. the oh, in-ears and then the overs as well. And then the so. overs. For those who don't know, the in-ears right, are what yeah. they use for the game audio. The overs actually just pump white noise. Mm -hmm. So you cannot hear anything else outside. Anyway. 
Uh, there was a situation at the local league where I believe there were some tweets about not shaking each other's hands after a game. Because it, it, it's rough going up against your old team. Like, you you have history. They can be they're your, they're your brothers. You grow up, you fight together, and then the roster changes as you get into success. And then it becomes the, the Pixar film. And then mm. you find yourself with the story. And there's so much heat and heart into a game like this, especially when you are struggling. Like, Volps has been throughout this series... If it helps him, go for it. Give me the heat. Yeah. So 5-6 now for Liquid. Can they make the magical 6-0 six, to 6-6 six, six comeback a reality? Volts had two kills in that round prior, and he let W7M know all about it. EDD's placed here from Lagunas inside a coffee. W7M on the verge of making history here. I don't know how many 6-0s to 6-6s six, we've had. Certainly none at this tournament thus far. I'm going to... Assume, Emmy. I assume. It's a, it's a big assumption. Big assumption. But I, I'm pretty sure I haven't heard of any of that happening at this tournament. Big opportunity for Liquid. And again, in terms of what's on the line here for Liquid, you win this map from 6-0 down. That's great and all, but it's just about the fact you win the map and suddenly it changes everything about tomorrow in the M80. Oh, yeah. You go to five maps. That really does not solidify you, but makes it far more likely that you will avoid any kind of disaster of getting grouped. Getting yourself off of the pattern of zeros and fours and wins and losses that are in a group can change everything. Reloading, a single point. Me. We've seen teams scrape by with single points and overtime maps and Nesk is making sure that he starts the drive. Chew it. Hazy. Gone. First. They lose the Brava drone. So I'm not sure how much it was able to steal but when you're looking on the left and how much utility there is the, the cams, obviously the Valk, the e, uh, EDDs, the Kai Claws. It's everybody has things that can be taken Apart from unless the character gets killed themselves. The Ram raids across with the Boogie Drone that is more than happy to just make Reset's position uncomfortable. They look like they're trying to find maybe... Oh, no, they're two stories down even. They're not finding a fight at all. I thought they would right underneath that. Minute 20 seconds. Trying to obviously get some pressure over towards Talas from above in terms of vert there for W7M. That's been their goal so far. The Jackal of Herds is out of the uh, scan. Is obviously just trying to see if he can get spot any footprints but can't track them anymore no matter what service stands here for Philippots. Volps just sitting and waiting of course there are edds here from the side of lagunas the solars hasn't been too effective only the four drones gone this game considering they're still under a minute remaining smokes go out is this drop time smokes coming from herds not a lot of information trying oh. to find that kit trying to find that plant here nade's just going to get it down this should get denied considering the information that volps has yes indeed bang double oh. from lagunas that's the power that you can get from the solars and the 6-0 to 6-6 comeback is a reality for liquid Cannot believe it's happened, and W7M certainly cannot believe it either. Down to just JV92 in the one versus four. But no, this comeback has happened, and W7M cannot believe it. Can you? To be completely honest, no. And again, the circumstances are, are more so pertaining to the more map. More shouting, more blur. And to the opposition. The map and the opposition. A bit of typing in chat as well here from Reset. Again, if it's like clubhouse defense, sure, would have one hundred percent thought this would be a reality. But it's consulate. You need to just one attacking round on consulate. Just one. How does that not happen? Why do you make it sound so so hard? <laughs> well, it shouldn't be. One hundred percent defensive win rate on a new map, and what's yeah, between I mean, two teams that know each other as well as these two teams do. The, the thing for me as well, right, when you go and have a look at the stis statistical probability of a 6-0 comeback, it's like, you can be good, but all it takes is like one attacking One. One player. mistake. It, and it's like, oh, I walked in, got a double kill, guys. That's it. Like, I just got yeah. lucky this one round. We had six, yeah, yeah, yeah. six opportunities to maybe get a little bit lucky here or there. And just the fact that at no point, W7M were able to get that luck or create that luck is probably the best way to actually paraphrase yeah, yeah. it, right? Like, and, and a, cr a lot of that credit goes to Liquid. They weren't making mistakes. They were denying a lot of entry points. They were getting a lot of early contact fights to go their way. They actually looked rather aggressive for a team that was 6-0 down, dealing with six match points. They didn't go into their shells. They played a really good game. They've got all the momentum. And guess what? They got double defense OT. This has got... Based on the 12 rounds I've seen, I mean, we are going to a third map. Statistically. 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 Statistically, we're going to bank after this. If, they, if W7 and win the attacking round now, I, I'm just going to like 
blow steam out of my ears like a cartoon movie. <laughs> We get 100% attack to win right now. Uh, Liquid. They are going to hold off. The breach comes through pretty quick. Two fancy charges rolled almost instantaneously there. Not sure if they intended to like truly secure that wall to be broken. But to be honest, it is not a huge amount. Remember their last take was via admin straight into the bandit of Lagonis and the hold of Nesk. They're not even going to try and risk that this time around. They've realized that they just get torn apart. So instead, let's pull elsewhere. Go towards Visa Stairs. See if we can maybe push up, get the breach open itself, secure some of the space, and do this. Oh, fortunately, a little bit too late. I think Liquid sort of smelt the writing on the wall that, well, we're under no pressure in admin. We probably need to think about where they're pushing from. Yeah, down below. And uh, the drone does come out as well in terms of W7M trying to get this information. Such a uh, pivotal round here. It's, like, it's at the point where W7 and Pro don't want to win this round. Otherwise, it would be just, like, mentally draining. It's like, why could we not do that, like, over the last six rounds? So, 90 seconds left. Liquid looking for another defensive round. Looking for seven defensive rounds in a row. Doesn't really happen all that often that you can say that. Breaking their way via admin, they have the control, but everybody is still standing. They're happy to get the drones and the intel, as Hertz is doing his best to remove any of that that is otherwise in their way and in their face. Now, the plant is just inside the door at the sort of south side of a site at the top of the stairs. You have a little bit of protection and a little bit of safety. What you need to stop is the wide swing that comes against them and the take from underneath, which is what Philippox is currently securing. However, if it turns into a one versus one, it does become a bit of an easy bite back. It seems like Volt's curious about exactly this position you see right in front of Hertz, and this is what we're going to see. Battle of Attrition, just towards this single spot, the single plant chance. Parlu, he's the long range fight. He's got the glasses that can see right through it. Triple stack, but you got one spiral, one on the balcony. So at least a little bit of that crossfire available for W7M. Certainly one of the better attacking positions that I've seen from them so far over the last seven rounds. Good repping information. KZ pushes in, gets that kill over towards that main breach. They can get this plant down. Spoke bomb hasn't quite hit. There it is. There's the plant in that position. There's Philippox and Ness trading out. We have our first plant. Woo! This game, this swing, this fight, and Ness cannot quite get his way back in. Philippox gets the double. They've got some security inside the side itself. And here, two liquid players of about 40 seconds to try and break their way across. But they're getting bitten, scraped from all sides. Round the back, Lagonis gets one. But with the player under, there's Lagonis for a double of two versus two. However, it's a dangerous retake with the stairs position, with the range that they've got all the way across, and this player underneath. You still have to try and bait the fight. Oh! The spray connects only just, and Lagonis has to go hunting. He does not have enough time nah. to get back up to the kit. We have our first attack round. Steam is billowing. Burn. Are you kidding me? We could you couldn't do that in the last six rounds? I mean so much better though from W7M. You give them the plaudits. Yeah, triple stack towards that main entrance point, but you had one spiral coming in towards long distance. You had one on the main bridge. So they at least had options. That's why they were able to overload the site, clear out a couple of members of Liquid, get that plant down. Why? Because they've got players kind of looking in towards it. Rather than all just trying to rush through the doorway, they had options elsewhere. Much better from W7M. Again, Liquid, the one thing they probably did wrong in that round and moved away from something that was successful for them in the regulation defense was aggression. Where was the, where was the kind of counter punch from Say yeah. like a resets, for example, and the shotgun close angles. Where were the the vert plays or the flanks that we were seeing back in regulation? None of it. It was kind of just the sit back. Yeah, they got a bit pressured, and they just didn't really do much. And so W7M eventually just waltz in, get the plant down. It's a retake. Sure, it's a bit scrappy. But my goodness, the fact that we had to go 12 rounds in a row of, of only defensive wins, and then it's like, oh, overtime. Yeah, now, now let's get our attacking round now. Like, We're done. Th this will be just full attack. Oh, like, yeah. Liquid's going to win this one, then W7 oh, and yeah, the next. Oh, yeah, to win these yeah. rounds. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Uh, strange. Absolutely strange, but much better from W7 and them. Certainly their best attacking round and gets rewarded. Anyone's best attacking round, really, at this yeah, point. You'll true. see Liquid. Can they try and match the fire with their own further here because the pressure's back on unfortunately for them and this time it's on the side where they have been able to find kind of no impact across the whole day and impactless on this map as of this point they have the mental sort of clarity of just how much they can get in and i'm curious where volps is going to try and get himself looped up break just on the outside, Volks is currently playing against the window position. Now, in terms of hatches that lead in, well, that one's reinforced, so you can't quite hit the piano hatch itself. There is a couple of windows you can get a quick zip towards, but 
Seems like they're still just weighing up where they can try and find this first bite. And Herds is keeping himself a little bit busy on the pulse down in the basement. So drone yellow, drone visa, which does at least mean for the liquid that they are looking at a kind of full map take and that they're not going to just ignore, say, Spiral, which is where Palu is now droning at the moment. So really utilizing that full roof control. JV somehow alive, barely on the Fenrir, which is really important, of course, with those f noughts and the fact he can still hold a position and angle. And now for resets, in they go towards that visa side. Herds down below on the poles. Do like this. We haven't really probably seen enough pulse play. We've seen it a little bit, but... Ultimately, we'll see if it does find some success now. W7M on the defense. Who have not lost a single defensive round. Neither had Liquid. The time keeps ticking ever present and ever worrying here as we sort of sit and wait where the first motion move is going to come from. Usually, it's been a bit of a problem here for the side of Liquid that they lose sight of a player and they're about to find a fight. There's a crossfire that instantly pops. Palu goes, but Ness instantly gets the bite and Volps wins that one, which I believe was underneath the site itself. So suddenly, uh, it's gone, the pulse is gone, they lose a bit of the fen rear, and they've got about a minute. We've gone from nothing happening to a body advantage, and finally some pressure down towards the site with some of the control underneath in their favor. 45 seconds remaining. Gaspay thrown out, Ness just holding the close angle. Still has three adrenal surges, hasn't used any of them. Get them out, get people up to full house, swing some areas. Give them a boost. This is the dangerous swing, though. They've gone against the shotgun on close corners and suffered, but they're sort of just sitting there for 20 seconds. Fleet Please box. pop it. Please pop it. I mean, he slinks his way back around. They're looking for the fight. The Warriors, they don't want to get caught in the smoke canister or a Goya and be burnt. But with 20 seconds left, you've got to do something. There's Nesk somehow getting the swing there onto KZ as Lagona spikes his way back around at three versus two, but they've still got a plan of two versus two. Lagonas and resets with the kit, fighting their way into the site against Felipox, who does go down the two versus one at this point, but five seconds, a one versus one with the cover. Nade, he's trying to scrap his way. We are going all of the way. I believe the statistic is you can only win attack rounds in overtime, but who gets the rule of the law in the final round? Well, this is the, the funnest stat I've ever been able to present. Both teams had 100% success rates on defense in regulation. Both teams now have 0% win rates <laughs> on defense in overtime. What in the hell am it's I watching? Like, it's like the map is going to normalize statistically. So it becomes like 70% attacker or 50% attacker, but only if the balance of overtime versus in-game. Yeah, look, I mean, a bit of a strange round, that one. Super scrappy, probably not the same yeah, clinicalness that we saw from W7M on their attack. They now go back to attack as Liquid are fighting tooth and nail to get themselves a map here against their rivals in W7M. They're on the defense. I don't even know what to think of it anymore, Emmy. I got no idea. Is it regulation defense? Is it overtime defense? I got absolutely no idea who's going to win this round. And that is the beauty of it. That is the art of this map, of this game so far between these two teams. And to be completely honest, this is what I expected in this series. Not what happened on Clubhouse. Certainly not what happened through the first six rounds. But this moment right now, into the 15th round we go between Liquid and W7M. W7M looking for the swift 2-0. Liquid want to send us to bank. It's almost like a dance-off, this map, where each time one team is allowed to show their moves and the other sits on the side and watches and then the next, repeat it. And then the next steps up and does it and, and repeats it and plays against it. And you're just waiting for somebody to go, all right, enough for this, I win. The hold onto Piano and a quick break and a bit of attention towards it. Now we have the quick zip in the pockets of JV92. Are they going to see if they can try and find the Amaru? They up could go fast here towards... with the Ying and the Amaru, yeah. That's what I'm thinking right now because only Lagonis is on site. And I said it before, it's a vertical watch and hold. But we have seen plays stolen before. It's a scrappy fight that Nade comes off a little bit worse for wear on with Volt still watching. And he's going to be the important one to watch as... If the flashes and blinds come across it, his glass is a very important utility. Mm, here we go. Little lurk up towards yellow from JV. You're not going for that fast push. Not going for that maybe fast entry in towards site. Coupled with the Candelas. Felipox speaking of said Candelas, throwing them in. Lagunas catches Nate. Does get traded though immediately. KZ just barely by the slimmest of margins in towards Piano and said behind it now to get the plant down. If it's successful, they've got the repel. The Nido resets. Plant has not gone down. Liquid in control of the round. 
Oh, who gets the kill onto Philippe? But Davey's gonna get moving, but he moves too no! slow. It's like he's stuck in quicksand and Liquid send us to bank. From 6 nothing down, they win here on Consulate. It's a comeback victory of massive proportions. 0-6 oh, to 6-6 six, six. to attack wins. It says round breakdown there. It should say uh. our breakdown. I it's am speechless, flabbergasted, liquid. <sighs> Emmy, I have to Emmy, get my chair Emmy, back. Emmy, Emmy, Emmy. My God. Well, look. Those first six rounds of W7, I just want to say, I can't even lean back because otherwise I look really short. <laughs> <laughs> like, tiny. Those first six rounds, I thought were very good. Very good from W7. And we, we, we started to get into a bit of a jovial mood because at that point, they looked so utterly dominant. Now we're going on to the attack of Consulate, which statistically has been good at this tournament. So we kind of felt like, yeah, at some point, they'll get a round win and this will be over 7-1, 7-2, whatever. But Liquid, to their credit, had the mental fortitude to never give up. And I mentioned kind of like after that first round when it's like, well, set that mini goal. Can you get to 6-3? Because if you can get to 6-3, you've done the world tour and then it's all about, okay, we can do that. Look, we've, we've won three rounds. We can do it again. They did it again. They got it to 6-6. And then the fact that W7M then get the overtime match point and then I'm like, oh, all that was for nothing. For them to then win the next two. What a sensational game. We're going to go to a quick break before we're back with map three and hopefully sanity. See you soon. Let's see how proficient Scars end up being here on the attack. IQ in play. Interesting decision given the, given the defensive composition here, I suppose can help spot out those electric cores if required and the touch can follow up with Util. Early aggression from last for the run out. And as they said, EMPs will come through. Single wall dealt with by Tayu on the Thermite. Mindful of the jump out, of course, but that won't be committed to by Lost, who are probably still reeling after the last few rounds. I, not going you saw it on the face of Dad. He's like, just went all the way back over. He's like, I give up. <laughs> I don't know what to do. It's just been absolutely styled on as the IQ just used there to get rid of the uh, Electro Claw of the Mew Jammer that was placed as well. It's going to be quite difficult now to actually get that control. So I actually like the pick of the IQ here, just taking care of those Mew Jammers, which can, of course, be such a pain, especially if you want to get your drone game on point and in game. Um, you know, there, there is still a bunch of them out there five of them left for play for scars so as they start opening up vertically now as well with the ash uh, trying to get that vertical pressure in the places it's needed so a minute 25 then on the clock as we're sure we'll continue this lurk down below you can see the triangle with both the iq and the thatcher they'll rotate off though instead emphasizing their efforts now over towards the objective itself and they need to do a job in displacing these defenders on site who as we can see on the overhead aren't really under a whole lot of direct pressure at the moment that will come through though now as the thermite will sneak forward there is some information available here for the attack to link into and we'll see if scars can connect the dots on this attack I think it's too one directional. They're all just trying to push in from this one breach and maybe from the samurai window. I don't think you're going to be able to stick that as the opening is coming through. You see Rack being taken out by Lobin there. The entry, the exothermic gets removed as well by the impact grenade. And there's 35 seconds left. You need to make a move, Scars. You cannot just continue waiting here. If Pion starts bashing into the keeper barrier, he's going to be pulling away the attention of Maya. But it's all just going towards Lobe. It's a flawless round to respond after how that round went previously. Well, that was disappointing <laughs> for the attack of Scars. It really did fall apart. It it's too it one-dimensional. I agree. Too one-dimensional. And I mean, sometimes that can kind of work, but you need to have direct pressure on the defense. And more importantly, even on top of all of that information, they, they had nothing. Going in blind, breach not opened up after the back of the impact. And yeah, I, I agree with Lobin's hand gesture there. It's kind of like, <laughs> what? what was that? It's like, I don't think they need some more verticality, like use a buck to open it below so that, you know, their places are a bit made uncomfortable. Yeah. Or you would have needed like a Dokubi to go for calls, or you would have needed uh, a lion to be used for making sure that they wouldn't be moving as soon as you go for the execute. But instead, like, it was just 
focusing on opening up the two walls and then trying to go for a push in. They didn't even open up one of the walls properly. So it's a bit of a disappointment on that round there. But hey, it is going to be locked for the next three. So there's opportunity for Scars to uh, find some success on the others. On T, and what probably would be barbecue right afterwards. So let's see how far they can come over there. Yeah, I wasn't an, a huge fan of the attacking composition we saw from Scars. The IQ in hindsight was a little bit unnecessary. So we'll see a bit of a switch up here into round eight for what has become a little bit more on meta for the most part. But there's a fear with explosives, can counter the key barriers, and then more importantly for the execute itself, we have that Ying Dokkabi combo, which can be challenging to deal with. Wreck as well on the Nomad, so once Scars gain space, they can protect it and make it challenging for Lost to play a retake. The attack will be spearheaded to Geisha, but I look by the looks of things, Tayu makes his way over towards that breach, and it will be opening up. I believe uncontested, unless there's a mute on it, which I don't think there is. Different angle on it. They want to open it up a bit closer rather than as wide, just to provide some security for the people on the balcony, I reckon. What I'm worried about is a potential frost mat, since we do have a frost on the board. Where has cameraman placed them? Now there's two of them underneath that main window. You do not want to go for a jump in. I don't expect them to, considering they've just opened up the wall. And with the Candelas coming out, you kind of want to use the free room. Oh, that's actually quite smart with Loban out there. C4 will come through, will blow up a little bit early, not deal enough damage as well. You, uh, why sure will be able to take down cameraman. Cameraman, you can see coming out to the rest of the team that the pressure's coming their way. Scars on that initial push out on top, a three versus two, and Maya Force to the back of T-Room. I think he spotted one in through Geisha, slither of that silhouette. Swings for the second, and the shots do land, but Wreck still standing. Tired to go for the plant, and that coverage from Wreck needs to be on point, but the sneak through Geisha. Too little too late in denying, but Tayu under a lot of pressure. Shotguns are starting to come through as Maya will find Rack, and there comes a shotgun as well. You might have been able to get that plan down, but quickly denied by the side of Loves, who now will be equalizing the score. Get us up back towards a 4 4 scoreline. And now the Tertiary side's coming in. And this one is the most important for Scars. If they manage to find success here and again get that plan down, but this time confirm it. That's when they have the opportunity to push us at least towards an overtime, would have the opportunity to lock it off in, 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 in three maps or yeah. two maps. Yeah, I mean, you lose the tertiary and it starts to look pretty dire. I think for Scars, I don't think that these attacks have inspired much confidence in us and probably not the team as well. They are struggling at the moment to break down this defense. I don't know if they're perhaps a little bit too linear. I don't think focusing on, on Geish is too much of an issue there, but probably needed a pinch elsewhere. I think that came from Rec. But ultimately, he was low on HP and had to play quite passive. Let's look at the replay package and try and break it down. At this point, two versus three, so Scars with the advantage. Loban, though, to advance and made the right call to actually flank through Geisha. And despite that smoke grenade on the floor providing some coverage for the plant, ultimately not enough. And the synergy and the coordination in the two versus one there from Lost didn't go astray. So a good start to the half from them. Again, yeah. if you're just joining, yeah, perhaps from the, uh, from the B stream, Lost had some big coordination issues on their last couple of attacks. And we thought that maybe that would bleed here into the second half, but yeah, not to be so far. I have to say though, Scarlet's attack in that last round looked quite well, but then I think they started focusing the plan too soon because they had a one man, a two man advantage. If they would have slowed it down a little bit more and started locking on the re-entry angles of the defenders, they might've been able to get yet another kill in because they were playing that trade game, they had a safer opportunity to actually go for a plant, to actually go for a play. Because right now it was just two 1v1s whilst the plant was going through, which eventually did not go right. But we do have barbecue. It is that uh, floor right underneath karaoke. Verticality will be quite important here. And you see it as Scars is paying attention to it. They are fine. For a second there, I thought the was actually gonna open up at the moment someone was walking by. I mean, he is looking there for a reason. He's just waiting for some noise which just had as that barricade went up. He's like, I think it just barricaded the door out there. It's gonna be slowing him down slightly. C4 underneath, gonna be blowing up. Might have actually just, oh no, because it's on the other side of the reinforcement. So still gonna have to use some soft reach to open that one up. Yeah, that's Dash inside of Geisha and his position will be exposed once the wall is worked here by the Maverick. As you can see now complete, wall soft. 
Mashoi will likely come across to open that up, or Pion obviously with a breaching charge can get that job done if required. Skyler's looking for top control to then pressure down below in towards the kitchen. The Warden though to hold firm. Again, that's Dash. And we'll see if the Warden can have an influence on this round and on holding this presence up above. He gets taken low. But he still survives. He uses an EMP. He's not going to be able to use his glasses at that point. And then your flash springs are going to be coming in clutch again. He's just going to be able to use his gadget right now and not get any punishment for it. His dots will be coming in and will take down Tayu. You see them rotating back out now. Dash going back behind the boxes, trying to find himself some security. Rack will find Maya, though. There's still the pressure onto Geisha's coming in, but this time also from the top of black. So definitely trying to clutch into that one position because it is so important. This direct verticality above, but Dash finds one more to see four will find another and suddenly it's only up to the Sophia up on the rappel who's trying to recover that diffuser probably gonna get shot as soon as he repels in he goes bro now is expecting the run to come through that's one pick up but there's still three more to find actually spots one other my dots is a little bit quicker on the trigger there yeah major misplay there from scars as you mentioned they had the Thatcher EMPs available and if you're going to play the Maverick, those EMPs need to be redistributed elsewhere. Two key interactions where they could have been used. One against the Magnets, and then secondary against the Warden. Now, understandably, that particular interaction is quite rare so it's like yeah, but at it's the forefront but at this level that's the kind of deeper thinking you need on attack you saw maverick tossing two flashbangs it's like it's not gonna do anything with the warden there it's like you gotta you gotta make sure he doesn't have those glasses available that's why you want to use that emp just to disable those gadgets and it's not like you were going to use them anywhere else yeah it's like you were looking at the setup it's like great this is like quite literally the only place that it would matter to use those emps so it's unfortunate that they didn't uh you know realize that in time and uh fell afterwards might be a call they'll make later on but it's a full rotation now from the side of loss and we're going back towards ex exhibition which was a very one dimensional round from the side of scars but also a very one-sided round as Lowe's just not receiving any pressure just completely shutting them down or right next to the bridge waiting for someone to make a push happen so they definitely need to change something up there attackers are moving out to locate a bomb and at least they have the line and the Dokkabi I talked about before. They need something to stop the movement, or at least be aware of it. Somehow we still continue on. Liquid W7 and refuse to die. Liquid, they are refusing to die from 6 nothing down. They fought back, forced overtime, and then win out the second map. That puts them on five points overall, which does mean later on after this game, if M80 cannot beat Bleed, they're out of this tournament. Could you have predicted this? Well, no, not from 6 0. I mean, no, I could not predict this at <laughs> okay, all. There's like the windows. I predicted of, the opposite. It's the windows of when you could have predicted this. When it was 6 0? No. At the start of the groups? No. At the start of the day? No. no. It, at, it's, at 6 3? Maybe. Maybe. <laughs> and it's just unbelievable. And it always is. It's the beauty of this game. Mm -hmm. There's not many other games that can have it go from all or nothing. Exactly. Right? Every yep. single round, apart from maybe sight lock, <laughs> is the only thing that can carry over. No economy, Yeah. no missing operators. You know what's so siege. fascinating about this? Firstly, as soon as we got off broadcast, it's like straight to the stats man in fresh. And it's like, firstly, first 6-0 comeback. Yes, yeah, confirmed here for SI24. Secondly, that was so defender side of the consulate, it dropped a whopping 8% attacking win rate, <laughs> which was, again, the highest coming in to, to this game for the tournament. It dropped 8% in one match. That is astronomical. It is now no longer the best attacking map of the tournament simply because of this game. This is why statistics isn't always, you know, like, you don't always put everything into stats. No. That's, stats lie. Stats lie. Sometimes. The storyline doesn't. The, the storyline is what matters here. And this is a comeback story. I mean, it, 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 as I said, it's the magic that you want on Derby Day. You want... The magic of the cup. The magic of the cup. You want the magic of the cup. You want teams <laughs> that are sort of, you know, surprised going up against each other. They mm. have such a history. Wait, hang on. And they can't shake it off. They knew that they were trouble when they walked in. They're a blank space. Look what they made them do in this bad blood. American football. <laughs> That's all I've got. Can you do an American accent? 
No, absolutely not. I cannot do an American try. accent, but why? Say, say the team, Kansas City. Kansas City Chiefs, American football. I can't. Is she Southern? I don't even remember. <laughs> She's so Where's Taylor Swift why from? Why did that sound like Michael Jackson? <laughs> <laughs> Where's Taylor Swift from? Is she American? So Hi, I'm Taylor Swift. I love football as well. <laughs> okay. It's me, Travis Kelsey, and of course I'm here with Taylor Swift. Hi, I'm always here. Always on camera. I'm always stealing the spotlight. In Australia. Yeah. <laughs> we're going off to bank next. Where we'll be Aren't you supposed to be in Australia? Oh, I should probably leave. Yeah, probably get, get yeah, going. I'll go on the way, stop off at the bank. I will. Is that Make where we're deposit? going? Very, very shortly, of course, here for Liquid and W7M. Final game of the series. Sure to be a good one. Hard to predict, apparently. Uh, and rightfully Whoa. so, after what we just saw from the last map. I mean, the fact that that's gone to 45-55 from where it's... Oh, well, I mean, would you not want to back in the team oh, that just came back from 6 nothing? You saw the emotion that they clearly displayed after they won that game. Like, I'm no, like, you know, stats man. Clearly, I'm not fresh. I don't play ranky. But what I will say is... <laughs> you in play terms ranked. Of raw <laughs> yeah, I play ranked. In terms of raw emotion and what that can do for you going into the next map, it's massive in terms of sports psychology. Huge. All the momentum. And for W7M, like, to be fair as well, this now makes it harder for them to top group because Virtus Pro, uh, Pro play tomorrow, and now all they have to do is go to zero. I mean... Just saying. Uh, the stories. The magic of the cup. <laughs> the, magic. the magic of the cup. Osa is not going to be part of the magic of the cup here. Banned on bank. Yeah, fair enough. There's a couple of particular plays that we saw even earlier today, or at least I did, when I was casting it on the other stream. Yeah, so if... If Virtus Pro 2-0 bleed tomorrow, they will top this group. W7M will not top their group. No. Because of what's happened in that map. They can win this now. It honestly doesn't mean anything. In fact, this probably doesn't really mean anything for Liquid either. Um, to be completely honest, I don't see a world in which how this is going to change much for Liquid. Uh, sorry, and, and, I mean in terms of topping the group. Yeah, Obviously, yeah, yeah. what it does for them is it means they are very unlikely now to get grouped. We had that storyline kind of brewing. The fact that Team Liquid tomorrow play M80... Obviously, if M80 and Liquid had a met, if Liquid lost 2-0, Liquid would be on four points and M80 on zero, which meant an M80 win. You get yep. the picture. You know, two plus two equals five. Uh, and clearly, though, for now W7M, this I loss so. on that map means that they can't top the group if Virtus Pro 2-0 bleed tomorrow. And that's a big if because bleed are obviously a very good team and, and they've got every chance of being able to take maps off, off anyway, apparently. They took a map off Liquid. They obviously went and... Uh, uh, well, actually, they beat Liquid. They, they beat took Liquid. A, they took a map for W7M. Exactly, yeah. They are technically the top dogs in the showdown. The thing that this... What a fun group. If Liquid wins this, the one worrying thing for Bleed fans is it makes Bleed's chances a little bit shakier. I think. Well, Bleed, no, not necessarily. Yes, the fact that they're on four points, but Bleed actually play M80 after this game. Right. So we'll, we'll know that answer immediately. So Bleed only have to probably get a map off of M80. I would say. I mean, ideally, they beat them, and yeah, I think they're very likely to beat them. But yeah, it does make that next game really enticing. Spicy. Either way, we've got this game, though, first, which has, obviously, going to be a, a very fun ending. I mean, for W7M, if they lose this, they are certainly not going to get top of this group. Like, they, at least win this, and then it gives them a chance going into tomorrow, not because of what they can do, but maybe what Virtus Pro will do. There's still a lot on the line for them to win this map, and the same, obviously, then goes for Liquid as well. You, you jump up quite a lot if you can get that, that second map. You go from either one point to three points. It, it does mean a lot. Get over the line. Plus, also, I think for Liquid, there's probably a little bit more. They would love to just beat W7M. Oh, yeah. It has been a long time since they last were able to beat them. They haven't been able to beat them this whole year, I believe. Unless there's one at the very beginning, but I would have to it. You're like, I'm not sure. I'm not sure. I want to be confident. I'm as confident in this as I was in making the bit with Taylor Swift song titles earlier. I'm not a big Swifty. I'm sorry. Uh, I'm I'm so sorry. I listen to miserable... I'm also not a Kansas Chiefs fan. Who are you a fan of? Uh, up the Packers. Go Pack Go. Oh, yeah. Green Bay. If there's any, any Packers fans in the chat, go Pack Go. <laughs> do you know what they should do? You know how at NFL games when they do cut to like look alike celebrities, they should do that with like audience members and, and the talent at the live stage <laughs> and see how it goes. A minute, 
20 has passed at this point ish and everybody is still standing yeah well mainly because right now for liquid it's just it's a five on site stack here lock yeah. in cctv hence why we're kind of just chatting around because there's nothing really to talk about right now w7m have just got a bit of a freebie up above no roam game from liquid they're just more than happy to play denial down below which is interesting because they've really only got the smoke and the vulcan canisters that can be dealt with by the rotero bang fire Minute 20, so Vulcan Canis is kind of pretty much dealt with now in terms of that server side push. We'd like to see at least something else from W7M in terms of maybe the hatch play, main stairs, but right now from Liquid, it very much is just on site hold and just hope that that's going to be enough and bank basically into vaults hitting these uh, gas babes to deny plants. Now Resets is watching a bit of a long angle all the way from the back end of the site. Felipox has control of the hatch as well. He's hoping to try and get a catch on a player that might try and get a catch on a player swinging wide. It's Hertz that gets the opener onto Vault. Finally finds the first and unfortunately for them it's the smoke that gets removed. Going for maybe the throw of the first bit of gadgets. The second fight is the follow through and it's Palo. Who gets his head taken off by herds as well. They have the cover and they have the first two bodies. This seems pretty cut and paste right now for a round going into Liquid's favor because, well, uh, against Liquid's favor even because they just cannot get close to the fight. Look at this. They have been entirely strong armed. Anything close towards stopping this plant. Nask has to go for the retake up the top. You assume it's going to be watched by at least a drone. In a post plant, two versus five, they have vertical control. I mean, that was not just a flawless round. That was a flawless attack for my books on that site. Textbook. Yeah. I mean, it's the case of, though, no real pressure from Liquid. That's the issue for mine. The fact that there was no real, like, proper flank. They really weren't able to get any pressure over towards server. Blue Stairs is typically a position that is held. You might have even the smoke get super aggressive with a shotgun up close or a mute, for example. They didn't really offer anything there, Liquid, which meant then for W7M, time was not a factor because they were able to obviously get through the checklist really quickly. We saw them opening up the... Uh, the site from okay, server no real contest they dealt with vaults so there went obviously the the gas babes they were able to also deal with those vulcan canisters really early bet off the roteros and there was no kind of then second option from liquid in terms of how they could then change that round late in the round and clearly then it was flawless from w7m didn't really make any mistakes but that's mainly in part because liquid's defense was a little bit poor a little bit shoddy and again maybe moving a little bit away from what was so successful on consulate which was that counter aggression which was the lacks of resets in their face so you're just sitting back a site w7m will take take and take you need to get in their face that's why they were so successful so for liquid don't go away from what worked in that 6-0 comeback Five seconds left before... Okay, this is... This is gonna maybe cause some trauma. Mm. Imagine if we have a six attack, six no, attack. No, 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 no. <laughs> It's not gonna happen. It's not gonna I, happen. No. I would, I would need it's a therapist immediately after the broadcast ends. I got a photo between maps two and three of the admin team, our wonderful admin team, of the, the person running the match, just lying on the floor, face down in the carpet after the last map. I understand. I, mean, I understand. They saw us in the chair. I fully get it. W7M, they're able to break the deadlock and get the first attack here, get themselves off to a bit of a strong start. And as I said, it was not only a flawless, but it felt very flawless as well. They just, as I said, muscled, strong armed, pushed, bullied, and pronged the players away from being able to offer any utility into the swing. It was, is, this is how we run it in scrims as possible, Nesk. Trying to find a little sneaky play out, a little sneaky route. And he's looking for a... Uh, an option, an escape route here. Herds is coming in on top with some pressure, with some presence. He's dancing around a drone, Volps. How long can you survive? The Mozzie, the Aussie, trying their best to waste as much time as possible, but with a Monty, the French Chonchi. Oh, that hits. So much you can do. Wow, they find one, though. Not bad. Nesk is now kind of forced back down. Oh, oh, I love the oh, vault there from Hertz. Talk about aggression. Understanding that in that moment, Nesk is really more worried about maybe getting back down towards site rather than wanting to take the fight. So Hertz understands. Okay, let's go chasing. Good little vault catches Nesk as soon as he's making his way down towards bot main. And it gives W7M the advantage again. At least this is a bit better from Liquid in the fact that they kind of forced W7M to go for that clear. They're getting into these fights. Could have maybe had little moments go their way. Alas, not. But at least buying some time. It's not all clean for W7M. They don't have everything they would have liked to have had by this point. They're not in the positions of, say, like, server without really any kind of contest from Liquid. So this is better. Resets with the drop. Bleep pops on the Monty now. Just kind of scans around staff and open. Spots the castle barricade. Hello. Little pile. 
Palu in the corner. Oh, Palu's still good for one, though. Oh, not bad from Palu. Honestly, the fact that he even just gets that one right. kill there is at least something. I mean, really shouldn't have been able to take a body out of it. They still have the Monty, but... We've got to try and get this kit and this plant down. Nade with all of the smokes and the bolts that they can make. JV92, not sure if they've utilized their hard sprint charges onto the same positions they had before or elsewhere. But the rotate comes through now with about 28 seconds to go. It seems like, no, the walls and the castle are still standing. So they're going to have to try and hot drop those hatches. I don't know if they've noticed yet, but they've dropped down on the wrong end of it. So... They're just going to have to smash and breach their way onto this. With only 10 seconds, it's really a bit of a grab here. Resets is watching for the single player on the top. Lagonis went for a rotate, pulled back, oh, no. changed his mind, and now he's firing it. Well, nothing other than what he's been seen. Caught out, and oh, that's a bit of a rough one to swallow. Yeah, a little bit strange considering the time left in that round. Certainly could have gone more for the uh, plant to not. I think he eventually wanted to get to hatch, right? And in that yeah. moment, you want to get the vert. But uh, the time was the issue and the fact that they didn't have the numbers anyway. But uh, a better round at least from Liquid. I'm trying to give them some plaudits because they at least did something a lot better than what they did in the first round where it was just a five on site stack. This time they forced W7M into that roam clear. It was actually rather effectual, but still W7M were just better and they were able to deal with it. And that's the reason why they go in and win that round eventually got the plant, eventually rotated to server. It was late, opened up the castle barricade really easy with secondaries, and then, of course, got the, the, the win. Uh, this is the issue that we kind of had with the end of the last game. Though. I can't remember if you said it on here or off here, but it was like, you go through all that comeback, you do this amazing 6-0 to 6-6, and you win the game. Don't now just go to bank and just revert back. Please come and, you know, come See, to the party. I will take credit for saying that. It wasn't me. I uh, went to get a, uh, an, an, an energetic drink. A refreshing, a refreshing beverage. Well, well, someone said it. Someone said it, but I'll take credit. And yeah, it was me. I said it. <laughs> I said it. But how Taylor many Swift <laughs> said it. How many times have we been in these scenarios there where Team A Attackers has this amazing comeback and then Team A sucks in the next match? 100%. It's happened so many times. <laughs> it's happened an unfortunate <laughs> amount of times. And you want to see them, I guess, keep some of that energy, some of that momentum, because is it an argument of how exhausting it is to do what is the toughest comeback? There's the questions of your you know, hyper-focusing, over-focusing, you get out of it, and suddenly mm. all that exhaustion hits you, and you realize, oh, we've got to do this one more time. Wipe the sweat off your brow. We're back in. Whereas W7M, I'm not going to say they weren't giving it their 100%. They obviously... Are, but at the same time, you could feel the heat and the pressure. You could feel the tension of the hand holding the mouse that swung for all the kills and the side of liquid a lot more than you could for W7M. Then you take a breath and you go back into it, and it takes a little bit of time to really get yourself to that intensity. The drones are rolling around. They're going for the early catch. And so far, W7M has been very clear and concise at what they want to go for first. Do wonder though for Liquid. Yeah, I mean resets 0-3. I was about to say he hasn't got any kills. He hasn't gotten involved. You kind of think back to Consulate, who was the circuit breaker. It was resets. The fact he dies early, one, no longer good. But two, he's also playing the Echo. That's someone you want absolutely alive, the longest, if possible, out of your entire operator lineup. And so the fact that he's dead it really doubt now makes this third round difficult for Liquid. At least Ness has been able to get his first kill of the game. A very important one as well. Philippe Box and the Monty towards Long Desk. But of course, sight over towards Staff and Open. But a bit of vert now, at least for W7M. They've lost the hard breach. They still have two sort of pockets in openers for the quad wall itself. And with Volps going down, they're losing the smoke canister. What's that vertical? They're going to get the player back up. A little bit curious. Did they just get... Caught, I am assuming, yeah, hit the rotate above the hatch and didn't quite expect the fight. A minute on, you can see W7M, they're weighing up just where they want to make their approach, hacking the cams and getting the coordination of everything involved, including any Valkyries that might still be around. The IQs in the pocket of herds. You hope that they've been able to herd. I don't think they're going to open up quad. I, I don't think they've got the time no. for it. And the Montang is well, the one who's got the secondary hard breaches. So clearly they're over towards stock. I think he's just going to go for a drop. I, I legitimately think this might just be a drop. As they able to find one more, they pulled themselves back to the little sliver of safety. They have at least one F dot mine on the back end to make sure that if someone does try to swing in from the side, they get the sight. There's Ooh, Ness good trying night. to get the fight. He can't quite get the motion. The Monty's coming down, but the rotate over the top. We can see the Valkyrie Parlu is going for an adventure. He's looking for the fight, but they've pushed away. They've moved to a slightly safer spot. Lagonus is the last pick they're trying to find, and there he is. The 
Pings on the players. They're waiting to see where the kick goes down. They know where both the two liquid players are. And neither of them can get a breath in W7M. Clever play there because they got inside the site, but they didn't go, let's go for the play. Even though there was 20 seconds, 15 seconds left, they went, let's find where they are and work out what to do. Yeah, I do wonder if they had info on Palo going for that main stairs flank in towards stock. I don't know if they actually had the information or not, but if they did, that would be a big reason why they kind of just then pushed forward in and away from that drop position, understanding that Palo is going to go in towards stock and then try and look down and be like, oh, well, I'm going to get him from behind. The fact that they just kept moving was the reason why they won that round really solid. And the fact that they were also able to deal with Nesk, who, yeah, maybe didn't die to those nades, but he was also displaced a little bit. Then the flashes, he couldn't really stop the drop either because of that Montang. Again, Liquid, I didn't think, did awful things. I can't believe I keep saying it, but the fact that they forced W7M to roam clear, then they obviously had to do some really nice plays towards the hatch drop. They couldn't get quad wall opened up. It certainly wasn't the, the most clean round from W7M, but W7M were just better. And these are the same words I was basically saying, first half of Consulate. Like, Liquid weren't awful, but w 7 yeah, were just better. And then the yep. script just completely, not even <laughs> flipped, just went up in flames. And it was just like, yeah, so... I can't discount Liquid, but the fact that they've lost three defensive rounds to begin, especially two of them on lockers and CCTV, really does suggest to me that they have not turned up here on bank. But hey, I just saw them win from 6-0. Maybe that will do it again. Oh, it's, it's not over till it's over. Apparently. I, it, it's I, not done till it's done. Yeah, um, I, I, I don't give up on teams anymore. I've learned my lesson. I think this is obviously... Well, I mean, it could be much worse attacking than it was previous map. It's bank. It's no. It's a known entity. It, and it's one that is so sort of evident in how these two teams are approaching it as of yet. There's a lot of responses to what, what each other's doing. And it is a separate from this argument of if the Liquid were doing what they're doing against a lot of other teams, they'd be winning these mm. rounds. But it's against W7F. There are so many similarities that I'm having, like PTSD deja vu flashbacks. Like the last game that I cast earlier today was NIP GK, and it was like Consulate Bank, right? And like at least two of the three maps that we've played in this series. And like me and Hat were in agreement that like NIP should have won that 2 0. But yep. we went to a third map, and why? And it's like the same thing's happening here. This really should have been a 2 0. Oh, like we should not be on this map. But why? <laughs> Things happen sometimes in this game. And then what ended up happening on that third map? It was like a 7 1 beatdown. And that is right now what I feel like is transpiring is Herds is going to make the repel in towards airlock. He's barricaded off. Can't hit the shots though to get landed towards front desk. Reset is able to just survive. <laughs> Love the turnaround though towards top Spyro with the kill. Still four versus four. A lot of low members and Herds is down. So technically only three standing for W7M. Getting themselves a bit of a space. Laguna suffers on the opposite end. And with this, the pickup and the body balance is swapped back round. Oh my god. KZ has massively Emmy, shown I've up had in enough. that second. W7M, they find four attack rounds in a row. Are you feeling it, Mr. Mr. Travis? Kelsey? Mr. Kelsey. <laughs> Mr. Kelsey. <laughs> you know what I found out? It's apparently it's like it's meant to be just Kels. But their father got so sick of like correcting people that they just gave up and were like, "That's ah, Kelsey. It's Kelsey." Um, tactical timeout taken by Team Liquid, down four nothing, and not for the first time today. In fact, back on Consulate, they were down six nothing, and yeah, they went, they won the map. That's right. If you missed that one, yeah, I'd suggest to go back and watch it. Certainly a fun one. You don't often get to see six zero comebacks. You want similarities? I, I've never done two. Six zero comebacks in a row, have you? I don't think anyone has. <laughs> I don't think that's ever been done in the history of Siege. It would be a first. We could be on for something historical right now. Because this is the thing. Okay. We were at this exact same timeout after the fourth round. I think it might have been Herds that was 7 0 1. Now they're 7 1 2. Oh, yeah, true. And then he died. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah. now it's, it's happening again. Are we in a simulation? I think so. Do we live in like so. a simulated world? I think so. It's really difficult to process because W7M, what they're doing now on bank is what they did on consulate. Utterly dominant, no real mistakes. They look like the champions that they are. Yeah. And obviously, if you think back to Clubhouse, they won that 7-3. And that was a little bit more conventional to the spiciness that has developed back on consulate. Now over to bank as well. There is no world. We should not be playing right now.
Like, W7 have been so far and away better than Liquid, it's just not even funny. Now, obviously, we give the plaudits and the credit to Liquid. The comeback was amazing, and that really does show value in their mental fortitude. Uh, and the resilience to obviously not give up, not give in, to yeah, keep yeah. fighting and all of that. That's all great, fun stuff. It's okay, but we like winners. And that's been the theme of this series. And W7M are the winners. <laughs> At least they should be. And if they don't end up winning the series, I'm going to be seriously confused. You'll have some words. I'm, I'm not going to be angry or no, upset. No. I'm certainly not going Parker to. levels here, but like I think. Well, he's always angry and upset. There's a big level of confusion as if, to the way this game has played out. If talent were doing lookalikes, like in a Super Bowl match, his would be Oscar the Grouch, the man who lives in the bin that is a muppet. <laughs> Did you just call Parker a muppet? And a Grouch. <laughs> I got him with two insults in one way, and this is two stories of watching for a single way into the site. He's hoping, Herds, that he's gone uncontested here, that they don't think that a player's been able to get into this hatch position, because you look at sort of where the site is and where the players are, this wiggle, that's the fight, but they have that awareness, and he's not getting rewarded Ooh, for is planting. He's, he's just straight in, over towards default, and he's got a, a oh, member in KZ on. watching. This is going to be an easy plant. No one from Team Liquid has watched this at all. I mean, Korka just waltzing into sight. Nice drop from Palu, but it's nowhere near sight, and of course, the plant has already gone down, and now you're going to deal with the Montang. There is no Nitro Cells. Two impacts through Palo suddenly become extraordinarily valuable. Inside of the chat is some more words. I think it was just an NS to Palo. Yep. But ultimately, what do you even do in this scenario now? KZ could just play out of E-Box. You've got Nate towards top blue stairs. It's fine. Nothing. Surely, Palo does have the impact. has got the kill. Doesn't matter, though. W7M heard Volps chirping. And now, they've chirped back. They saw opportunity. They split theory their way across. And they took it. That's interesting because they've done something that doesn't exist. <laughs> you know, Fresh and Venice, but they <laughs> He loves to tell you that. That's what I tell everybody. CEO is well ahead. Palu obviously took the drop. I'm wondering if Palu regrets taking that drop, as weird as it is to say. Obviously, he got the kill on the back of it. It's not Parley's fault, because prior to that, it was just the fact no one's watching the... Yeah, exactly. But, like, him hitting that drop is mm. the second the plant gets yeah, confirmed. Maybe. And maybe. he goes, oh, oh now I, gotta... <laughs> I need, I need yeah. to get back up. I you know to... what's interesting about that drop, though, is, like, in another world, if he does have more help, he can eventually rotate up blue stairs, and I actually would have liked that in the fact that W7N had someone there, and then they had someone in E-Box. So you can be the player to try and deal with that, but... They just didn't have the numbers. So as soon as he drops, he's like a big factor of the on-site immediate defense. Yeah. And he probably needed to stay. But I mean, at this point, we're, we're shaping up for another 6-0. Five seconds remaining. <laughs> like, I can't believe it. Camera. What was the point of like the amazing comeback of Liquid? If this is a 7-0, I'm going to... Oh, no, I can't snap this pen in half. It's fresh as he landed to me. Something will be snapped in half. The table. Don't look at me. I'm gonna, I'm gonna RKO you through. The I've table. already had a broken arm. I don't need oh, another I one. I can't RKO you through a table. That's the only thing stopping me doing that. Okay. Is that you. you had a broken arm? Yep. Um. Otherwise, you would be so RKO'd through this table. I'm so RKO a bull. Oh, I hear voices in my head. They talk to me and tell me that this is still going. Five two zero. Oh, liquid. They. Don't quite have anything. Well, oh, JB92. You know the other issue as well is look how dominant this is. There is only three kills on four players of Liquid through five yeah. rounds. Three kills, four players, five rounds. Now, pilo has got four. He's gotten a couple. Ness also now gets involved as I talk about it. There's the kill. Second one for Ness. But what I'm trying to insinuate here is this is just utter dominance from W7M. Liquid are not in these rounds. They don't have much control. They're not setting precedent. They're not in control of the rounds. They're not setting the pace. And they're not really getting aggressive. Finally, they're at least for Palo. He's been the one yes. to at least do something so far here on bank. Where's the rest? Okay, better from resets. He was the hero back on console. He's got two now in the two versus two. This is winnable for Liquid. Suddenly, there's a situation where they might be able to pull this together. Suddenly, for the first time in what feels like the whole half, it's a bit of an even brawl. It's a bit of a fight. All it took was threatening to RKO you through a table. Two apiece. Still standing with a huge amount of time here for the attackers to try and reevaluate what they want to do here. A little bit of utility, but the problem is KZ has a little bit of health. Nothing as of yet. Lily Pox still hasn't died. 
in this engagement. This is the last drone, by the way, that they've got in terms of the next 60 seconds. So they really don't want to lose this. Uh, at least Janitor droned out. And so they can play double stack off of each other. If not mine also goes away. Uh, over towards front desk side is currently where Liquid are playing. They've got good angles. Red Pink. So information here. Onto the two members of W7M. This should be a Liquid oh. round. Very clean take there from Palu again. He's just keeping himself. I guess it's just a belt cam. Oh, there's a bulletproof up there. Oh, bulletproof. On the wall of stock. There's getting some hideous bits of information. He's just got to go for it at this point. The IQ reveals it, but you don't really need. Oh, there should be an, there should be like another belt cam in there because they were like deep inside yeah, of Janitor getting red pinged. Well, now they're deep inside the afterlife. Oh. Wasn't quite sure where you were going with that one, but eventually you went to the right direction. 5-1 to close out the first half. Liquid. It's not going to be a 6-0. It's not going to be a 6-0. It's certainly not going to be a 6-0 comeback, but hey, if they can make it a 5-1 comeback, that's pretty good. It would have been our third technical 6-0 half in a row of major halves because it was 6-0 to 6-6. So that's a 6-0 half. Six rounds What's without it? a response. Oh, yes, you're right. I'm, and then I, it would I have been yeah, yeah. another 6-0 half. Would have been, yeah. <sighs> well, really difficult to sort of digest where we're going to go with this because Liquid's attack was obviously quite impotent back on Consulate. Yeah. Hence the, you know, 6 0 defense. Mm -hmm. And so, don't quite know what we're going to get from this. Again, statistically, Liquid coming into the series were 70% defensive win rate and like 30% attacking win rate. Again, that's just the nature of the tournament. But they're on the lower scale. We're talking bottom five of attacking win rate. Like, bottom five. So, they, they're, they're the worst of the worst. Yeah. And unfortunately, it does now mean, can they go and somehow suddenly go on four attacking rounds? Things have to connect in ways that they haven't yeah. even been connecting on this map. As you said, the sort of kill spread here. Parlo is doing everything he can to keep them in it. The best the others have really ma managed is two kills apiece. Then you look at the other side, W7M. All of them have cleared mm -hmm. that. A lot of them by multiple We're counts. We're seeing a Lucy. Not often we see Malusi no. these days. He's the only nurse. operator. Okay, someone's outside. Oh, they're just doing stuff in uh, dirt. Sorry. Um, the only operator we haven't seen this tournament is Rook. Interesting. I'm sure at some point someone brings a Rook out. Just for fun. Probably G2. Either way, I mean, like, this is also the kind of side going back to that conversation regarding, like, the difficult nature here for Liquid attacking, needing four attacking rounds. Like, Locker's CCTV alone is already a very good defensive site here on Bank. W7M, more than clinical enough, off the back of the Smoke Mirror combo. I'm curious to see what the Banshee's going to do as well from the Malusi. You've got the Warden. Eventually, when those maybe Smokes and or Flashes do come through, there are a lot of Smokes as well that are going to be on the side of Liquid in terms of Palu, in terms of, obviously, resets. Goodbye, Palu. Never mind, but you do have obviously Volps as well on the Capital. AZ has been, I think, his best performance so far at the yeah. start of this map. The best time for him to struggled show on up. the first map. Can't yeah, recall yeah, yeah. Consulate. He wasn't quite, but to be honest, he didn't really need to be there as intently as the others. Maybe a little bit more on Consulate would have helped, but here they lose Palu. They lose that one person we've been citing as the one that's able to get in and get fights on. There is so much pressure now, and it's not that the guns of Liquid aren't capable of doing it. They've just been struggling with getting it done in this engagement, in this map, as of this point. A minute 20. This is probably out of almost every single site, one of the top, if not the top ones, that has a known utility burn towards the default plant spot. They have a lot of work still to do, and they are well aware of it. Lagonis is rotating that diffuser towards square, towards the server site push. That's the way that Liquid want to take this. Volps and Nask have actually made their way out over towards Blue Stairs. Lagonis still has that kit on server side. They've got themselves the hatches. There's 60 seconds left. They're down a player. It's going to take a bit of a miracle. In fact, I think they might anticipate, let's go and get a bit of pressure. Main stairs, the drone initially, but then that's all about it. Nask with the frag grenade. Let's get rid of the barbed wire. 45 seconds. Seconds. The smoke canisters are now being deployed as well from KZ. Still has two more and certainly can still delay a lot of time here. To counteract that, the best thing you can do with the kit, push past the gas bay, go to the bomb chassis, then play off at the hatch. There are C4s on board as well. You can see they've pulled out. They've dropped onto Gold Hatch, but instantly picked apart. Ness has crept his way down what green. What is Finds one fight. They're going for the plant. Lagonis went for it, and he's just going to sit and stick as suddenly it's just Lagonis going for the plant himself. One versus two. They go for the retake. 
Clever move here. You're going to get the control above. You have the single player holding onto it. The Banshee on the table is causing some problems. Oh, he didn't know no! he dropped. He didn't know he dropped. He thought he was no. still maybe either in the act of dropping or at the hatch itself. Started to look up, and that was it. That's all she wrote. W7M will go 6-1 up. Match points are plenty, of which they had plenty back on Consulate. But this is a different story. Defense here on Bank. They get lockers and CCTV. And for Liquid, it seems as if that miracle comeback of Consulate is going to be... Maybe not for naught. I actually don't want to say that because that one map win alone changes things quite heavily it because does. they're not on four points. They're on five points. But it does mean uh, it's been a bit of a disappointing third map after the heroics of Consulate. And by the way, for those that missed it, hello. But, but, <laughs> for those that missed it, Volps started getting very chirpy. Very chirpy at the end of Consulate when they got that win, when they got that comeback. So for W7M, this is even sweeter. It's like, you guys thought you were going to beat us? You thought you were going to win? You guys thought you had that? You guys thought you had that? No. That's why. You really thought you won? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, you're... you're <laughs> I'm very quick. I'm very you're sharp. Hello. I'm not like... Did you, did you, the Guz <laughs> meme that obviously James posted on Twitter where he's like getting up. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Me, me and Guz like... <laughs> Yeah, you you mid sentence. No, no, no. Hello. Ah, <laughs> 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 oh, that tickles me. That tickles me. Six to one. Liquid so far have only tickled W7M on this map. We'll see if they can try and turn that into a little bit more of a hearty blow here. Up towards CEO. I'm getting the sounds of a plant in a fight and a replay. I'm. Those are done now. It's just moments of madness, I think, at this point. The voices. The voices. I hear them in my head. The approach now. Instantly up towards the top of the square. It seems like the players are generally keeping themselves in the top floor, though. No one's wanting to try and explore the map against Liquid here. W7M, they're happy to sit. And Volps has gotten Whoa. very aggressive there. And I want to say why, because the fact that he hasn't even thrown through. You want the vert. I think on the buck, he's in the best position. But, like... You haven't really checked all the angles properly. You haven't really seen is there someone sitting in a corner. And then eventually it just kind of oversteps one mark and there's a vert angle watching down. He's dead. There goes the buck. And that's a big piece of this round four liquid in terms of the vert play from below for CEO. Two and eight from Volps. Bit of a, a bit of a struggle for someone that was a bit chirpy at the end of Consulate. He hasn't quite backed it up on bank, unfortunately. Neither is his team, though, outside of Palu. We're going to 0-7, resets 2-6. He was uh, amazing on Consulate. Nesk has been okay for the most part. It's a bit of disappointing liquid here on Bank. We'll give them the pat on the back for their heroics on Consulate. But that's it. Nothing else. And it seems as if the series win should go the way of W7M and a deserved series win as well. They were incredibly dominant on Clubhouse. They were far and away better on Consulate, but couldn't obviously close out on their own attack. Doing so here on bank. 6-1, up by 4, minute 20 left. What can Liquid do from the roof repelling down? Their best at this point. That's all you can really ask for. The flash is over the top. They're going to see if they can try and maybe swing onto the stair sets. The blinds against the window. The Kiba barricade will stop that immediate push. And they miss the opportunity to get the strike as another Kiba barricade comes out. All of this time being wasted and taken away and making those attempts at an attack. You look at the utility that was dumped there. Grim was firing the bees. There's a fear charge. As Palu goes underneath, they get the pinch onto the player. Force them out of position. They're just going to have to try and scream their way up. Spiral Nade. His eyes are a little bit locked forward onto the window player, but it's Nesk, Ooh, Nesk. that wins out. Top square. Top square. And now suddenly you can see these players of W7M starting to pull their way back around. The bees will reveal that nobody is currently on the balcony, but JV92 is very much expecting it with 30 seconds. That's Kit. That's Kit, by the way. If Lagonus dies here, top spiral. That's Kit, but he wins the battle. So critical. He dies, 25 seconds, no kit. Instead, now he can actually get close to sight. Doesn't even need to get to sight. Nice second kill there from Lagonas. KZ towards airlock, and Lagonas with a triple, pushing up spiral. Clean. Felt like a pivotal moment in that round, because again, if he dies, that's kit in a bad position. No one else was even close by. Time was going to be a big factor. We stay alive here with Liquid. His first kill of the game, I believe, as well. First three. First three. <laughs> I mean, what a time. Yeah. What a time to pop in. Got the first and the lead in. Get the next two. And maybe they just play better when they're 6-1, six, 6-0 one, six, down. <laughs> maybe, just... maybe they need to be on the wrong side of map point. <laughs> I don't even know anymore. We need the statistic of the difference of Liquid when they play when they're against map point and when they're not. And we'll see where the success comes from. 
Six to two. I mean, I'm gonna say exactly the same things I would say against any showdown when it's six to two, especially when you got W7M. This is probably gonna end with W7M winning it. This is probably gonna end with W7M winning it. This is probably not gonna go to another overtime. I'm sorry, Liquid fans. I have to say it because <laughs> statistically it's true. Now, Liquid fans, at this point, you go. I also said it was statistically improbable at 6 0 in Consulate. And that's exactly. exactly what the Liquid fans would say. That's what you need to say, Liquid fans. You say, Fluke, shut up. Shut up. <laughs> shut up, Fluke. It is. It literally it's, just happened it's one map ago. Possible. And then that's fine. And we've had this yeah. dialogue. I've said what I need to say. <laughs> you guys have said what you guys need to say. Dialogue has happened. Sick. We can move past it. You let's, know what's interesting about that last round, though, because har harping back on it, it I, as much as Lagunas will get the plaudits with the triple kill pushing up Spiral, it was yep. Nesca, I felt like, top square that really opened things up. So rather than just having everyone on the repel around that airlock position, the fact that they sent one square, then one towards Spiral, opened up the map. Like, those are the kind of things I think that Liquid have been able to do when they're successful in this series. W when they've been poor, it's because they're kind of one-dimensional. They all stack together. It's all a little bit easy. W7M have their backs at the wall. No one's coming behind them. That was much better because because it's like, for W7M, the defense just gets spread thin. Like, they have to cover so many different areas. Top square, oh. spiral, repel, KZ with a nice kill on to Nesk. That's a big loss, simply for the fact that Nesk has been pretty good so far on bank. Again, another good start for W7M. Liquid have shown good resilience in this series, though, so don't count them out in the round. But they are on the back foot to begin here. Similar to how things sort of played with them before, but there is still the drone, the approach, and they're going for this verticality. Palu, the point man, looking for some presence here on the top of white, but he's not entirely confident that he isn't being watched and isn't quite able to get the swing to the players that he wants. KZ has built himself a fortification here, and Palu put some bullets into Herds' head. Pulls himself back, expects to rotate, but it's Felipox that finds resets in the meantime, so he's like, oh, well, gotta go up and kill someone else. Yeah, elevated position there, double push up Spyro, and I think he just wasn't watching. Volks then also tries to take the contest. Nice double win from Felipox. That might just be the round, unless Lagunas can go big again, as he did in the round gone prior. Now he needs to, well, he's dead. Now it's up to Palu. The one versus four. The GG comes out from Herds. The GG is well and from Volks. Volks. Okay, well, I mean, it's one thing for the opposition to call it over before it's actually over. It's another, though, when you still got your team, uh, teammate alive, like, trust in Palu just a little bit, Volks. Yeah. Hazy <laughs> with the sleep. <laughs> I don't... No love lost, baby, though. Palu could still put them to sleep. There's time. 50 seconds to be exact. Through beep as he runs. That was not a bad shot either. Could hack the cam as well to get some cameras last second here. Needs to get that kit, though. It's a long way away from home. 40 seconds left. It's being watched. Close by. Yellow ping. He knows Nate is here. Or at least he should, based off of this yellow ping information. Not entirely he's just, well, he's just sure. being cautious. He's being cautious. He should know this. Well, there's the fight. Doesn't quite get the connection with the SMG spray. Gets a bite on the second swing, but it's 20 seconds. Oh, They're oh. holding on to the kid. <laughs> and this is ring around the rosies on the final fight. The other side of the oh. shop, but it's all she wrote. Now you can type GG's and the good games. It was a game that went on maybe longer than it should have. And unfortunately, the end is here. W7M take the win, take the three points mm -hmm. to the one that Liquid have been able to steal back from a historically meteoric performance. But all this does is confirm W7M out of the relegation zone possible in towards playoff. Congratulations. Liquid is still a little bit of work to do, but a little bit less than that. Yeah, so 7-3 to W7M, 8-7 to Liquid, then 7-2 to W7M. And look, for all of that said inside of the server, it's still no love loss between these two teams. Hugs all round, and that's good sportsmanship. We like to see that between Liquid and W7M. What a series, though. I mean, it had it all. I mean, again, I think the scoreline maybe on Clubhouse a little bit inflated. I thought Liquid did quite well to lose 7-3. Yeah, maybe it was more of a 7-4, 7-5 kind of game. Consulate was just bizarre in the fact that it was a 6-0 start for W7M, coupled then with the massive comeback by Liquid from 6-0 down to bring it all the way back to OT, then closed it out 8-7. Bank, though, largely disappointing considering what we had prior in the first two maps, where obviously Liquid came into Bank, you would think, with all of the momentum, but it was W7M who came in and started really, really well. It was a surprise. I think that's the fairest way of putting it. <laughs> you, that feels a million years ago now. Oh, it feels 
such a long time ago. You obviously had this fight here on the second oh, map. Away. This feels a million years ago. This felt like when W7M were at the strongest liquid or back, but it was exhausting. 6-0, that's right. And it's just... And it was just one round at a time. That was kind of the, the message. At 6-0, 6-1, 6-2, we're kind of still joking around a little. Once it got to 6-3, we're like, okay, we need to like turn our attention back yeah. to this game properly. And Liquid just continued to storm home. You could see what it really meant for them as well. And then all of that for W7M to get OT match point, even then up 7-6. Still, Liquid held their nerve and closed it out. You could see what it meant for them. It's not often that you will get to come back from 6-0. No. They did it, and they did it against W7M, which is huge for the two-time champions. But boy, did the two-time champions bounce back on Bank. I mean, you get onto Bank, you get onto W7M, onto this attack half that they had, where they just felt great. They felt fluid, they felt active. They felt like a team that realized what happened on the second map, and then said, that is not happening mm -hmm. again. Not only are we locking this off, we're making it quick. We are making it a GG in chat before the game is over. It was a powerful performance from a team who, as we said many times, it's rare to expect a team <laughs> in the finals. What was that? That was, that was cool. That was cool. A little celebration. Yeah, and, and look, I, I think ultimately for W7 and the better of the two teams in this series, let's not get it twisted here. I think they should have honestly won this 2-0 for all intents and purposes. And had they done so, they would have been in a really good position to still top this group. Now, their fate kind of lies with Virtus Pro. Virtus Pro play tomorrow. If VP go 2-0 in their match against Bleed, VP will get top spot. Which means for W7M, they don't get to go straight to the quarterfinals. They'll have to go into a 2v3 matchup. Then you win that. Then you play a team that did finish top in their group, respectively. Uh, and I should obviously reiterate, for W7M, this is it. They, they, they don't play tomorrow. So no, they're stuck at 11 points. So for Virtus Pro, if they get all four points tomorrow, of course, they get to go top of the standings. I mean, you, you're still looking at this table, as you said. There's games in hand today. There's games in hand tomorrow as well. M80, they have a total of eight points that they could still take. So if that gives you a pain Well, actually, seat. Bleed can go top of the standings. Bleed could go top of the standings. Because Bleed are about to play M80. You win that, you go to A if they win at 2-0. Then they play Virtus Pro tomorrow. And the winner in a 2-0 fashion would go top the standings. If Bleed... Oh, if Bleed top the Someone is getting RKO'd through a table if Bleed. <laughs> if so, <laughs> let's go to the stats from this match that we've had here, of course, for W7M and Team at Liquid. It's a... Uh, uh, I mean, look, two teams that I think would have been vying off for that top spot. At least yeah. one of them is. The other one will be probably just content with the fact that they haven't been grouped. Let's be completely honest here. Um, for, for Team Liquid, it's more of a reprieve. Uh, the fact that M80 have clearly struggled in this group. Now, that match comes up pretty much right after this. M80 versus Bleed. And like I said, if Bleed win 2-0, then the battle tomorrow with Virtus Pro's four top spot. Now, again... I Tiebreakers could become a factor as well for W7M. They certainly would hope that the match tomorrow is not a 2-0 for either of those two teams. Otherwise, they would lose that top spot as we go to the stats here for our match of bank. But oh, this is a fascinating group. It, it, I'm going to be honest. This was the most fascinating group coming into the tournament as well once I saw yeah, the group yeah, for yeah. Group C. So the way it's shaping out is even more fascinating. I think everyone was like, uh-oh, bleed. When the group got announced, you you were and worried. I was like, uh oh, M80, because I trusted well, in the Bleed Boys. Yeah, I mean, you, you have that, and I think you know, you look at M80 on paper, and you're like, this is a brilliant, brilliant team that hasn't been able to. They failed to mm -hmm. launch, regardless of whether it's the meta, whatever's going on there. They just haven't been able to find that solidity. And yet, as you said, the fact that Virtus Pro as well, they have outperformed. I think people's expectations. W7M and Liquid, they've underperformed in some ways. They're yeah. starting to show that they're world class teams. And, you know, I don't think it's biased to say we want both of those at the live stages. Imagine oh, I'm the biased. audience. I want to play top of the group. I don't care. Okay. I said it. I want to see Liquid in front of 10,000 Brazilians. I want to see W7M play to their I want to see a fish on the main stage. I want to see a fish and a mannequin <laughs> on the main stage. <laughs> and a mannequin as well. The mannequin, yeah. whatever that mannequin is called. What a fun series, though, at the very least, between these two teams. Because I think I would have been a bit disappointed had we not go to three maps. Yeah. The way in which we got there, and obviously the weird. maps themselves, <laughs> weird. Because it's like 7-3, 7-2, W7M just yeah. like toying with Liquid. And then that like second map was a 6-0 lead. Like it did not go the way I, I had planned. But the result is probably what I expect. It's all about the destination, not the journey. It's been so much fun, Emmy, by the way. It's been a wonderful time. Yeah. Do I have to talk like this? You understand me again.
No, absolutely not. No, please, never. What? I went <laughs> to finishing school and I learned how to talk like I'm from Harry Potter. Do you want to? Do you want to throw us to the break like that then? Oh, throw us to the break. It's been absolutely wonderful casting with you, Australian stranger. We'll take it to a very quick break before we're back with the next game, which will decide if M80 are entirely pointless. That's just bad. Maya's just chilling in the corner, finding two from the bedroom. Mm. It's painful, but it is, it is what it is. And Scars will have to try and find themselves with at least a little bit of a buffer, find themselves with a single attack round, so they have the opportunity to turn things around onto the defense themselves. And I'm not saying that's likely. Because I think, honestly, Lost has this 7071 in the back with the way things are currently going. I don't want to say I said it, but I did say it. It will be a 6-0. <laughs> uh, Less Scars can perform a miracle on this objective. We cast our mind back last time. Very linear. Big tower. Couple of years behind the meta. It used to work not too bad in days gone by. But unless you split the attack properly, it's really challenging to make that work unless Lost throw picks. And from what we've seen so far, that is very, very unlikely. Tai tries his best to sneak a shock drone in towards the site, but low bit aware, scans it out, finds it, survives that shot, and can now just chill on the staircase. Yeah, he's not going to swing that again. Drone's quite close to go. He's going to hunt those down. And with that, uh, only four drones left. They've just tossed like three or four drones at Lobin. He's just got to keep shutting them down. Is there more drones coming towards him or are they going to try and forget about him? Because, I mean, to be honest, he's in a position that's not that important of a position if you if you want to go for a plan. Usually you would either go for the kitchen or you, you would go for the back of stage, but the lobby push is just not done usually. Rekka opens up, though. Maya will be shut down. That is a great pick that they need to be building on. Finally opening kill last round as well, but... Stunts is going to be able to take down one drone, aware of the fact that he might be pushed. So he's thinking about falling back. Whilst Dash is thinking about going more aggressive instead. Ooh. Oh. Survives just. Dash on an island, but can the scars actually isolate him? Well, the answer, an immediate yes, and Dots will fall too. So perhaps it won't be a 6-0. I take it back. Scars have continued to fight. Loban taken. Oh. Very low, and we're sure we'll find that one. So it's Lobin in the one versus five. Should be a Scars round from here, of course. The goes without saying. But will one round on the attack be enough? It's the nut coming down there. He's going to be aware of that, but the punt's going through. Grenade will be forcing Lobin back. You're aware of where they are. And surely this is going to be a Scars round. <laughs> Why does that happen? Uh. <laughs> what? What? I mean, this is this is this is a round that is going to scars. We already knew that, but that, like, if we didn't have the grenade kill yet, does this count fresh? Can we get a replay, please? <laughs> I don't know where that one came from, but um, five one scars have found themselves the buffer they needed, and now they just need to try and turn the tides onto the defense. And again, it isn't that they are incapable of defending; it is more so the mindset of being five zero down. Can you bring it back at this point? Are you resilient enough to basically take this round by round rather than look at the big picture and be like, we're well, 1-1 one, one in score. It's 5-1 on this map. If we lose two rounds, it's over. Well, there were a couple of smiles on the player cams for Scars, so perhaps not all hope is lost. Quick look back at previous round and really just case of Scars being able to maneuver their way in the map and not miss anything. Here's oh, the grenade. That bounced back. And then... Uh, Rack just walked in it. Boom. <laughs> Lol, well, I mean, that happens. <laughs> Classic. Well, I think the important thing as well to note is, of course, Lost will have their tactical timeout. Yeah, for sure. So I assume as soon They're as Lost get on match thing. point, if they lose any rounds post that, they'll just call it and really set themselves up to convert the game. I think it's going to be a rush coming out from the side of Lost. We see the blitz out there. 
going to be solo for now, though. Doesn't have any support. Okay, so it's not going to be a rush. There's just going to be a, a normal approach first, but it might transition into a quick play and a quick take as soon as they do decide that it's time to take the side. Yeah, probably looking for a trigger point. I think have lost get an opening pick here, which has been a big strength for them. They'll go for it. Fish like getting info on the Solus, which has been quite the impactful operator on the map so far. Lost leaning into it and leveraging it nicely on the defense. Maya to push up top white. Has a bit of a read. Fish like though should win this fight oh. and does. The prone peak for Maya doesn't work out. Dots now to try and hunt down the Solus. If plan A doesn't work, let's just send plan B right at him. And that is going to be an impact coming through. And also him trying to drop through completely blinded. Following oh! his other back dots. The double kill to come through, but Dash will be able to at least go for a trade. Aware of the fact that they were trying to escape, but you've lost your blitz in the process. Was it really worth it to drop right after him, knowing that Dash was that close and the player was fully fleshed? Hide away. Lows are still in it. Just the fact of uh, this round is that they do not really have heart breach. And I know Maverick is on the board, but opening up those hatches takes a lot of your fuel, a lot of time. And not to forget to mention, it is quite risky as well, because if a C4 gets placed at the bottom of the hatch and you start opening it up, you might just find yourself uh, blowing up on the opposite end of things. So how are they going to be approaching this? Are they going to be opening up the hatch or are they going to try and push down the staircases and maybe through blue? Yeah, a couple of options oh. available. I suppose they are going to lean into the Mav and just ignore oh, breach. the depletion of time, at least for now. There's no way. Okay, I was just going to say, there's no way he's going to try and go for a hot breach there through the hatch. Opens up. Cameraman's going to try and at least put some pressure down. Flashbangs will be sent through, but magnets will catch them. Dash, of course, the only person with a kill so far on this uh, half a loss. He's going to try and... Cut the pie cleanly, sees that blue is relatively clear, not making too much noise. Has just been spotted out by the shield though. And that is always a bit of a difficult position to play in, but as it is going to be Scars to go in for that double kill and triple in the end, it's the lock off and they find themselves with the second round. The comeback might be on. It's the first step. Still many more to be taken, but this one looked quite convincing. Yeah, well, I agree with the, uh, the sentiment from the Scars camp. You could hear through the uh, play camps. Yeah. Nice, nice, nice. And it was. Well played overall, decent roam. It's not too enthusiastic, but it's like it's like a well done. Up this to the next. It's an affirmation. Yeah. We're on the right path. And to be fair, the bar was set quite low <laughs> after the first half, but uh, any improvement was uh, going to be great for Scars in bolstering their chances and bouncing back here on Oregon. I mean, Fish like played the usual here. Uh, finding, yep. first of all, the Ash, rotating out. Oh, wasn't actually flashed. Found the blitz right afterwards as well as they dropped. Like that double kill Ooh. was huge. That was pretty nice as well. So, I mean, Scars are looking mechanically sharp already here in the second half, which unfortunately they were never in playmaking positions really in the first half to actually put that on display. And maybe some early signs of frustration setting in here for Lost. Obviously important that they just maintain the mental because given the nature of the game at the moment in this map and the, you know, everything in context, there's a fair chance that they're really going to have to grind away at this half if Scars are here to play. Yeah, for sure. Scars, of course, they've shown in the last two maps they can be a formidable opponent. Taking the first one with a 7-5, losing the second with a 5-7. Like, if, if they would be going out in a 7-1, 7-2 victory, that would have just been a shame. So I'm glad to see that, you know, they've been able to find that last attacking round, that they were able to find that first defensive round, but I'm hoping to get some more, hoping that they can bring this to a 5-5. Five, uh, five. Maybe even push this towards an overtime if, if, if it allows us. Crack is trying to fall back, just saving his life. Some tracers still flying through, but he's able to avoid them as well. Shoy actually has a good opportunity for an opening here. Going for the jump out on the reload. We'll find Dash instantly back in. And it's a great opener for Scars. Well followed with the Solus gadget. Impact trick on the fan down below. To try and oh. deny this hard breach, but cameraman follows it up with an exothermic and well, Shoy not in a position to use his two impacts, of course. He was last seen over towards Small Tower. So an entry point now established for the attack, but it is a four versus five. We'll see if Dots here, though, can get a little bit creative. Talon Shield in hand, plants it on the floor, and he's able to now just post up and watch that cross. So technically, he only needs to dig in deep, get over the top of the... Oh, actual impact in the meantime got used here on Dots. 
I was going to say, only he really has to do is just jump over the football table, try and go for a plan there whilst the verticality is going to be in, but he's not given that opportunity yet. Rack went quite aggressive. Wushoi as well, just making sure that that talent shield was going to be gone. Wushoi now playing below. Of course, playing with the Solace has the opportunity to use that impact to stop that plant from happening, to start using that for verticality. And as Dotter's taking some damage again as he's walking by, it's cameraman in the meantime dropping into pit as Lowen finds Rex. So we are all even in this round. Oh, oh smoke <laughs> to just force Dots back. Cameraman, though, is in a really good position can use the shield to his own advantage mindful of the flank so two is got 50 seconds on the clock just holding the line but so too is the defense they must have seen that he was coming on a drone out here. Cameraman will dry as Dots gets himself right behind. A smoke canister oh. goes up, but he shoots it before it can detonate. And that means that the plant is now going to be on. Pion needs to be able to connect him. He will get one of the cover, not the second before the plant goes down. They need to find both those kills right now. One is in the master bedroom, the other behind the talent shield. Both low on HP. All you really need to do is hit a shot on either of them. And as Fish like is trying to provide some cover as well, they're just trying to find themselves with the right angles. The jumping gets covered off. They now know where Lobin is. That means that they just need to find a way to find Dots. And as Fish like is trying his best to duel either, or he's not gifted any proper opportunity to find a kill. The pre fires is coming through. He will find the very first, though, but he has only seven seconds to start with the second one. Goes for the stick, but will he need it? Will he get it? Actually, no is going to be the answer as Lobin pulls back in time. There is no time left to start this defuse. He gets a quad kill, but it's still going to be Los's round on the back of that plant. Well, that was a messy conclusion to the round. The Osa pivotal in opening up that plant opportunity for the attack. And once the smoke fell, it meant that the plant could be secured. Awkward two versus two. Scars were trying to unlock it best they could. They didn't really have the tools to deal with the Osa directly. So there was an onus on clearing that secondary player in bedroom. Couldn't be specifically located. And unfortunately for Scars, they now are staring down series point for Lost though. It's four map points, series points as well, of course. The tertiary site will be rotated to for Scars. Credit to Lost, brought the round back. Scars in terms of the opening duel and the entry have actually done okay in the last few rounds. But... Yeah, they've been doing quite okay. Got four out of the last four rounds. So uh, it's uh, four out of seven that we've played so far. Eight. Yeah, just gonna convert though. Yeah, it was a quad for fish like, but with no time left and lost bleeding that time really nicely in the post plant. All Scars can do is, I guess, tip the hat at what was a great attacking round from Loss. Yeah, and try and uh, recompose yourselves and go on because now it is quite literally do or die. If you're not able to pick up the next four rounds and bring this to an overtime, it is Los who will be taking away the victory and the majority of the points here. And with that, really throw scars into the deep end here for the grouped match tomorrow where whoever loses is going back home and scars they have definitely put up a good fight we cannot say that they haven't it's just that the oregon wasn't really what they expected dash in early will find the opening onto washoi who has been a mainstay he's been so impactful for this roster during this game during this map and losing him early on that is going to be a pain now Top four quickly being taken under control. There's just a player around inside of the attic and inside of the dorms bungs that they do need to clear out if they want to have that full control. But this is also the danger. There's almost no support. There's no way that they can play cover to cover. And as Rack is going to be shot through the window, he's trying to fall back and fight for his life, but he's really just being isolated here. As you know, to see that not doing too much, Rack will find a very first though before he gets shut down. So does Fish Like, and it's not going to be great for them. Only left a Pion now in a 1v2 situation. Los have the opportunity to close this off. Pion has fallen back towards the site. He's playing this patiently, hoping to find at least one off guard and has the opportunity to do so through the vertical, but fails to actually connect the shots. Do see in the meantime the clutch drone hacking out some of the utility that will allow for a bit more of a stealthy play. That gadget not going to be making any noise now as they start moving through. Of course, that is the big advantage of having that Malusi cameraman escaping the Thorn Razor Bloom, escaping the shots that Pion is putting down. He's trying to still survive. Knows about the player coming in from the split. It's all or nothing, and it's nothing for them.
It is going to be Lowe's that take the victory. Scars who fall short after an abysmal first half in Oregon here. They managed to at least get a bit of a salvage with that one round, but nothing really more than that. And Lowe's, in the end, I think we can only say the deserving winners of this series. Yeah, 100%. They got off to a fantastic start on Oregon and a bunch of points for them to bolster their standing in Group D. For Scars, though, it really does come down to tomorrow, that head-to-head -head against yeah. the Falcons to determine who will be knocked out of the group. I think they'll be very disappointed with how they started off map three. They just did not give themselves a platform to defend on that defensive path. They just couldn't connect. They just were nowhere to really be found. And then it's a pain when that happens because they've played a great series up until that point. And then they get six kills in five rounds and it just all falls apart. And in a game that's been so close up until that point, you cannot really afford that. But we will be tossing it to the desk who will break it down further. Thank you so much. Welcome back to the desk. Thank you as well, Loban, for joining us. Congratulations on your win. Thank you. You had a dominant performance yourself, but I want to start talking about map number one, laps particularly. It was very much a back and forth, doesn't go in your favor. What do you think went wrong there? I think we didn't like expect them to change so much. They did a lot of counter stress against us. So we were expecting a different uh, playstyle, and they got us off of guard, especially on the defense side. So that four rounds really made us struggle because we attack really good on the map. We got like three rounds, and we almost got a fourth round on the on attack side. So I think the defense side was the biggest problem for us on the map. And my question is then going into Skyscraper, realizing that your defense, like that's where the issues were coming from, then did you guys take a step back of that more aggressive and just more turtled together? Or kind of what was that? I think it was like, we just uh, didn't want them to get like isolated, skill, uh, isolated kills yeah. in the map. Like yeah, yeah, yeah. People playing alone and just, just get killed. Is it easier to, to do the execution of the round? Right. And we just say, hey, let's just not give them kills. And then the execution, they play very, very badly. Yep. And we just got our defense uh, in a really big wall. Yeah, 100%. Yeah, we had a lot of expectations from Lowe's coming into this. We were thinking you guys had an amazing run in Atlanta. We were questioning whether or not you'll be able to replicate it. With this win, you're pretty much getting yourself up for success for that second place in your group. So what was that preparation like for yourself from Atlanta into SI for you as a player individually? What did you focus on? I focus on, uh, of course, getting better individually. So I have to keep going at the stats and everything I'm, I've been doing. Uh, of course, I'm, I'm trying to help my team with any type of intel and any type of visions that I have because I think way different from my IGLs, from everything, because you know, I'm pretty crazy sometimes. So yeah, I just focus on fragging. So I keep giving my teammates all those skills because that's my job. Right. Okay. Well, I have one very important question to ask you. Obviously, your name is all over the charts and you know your name is all over the charts, but if there's something that you could say to the community, what is like the one most important thing that you do that you bring to this team that you just have in your arsenal? I think the a big difference that I always had is first, I play the game a lot. Yeah. I was one of the guys that had most FPL games in Brazil. I go to NA, I play FPL again. And I go back and play FPL more. So, and of course, like, am I an aggro player? And the biggest thing for me is knowing what the other team does, like the, the things that they do too much. Yeah. They repeat a lot. Okay. So I just focus on punishing the, all those things. So I watch a lot of bots. Even that I'm an aggro player, I watch those bots so I understand what I need to do so I get those entries. So, so the really the answer is for the kids out there that want to grow up to be yeah. just like Loban is VOD review, grind hard, yeah. and display it in the performance. Like the basic thing to say, but it, it just it, it is the, the thing you need to do. Absolutely. Work hard. It pays uh, off. Thank you so yeah, much sure for the interview. Thank you. We really do appreciate it. Yeah, and once appreciate. again, congratulations Thank on you. the win. For those of you at home, just a little recap in terms of how this map went. It was, well, how the series went. It was a 2-1 performance and win for Lowe's. And that actually gives them as well some couple of points here on the board as well, which is exactly what they need. Yeah, I mean, you need points. Everybody needs points, especially at this late into the tournament. You need them.
And especially for Scars, at least coming out with one, it's not great, but it is better than nothing. Obviously, they still have a chance to push through, but they got to be winning these games. But again, hats off to Los. I mean, we just talked to Lobin, 34 and 19, 123 rating. He's an animal. He absolutely was. I mean, he popped off today. We saw so many other players as well in this third map pop off for Los. We saw Maya doing really, really well. We saw Dash have some great yep. kills as well coming through here. So some fantastic stat lines coming through from Los. Unfortunate for Scars, I think they just weren't in it at the start of that game. You know, we started to see some rounds towards the end there, but it just felt like there were a lot of mistakes being made in those first couple of rounds that just didn't let them get going. And, you know, we talk about Oregon's being a defender side of map. Obviously, you know, you got to attack base, you got to attack dorms. Those are tough uh, bomb sites yeah. to attack, but you should at least be getting a little bit closer on some of these rounds. You should at least be getting at least a, a couple of entries. And we just were not seeing that from the Scars. Uh, it felt like they kind of pittered out at the end of the series. Yeah, with Scars as well, when we're looking at their performance today, potentially like this being a marathon rather than a sprint seems to be dragging them out a little. Yeah, I mean, it was looking like a marathon from the first two matches, mm -hmm. and then the last bit, it just, the marathon ended right there. I don't know if they got exhausted. I don't know. I mean, I, I said I was kind of worried. Welcome back to the B stream here at Six Invitational 2024, live from Brazil. I'm Dez, and this is not Tim. This is Lynx. How's it going, buddy? I there's just one lowercase name in your name. That's really funny. I'm Where? doing very. Where? What were you on about? There, so they just changed it. You was just it was oh. Desert. Oh, I see. It's like the because that's how like Pikachu sounds like Pikachu. Ooh, that's a good point. I didn't think about that. Is that that's where it comes from, isn't it? Because the ah uh, ah uh, ah, uh, that's clever. Anyway, we have. I'm glad uh, you realized this after <laughs> you know a couple of years now of really working alongside one another. Ah, uh, reading's hard. But anyway, we have a very exciting game coming up, specifically because of well, two things. One, bleeds. I don't. I don't want to say overperformance, but you know, bleeds very soft performance. And M80 having a rough time so far. Of course, take a look at the schedule. We have had quite a few barn burners on this stream. Even the DZ Fear X game, Des. Oh, man. DZ just barely clinching map number one. I cast it earlier on with Stokes, 8-6 on first map. They were up 3-1 at one point, Fear X, where it was a really, really good series. Just a shame the second game didn't quite go anywhere near according to plan for Fear X. But yes, this game coming up in a moment, lead versus M80. As you say, there are so many stories to it, and we'll get into that when it comes round to it. In fact, let's take a look at the standings for this group, because I think that's really going to illustrate to you these key things that are worth highlighting. First and foremost, M80 at the moment still have zero points because Liquid in their last series took a single map, they move on to five. That means even if M80 win 2-0, they still can't catch Team Liquid. Equally, for Bleed, if they win this series 2-0 and go on tomorrow to win 2-0, they could be top of the group because W7M do not play and it's Virtus Pro that face off against Bleed tomorrow. So really for both of these teams, it can literally be the highest highs or the lowest of lows that is why this series is so important. Even if M80 get a single map and take a single point, it gives them a chance to still take the spot from Liquid tomorrow. But that's a big if, given Liquid have just pulled out a blinder of a show against W7M. And also the chaos of this group really is in no small part because of the shockingly, I suppose, less dominant performance of W7M. They might still be topping the group, but a lot of us expected it to be pretty easy all, all the way through. Maybe they'll, maybe a map loss to Liquid here or there, maybe a loss to VP, but losing a series and dropping quite a few maps has really thrown everything out of whack for this group because of W7M's performance. And one of the, if not the first team to really give W7M a run for their money in terms of series longevity was Bleed with their 7-5 victory over them on Oregon just a couple days ago. Yes, and Oregon's been a strong map for them. Two wins overall so far, but you saw the names on the screen just there a second ago. The real kind of sharp, pointy ones on this team to raise are oh, Mr. Reaps. Here's your team on screen and Turdster. The only two players that currently stand positive on KD, but don't let that fool you. Mentalist has had a brilliant game. Hoven was on 15 plus kills in one of the maps the other day as well. There is still tons of potential in the other three players. And if you're going to deliver, it's probably going to be against the team that's at the bottom of the group. It has to be. And especially because when Bleed were in Atlanta, this was the first team they ended up beating to start their very shocking run in the Swiss stage was M80 on bank in regulation, if I recall correctly. And M80's struggles, they were present in Copenhagen when they went out 1-3. They were present in Atlanta when they went down 0-3 in the groups to be eliminated. And here at SI24, the team that we continuously hoist 
lofty expectations upon because of the potential this roster seems to have, not only with Spoit, the biggest name, but the Brazilian duo, Gomez and Diaz Lucas, bringing in Yaga, the highest rated player in the NAL when he was on OXG in stage two. Despite all of that, something is not clicking and at every international event this year, it has always, always faltered. It has. It has been a battle, is the only way I can really summarize for them, and definitely falling way short of expectations. These maps are spicy ones. For two main statements I'll leave you with. M80 picking Consulate, they have never won this map. Bleed picking Oregon, they've never lost this map. It's not looking good already on paper when you stack things up that way. And I'm already nervous for the American side that they may have just written themselves into a 2-0 loss. And, and then we have Chalet as the third map, which, sure, it might not have that weird little contradiction that the first two have, but it's still Chalet. You're simplifying things for Bleed, and for M80, simplifying the game hasn't always been to their strength. I mean, we're still trying to figure out at international events what M80 strengths really are. It's not their team play necessarily. It's not the individual skill, despite the immense potential this roster has. At the biggest tournament of the year, our questions are still fundamental ones. We have left over from Copenhagen almost a year ago, yes. whereas Bleed has very quickly captured the hearts and minds of a lot of viewers at home. And I have to say, despite the popularity, I wouldn't be shocked if we see a bit closer of a social prediction than we might otherwise I'm would curious, have. I'm curious, because obviously these stats and everything we just shared with you really do start oh! things towards Bleed. And most of you at home seem to agree. I'd love to know where all the points are going in the channel right now, because this is going to disappoint Think and break hearts one way or the other. Imagine you're just a viewer watching stage one of Rainbow Six last year. You've just seen Bleed miss out on Copenhagen, M80 qualify via the NAL all the way to phase two. And you showed them this social prediction that not only is Bleed slightly favored in the community poll, but that it's probably a well-placed faith in Bleed as well. That we're, we see that and go, yeah, honestly, that makes sense. We don't have a lot of questions. It's like, honestly, because of M80's continuously poor performance from event to event outside of North America, I get Bleed being 54% favorite, and I think Bleed have a very good shot to win this series. I completely agree. And just to reiterate everything for you here, this could be our first team going home from the six Invitational 2024. M80 could be going out on day four. Every other group will take tomorrow's games to deduce which team goes. I don't think it feels like a good accolade given the, the memes about them over the last year that M80 would be going home ahead of Fear X. It is not going to be a good look. Let's get into it though and see if the North American side can redeem themselves. This could very much be their swan song. Bands flying on through, though, to KB. Seen this band an awful lot across the competition. Monty is a really interesting band because we've seen, I'd say, him in equal measure alongside things like the Blitz, been very, very popular, and Fenrir and Solis. We have talked these operators to death. Things like Azami, the Valkyrie, the Tuberal all step up as big operators, too. You can't get rid of them all. And these two teams have opted for Solus and Fenrir. At this point, the deciding factor, it seems like, is if you're going to ban any of those big ops, all right, let's take Solus off the board because... The attacking team would very much appreciate uh, actually being able to use the prep phase and drone mm. out. But then the secondary band with that other defense, it's like, all right, do teams want to play more of... If they're playing a very small map like Consulate is, they probably want to ban the Fender, where so many doorways and tight hallways. If you walk into an f knot that you weren't able to clear earlier, it could completely throw off your entire take. But if you have a wider open map, or one where holding specific portions of the map are very, very important, teams might instead focus on the Azami to take down, which Azami, again, very powerful here, but on maps like Bank, like Chalet, where those extensions are really, really strong, you might focus on that instead of the Fenrir, where wider open spaces make it a bit easier to deal with those f knots. Alrighty, well here we go. Round one is underway, and as you say, we get some interaction from the attackers. I feel like Solus can be very, very anti-siege in many ways. Does stop the attackers really interacting during that prep phase, but here things are relatively undisturbed and can get themselves moving. The comp coming out of bleed just feel very old school. Air quotes. Not really seeing the Azami, for example, that many teams have employed to help hold out towards the break room on the right-hand side of this map, which makes holding the central hallway all that much easier. Instead, I've gone into a very, very dug-in comp. I'm looking at the Goya, I'm looking at the smoke, I'm looking at the water, the Kai, the frost, everything just screams. We don't want to let you in. No. And on a map like Consulate, that really is the name of the game. It can be very hard to take map control by just holding angles outside the building, cutting off players, because a lot of those exterior windows just end up 
ending at a wall right in front of your face. So you often have to take map control physically inside of the map with an entry. Like Spoit, you would hope, if he wants to channel some of those big moments of his career, moving actually through the map to secure forward positions for M80. But if Bleed, who... I don't know if you know this. They have a bit of an aggressive tendency, specifically on the defense. <laughs> a team from APAC? I know. I, no. A team with Reaps 96 who plays on 3,200 DPI? Surely not. <laughs> Does he really? Yeah, something like that. But if Bleed decide to even just hold a bit of control, not necessarily take gunfights, but if Hoven wants to hold top Visa for, I don't know, half the round or so, you could end up having those Vulcan packs, those toxic canisters, burn the rest of M80's time away from them. As it stands, they've very much grouped themselves on the east side of the building, starting inside of Admin. You can see the outlines on your screen here. Three players all grouped up, and a couple more supporting on the north and the south side. So they really want to make this east side push work. It will be a little bit easier without the Azami to play against. Iconic's in underneath, and almost finding himself one. It's Reaps actually under threat, but twice now has missed the kill shot. And Reaps walks away on 40 HP. I will see the one benefit of that frag grenade change is this tournament, it really seems like the use of buck from below to drive enemies out of positions. It was already semi-common. Now it's really seen a resurgence mm. as the main method to deal damage or apply pressure to enemy defenders from below. And it's pushed Hoven back quite a bit into the waiting arms of Yaga, who has, of course, put those track stingers down in front of them to control the swing, but can also catch anybody rotating up aggressively. It's taken two minutes, but MAT, I've got control of that central hallway. No warden on side to catch the fire firebolt flying out of Gomez, it'll be the same story for any other utility that might come on through. Pretty much every nade used though, Yogg is in, the globals are coming now, and M80 is starting to take scalps on the other side. The first two fall and bleed, very passive on this defense, are bleeding themselves dry with very little bat to offer on the other side. But we spoke about Reaps, we spoke about Tur, the top two rated players on this team, they still stand. One more falls, a great first round. Coming out from M80, a good vertical angle for Tur, but misses his chance to find his man. All five players still up for M80, and it feels like it's going to be a round close. Oh, yeah. I mean, unless Mentalist can somehow channel all of that Oregon against W7M in this one particular round, a 1v5 is in all likelihood not going to happen. He's got intel on one player. Might be able to turn this into a 1v3, nice. but no, that's not going to happen. I have to say, one of the strongest M80 rounds we've probably seen at this tournament because the game plan is, all right, we've identified players holding forward positions, one holding top visa, one holding the long a desk on top spiral. If we can send someone up those spiral stairs, we'll also have Spoit applying pressure from the front. If they rotate back, you both can swing. If they try to get aggressive, Yaga can cut them off and maybe Spoit can get his trade. It's a very good first step, push them back, second step, pinch them, Defenders and a very, body. very well thought out take there, especially when you consider that added dimension of Iconic down below on that buck, adding a whole different bout of pressure underneath. In a game where we're really worried M80 might go home at the end of it, mm -hmm. you want to see that kind of very strong, well thought out round to start. That's exactly what we were delivered. I'm just curious to go and dig into the stat chat because I swear I remember it was Stokes earlier saying that on this map, the top floor is terrible for defenders. It is indeed coming into this game, 33% defensive Ooh. win rate. Truthfully, I don't think the numbers really kind of lay out how that round went through. M80 was slow and composed, but got the job done at the very end. My only real complaint towards Bleed was they gave up so much ground for free. Great Wall, for example, was electrified. They had shields down in the central hallway, but really brought nothing to actually protect it and made no effort to stall and drag the round out any further. So it was very much in M80's hands to dictate the pace, what happened where, what engagements were taken and Bleed were more onlookers than active participants, but I think that might change in this round. Seeing the army on side that I oh, called yeah. for last time round will mean getting more active and round more dynamic defenses throughout the map. Not only that, but you also have the introduction of the Mute and the Mozzie in this round, so delaying the ability for M80 to find intel and actually push those players back that are holding positions right up at the forefront of the attack. This should be a much better con... Uh, contest between the two because as before it was all focused on making sure M80 couldn't get walls. If they take too long to execute, you have the smoke, you have the Vulcans but if M80 win the round in the early to mid game, then all that utility isn't going to come into play. Now, they've reallocated their resources to the front end of the round, of course at the cost of the breach as M80 now have very quickly opened up that garage wall. Iconic just sending his way on in. DS Lucas is the one that finds the first kill of this round. Hubbin still trying to hold out as mental as his teammate falls Iconic soon after. Them. He's walking in through Always literally the back of sight, and Hoven's gonna go down at the back of sight too. It's all crumbling around them. That's 60 seconds in, you've got M80 flooding in towards the site, and bleed half the players are simply nowhere to be seen. Stepping around for one more, a great flick from Diaz onto, onto Reaps, and this is gonna be another strong round, even stronger, you would argue, is it's a flawless coming out.
and Bleed simply have not got out the starting gates yet. M80, that round was twice as quick and twice as lethal. And I'm sitting here thinking, where has this M80 been the whole tournament? Like, where has this been not only able to get decisive victories, but to have a really slow, methodical, calm take in round one? Push those Bleed players back, pinch them, win the round off of it. Round two... Complete change of pace, open up the garage wall, have Iconic flood down spiral stairs once they find a gap. Have Dias Lucas applying pressure on the front side as well. So bleeders and the defenders in sight are left to wonder where the hell is even this bit of action coming from? Where am I even supposed to play and contest what's going on? M80 completely changed the pace in round two and results in two very solid round wins showing completely different play styles from the attack. We've had some, some super weird maps this tournament. Like, overall, of course, the sentiment and the evidence suggests that we are in a very defender-sided meta. Some maps, I think it was Sky and Club pushing over 70% on a defender win rate right now. It's the craziest we have ever seen. But some maps, you come into it, and you just see an absolute stomp from the attacking side. And it's not always down to one team is just light years better than the other in terms of overall standing. They're actually quite comparable to one another. Ultimately, these are the 20 best teams in the world. It just looks strange when either the defenders are a little bit asleep or the attackers are really on it on the day. And I think you're seeing both of those things come into light in this game. M80 have come out playing as a team. Their timing is looking good. The bleed are not putting up a fight. They're letting M80 take ground without any kind of cost. I think if we see a similar dominant round from M80, we're going to have to have a tactical timeout for bleed because Agreed. in two rounds so far, Sure, round one wasn't a flawless, mentalist got a kill, but he got that kill once the round was already a 1v5. It was basically as flawless as you could get. Bleed have not... Saying they struggled to gain ground would honestly be an understatement. It doesn't even seem like they have ground half the time. It's just M80s waiting to be taken. Here we see them go back to the top floor, and there is that buck presence again from M80 that started that push to begin mm. with. Also, Yaga going back on the gridlock. So they have options to return to that style of play, but if they want to go faster like they did in round two, maybe we'll see some Amaru action from Gomez flying into CEO once they have the necessary control. So with Iconic down below, you know that Skeleton Key is going to cause issues for bleed at some point in this round. I've been watching the top down of bleed for a while now, and the players have barely moved their feet. All we've really seen is Turst to move from the main hallway back in towards sites itself. He's playing on the Valkyrie, but of course the Black Eye is now being brought along. One still in back pocket, which is interesting. And I'm thinking that information doesn't really feel like it's the problem, boys. I'm not going to lie to you. It's more being able to put up active resistance against M80. Because Spoit has walked his way all the way up yellow, for example, and just taken large parts of the map like, are they going to push me? Are they just going to stand still? And the answer for the most part has been, yeah, we are going to stand still. Now at the top of Spiral, just <laughs> domed Aspie. That's the boy we remember. Can't quite find the second mentalist into another. Doesn't respect the trade coming in from Gomez. And elsewhere, Yoga's cleaning up too. It's just all falling again in the favor of M80. Reach bringing one back. The top two rated players for this team left in a two versus three. Terza goes down. Brilliant flash play coming Jesus. out from M80. And they are bowling over the Apex side right now. Reach with it all to do. Reap's got to walk back up as DS Lucas is putting the bomb down. Gomez, the only one who might be an easy pickup for Reap's, depending on what he finds. He's got that toxic chance to maybe do a lot of stuff back in the side. What am I even saying? It's an M80 round through and through. 3 and 0 oh right now on Consulate Attack. And again, you see them playing on that top floor, and you're expecting, okay, you got trounced round one. Maybe we'll see some changes. Maybe the introduction of the Azami, maybe a couple different operators to get a bit more active. And no, it's pretty much the same setup we saw before all the players holding the exact same positions m80 droning out and are like really guys we're not tweaking anything really uh nope all right well we won't even give you the respect we did in round one we'll just flood in from spiral stairs into the site while we're communicating playing trades so on and so forth and the trades don't even matter because it's a 4v2 about five seconds into when m80 give the call truthfully links I need to fess up I didn't, I didn't give you the full truth in the pregame. Yes, I was correct in saying that M80 have never won this map. But what I didn't tell you is they only played it once. <laughs> and that was against DZ back I, in Atlanta. I casted that game. Yeah, exactly. You remembered it. It was 7-5 to DZ back then. Either way, that does suggest it has very much been outside their wheelhouse. It's not been a map that they've enjoyed stepping into, whereas Bleed beat Cyclops twice in Atlanta and then lost 7-2 to SSG. So able to be a hometown, or it's a hometown, home region, I guess you could call the team, but not quite able to do so on the international stage. And really what I think you're seeing here is M80 saying that one, Matt, right off, bleed, showing that weakness that maybe we saw against SSG. 
and again, if you if we're gonna see M80 at their exactly. most confident, their most comfortable at any point in this series, you would hope it would be map number one, their map pick of consulate. So seeing this here, it's exactly what we hope for. They're coming out of the gate strong on a map that they feel extremely prepped on. And now it's bleed after that tactical timeout. Just talk things over, calm down, rethink, retool, and re-up for round four. We're going all the way down to the basement again. They don't want to try out that CEO bomb yeah, site a, a third time. Definitely stuck a bit to the trend of it being very five poor for the defense me. so far. But I want to see what they end up holding. Are we going to see four and five players Jaggers on the bottom floor? The Azami playing very passively. Players afraid to take gunfights and just being run over by M80? Or are we going to see players instead try to get a bit more in the face of the attack up top? Well, that's what I think the game plan was because you saw an Asfi out on the roam. He was up on top floor, for example, and I was like, good, you're getting off site. You're looking to cause a bit of trouble. The problem is on the other side of things, M80 have read into that and thought, you know what? What are they probably going to be talking about here? They've been really passive. They've not challenged us anywhere on the map. Chances are they want to get out in the map and challenge us. How can we deal with that? Let's bring the Jackal, deal with the Romers, and Spoit jump straight onto that. So it's a good read from M80, I think, about the changes they anticipate seeing in the round, even without seeing these players off about around the map. And they've also showed good respect to the Valkyrie by bringing along the IQ. So they should be able to deal with any Romers, force them back to site, and play out the round in a similar sense to what we saw in the first three. Good stuff from M80. You can also see Reaps thinking about getting a bit more aggressive, sitting at that front door. We saw the outline of him right as Gomez was trying to fake out that drone push outside of that small arch cubby. The rest of M80 down outside the breach right now. Is this going to be another quick one once they open up this wall? He's yet to make too much progress, aside from some small holes opened up. Likely just created to throw some utility inside of the site. Not many frag grenades on the board, but there are some flashes and smokes to burn things as they need. Hubbin trying his best to hold on to both the yellow hallway and apply Kibas to the breach at the moment. Once mm. that exothermic goes off, there will be a very, very big hole to allow M80 the way in. But for a good point for bleed at the moment, there's no iconic running down spiral stairs. It seems M80 are willing to dial the pace back this round. I mean, look, even Spoit's out here expecting to find a Roma, at least one that's been there recently, but... Long ago, Asi was back down towards site, so he's going to have no such joy. It again gives M80 the run of the map. The main thing to watch out for, I suppose, is Turd on that lesion. Last time around, we saw Iconic just walk his way down Spiral, shoot a couple of people in the back, and the round was done. Here, it won't be so simple when there's goo mines to impede you and that information being fed across the team. In fact, there we go. Gomez has just walked straight into one. Ironically, one of the operators you'd not expect to be walking into those. But has done. Yogg finds the entry. I'm pretty sure that is every round that we've seen M80 get the entry. I'm pretty sure as well. But even with that 5e4, while M80 could play trades on the execute, the longer they take to actually mount this, the more players like M80, or not M80, Mentalist or Asfi or Turd could provide obstacles oh. for M80. There's a fourth Good. one I wasn't thinking about. Reaps has retaken up yellow because of that Kiva barricade, cut down Spoit on yellow stairs, and now... M80's entry into the bomb site's really unclear. There are bleed players that can watch almost every entrance they can think of. I'm just like, finally, bleed have grown some balls and actually going to challenge <laughs> M80 by pushing into them. So it's good to see that coming out. A C4 coming over the top. Yogg just about dodging away and narrowly missing the head of his opposite man. Sees him, turd going low. It's a one for one back between the two sides, but M80 still come out on top. Reaps is down. Aspie's all alone. Zero and three might be about to become zero and four. They know where he is. He's getting pinged out and he is dead to right. But Dega is ecstatic. As he should be, the timeout not working whatsoever. Whatsoever for Bleed. Sure, maybe not a flawless round, but while M80 take a long time to get things done, initially just probing for information, then sending Spoid upstairs in the Jackal, going for that full clear and seeing are there any roamers still left up on this top and middle floor. They go for some soft destruction, and then with low time remaining, Yog Yaga says, all right, I've taken down somebody close. We know Roots has got aggressive on yellow stairs. That means there's probably one player inside of the site and maybe two on the backside. So let's flood all the way down through that back while well, I... Yaga, sit on the breach and catch anybody trying to rotate or who's displaced by those oncoming attackers. And if the gunfights go M80's way, which they end up doing, they have cleared out the entirety of the back of the bomb site and have only the remaining defenders stuck between the breach and the back to deal with. Alrighty, well, maybe M80 aren't quite as cursed as we all thought they might be coming into this. A reminder, they were on zero points. They're taking no maps. They'd achieved absolutely nothing except defeats at this competition. But are well on their way towards a first map win already. A reminder, again, that this is their map pick coming into it. We were a little bit nervous. They haven't played it a whole lot, but it turns out it was well hid. And they definitely know 
what they're doing on it. But again, I will come back to Bleed not really being the most proactive. We haven't seen them getting out in the map. We haven't seen them challenging M82 to contest ground. The lineup in this round, I feel like, at least suggests towards it. They've got a couple of, well, three C4s to play behind the pulse. They've got traps set up around the map from Hoven. They've got that Azami and the Legion on side again. So it's much more active in terms of the defense and what they're bringing doesn't mean they're going to win the round. It doesn't, but if they want to, if M80 decide to go for vertical control and are heavily uh, based on the second floor, you can have that pulse down below, giving calls to Hoven or Reaps to see four players going for vertical destruction on the second floor. Vice versa, if you have a more direct take and nobody is really pushing down below, you can have someone from Bleed, like the Pulse and Capcan, instead go down below to try and help any retake attempt or stop anybody from putting the bomb down inside of the first floor. Of course, Yaga is down there right now. I imagine trying to deny a very similar position. Make sure that Pulse or anybody with a C4 doesn't have the freedom to stop that plant once it starts going down. Man, these M80 attacks have been so quick to get players like Gomez into these positions right outside the bomb site, either in front, behind, or beside the defenders, but this time he spotted. Asfi's able to cut him down, and that's a great find because if Gomez was left to fester in that position, I have to imagine M80 would have stormed into the bomb site. And it's the second round in a row that we've seen Bleed get, en get an entry, so they are starting to at least get more involved in a round. It doesn't mean they're winning them, but at least more involved. It may prove to be too little too late, but for now, we're in a pretty good spot with Iconic with the Fuser in hand, ready to go, but didn't realize they were still being challenged on the downstairs. Really there. I think Interlis should walk away with at least a single kill, at least a way of disrupting this push. They're going chasing after him, but no drones out on field. There's five on the field, but they've got no idea where Turd is. What's going on? He's just completely wrapped around. The other two players decided to double up, play it safely. Now they found now him they on the know. Jackal. Oh, they're going hunting. They smell blood in the water. Three different players all drop down to the bottom floor. They know <laughs> they need this kill to bring it back, make it a 4v4. There's also the worry if Turd is able to survive just a little bit longer. He'll waste a lot of time, but through the wall, Iconic finds the pulse. Spoy and Yaga as well, both on low HP, but they spent enough time to both get that kill and still have 45 seconds to open up more angles on the bomb site and maybe pressure some of these anchors. Don't think it's going to be enough time wasted is the problem. Reeks finding one more just take away some of the bite on the other side but Yaga's got those gadgets out. They're being put to good use. So shortly here you'll see a push forward. You'll see the team march on but Diaz has gone down as well. A Hail Mary coming in from Iconic into the smoke straight into the back corner. But being stared at by that bulletproof will only mean these verticals hurt. He finds one. Getting swung on by another, but he's got it all to do. And the cover has to be here from Yogg. It's simply not going to happen. Yogg with nothing else to do but stare at that clock as we get into the last 10 seconds. Bleed will finally get on the board here, Carter. Yeah, I, I love that call from Bleed as well. Actually, <laughs> coincidentally, talking about the consulate match between M80 and DZ. M80 were running a very similar strategy to what Bleed were just doing, except a little bit different. I'll explain how. So instead of really having, you did have the pulse down below, but instead of having a huge pres presence inside the basement to allow for any C4s from below, instead, Bleed decided to play a retake strat from up above to say, okay, we've set up all these vertical angles on the floor. One, that means M80 either should clear us out, and that'll force them to waste time, waste utility, or if they don't do it, try to go for a plant in the site, if they haven't cleared us out, we have all those angles available to us. And maybe did something similar, except instead of vertical angles, Solus was unbanned. They used the Specchio from up above to spot the diffuser through the floor and fire bullets through it. But a very good read by Bleed there. They said, okay, if Turd's able to waste a lot of time down below, we can go upstairs and stop the diffuser from ever going down. Not that they had all three floors really in play there. The site in the middle, players up top, players down bottom feeding information. Just gave M80 a bit too much to do. And that probably, again, is the second time in this game that I look at it and think, okay, it's the first time Bleed have shown active resistance. It was Reach pushing up Yellow to get rid of Spoy a couple of rounds ago. Here it was Turn on the downstairs, admittedly missing what really should have been a free kill for his side to really get the round rolling in their favor, but ultimately transpired to wasting about 45 seconds, drawing three or four players downstairs. Ultimately, getting up in M80's face, changing the game plan for them, and not giving them a free ride to a round close is what has won them their first round. If they get a second round here, it, M80 are going to feel well, robbed because really after those first four rounds, you could have so easily seen this half being a 5-0, a 5-1, or a 6-0.
And especially if they if Bleed win this site, I mean, this was the site of some of M80's most dominant victories. Sure, there was never the official flawless like we saw in Basement, but in terms of the, the coordination, the speed, the decisiveness, this was some of M80's best rounds of the attack so far, was on the CEO bomb site on the third defense. We need to see Bleed get in the face more, and I think the introduction of the Azami, the first time we're seeing it on the CEO bomb site in particular, is evidence of that. You have these reinforcements placed further inside of the admin side, Hoven playing much farther up. Reaps with a shotgun playing much farther up. Four different players on this Visa stairs and admin side, whereas before it was what? Maybe it Hoven? Was, it was one player inside of the hallway, everyone else off towards the west, and that was it. It was literally one to two people max on this side. Now, maybe you can say Bleed are over investing a little bit, but I at least like what it represents. They know their problems, they're trying to fix it, and M80 are clearing admin side. They're buying into it. And actively changing the defense as well. Keeper Barrios went up on the window first inside a copy. Now one's gone up inside a break room itself. And yes, M80 are inside. But last time, it was about the two-minute mark when we were down to 60 seconds left. They had full control of the hallway. They aren't even yet inside a break. They're only just opening up that wall and starting to contest into that area. They will probably realize that it's empty. And then you have to start thinking about how we're pushing towards the hallway. Because you've still got the army sat in behind the shield in there, which is another thing to work through. So it's I'm much better, much more active a defense coming out of Bleed. And it's worked M80 down to the final minute. Aspie uses his final Kiba barricade just to apply one little extra bit of annoyance for M80's attack. Even gets away with the rotation, but Bleed have had to vacate a long desk entirely, and Yaka quickly moves in to take that space, but here's Hoven going to contest it. It's a complete mentality shift from that first round, but with that final Candela going out, you have to be careful you don't see too much ground to Yaga, oh. as you've already seen at the opening duel. Don't see too much ground all your life, apparently, but Asfi goes back in for second helpings and pays the price as a result. Reaps finding Gomez here. Reaps having a good half so far. Warned them to it far more than the rest of his team have yet to get over that two kill mark, but I said it only takes a couple of rounds and to really start balancing things out. Reaps is now down. Spoit onto a second within the round. Only two left standing. 15 seconds on the clock, and it's into a two versus two. Mentalist might just find an angle on one. It's only Spoit left alive. He heals himself only a little bit, but Mentalist gone unread. Turd takes the aggro, and Mentalist goes in for the kill. 4-2 half established for Bleed, and maybe M80 is kicking themselves because of unrealized potential, but for us viewers and us fans of Rainbow Six, I think we've got a ball game now. I think, I think for both sides, like you're probably asking, what the hell was that half that we just watched? <laughs> like it's so bizarre coming in that Bleed looks so passive. Like we were joking in the in the pregame about how aggressive they are, about how they love to jump out and get up in people's faces and take gunfights and force teams into Attackers uncomfortable situations. But that was probably the most passive, like, you know, roll over and sort of die in those first four rounds of bleed defensive bomb. half that I think I've ever seen. The the last two definitely better. We remarked on that from the top-down view that we had that we could see. They've moved four players over towards the east. They were actively using the Exami to contest into the attacking team. It took a lot of time. It did get them two rounds, but I'm still a little bit perplexed at what the hell we've just seen for six rounds. I'm hoping the second half delivers some better quality siege, that we see more active play coming out from M80 on the defense, and equally that more players on Bleed start to step up on the attack. I can tell you this much. As a North American who watched Bleed baptize two of our best team, well, <laughs> one of our best teams going into an international event, and then, of course, also trouncing M80 the first day, I'm like, where's Reaps just pre-firing every angle known to existence? Where's Turd screaming about how he's so much better than his opposition? Maybe now that the side is swapped, even though it's a defender-sided tournament, and we'll see Bleed start to pick up that pace and learn some of the lessons of their final defensive round and apply it to their attacking side. A lot of very useful bits of utility they have, specifically those Bs. If you're worried about anybody from M80 doing to you what you just did to them in that last round, getting a B on a close angle, maybe against a shotgun opponent, or just flooding a hallway or the bomb site, you can really make M80 defenders uncomfortable with what that operator can bring. But M80... They might, have, they might avoid them entirely. Look at this setup. Gomez opening up holes from up above, similar to how Bleed did on the first floor bomb site, playing retake on the second here. Take that entire setup, move everything down a floor, because now M80 can look down into the basement itself, and depending if Bleed decide to execute inside a garage, they've got angles to shut it down. What I love about this is, again, you're seeing very different play styles on defense coming out from both teams. Like right now, M80 occupy all three floors of the map. 
They are being really active. They want to control space. They want to force Bleed to have to commit resources or potentially players to get control of particular parts of the map. It's like, oh, good. You got the breach. No problem. We've got every other room. You can't execute while we've got this vertical control here. You're going to have to come and fight us or risk it. You've got no smokes to play behind. So things look a little bit dicey for Bleed. You've got to the kind of like, you can see the end goal, but you're not yet allowed to step across it. We also see a huge rotation from Bleed, a reinvestment over on the tellers and the server side, because not only do we have Hoven lurking down, we've got four to five different players on the side of the map. Everyone from Bleed either droning in this location or actively taking control. So Hoven moving down the Visa stairs. How will M80 react? It seems Gomez, who has dropped down below all the way down to that bottom floor, Hoven's concerned about somebody coming from the back while Gomez has retreated. Bleed seeing the rotation from M80. Mm. Getting concerned that they're running out of time to get something. Aspie now down on the floor. DS Lucas Thank finding guys. one. Sport eyeing a second. Leader now far too spread thin. Not, not knowing where to execute or where to get these kills. Another right idea is there's one spiral stairs. Almost man. runs into all that. Caught reloading as well. Iconic has timed it to perfection and gets away with an absolute freebie. Two players left for bleed. One thing I was going to remark on when I saw it happen, the mozzie that captured one of those drones in mid-round, that was the first drone that had died all round for bleed, which you might look at and go, wow, they keep all their drones alive. Uh, yeah, by not using them. I can't imagine they were really <laughs> invested in hunting down these players of M80 that were scattered around the map. And again, that lethargic nature we saw on defense, I feel, has come across the defense here. They're being shot from angles they aren't expecting. There's no drones going in to feed the players that are trying to march forward. And for M80, they haven't had to get out of first gear yet. This looks far too comfortable. I think, I think the picture can be painted thus. There are two players who have five kills. One of them was Reaps. The other was Mentalist. Everyone else is struggling on the scoreboard. And I think this is one of those cases where the backline player is meeting and facing a lot of the action because these frontline players either are pushing very slowly, losing their gunfights, could be any number of factors. But the bleed we know, the bleed we love is not present at the moment. One issue I've seen in teams like SSG or D plus Kia is spending eight drones and getting nothing from them. So yeah. they only have two in the late round. It's not often you see eight drones alive and still nothing gained by it. No opening pick, no real control, because they try to pressure the front side, see it doesn't work out, and make the call to rotate. Then they rotate, feel they don't have, they can't create an opening, and then what happens after that? Nothing really. Yep. It didn't even seem like there was an attempt made. They got scared at the front, got scared at the back, and then M80 just picked them off one by one. Found it remaining. really quite perplexing, especially when this team is the one that banned away Solus. You'd think there'd be more aggressive use of the drones to collect information and make plays off the back of what's being fed to the rest of the team. Again, it's not the bleed that we've seen and grown to love. Even looking at them on like player cams, for example, I think the reason why many people loved bleed back in Atlanta was they were the fun team. They were laughing. They were joking. In fact, just a couple of days ago when I was watching one of their games, I forget which one it was, but they lost a really close round. And rather than being all downbeat about it, they were just like, oh, we gave it a go. It was funny. They were laughing. They were still joking. That energy was there. I haven't seen that from them in this game. I, I haven't either. And maybe it's one of those cases where with how brutal those opening first four rounds were for Bleed, maybe after that, the mental needs a lot of time to recover. One time that, especially after you've taken your tack pause, you can't often give yourself that time to recover because you have to play the game. Here, at least, Fine. Bleed have tried to open things up. C4 goes out, and I believe that takes off. Yep, takes the second Selma charge, so Mentalist will have to use another one to fully open up that hole. You have Split bomb site, the Tellers and Archives defense. Classic one where you usually have uh, about five to 6,000 C4s <laughs> to yep. play retake from Tellers. Only two actually, and one was used to destroy that Selma. So mm. at least the, you know, the traditional way I think a lot of us feel this bomb site uh, is played. Won't be super applicable here, but we can see kind of the game plan right now with vertical uh, angles to look down below. We saw last round M80 playing up on the top floor. We're seeing it again in this round, and there has been no clear evidence or communication from Bleed that, right, there's a player upstairs, we need him gone. No recognition. Guys, two of you on repels right now. Two of us are on drones. You're going to go and push up Spiral. We're going to get this guy removed. Think about when we saw Turds through in the basement on the pulse, for example, back on Bleed's defense. M80, three players, bam, straight there after him. And yes, it took 45 seconds, but they got their man. Reloading. We're not seeing the same coming out of the other side. And I keep on harping on about it. I keep ragging on a Bleed because we've seen better. We know they can be better. I don't know if it's a map thing or what, 
but this is not the bleed we are used to seeing. And it's one of those cases. He's still here. Like, like, he hasn't exactly. Moved. And it's one of those cases where even if the problem solving and the priority and the prioritization wasn't good like it is right now, at least they were taking fights. At least they were trying to shoot people. Now, it literally feels like we're not watching bleed because there's no aggression, no confidence, and even with that lack of structure, there's nothing to compensate for it. It's 50 seconds of... I don't know, Mentalist taking some damage and DS Lucas being dealt some. So we know Bleed are at least making some theoretical process in pressuring that basement bomb site. Asfi's even made his way in. He's mm. planning inside of Tellers. Does anybody from M80 realize this? Surely. For all the flack we were giving them, Ooh. there we go. Spoit, that player you were begging them to deal with. Well, guess what he just did? Deny the plan. He's been in basically the same spot for the last two minutes and unmoved the whole time. Turn at least get something. Gomez goes down. Finally, Spoit has been dismantled and they get away with the plan. Yogg going to do what he can here. Try and get the kills, but it's simply not going to happen. Bleed do get the close, but my God, was it frustrating to watch. It's one of those 4v1, it's one of those 4v1 rounds or very strong wins where I'm like, yeah, but... It didn't feel I, like a win. Yeah, how much did, how much did you really earn that from yeah. your play? You won the gunfights. I'll give you that. And you also recognize that you might be able to get away with the plant and tellers. Those are certainly positives in Bleed's column, and I will not take that away from them. But one of those plants was stopped by a guy who was growing moss from the amount of time he was sitting inside of Admin, waiting for you to plant in the very position you ended up attempting a plant. So... I'll give it. I'll give credit where credit's due. Bleed, you recognized a priority, and while you did end up dropping a body to Spoit, because of the advantage you gained, we saw, I believe, Mentalist quickly realize what was going on, run up the stairs, take him down, round done after that. But still, it was M80's game, through and through, until some very sudden changes of pace got Bleed around in the end. So while there were some positives, mm. you need to see more. We need to see more than that. We do. Coming into round nine, this is the round that me and Tim always talk about in our broadcast. It's that deciding round for me to where the pendulum is going to sing. If M80 win it, they'll go up to six and three. They've got three bites of the cherry. They can play three different sites to get that one round they need to close the map out. That's a lot of breathing room. If Bleed win it, we're at five and four. You've got a one round advantage and suddenly the momentum shifts massively towards Bleed. So this one is really important. The run out comes through and that's Reap's gone. Starboy of the map is offline. Great run out from Bleed. I'm, oh, sorry, that was M80 that got that run out. You know, I saw that saw that great... Oh, boy, <laughs> yeah, saw that great aggression, Des, and I thought, oh, maybe it's Bleed on the defense, but no. That characteristic play is being done more by their opposition than Bleed themselves. Just frustrated again, because I'm like, you know, you should be anticipating these things. You should be anticipating C4s coming singing your way. You should be getting more than three people into the building, or be, have more than three left, two left alive when you've been 40 seconds into the round so far. Not even to get a chance to use the Candelas at this rate. They had so much gadgetry on side. The E1Ds are there for Reaps, but players have just been removed. And it, again, it seems like no bother at all to M80. And I would be very surprised if they don't just cruise onto a map win in the next round. Des, if I took away all the player names and the team names, and I told you one of these teams beat Liquid, and one of these teams doesn't have a win, which one would you say was which? You would absolutely invert it based on the play today, Carter. Yeah, you'd think M80, with the confidence they have, have the wind in their sails, but nope. Instead, it's Bleed, who are not last in this group, playing like they have everything to lose. Oven will use two of those Candelas, but there's nothing gained off of it. Just trying to force M80 out of position, maybe beta kill. I understand it in this particular spot. If you go charging on in, they can just play the trades and win the round. So I don't envy Hoven or Turret's position in this particular instance. I don't think they're necessarily doing anything incorrectly. It's just the damage is done by the very confident play from M80 early on. Hoven, who's still sitting on this rappel. Maybe you'll join Turd on Yellow Stairs and try and find an honorable death in round nine. They're doing their best, but I'm with you. Once you've lost three of your five players inside 40 seconds, that round is basically a write-off. No utility left to play behind except the smoke and the single flash. In all those Candelas used and deployed, there is still the Warden available on the other side. There is still a C4 <laughs> to play behind. Just, it's a write-off. It's just a very slow write-off. I appreciate the, uh, I appreciate the... Text chat from Turret. At least it seems like he might be in good spirits. He's just begging for M80 to give him a kill. Well, ES gave Hoven some bullets. I not not really an even trade, unfortunately. But I suppose there we go. He got his one. There, Turret does indeed find his one. But M80 finds one round that get them to match point six three, which is a much wider stat line than five and four. If Bleed had ended up winning this round, and. <laughs> <laughs> 
Yeah. Sorry, just saying thanks. Thanks, Yog Dog. Shout out to Yaga. But, I mean, without attack timeout at this point, Bleed are going to have to figure out their issues entirely in this round. And we've done a lot of ragging on Bleed. We've done a lot of ragging on Bleed. And I, I, I think barely so. No, no. I'm not saying unfairly. I think it's perfectly fair. But you know what? I'm going to take the entirety of this just to give credit to M80 because they have not won a single map. SI24. They didn't win a single series in Atlanta. They only won one in Copenhagen. And what is happening? They are playing this map, their choice of consulate, like they have every reason to win this tournament. Like they have every reason to top this group, make it far. They're playing like winners. They're playing like confident players. And what do confident players do? They go for runouts if they feel they're well informed. They see someone on repel and they say, hey, you got a C4, I've got intel. Why don't we, you know, meet up and make something happen out of this? That's exactly what M80 are doing. They're doing it successfully. And we were talking about what might happen if Bleed win 2-0. If Bleed keep playing like this, I'll be shocked if they get next map. I completely with you. Totally agree on that front. My only fear is that Oregon, again, is an undefeated map for Bleed. They have True. won I think, the last six times they've played in it since their inception in March last year. So it is a strong map for them, but on the day, it doesn't matter if they're not playing at their normal mm, level that we've seen throughout the competition so far. And yes, all the praise for M80, but for me, if you haven't really got an opponent to play against, you can look like a world champion just by doing the most basic things of getting in and shooting people. So we'll see how this round closes out, but I'm pretty sure we all have an expectation, and I'll be shocked. I'll tell you what I can't wait to see, the uh, chat prediction or the social prediction after this game going into map <laughs> two, what the swing is, because there were 54% going to bleed with this one. Yeah, I, I would not be shocked if after this we see maybe even M80 pushing into the 60 percentages, up from 46 up into maybe like 62, something like that. Not, not a mathematician, but I can tell you just from the eye test and vibes, M80 have my vote for map two, even if it's a close affair. Hubbin made his way into the building. Reaps as well, to, to their credit, very, very quickly. Again, a scattered push at the moment. They found intel on Yaga, and we think to ourselves, okay, we found a player. He's going to be running around now, but you at least have an idea, and you pushed him down below. So maybe you can't pinch him, but now all five players back on the bomb site for M80. So now middle floor, the top floor, it's free for the taking for bleed, and they still have seven drones, and there you go. They recognize the opportunity. Reaps will now start getting in a position to use the skeleton key. Mm. Sure, he's taking a lot of damage, Dez, but we're at least making progress in good time. We are, and the key thing here is they've got the vertical control. That wasn't in their hands last time, if you remember. They basically seeded the entire map to M80, and we're like, oh, we've got ten drones oh. left. What do we do? Now the vertical control is gone because the book has been taken out, and now it's kind of back to not so much square one, but it means moving a player or two into his place. And immediately it's going to be Asfi and Hoven stepping in towards the spot. Of course, got the uh, ITA in the back pocket of the Jackal as well to take over the responsibilities of the book. Admittedly, not quite as good, but can still do as many things as required. We're into that last 60 seconds, though, and not seeing too much significant movement yet. No, and with a 5v4, M80 fully holding the bomb site. DS Lucas might still have evil eyes. Iconic doesn't have any more Kibas, but... You just turn around there like, are they here? Like, uh, hello? <laughs> like, like, where are these guys coming from? And at this point, M80 just need to wait. Whether Bleed flood in from yellow or even get that opportunity, M80 are doming them across the entire bomb site at this point. Des, I have a feeling this is going M80's way in the next 30. It feels like it. At least Hoven finding himself put onto his backside as well. Really thought they'd find the Maestro there for a second, but Diaz remains completely healthy for now. Asfi playing on the upstairs. It's got the right sort of idea, but it's about the step forward. We really need, or he needs, those defenders to come forward so we can find them because as it stands, he's got no way of seeing them. It's a great shot from the bat by Mentalist at the very least. They should be able to get the Jackal up as well. It's all on Mentalist and all on Hoven to push in here, and Gomez is ready for the drop. He's just waiting. He's got a goo mine kill on the Hoven of all things. And in one fell swoop, M80 take their pick and barely break a sweat. Well. Wow. If that was a way to re-inspire confidence in this M80 squad, that they might just have a shot at making it to our bracket stage. Man, I don't know if you could have concocted something better aside from just a straight up 7-0. I am totally with you. The thing is... <laughs> You remind me of Tim. You're very optimistic. <laughs> I can understand you about M80. It'd be great to see them playing well. Like, you know, Sport is one of my favorite players. I love seeing these guys when they play well. The problem is that hasn't really been the thing. And even though you're looking at this and going, well, they've just won seven three days. They've just played really well. Uh, they have, but like I said during the game, they've done the basics. There wasn't really an opponent there for them to fight against because for half of it, 
bleed just were not present. A lot of the fundamentals were missing. They were giving up vertical control and never challenging Spoit for two minutes, despite him being sat there the entire time. The irony is, they won that round. I just... I can't see any rhyme or reason to why Bleed are playing the way they do on a map that they've picked going into it. And M80, <laughs> I feel really harsh in saying this. I don't want to put praise on them for beating an opponent that is not playing Siege the way that it should be played right now. They do not look like a team that deserves to be at SI. Not M80, Bleed this is what I'm talking about. If they play like that again, they deserve to be under threat tomorrow. I mean, to be fair, we have Oregon coming up, which as you talked about, they're flawless, or not flawless on it, but no, flawless, right? They are, haven't lost on it. Well, I mean, 8-0 on it, and it beat W7M on it. You'd hope, of all the maps they could have potentially chosen of the nine, Oregon coming up next would be it. But before we answer that question, we have a quick break, so don't go anywhere. We'll be right back. Cost them a little bit, so this time, get that a little bit smoother. Get that wall cleared off, and, and don't burn too much utility on it. Yeah, most definitely. And speaking of utility, I mean, look at the Sonic's lineup right now. Three hard breachers as well as Citizen on the Rotero drones and nine flirting with death a little bit. But I respect it. I respect it wholeheartedly. Trying to see if we can get some early influence here and potentially get a big kill. So this end with a cheeky drone hold there. That's a smart cover. Not a thing a lot of people think about, especially when it comes to that uh, strip area of the map. These little drone holes can actually be a big nuisance. I've died to those things in some of the dumbest ways possible. Eh? So it's so frustrating. So frustrating. <laughs> so, uh, we can see Geo just working with the exothermic chargers on CCTV wall, looking at construction wall as well. So they'll be down to the Ace and the Maverick to open up Jacuzzi side. The reason that Geo's doing that is they want to force the players out of that area. CCTV and Cash particularly make them feel like they're, pin they're pinched and force them back to site. Because once the Sonics have got control of CCTV, they're able then to use that catwalk that's just outside of the windows, look on into sight and start applying pressure to the back of Jacuzzi wall. It'll help them get that open and it just starts to unlock the round a little bit. So we need a little bit more momentum from the Sonics here. We're a minute 20 in. They're not quite established inside of the map yet and we've still got players. I say that I'm just looking at our top down on the side. They have managed to force cash clear. Construction is next. i 9 still in there. Once they get that out of the way, then it'll be job done. We do have a nine still lurking around. I oh, want to see he's over inside of Sonic. Yeah, just is. Right bomb. inside of the bar double here. That could be a pretty interesting fold later on down the line. As well, that's actually going to be coming pretty quickly. Only got a minute and 10 seconds left inside of this round. But some nice angles built up from the Sonics. Practically everything you would want for a Master Assault. Nitro Cell out. Potentially getting rid of some Claymores, but no, not even that. It's actually going to, I believe, land on the windowsill. Doesn't achieve too much for him. And now Rex in the scene if a single Fury member wants to try and take a crack at this window swing. Just going to be sending the Rotero drones in. Citizen doing some work to clear utility. 45 seconds left to go as Rexton manages to pick up Crit J, who's been quiet so far in the first four or five rounds. Gio knows that the flank is on here. I-9 I must have been spotted out. It's going to be Ambi to pick up the kill, and it's mostly going in the Sonic's direction at the minute. BG Man does manage to pick up one onto Ambi as a late trade, but two versus four now. The pressure is going to mount very quickly. Like Cole is shot as he tries to run away from the breach. It's all up to BG man it's gonna have to be a big round from him he manages to find another that's three this could be an ace if he closes this out it's 1v2 right now the diffuser goes down Geo sticks it BG man nearly finds him though damage is done he sends out more utility but can't find the kill BG's gonna hop out big fight here and he can't get it done Grixer shuts him down with the M4 Sonics dastardly he's on the entries but Almost one of the biggest moments for BG, man, I have seen personally on the Fury roster. All for not at the end of the day, though, as the Sox are able to get that dealt with accordingly. Almost in trouble there for Geo as well, as that second impact seemed like it was prime to down him, but I believe it ended up landing just a little bit earlier in its uh, arc there. So, unfortunately, didn't end up going through the breach into weights. Now, Sonics in the driver's seat on the offensive side. I do remember, folks, Clubhouse, one of our most defender-sided maps right now in the entire pool. The first time that Sonics have been ahead so far today. The first two rounds went to Fury, but they're now seriously on the back foot with three in a row for Sonics. Oh, what a beautiful shot from Rexon that was. And then it just all sort of fell apart from there. Obviously, it was always going to be difficult. Uh, ready for the jump out there. Grixer well prepared, took his man down. But uh, Fury just sort of starting to, to stumble, to struggle. All the 
everything they're trying to do away from site just isn't really working anymore. They were forced out of cash and CCTV quite quickly then. I-9 tries to come up on the flying. Ambi's there ready and waiting for it. Gets him shut down. So Sonic's basically just had the run of it. They had him corralled back into site very, very quickly. And it was sort of similar on the previous round as well. The extension on the top floor. I-9 got picked up on the cap can taken down. The Sonics are going in. They're using the drones well. They're recognising what Fury are doing. They're pushing them quickly and they're closing them down and they're just removing any sort of extension that they're trying to make to these defenses very very quickly so it's leaving fury playing in such a small portion of the map uh, and it's really impressive stuff from the sonics over the last couple of rounds yeah absolutely once the sonics get set up they seem indomitable and, and fury really hasn't had anything to be able to try and change that fade up so we'll see if there's some potential in this last round of their defense but i totally agree with you especially from nine's perspective he really hasn't been able to achieve too much on these roams it's constantly been Sonics setting things up and awaiting his arrival and more than likely slaying him in the process and so kicking things off. We saw that in the last round there for Ambi as he was the one to take him down dark. He has a good time and he'll be able to get that first time up. Yeah, they're going to have to make sure that they deal with that Ambi out here on the warehouse catwalk stairs, garage stairs, sorry. If they go for it now, it's going to be so easy. They have absolutely no idea. No. Even with the default cam up, they don't know. Stokes, Ambi gets an absolute freebie. It will open up CCTV as well. Likely force them back out of cash, which has already happened. They've given that up. Um, and I-9's playing in the same position as he was before, down on stage. The flank didn't work last time. It's not likely to work this time. One difference, though. He's he is pulsed this time, and that is a very key thing as well as they have killed citizens so game plan here working swimmingly i would say i do like the difference maker there because i definitely agree with you but with the cardiac sensor being there now and being able to read things out oh my gosh crit nine just called this man on the balcony what are we making this rotation for we just give him the three versus three and I-9's sort of moving back into a position on those main stairs. If he's going to play the pulse, he needs to get himself underneath, have the Nitro be there for the denial. And that's just not what is happening at all at the minute. He's, in fact, back in sight, I think, uh, by the looks of things. So, again, questions for me for Fury there. You know, if you're going to bring that along, I think the concern is that they've just lost too many players because they needed the numbers back. But Geo, a little bit unfortunate there, losing out even on the pre-fire. And in a 2v1, it does give an opportunity Opportunity for Fury to close this one out. I think the Sonic's just losing a couple of gunfights along the way. No cardiac sensor out, and actually he's got the pistol. Only hoping to get that primary reloaded here. It's BG man underneath. This is so ass backwards. This does not make any sense as to why uh, that isn't down there. But I mean, I get it. Grixer gets a plant somehow. No nitro cell for nine. That's why he wasn't down there. But still, the cardiac sensor just really making things easier for you to shoot somebody through the floor. But Grixer gonna make a Defender rotation here over towards logistics, and he's gonna end up going down to BG man. So Fury will at least be able to tie things up here on their defensive side. But man, was that a weird round, Ace? I just feel like they made hard work of it. Yeah. <laughs> I feel like they just made hard work of it. You've literally got somebody who can see through floors. <laughs> Pulse can see through the floor. He literally can cheat. He can literally wall hack, he okay? He can just go downstairs. <laughs> and the, 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 the trouble for, you know, the reason Grixer was able to get that diffuser down was that he didn't have the information to know where it was going down. I'm gonna... There's two ways of this. I-9 could go downstairs and see for himself. I-9 was on the other side of the wall, can hear the diffuser being planted, so he knows he's not being pushed. He even could have just pulled the cardiac sensor out and pinged yep. for him to say, this is where he is, so he could shoot through the foot. So Fury, yes, getting the job done. Good on them, well done. They made hard work of it. And the problem was, the reason that I'm critical of it, is that they gave Grixer a chance. Yes. When Grixer gets that, there's no reason for him to have a chance there. Once he gets that diffuser down, he comes off, and they're still not challenging him immediately. In go. a different timeline, he catches the one coming back up main stairs, oh, yeah. and then Five he's 1v1, one one. One. and all of a sudden, he's in logistics, he's got a position that he can defend, Attackers and he's just fighting against I-9, who, let's be honest, on the pulse, does not have the best gun in the game, <laughs> as we all know. <laughs> It just, oh, it was just such an unnecessary chance to give the Sonics. Hey, oh, the round is done. They got it. It's 3-3. Sonics go on to defense. Fury, you're going to have to show us something on the attack, though. 
Let's see it. What's this lineup looking like here? Well, we got a lot of firepower when it comes to the rifles we're bringing here. The buck in tub, we expect that. 417 for Dark and the Crit. On a Neon up. G36. PG Man is going to be on the porch job here for the main double wall on plat. And handle things accordingly. Where's our soft breach at? It should be nine. Where's he going to be over at? We do have Lycalus here as well. This is right next to him. He's on Thermite. So more than likely not going to be using that Exothermic to get that open, I sure hope. But they could obviously use it in tandem if they want to, the way that the Sonics did. That was a pretty clean breach, the way that they ended up repelling there and getting the batteries using that Exothermic a little bit higher. Obviously, didn't exactly work the way they wanted it to on Jacuzzi with the impacts flying through and getting rid of both those Exothermics. But still a decent shout for a way to deal with the wall with those two utilities being a part of the offensive perspective. Now for Fury, though, it seems like they want to try and transition here, and they have, at a bare minimum, gotten the wall soft for the uh, leftmost panel over on Platt, and that means that Nine needs to now rotate over and open this up for them. Well, after what turned out to be an uh, interesting map of Consulates, found out that M80 can indeed win a map, and came out doing so in very convincing fashion. The bleed we know did not turn up, but you can't take it away from the North American side. They played the game before them, and they played it far better than we have seen so far throughout the Invitational 2024. That was their map pick. We now step across into Oregon. It could be a different affair, but if things carry on as they have so far, M80 will get that 2-0 and have a wonderful showdown with Liquid tomorrow. Tomorrow, that M80 Liquid game will be of the utmost importance for, I mean, basically most of the group in terms of round differential stats. It could have a wide range of ramifications, but M80 will, of course, have to win to save themselves from going home. But at the same time, that depends on Bleeds versus Pro result. Mm. And also, really, right now, right here, I've learned that M80 do, in fact, no ball. I don't even know if Bleed know how to dribble after map one, because <laughs> sure... Sure, Consulate can be defender-sided, but Bleed got the benefit of that first, and it seemed like they really didn't know how Actually, to say, structure those defenses. I think Consulate is one of our most attack-leaning, but I don't think that oh. even influenced it. True, and it did not, because mm. Bleed were just kind of like a blank canvas. Yeah. The M80 painted exactly what they wanted to on basically the first four rounds. Also, we didn't even talk about this. Aspie, one and five on the entry. M80 dominating those opening engagements. I don't think I've seen an EPS that low this tournament so far, by I the way. I doubt I have either. It's also However, pretty hard to get lower. Than five players over 100 for M80 just goes to show the level of dominance across the whole team. Even if DS is at five and six, still 2-0 on the entry, still 100% cost, still getting involved, and that's the important thing. So again, all I said in the previous map remains true. We have to see a different bleed come to the battleground this time around. Otherwise, M80 take this 2-0, and tomorrow you've got bleed on four points, M80 on four points, and liquid on five. That's only three things you need to use there, mate. You'll be okay. Either way, it makes up for a really interesting day because suddenly it goes from a, oh, the group can be decided to bleed, get a 2-0. We already know who's going home. It's now a boring group of death. So now actually being still the group of death because three teams could go home tomorrow in pretty much every other group. Only two teams can, and they play each other tomorrow. But if you are bleed, and you're potentially at risk of going home if you lose this series, do you want to ha have that risk come about by just being asleep this entire series? Do you want to just sit there and be like, oh, cool, you know, we took a map off W7M and beat Liquid, but got 2 0 by M80. Super cool going into day five. No, this is where not only do they need to step up, they have to step up here, right? The map they beat W7M on. I'm going to keep saying that because that's a ridiculous statement. The fact that they beat a map that basically the fundamentals and structure are the name of the game and bleed of all teams outgun W7M on that map. This hmm. should be the opportunity for bleed not only to bounce back against M80, but bounce back for themselves mentally. And our predictions were correct. The socials swing back the way of M80 and in actually a more dominant stat than when bleed were in the majority. 11% swing, yeah, look pretty good. And I'm not surprised at the back of that performance. Now, whether that's more excitement that you're seeing M80 actually deliver to the level that we've all hoped they would coming into Invitational, or whether it's that Bleed is simply underperforming and those of you in chat are terrified about what might happen to your points if you go for them again. I don't know. But we're going to find out as we get into things. The Monty Band coming through once again.
from MAT. They start on the defense. It's worth stressing. And Oregon so far has been quite defender leaning. So I wouldn't be surprised if MAT just rock it this first half. It's always the risk of picking Oregon is you don't get that choice of side selection. And M80 get to send themselves onto the defense first. Attacking bands come through. Monty and Ying taken off the board. Mm. I have seen this exact band face on Oregon a number of times at this event alone. And to follow it up with the Azami isn't that much of a shock. But I have to imagine Solus, Fenrir, one of those operators has to follow, though maybe a Cade as well we could see, and yeah, there yeah. we go. Even though Amadi are starting on the defense, this is one of Cade's best maps because oftentimes, basement, depending on what side you attack, can really come down to, do you have solid control around a hatch? Yes yeah. or no? Especially E-Box, if you don't have good control or good utility around there, you could end up losing the entire execute, even if everything up until that point was stellar. Completely agree. They are going to start down there in the basement. You were just speaking about a second ago, Carter, as well. No big surprises there. Is normally the go-to site on this map. Again, for me, Attacker what I'm looking out for here is Bleed. A little more proactivity. A little more action coming out of them. A little more willingness to engage M80. Because it looked like they were scared of the gunfights on the previous map. That gave M80 all the time in the world to do whatever they pleased. Equally for M80, more of the same, please. We did see them trying to get up in the face of Bleed. We did see them, you know coordinating as a team more so with flashes on the attacking side than anything else but it was teamwork that is the big thing that i can reference as the win from their last map and long may it continue two ops though for m80 that could if assuming bleed are able to gain that i swear to god if he gets a kill with these cat can traps holy i will actually break down in streams of tears sat right here have you ever seen that before like somebody placing those cap cans. I've never T3. seen someone put cap can traps on that window, but I just get the sense that if it's going to work against anyone, it's going to be this bleed well, team. Well, and on, <laughs> and on that point, I was going to bring up the two ops M80 have that could counter a bleed that maybe swings the other way and gets overconfident with their gunfights, or at least tries to go for lurks or Ooh. timings. You have the cap cans with the EDDs, and you cannot be, you must be joking. You must be joking. I mean. Grim isn't that important Can for I a base attack, anymore? right? I, I'm so... I've never been this wound up. I've been this wound up in years about a series. Thank you, Spoy. I think the same. Good Lord. The man had left like for two seconds and you're still pulling the trigger? He's just, I, I know how Parker felt during the Liquid game. He's just, he's just mad. He's, Mental is just still mad about the 1-6 on the entry. He's like, this is for last map. I don't know. I was gonna make a point. You can talk. No, I was gonna make a whole point about like the EDDs and the F nods making a uh, gunfight oriented uh, play a bit more difficult because it makes those doorways a lot harder. But you know, mentalist doming his subordinate in the head kind of really, really takes the focus of any conversation I could try to start. Reaps has an idea that somebody's at bottom freezer and wants to go for that pick, but. M80 have been gifted a golden situation on the basement defense. They haven't even had to fight for a man disadvantage. So they can literally just hold the site. What teams often do on basement anyway, now they don't even really need to contest bottom freezer that aggressively. They can just hold their positions, hold the long haul, hold the freezer doorway, watch main stairs, watch back stairs. It's basics at this point. They've got their one, right? And ultimately this site, I think, is so reliant on having an overwhelming <laughs> advantage, or at least an even advantage when it comes down to numbers, yes? And you know the best part? Yes. The one operator who can really throw that out of whack was Grim, and he's and dead! And he's gone. Yes, absolutely. For me, when you've got the five players left alive coming in to execute on this site, you can ha you can afford to push two or three angles at the same time. As those numbers whittle down, your threat lessens massively, and the defenders get a lot more freedom to move around and play as they please. So even losing one is going to come to bite them. The Grim certainly not helping as he's very good at controlling areas of this downstairs. Right now you can see the Fenrir Dreadnought coming in, the F0, sorry, coming and blocking out some of the vision. Hoven finds one for himself into a second that has managed to get himself right amidst the pigeons here. It's M80 losing a couple of players, a 4v3, but now we've got to see Bleed convert. Hoven holding close could be the one to save the entirety of his execute. What Mentalist with two to redeem himself from earlier. Hoven doesn't find his one. Yaga tags up one. But I Jesus just... H tap dancing Christ. How did Bleed <laughs> win that round? I oh. <laughs> they, I, dude. You've they had just... uh, Reaps to come and chat with. Um, and then straight away sports <laughs> like F. They just, they just hit a coordinated formation inside a text chat. That was crazy. Yeah, that was very funny. Do you want to explain that round? Because you forced me to talk about things after Mentalist uh, no, shot his teammate. I, I, but... I don't really want to talk about it. I mean, one, fair play, Mentalist has made up for it. But 
even with that, without the grim, like that wouldn't even be possible. I just don't understand like how on earth he's managed to walk so close to the rotate, kill two, then get inside Cubby for Mentalist to get two in the same position. It was basically a meat grinder on the rotate, and it's one of those things you look at and just think, well, that was a little bit funny. In isolation, you'd laugh about it. But at this point, I just want to cry. Men Mentalist <laughs> got an unironic 3K, excluding the TK that round. <laughs> yes. Mentalist, Mentalist. I mean, you could maybe give MVP to Hoven because he opens up the entire round. But in terms of raw numbers, Mentalist is the MVP. Yeah. Like, literally, he is. Yeah, oh, there he is. How does that feel? How does that make you feel? It feels great. <laughs> I've watched Mentalist for years, to be fair. I watched him when he's back on Fnatic as well, and he used to be a great player back then. Obviously, this tournament not had the highest stats. We saw him have a brilliant game uh, yesterday, I want to say it was. We know the potential is there. He's shown it there a little bit in round one. Just maybe without the team kill at the start and maybe not quite a massive slaughter in the rotate this time. And you know what? To be Tim again and bring the optimism, I think we can say, look at that confidence when they said, hey, we're in a 4v5 and we're struggling to break the stalemate on the site. I, Hovenhurst, will just sprint up Laundry, attack the rotating at two kills with Buck Skeleton Keep. I appreciate at least that when they realized the round was very quickly spinning out of their control and M80 were going to, well, at least take control, if not win it. They did something, they acted to try and shift their fortunes, and they got a round off of it on a, round, on a map where attacks are not very easy to come by. On that same note, Hoven, the very player who opened round one up, has worked his way all the way into security alongside other players around the cafe area, so very quick control established by Bleed. Well, so far things playing out pretty standard, so I guess I can start being slightly more optimistic now. <laughs> At least as it stands, you've had Sploit holding out towards Trophy on the Frost, and it's yet to be dealt with by the side of Bleed, but they've slowly been working their way through. They've been trying to get drones in and around as well. We'll pull back to that similar discussion on the last map. Only one gone down so far as well, so how aggressive are they being in the information seeking? I can't see any active in and around site, for example. So they won't have full context at the minute as to what's going on on site itself, but realistically, I don't think I'll blame them too much if their main focus is on actually getting inside the building and then starting to worry about sight, and he should be far more worried about Yogg out on the roam. Yogg, if he goes, goes unread, could flank up any number of these stairwells and cause big problems for bleed attackers on the top or the middle floor, as there are a couple moving down on the first floor at the moment. So Hoven over by security earlier in Ooh, the round. C4. Reaps, as you said, losing a lot of HP to that C4, so pushing on in, especially as Hoven's position on top white has been red. Bleed in a similar position to the basement round, except 5v5 instead of a 4v5. Either way, they were struggling and are struggling currently to find a way into this bomb site. Nobody yeah. from M80 is biting. Nobody is giving them easy picks, and Bleed are not creating opportunities and creating openings for themselves. I look at it and I was always expecting to find someone sat on the white van outside front door to contest Yogg when he starts rotating his way back up, but no one's there. No one's around Armory. No one's around Top Armory Stairs windows. The trophy right now is completely safe, and so that means that you'll see the defenders move across towards contesting on this west window. Mentalist is in, getting himself a plan down now they can start making their move and bleed have found what they need the cross has come through though gomez in his spot as long as he gets rid of the window he can get rid of the next player which he should do oh! but goes a bit too far drops his gun and pays the price as a result a 3v3 ensues mentalist somehow given a new lease on life as he has to protect the diffuser like his nest egg ds lucas going for the second attempt on the big window knows he's there they know for a fact this ace is in this position and somehow he still comes away with the kill bleed hold on to a man advantage and there's two different players outside of the dorm's window reaps with the upside down repel one <laughs> hp still and he it. still finds the kill says <laughs> how are bleed finding these rounds when it seems like nothing is going their way <laughs> just in interesting the chat exchange is yeah about as crazy as my head right I mean, now i think I mean, let's be honest. I mean, that flashbang usage, man, it was it was good. No, the thing is, I actually don't have much to complain about in that round. I was worried when they were getting set up that Bleed were a little bit mm, this time. You had Hogan trying to poke his nose up the top of White quite early on when everyone else wasn't anywhere near Big Window. There was no one pushing up through Attic, for example, and I thought... Uh, this is starting to feel a little bit risky, but I guess the truth is no one on the side of M80, although they were abandoning the east side defense because they didn't have to worry about uh, armory stairs or around trophy because no one pushed them. No one came through attic. It was kind of like, all right, cool. We can just chill out a little bit, I guess, and wait and see what happens. But no one was playing inside a kid, so no one could deal with the cross that came in from Mentalist. He literally bolted into big window, ran to the bookcase, got the plan down. And it was like, oh, God, now we've got to do something about it. So, ironically, M80 probably a little bit static in their defense, despite not having to worry about half the map. I just want to see them again being a little more aware of these hijinks that Bleed might pull out, but 
Can't ignore facts, Carter. Bleed have got two attacking round wins. Indeed, and I also maybe you can criticize no real security presence for M80 or only Roamer really just being Yaga moving around the map. So potentially some lost opportunities for M80 in that round. And Bleed are not going to be complaining whatsoever. 2-0 now and M80 have gone all the way back down to the basement. And Bleed have said, you know what? Team killing, it's not cool. But you know what else isn't <laughs> cool? Full clearing. Let's just put Hoven on the Blitz, right. and you know for a fact, you know for a fact, especially now that Reaps has found Yaga, they're about to send it up elbow and take this quickly. And they've got the ee one ds they've got the DKV goals coming in, they've got Grim, they've got the Juice coming out of turret, they've got everything working towards this rush here. The thing is, the call would have come in now, you will see those Romans from M80 dropping back in towards site. And where I'm nervous here is they haven't moved, like, why have we stopped? There's only two on site, guys, this is the time to push, it's not the time to slow down, let's go! Gomez will instead rotate. There is somebody on the bottom of Laundry Stairs. He starts shooting, but Gomez beams him through the barricade. Mentalist reign of terror in this game is so far now ended. Hovens had to rotate around through E-Box. too late. Try to work himself into position to go for a plan. Yeah, as you said, everyone from M80, all four remaining players, have rotated back down to the bomb side. I think Hovens aware of this. He knows a plant is not nearly as easily as it was just 15 seconds ago. And M80 are fully aware of it. But what do you do at this point? You've committed so much. You're you all the smokes, way in. Let's go. You do have smokes, <laughs> but you can't rotate back out do anything and this c4 from gomez right, whether I? bleed know it or not is going to happen i need to bait it out oh they can see everything as well because iconics here the time to go was when they got the first kill and got themselves onto elbow but instead they pulled back they slowed down they lost players this was a round to win and it does feel like bleed of by their own demise given them 80 time to recover giving them time to retake ground they're retaking elbow here like what is going on just completely hit the pause button at the exact wrong time. Hoven finally ends and Case drops inside a pillar. He even sees the head of Iconic before the swing finally comes through. It seemed like Bleed were poised for greatness that round. They send the Blitz. He takes elbow control. M80 don't realize and the pocket reinforcement doesn't come out. So they not only have control of the rotate, but can then start looking at getting intel on Freezer and the close rotate. And I think the big kill that starts that the undoing of Bleed in that round is DS Lucas sending shots past the Blitz into his cover behind him. That's the guy with the Diffuser. He drops it, and then that's when the uncertainty starts creeping in. Hoven says, oh, crap, I need to get the Diffuser now. I need to be the steward of this. But that was all the control that actually happened on the bottom floor. Reaps hadn't pushed down back tower stairs. All they really had was that bunker position. So they think to themselves, oh, God, well... I don't want to overcommit and then potentially lose the diffuser again, especially now that we don't have the man advantage. But also, if we back out, what are we going to do? There's just so much uncertainty from Bleed in that round that really started once that guy with the diffuser fell. I wonder if it comes down to the intel game because we saw it back on console that their use of drones was very passive. Yes, they had a lot of life, but hadn't really committed them in towards the site. And I saw there for a second, six drones were gone. They had been seeking information, but... I'm not sure if it was hesitance from the Blitz that there might be someone on rotate to his left as well as the Freezer player. They just didn't seem to have knowledge that then formed confidence in them to make the play. And again, by the time you slowed things down, the two roamers from M80 are back on site. They've retaken lost ground and suddenly, Bleed are like, well, it's basically now a normal round for us to play out. You've lost your advantage. The element of surprise that, you know, caught them off guard to begin with was no longer a thing. And yeah, I'm still quite perplexed. <laughs> Probably what's even more perplexing for those who didn't see it or hear about it, that was M80's timeout. Yes, they won the round. Clearly not too happy with how things have played. They felt they got caught a little bit off guard there in round three. And how the first two rounds went, still one of those 45 seconds to reset and take stock once more. I think it's perfectly acceptable, especially when Bleed already do have two rounds on the attack on one of the most defender sided maps at the tournament. Not the most, as Iron Club. Club's still weirdly at the top of that list, but... Oregon's still a very, very strong strong map for the defensive side. So with Bleed already at their attacks, M80 definitely need to start running up the score for them. They want to try and get that 4-2 half, especially now that we're going to the tertiary site. M80 have one basement. They did not go back to dorms, so they decided to split the difference and go to meeting. Oven with some intel on a player, positioned around split, walks into classroom, destroys some barbed wire, and they are very clearly gunning for an execute that will end at the split wall. They've already destroyed the mute. They're already opening it up, so credit where credit's due, bleed in different fashion the last round, but still taking things very quickly. Yeah, at least got some control of the map, which is the important part. And as you say, that split wall, I think we first saw 
And Arrogan had its rework. I want to say it was proper old school team secret that one of the first I ever saw to push in through garage, open up that wall, get a plant down, and just completely catch their opponents by surprise. Yog, freebie, freebie. Asfi's demise continues to follow. Two and what was it? Two and ten last map, and now Something one and like four. That. He's having an absolute stinker. Definitely not great, but I will say if you are going for that split execute, the more important hard breacher is that ace to open up that wall. So losing out on the hard breaching for Asfi is not great, but you can still do it depending on what you... Wow. Well, so one thing that is a lot more difficult to make this execute work with is a lack of out of control. Uh, I thought for a second he was about to run up big tower stairs there, past the drone <laughs> that had just ran in front of him, but thank God he did not. Now uh, the Dokubi call is giving intel to some of those bleed attackers. Turd will drop down, likely to maybe hunt Tiago, okay. who's moved down into the depths, but it's another situation where M80 have full control of the map, really. Hey. Turd does find him, so that's good. There is one player currently sitting up isolated on the top floor. Spoit, only one player from bleed, I believe. Hoven in a position to deal with them. So in this final minute, Bleed need to take some time and re or figure out what they want to do. Because in a 3v4 and having the split take mm. not working so far, Spoit still being upstairs, there's a lot M80 have to work with. M80 are giving a lot of ground here and just letting them go for a plant. They've got no vertical cover as well. They could try and retake it from Hoven, but they'll be able to stick this. And I feel like M80 not. Is giving away a bit of a freebie. Like, were they expecting a kitchen hit or what? Because... No one was around. No one was challenging long angles. No one. In fact, Spoit was on top floor and could have challenged into Hoven, but let him get away with that. I mean, the blessing is there's four players and M80 left alive. They can push in. They can take these gun fights, as we'll now see Gomez do. Retaking this hatch is crucial, and it shouldn't be a problem, but it still feels like Bleeder pulled a bit of a fast one here. Indeed, Hoven goes down. Turd now has to 1v4 with everyone having an idea he's in big tower. There goes one. Got to go. But Iconics are sticking it. He's got to right. go. You're going to take a fight. You're going to sit behind the gas. You're going to run into Gomez. A lot of different options. But instead, M80 win the round on the defuse. I was very confused because I'm sitting here thinking, all right, Bleed will have to figure some things out, you know, rethink their approach, and they did. I just didn't expect them to come to the conclusion five seconds after they got into this sort of in-between state in the round. They just walk in, plant on the meeting wall, but again, it's a 3v4. All they have is two players on the backside and one player controlling the hatch. It's a very easy retake for M80, who, sure, maybe sometimes the plans for M80 in these games haven't really worked, but this is a pretty easy call to make. Oregon's one of the oldest maps we have, even after the rework years and years ago. If somebody plants stage, what's the first thing you need to do? Retake the attic hatch. And even M80, who've been struggling this tournament, they can make that call and win those trades. Yeah, like I mentioned at the time, I thought Spite was, uh, Spoit might have been upstairs. I didn't properly see. I'm 90% sure he was upstairs. And I thought yeah, he would see him pull rotate over. Instead, he dropped the hatch to go for a retake with his team. And I was a bit like, oh, okay. And instead, Gomez then chose to go via Armory Stairs to the retake, which I guess is equally fine. As long as they get the retake, who cares how it comes right? Just a little bit of a weird plant to go through. M M80, though, clearly very confident in their abilities to retake. And they pull it off plenty fine. Two and two then. So a bit of a bounce back from M80. After what felt like a pretty dismal start going down two in the first couple of rounds. Bleed started strong. Now we've got a game on our hands. Yes, indeed, which I think is joyous to everyone, especially the many, many people who think Bleed have a very, very real shot. Maybe not at topping the group, but definitely securing their spot above last place and into the next phase of the Six Invitational 2024. Moving back up to the dorms bomb site. This is where we did see Bleed get that win previously with a very solid attack, but admittedly a lot of it coming down to Mentalist holding his position on top of the diffuser right in front of the big window, winning two different gunfights in that round. But still before that, I think the control they had, especially, you know, not really from M80 at least, accounting for the security position. There's some stuff that can be improved on for Bleed. <gasps> but what? His run out was like... Pretty deep, I'm not going to lie. <laughs> he was halfway outside the map, but he managed to get the full run out from bottom tower out to armory window and find his man. Bonkers. Now it's a 3v5. What is what is going on here? I, yeah. What are, we, what, are, what are we cooking? The thing is, I was so ready to praise Bleed and say, yes, good, you're focusing this time on getting inside of armory. You've got a player playing on front door. You're actively getting someone inside a bedroom and getting rid of the trophy shield. Great. You're giving us something. That, why, are we, why are we sprinting? Why are we sprinting, mentalist? I don't know what's going on anymore. Just, it, it started yes. so yeah, good. We're, ba we're, back, we're backsliding here. We're, oh, we're, we're, <laughs> we're regressing. We are, Help. We are, we are regressing at lightning Help. speed. Turn Help on what it be. He's found iconic at least. I Listen. It's I'm not, glad this is on the B stream, I won't lie. It, it, <laughs> I feel like I lose my marbles a little bit more, and it's okay. Listen, Dez, it was not, oh. a, it was not a flawless round for M80. 
No, no, it wasn't. <laughs> I mean, they played it really well. Okay, it's the same thing I said back on Consular, is Bleed feel like the ones that are throwing this away, but M80 are playing in the game that is put before them. Would M80 playing like this be another team in their group? No. I think as we've seen that so far being the case. Are they playing better because they've been given room to do so by Bleed? Yes, and I think it's a really good confidence builder for them. I'm hoping it gears them up for a good game tomorrow coming into it against Team Liquid. Hopefully, again, it sets them up well. But there's no guarantee it is going to do that. Anyway... I like the run out coming through. I like the C4 coming out of Iconic. I like the aggressive challenge on towards Armory Stairs to get rid of uh, Mentalist. I'm pretty sure there was also someone coming up to him from Basement off on the Roam as well. Mm -hmm. So they've all got these things going on to really kind of like kneecap Bleed and stop them being able to execute. And that is great play. We even saw Bleed, as I said, getting into good positions to clear out Trophy and things like that. But the actual execution from Bleed was sloppy. M80 capitalized. Fair play. Left. Fair play indeed. Now they get to go back down to basement, which hasn't exactly actually been the greatest okay. bomb site for them, the even on a win. Budega took the tactical timeout to try and calm down his team because one, Bleed, who seemed like they had no chance at winning round one, as Mentalist shot Aspie in the back of the head to start things out, somehow ended up winning it because of, of course, a Mentalist 3k, but even before that, Coven getting a very large 2k to start open the round and open things up on the laundry side. Second time, even though Amadi ended up winning the round, Bleed immediately took control of Elbow and put M80 in a very dangerous and precarious position to lose that round. Had a couple things not gone their way. Now as we go down to basement, Bleed might be taking very quick control, but M80 players are not looking to give things away for free. Spoit is all the way up on the top floor inside of Attic. Yaga on the middle floor as well with Gomez supporting him on freezer stairs on the retreat. M80 are saying, okay, you guys have not exactly had the best time at facing huge coordinated roams so far. So, we'll just do exactly that, and let's see how you fare. Uh, not, not the best time is a nice way of putting it. I'd say being, <laughs> being dismal at clearing Romas has 100% been their main problem. Like, Spoit is still upstairs. They have a Decay Beyond side. They've got a Grim if they need it as well. They've got plenty of drones they can use. Yet, right now, there is nothing going towards Spoit. Now, a lot of teams start top uh, topside and clear down for this exact reason on not just Oregon, but maps like Cafe, think about Club as well, is that you do slowly force all the Romans back down towards site. And sure, they shave a little bit of time off you, but that's when you set up things like cuts on the front door where you might catch a player coming down armory stairs or through a hatch, like take your pick. There are many things that you can do, but there is no real attempt to do so. So Spoit has got really good backstab potential here. They're going to full send their way into laundry and they've got the kill they need, but now they've got to start this push forward. They've got the armory cover, sorry, the freezer cover coming in as well from Gomez to get one back. And that's two kills for M80. So far, so good. Yeah, so, so far, so good, but Hello? again, I'm sitting here. Oh. Okay, okay. <laughs> But so far, I'm sitting here thinking for Bleed, did we just not know a way into this, so we decided to send it up Laundry again, because that's what worked in round one? Well, this time, M80 are much more ready for it, because you've never dealt with the Freezer player. So even though Reaps gets a nice kill, it's a 4-2 half for M80. We were in a position where Bleed were looking solid to start this game. Not great, not incredible, but solid. A good foundation to start with some good individual play. And then after that, it's just been another stomp for M80 after that. Four rounds in a row. And... When Bleed are winning rounds, there are at least these exciting individual moments. There are some good points to look at and say, hey, even if maybe there wasn't, there wasn't a lot of strategic depth, at least it was a fun and impressive individual show. And the other four rounds, I can't even say they're cooking because the heat's not even on. They're just sitting there for half the round saying, all right, they're wrecking, there's seemingly some recognition of the problem, but no... I don't know if Mentalist isn't making decisions or if he's making calls and nobody's following through on them and we're picking Cav. Yeah, I don't know You're, about this. Dude, like, well, he thinks he's cyber. <laughs> the man does think he's cyber. I didn't actually watch that game. Just, cyber didn't get no, anything didn't. special, did he? He didn't get an interrogation. He didn't probably anything special either as Jack, well. I remember seeing Jack a message was, come in like, what, the earth, yeah, what on earth is going on? Jack was losing his mind because he didn't get an interrogation. Hey, Jack, maybe Hovenhurst at 2 and 4? Maybe he's going. Or 2 and 4, score 3 and 5, KD. Yeah, maybe. Big maybe. This has been a disappointing game so far, hasn't it? Um, This has been... Still messy, better than consulate, I think. Uh, oh, I mean, yeah. But that may change massively now that Bleed are on the defense because that was where they looked the weakest because there was no challenge into M18. I did say, look, they've played this map a lot more. They've had much more success on it. You may well see a different team, but I just think M18 are coming here like a wrecking ball and just smash them to pieces. Well, that's what I was about to say. This is going to be a great point of contrast because we've, we will now see M80's attempt at the Blitz execute on the basement site. Though we do have Spoit adding a different dimension over by Small Tower, so it doesn't seem like it's going to be a rush like yes. it was for Bleed. Instead, it'll be a bit more of a methodical clear, but still a similar principle that you will have the Blitz carving a path at some 
point of the bomb site, whether it's bunker or freezer stairs or what have you, and then teammates flooding okay. in behind him. They found Turd. Um, was there a second player? Yeah, Hoven's hidden inside a shower. They don't know about him inside a shower. This, yeah, this is a problem. Okay, oh, oh Jack is going to be ecstatic. Uh, <laughs> That's brutal. Could you imagine being denied it because there's a finger on side? <laughs> I absolutely love it. Uh, love it indeed. Gomez also going to retake that lead. Oh, well, maybe not. Dias Lucas has done it instead. Now they can start focusing on the shower position. Dias Lucas wants to deal with this Cavs so badly. Especially with Hoven taking down Sport earlier in the wind. Completely lost to the sands of time. The thing is, I can forgive M80 for being caught out, you know, the first time in the first round by a Cav ratting inside a shower. You see a single player. Found the Cav. She's down. Really. This. Ah, uh, she's dead. Oh, good. That was anticlimactic. I mean, good, because again, this is the showing the show sign for M80 is, okay, look, they've misdroned. It happens even at the top level. Spoit was alone on that west side of the map. He's seen the warden and gone, okay, and that's their roamer here. That's all I've got to worry about. We haven't seen them roam too much on consulate. Maybe they won't do it here either. So the Cav is going to work once. I don't expect it to work again. But the good news is, M80 have then got two players to go and hunt down that Cav and make sure they still got the numbers advantage. So as far as I'm concerned, well played by M80. We were literally a millimeter away from the interrogation. We were so close. We just missed it completely because of the self reps. I'm sure Fresh is busted sat down in the green room watching this. I am this. too. I'm, gu <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm gutted sitting here. I'm also... A little worrisome for M80. Oh, never mind. We got we got DS Lucas rotating over, but still yeah, opening opening up this hatch. 45 seconds left. M80 gonna have to cobble together and execute very quickly. Relying on the blitz will be good. You do have those smoke cans or smoke grenades to block off angles and the blitz to apply pressure on any particular position. In this case, it appears to be freezer, but to one HP by a very mm. quick spray down from Reaps 96. But M80 starting to struggle to find an entry point. They haven't hit the E box drop, and freezer not working out so far. It's another classic like it's not drone as well. He's walked down there and nearly lost his life without his team pushing in at different parts of the map, and now he will die whilst his team does hit different parts of the map. Into a two versus two, Plant is going down from Yagavol, 15 seconds on the clock, but here comes Asfi. Oh. I was going to say, he ain't that guy. He can't get two kills here, but Yog might looking on for his second one. Starts running away, but it's a spray over the top coming in from the smoke of Reaps that gives Bleed the round. Another really weird round, and yeah, what? <laughs> Ovens in chat saying, that's lane spoil. Why need boost? The bingo. <laughs> need the bingo. He knows he needs the bingo. We got tech pause coming in. He's real for that one. Yeah, I saw. I saw at the end. Iconic looked at the app and he's like, "Yeah, hey, something. I don't know." But called the tech pause. Yeah. Well, I suppose this has just been such a weird game. It's just one of those games where I feel like I can feel my brain being rewired in real time. <laughs> like, I'm, I'm just. I'm just trying to apply the fundamentals to things. And I'm First like, time. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm just like, what's good? What, what, what are we cooking here? What are we doing? I feel mine's just slowly falling out my ears, to be honest. <laughs> uh, and again, like I will, yeah, you know, breaking down that round for M80. If we look at this as objectively as we can and ignore constant, ignore prior rounds, and say, did M80 play that round well? Start of it, yes. Okay, they missed drone. It was one player pushing by himself. There's only so much that you can do. They managed to get rid of the warden and they get rid of the cab after they've managed to find Spoit, which is all well and fine. They have two players come in and they pinch onto the remaining cab. Good stuff. They've played it well. Where I'm then a little bit worried is that they then started working their way down the freezer stairs. Admittedly, you would normally have Spoit doing that. There may well be another drone going down there with him. But you've got the Blitz walking down, taking a truckload of damage, and then being finished off essentially in total isolation whilst the hit starts happening elsewhere around the map. And so it's a little bit like fragmented. Some parts were good, some parts were not so good. And ultimately, it led to giving Bleed enough room to be able to crawl back in and grab that in the one versus one. The fact that it comes down to a one versus one feels like a little bit of a blessing, really, overall for Bleed, given MAT did play the first half of the round very well. But these are the things that I talk about in this series that MAT can get away with, like a missed drone and messing things up here and there. It doesn't mean the end of the world. Against top teams, it will mean an awful lot. You know, going into the playoff bracket, it will start to have an impact. And if you can't get those things right now, whilst the team is giving you the opportunity to get those things right, when will they come good? And that's my main concern. It's a very valid one as well. You won't get it tomorrow against Liquid. I know Liquid haven't been on fire, and you may well see MAT again, still being able to pull rounds away from Liquid. I'm just concerned on a consistent basis that it won't help them get far. And maybe it's because we hold this roster to such a high standard, like you spoke about it. It was a star team when it all got pulled together. We were like, wow, you know, it was going to be a Brazilian roster. Then they imported Spoit, who was like one of the best fraggers that we had in Europe. You got Iconic on side as well. Everything was coming together for this to be the most dominant North American roster, or at least one of them. And it's always been that constant question of when do we see that potential unlocked? When do we see that team 
really come to be the juggernauts that we know these five players could be. And it's sadly just still not here yet. It's better, again, in this map, as I've said just then, that round in isolation, yes, there were mistakes, but it was still better from M80. Just got to see it being consistent. And it needs to be consistent against a team like Bleed that are giving you, you know, rounds almost for free and opportunities for free, I'd wager. But on the bright side, uh, if you are a bit disappointed by Bleed's performance so far, if M80 keeps heating up, keeps turning up, and after that round loss to Bleed and some time to center themselves during this tech pause, end up winning map number two, we're back into just complete utter chaos in Group C, which we are really quickly, <laughs> yeah. of course, yeah, the group of death. Which I Really welcome. the group of chaos. I, I do as well. Like it, yeah. I mean, listen, I have to cast M80 Liquid tomorrow, so I'd really prefer that game actually mean something yeah. instead of just being an exercise we have to act out. So I'd actually, you know... I you don't want to be biased, but I'd be happy if M80 won because I just like casting games that matter instead of just this weird little spot where M80 knows they're going home. Yeah. So you know, if M80 wanna wanna keep winning, that's okay with me. But also, I'm a fan of Bleed. They've had so much potential so far. They've been able to beat Liquid, who even with that loss, are worrying about M80 facing them tomorrow is very real. Just because again. It's Liquid. You got Nesk. You got Palu. You have such a storied roster and organization. Mm. It's a terrifying matchup for any team, even if Liquid haven't been the best and missed out on Atlanta. But for Bleed to take that win, but to struggle so much here, to feel like a shadow of the team that we saw in Atlanta and even in earlier matches at the Six Invitational this year, it's very, very strange. It has been a very strange occurrence, both on Consulate, though a little less so on Oregon, thankfully. So the tech pause, we're trying to get it figured out, of course. Hopefully I see them giving thumbs up, Des. Hopefully that means we're <laughs> we're getting closer. You'd, you'd hope. I've not had any confirmation yet, but we'll give you guys information as and when it comes to us. Let's tell you what, let's, let's break out of this kind of like <laughs> perplexed mindset that we're in about this game so far. How are you enjoying Brazil? I, I enjoy Brazil quite a bit. You've been, uh, uh, you did mess up an order at McDonald's, I think it was, yesterday. So, other, okay. other fast food chains are available. So, you guys been learning Portuguese are we, I was about to say, are we, are we really going to start on this? Because if I'm, if I'm going to be made to feel guilty for trying to speak in a language I am earnestly trying to learn anyway, irrespective of this event, I will not have it there. I've got a great idea what you could have done. You could have placed the order and then done what the rest of us do, which is get it up on our phone and translate it, and then go, did I get this order right when I spoke it to See, you? Des, I, Carter Hannafeld, like to live life on the edge. I play life on veteran difficulty. <laughs> I'm, going for, I'm going for the platinum. And as a result, mess up the yeah. order. <laughs> I, I'm going for the platinum in 100%. And you got to crack a few eggs to make an omelet. But unfortunately, I believe we do have a break. The call has been given. So when we get this figured out, we will be back as soon as we can. Speaks to, to, to Sonic's work ethic, to their mentality there, to make sure that they're doing everything right. And as I say, you want to keep that as a habit. Don't let yourself get out of it just because you feel like you maybe can do. So well played, Sonics in round one. This time they're going to be fighting over top floor control. It's bathroom and Tellers is our site. Fury choosing to move on. They're going to be underneath this time. BG Man is in the critical position. He's inside of office at the minute. He's going to be finding some pressure come his way. Crit J is there in support as well uh, but uh, at the minute Sonic's just looking to get into detention potentially maybe a little bit of horizontal pressure as well clear out these players underneath Mercy E1D out here for Geo out of the set of three that he has and be able to be able to at least get rid of the castle barricade here so they can traverse in through detention try and get a hold of customs Rexon now in tow with Citizen as Ambi's going to find Lycalis and he just stepped up to the plate right inside of the main double door. You knew Lycalis was playing more than likely around that main hall you saw him the last time, could have transitioned over towards the server door, but either way, still a dead man walking when Ambi is the one across from you. Fury's going to go down by a man, and now they're trying to find a way back into this round. You can see Nine doing some discovery work. He was able to find one out on the balcony, but not trying to get too aggressive on the swings. He's going to work his way back down east and try and maintain his life. And I'm just using these drones to try and get the information. Dark and Crit J managing to get one apiece. And that is a really big play from Fury. I was just going to say, on the defense last time, that's where they showed us their best. They were able to get those entry kills and they were able to sort of give Sonic something to think about. They hadn't done that in round one and they'd lost the entry here. But good to see them getting a couple of kills. Nice movement from them, letting the Sonics know that they can't just take areas and sit there. They will be punished and Fury are willing to move around and try and hit them on the flank. Good stuff. Patience now from the Sonics. They don't want to overdo it. Obviously, those two big bodies going down is not something that you want to trifle with. 
or respect needs to be given in this scenario. Fury. Well, they're at least trying to keep things rolling on this top floor. Still two bodies remain here as BG Man being one of them. He's going to try and stick around office as Sonics quickly working their way across. And actually, BG Man going to be the only one around this space now. Nine's going to go down, so this might start opening things up towards the site, especially with that Echo gone. Don't have to worry about those Yokais anymore. A big moment here for BG Man. What's going to happen in between these two on the triple wall? BG, he goes down to Grixer. It was such a close fight, but Sonic They've gotten the man advantage back. ambi has been able to drop the hatch here, try and get into bathroom. Didn't know exactly where Crit J was, and he's played his game well here as Crit J. There's the 1v1 now. Grix are going to move in, knows where the last man is, sees him on the peak, but can do nothing about it. Crit J closes it out, and that was actually a pretty nice hold from Fury, just keeping hold of office for as long as possible. Crit J drops away at a good point, gives himself a strong position inside a bathroom to fight from, and Fury closes out the round one each sonic's doing a very good job of at least making it you know an open opportunity for them to try and take that round away from furia especially after the circumstances that befalled them earlier losing citizen and rex and inside of cctv definitely not going to be something that assists you down the line uh, and picking up another round. So round three now ahead of us here after Sonics fail to launch in round two. Fury obviously bringing it down to the wire inside of that one versus one, but very well met by Crit J. Beautiful use of the vertical there from Grixer. But yeah, overall, um, I like that Fury were able to waste enough time up top there. You can see 10 seconds on the clock um, when Sonics were ultimately trying to drop on into sight. Uh, it was much better than they've uh, maybe done on the first round. So that's going to set them up, hopefully, for a few more here on, on border and they can start really making a game of this. They're just going to move across on that ground floor. They're not going to go back up to Armoury yet. Um, obviously, the Sonics' win on that round up on the top floor was pretty convincing. So it's going to be ventilation and workshop um, I think a, a good choice from Fury yeah most definitely pretty solid shout when it comes to border one that used to be the immediate second option back in the day no armory lockers immediately downstairs after success this time around though it's gonna be in the third slot here for Fury yeah, we're going to be on the fink of this time around. This might assist with them getting softened up. We've been seeing quite a few bouts go back and forth in between these two teams where both respective parties just take a little bit of damage, and that could definitely assist them in that regard. So we'll see what AMB can muster with this operator. A few other line changes, obviously, as well. As Geo will be bringing in the Rotero drones. And can be just signaling there on his way past the fact that detention is reinforced, but at the minute, Gricks are on the ace, he's right around on the other side of the map. So I don't know if the Sonics were maybe planning on getting detention open and just applying a little bit of pressure from there. We saw them do it in the last round, but it doesn't look like it's going to be possible for them this time. So I like that from Fury, just adapting and thinking, well, if you want to play him from detention, we'll reinforce it. We'll make you use some utility or time to do that. And the Sonics have chosen not to. So BG Man going to be holding on to the main door, trying to stop them getting across that threshold for the time being. Um, we do see now that detention has been open, so something that they need to be aware of, but almost halfway through the round. And Sonics, slow to the punch here though, but this wind up could be something else. As we've seen, this is definitely not a squad that it's just doing things lackadaisically. This is all in strategy. I'm going to be able to take down Lycalus early on here as well. 0-3 to start this map. Definitely not the same self that we saw over on Clubhouse. We were starting to warm up early on, but obviously started to peter off later on as well. So, looks like Sonics, though, at least for right now, a flawless round ahead of them if they have anything to say about it. It's down to BG, man. He might be able to stop Geo, but on second thought here, it doesn't really look like he has an option to, as this entire site opened up a tad bit, but uh, no real chance for him to work his way in and try and use that scanner. It's going to be a flawless now as Ambi works his way into customs and takes down that last player. Fury absolutely battered in round three. Yeah, pretty good from Sonics. Uh, again, nice and patient. Uh, no rush. It was about a minute 30 until they started really applying pressure and picking up those first kills. Um, but once a day, again, did get the entry. That's now three rounds and three entry kills for Sonics. So going very well in the beginnings of the rounds. Fury opting to take that tactical time out. This is their map choice. And I'm sure they will have been hoping uh, maybe to come out and just be a little bit stronger. It's not the end of the world. They're only one round down. This is fixable on the defense. But they need to get as many defensive rounds as they can. 
can. We saw the issues they had uh, with attack on clubhouse. You know, I'm I'm sure that that'll be better here on border. It's their map choice, and it's a slightly different layout to the map and sort of different priorities for the attackers, which I think will lend itself more to Fury's sort of style or uh, at least to solving some of the problems that they had. But they don't want to rely on needing too many attacking rounds realistically. So I think a good timeout called there just to try and turn the direction of the ship now before it gets too late. Yeah, it does seem like it's defense or nothing right now for them. I mean, you know, I, I definitely can say this. I don't have the same confidence in them being able to change up things too drastically on that offensive side, but... I'm trying to be see. positive, Sam. I'm being optimistic. I know. I'm sorry. I'm I the got... eternal optimist. <laughs> I, I'm always the bearer of bad news, Ace. That's that's just how I am. I'm just... I'm a negative Nancy at the end of the day, I'll be honest with you. So, uh, but I will say this. They definitely do make a smart call, especially after that flawless round. Kind of stop the bleeding, get to think about some things a little bit. But they do still have some opportunity here. I mean, Border has a 56% defensive win rate right now. Uh, we'll just have to see if Fury can potentially put something together on this top floor defense. Let's uh, see if they can get something going then. Last time around, Sonics uh, took this one by walking through office, just getting on into sight and getting themselves a couple of kills. And um, so again, Fury. I'd like to see them pay a little bit of attention to the top of these stairs. Ambi was able to get in there, you know, fairly quickly and easily. Citizen worked from the balcony window as well, um, just to make their life difficult. Crit J was inside a break room last time around, couldn't get out of there because an air jab, at least not confidently, um, and then was taken down on the long angle from office, which he was trying to hold in reverse. They've opened it up again, but um, I'm not sure if it's going to be the play or not. We'll see whether the Sonics go quite as quickly. This time, it's going to be an Orsa shield that they play behind. At this point, I've seen Citizen do this setup for East Stairs so many times. I feel like I'm going to start doing it every time I get on border. Just no man, run my way over to East, toss the cam up, get it up on the little balcony ledge up on the top of the roof there. Start playing things around for that uh, inside balcony for top square. It's a beautiful piece of the map, and with border being so tiny, really no matter what site you're going to, East Stairs is always going to be a solid consideration that you're going to have to care about. So just as a default location, not a bad idea at all from Sonics, especially because you can build off of it so very easily. Now for Citizen, he's actually going to go around and actually go in where we saw Ambi the last time. This is how we saw Ambi enter as he walked in bottom square and straight up east. I like this approach from Sonics, um, you know, just slowing things down a little bit, using those drones. That's a fair point that Fury have actually done a good job of taking out that information utility. Six have been dropped now, only four drones remaining. Um, we can see the Talon Shield just pushing in here with Geo Wedge firmly behind it. Going to take a little bit of damage from the Impact Nade, although it will clear up the wall a little bit, which looks like he might just get snagged on there, but should have easy enough entry should he choose to go for it. Now Grixer manages to pick up I-9, walks into sight and finds another three versus two as there's an absolute flurry of kills in the mid round here geo coming across with the latest one onto crit j which was a trade rexon picks up dark and it's all up to that last man like all this inside of office trying to fight back but has he got a mountain to climb and rexon he smashes him back down to the base and that is going to be sonics taking another round it's 3-1 what a way to pull their vision. I mean, the Sonics have so many things going on over on the east side of things. A lot of Fury's, uh, you know, focus is focused on what is happening in that portion of the building. And what does Grixer do, Ace? It's very simplistic. He just hops inside of the back of Archive and kills two people practically immediately. Look at this. He just hopped in the window. You see everybody trained over to what's happening with Osa and all of these other things. It's such a beautiful setup up from the Sonics. So difficult for Fury to try and fight back, especially with those Osa shields. They did have some impacts implemented, but they just didn't use them in good timing to try and destroy those things and assist them in some of those gunfights later on down the line. Here we go. Five rounds almost done. Four on the board. Sonics 3-1. And we're going to be heading to bathroom and tell us we saw this defended back in round two. It was the site that Fury won. So they've had two away and they're going to go back there. Makes perfect sense. Try and get it locked down again. BG Man and Crit J did a good job of holding top floor. And they stayed around for as long as they need to. BG. Welcome back. We are going into game. Thank you for sticking with us through the delay. We had a thick issue originally with Yogg's mic, and then there was some discussion about 
whether or not that impacted round seven, whether it did, whether it didn't. In the end, we've decided it didn't. Well, we didn't decide it. I think actually M80 were like, we're actually okay. Let's crack on. And so here we are cracking on. We're back into things. 4-3 to M80 if you are just tuning in. You can see at the top of the screen those lovely arrows, the ones that are lit up, suggest which teams have won what map. M80 won our first one. Halfway through Oregon, it's been a mm, ride so far. Is the only way I could possibly describe it? It's been a day. It's been a day. Yes, it has been a day. But considering that the last round came down to a 1v1, we might be in for a very close fair, Des. We might be in for quite might. a lengthy game. You are you are taunting me with a map three. But you know what? As much as, you know, as, you know, I'm starting to get a little cynical. I feel the pessimism, the demon in me starting to creep up. That's it. You're welcome. I'm trying to pull you into my side of things. Yeah, I can tell. You're infecting me with the mind virus. Yeah, my day was right. going from bad to worse because, like, I was already really cynical about the game. And then I was saying to chat, don't worry, timer, when it's down, we'll be back into game. And then we weren't back into game, and they were like, Des, you're lying to us. I'm like, I'm really sorry. You were in this weird four-minute groundhog day, just constantly back and forth, back <laughs> yeah. and forth, back it's a and time forth. loop, yeah. Literally. Can't get out of it. And now we're back to it. We're going back up to the dorm bomb site. Seeing Bleed defend it for the first time this game so far. Asking, creating a nice little... I don't even know what you call it. It's like a little bunker for himself with those f knots. He's got one on the stairs. Make sure nobody can push up. cans on the window. No, of course he hasn't. I'm really That'd be sad. sick, though. I am very sad. I would have enjoyed it. I would have got excited. And now I'm just left sad. But on the bright side, that means this uh, this T3 clear can go unobstructed. You might see some action that Aspie might take part in uh, at some point in the next few seconds or so. He's definitely not trying to hold on to this part of, ma of the map for a long period of time. And if he overstays his welcome, Asploit is now moving to the green doorway. He could be in a very weird spot. Imagine if that turned into a nade kill. It would have been hilarious. <laughs> I like from at least uh, Bleed here that Aspie's getting a bit like active on the defense and trying to keep busy and equally mentalist as... Helped him out a little bit. Otherwise, Yoga had the cut. Not too sure why he was pushing in so aggressively. Could have held the long angle there and just dealt with the Aspie as he retreated down through the basement. But Me Mentalist was there to be a good teammate anyway and back him up, and Yoga's offline. Dog's offline indeed. To help Aspie retreat, by the way, there were three people, including Aspie, in basement. That is a lot of helping hands to get Aspie back to, to the, the cause. Site. It is commitment to the cause and commitment to your teammates. Mentalist, in fact, Still in the basement. Reaps, who I imagine helped join the rotation back to the site, is also playing inside of security in that key position to stop a big window and white execute. With how much time was spent over on that big tower site, M80 didn't get a lot of their attack underway and didn't accomplish much in the process, only using Yaga. Right now, we're almost only a minute left into the round, and Dez, I'm really not quite certain where this execute is coming from. No control over by the bedroom side, or at least any solid control. Nothing over on the big window side either. You don't even have the bedroom wall, wall open, and with 55 seconds left, this might be the best a defense could possibly be positioned going into the end game. It makes you really have one choice. That's one behind them, by the way. It's mentally working as well, to the bottom. Not quite there yet, and Reaps is striking from the depths as well. Both of them now trying to work their way into the back line of M80 to shut this attack down before it can really begin. Gomez turns around and deals with one, but the C4's come through. Reaps might be down, but he's definitely not out quite yet. Now they're trying to make their mark through, but turd. Going to find Spoit, steps up for again, and Hoban's found a second, make it another. There we go. The flawless round comes in, and I did not expect that after a rehost. No, I did not expect that in, at all. And also, similar to uh, what we saw from uh, Bleed on some of those attacks, it's a very slow round, not really accomplishing much of anything, just waiting, hoping they'll make some progress, and... There wasn't really much of anything. Just seemed like Bleed, who did put forth a little bit of a problem that M80 had to solve with that player, not in Big Tower, but instead, or not, not in T3, but in just the Big Tower proper, T1, T2, whatever you want to call it. Then he escapes, the defenders help his way back to the site. Waste about a minute, 15 seconds, and at that midway point where M80 could have either recovered from that loss of Yaga and start immediately opening the bedroom wall or the attic wall, since T3 and Big Tower had just been seen in the attack. We didn't really see any of that from M80. We, there were a couple players over by White Stairs, a couple player over by Ar couple players over by Armory. There was no actual solid take or idea at that mm. point that was being put forth by the end of the round. And that's pretty much, I would have to imagine, the greatest gift you could give to Bleed, who seemed to have a bit more confidence in them on map one. It was a bit lethargic, I think, as a starting point. When I, when I think Love M80 that realized that there were three downstairs, that would have been the time to say, hey, guys, we should it's like now this is the time to make a move and instead they didn't they kind of slowed down actually and again let bleed recover in the same way bleed let m80 recover back in the first half when they tried to rush him with the blitz into the basement 
Either way, it's, it's a four and four. The nervousness that I have now for the North American side is that lead are on the defense. As we've said so many times over this competition, the defender is very, uh, the defender, the meta is very heavily in favor of the defender. So lead, at least on paper, should be able to close this one out and send us through to map three. Unless I matey have got something special in store for us. I hope especially with how strong those defenses look and how close they were able to keep that first round on the attack, able to bring it down to a 1v1. But lead have been looking very, very good so far since the side swap. And Oven, with some of that renewed confidence, is holding on the big tower side. It is a meeting defense, as all the other two bomb sites, or the other two primary bomb sites, have been one. So Hoven will likely try to play here for the vast majority of the round until he either faces insurmountable pressure or just decides to take a He's gunfight with somebody outside of big tower, likely out towards the garage. But he thinks better. Yes, he decides, I won't risk my life in that particular engagement. I'll just stay close with the shotgun over here. Thank you very much. And I'll let the rest of my team do the rest of the work on the other side of the map. Well, it's Sport who had the gonads to do it last time around. He was the one who ran out quite, quite far towards construction to make oh. that happen. So it's going to get a backstab here. Sees his man. Just let him slip through the net. At least he'll be able to get away with this. There is DS hanging off towards, I think, above him at this point as well. So we could go for a move, but of course, doesn't want to get caught on a drone as he goes on through. Diaz. <gasps> in the right place and Turd well, still hasn't been figured out hackers. he could do so much damage here especially because m80 are trying to go for a split side execute ds lucas is the guy with the diffuser so if he ends up falling that's the entire attack basically unraveled for the defense spoy does push in find one a mentalist and Turd decides to rotate off the moment to strike is now passed it is a 3v3 but m80 are flooding into the bomb site finds one through the smoke and Turd, who had the round in his hands it felt like Oops. might just have it again now that iconic has cut down his teammate and it's only a 1v2 Really, I agree. He had the golden opportunity to do some damage. You know, even turn on the scanner and look skyward. You'd see Diaz inside of Armory sat on drones, but completely misses the opportunity. Now, the blessing, as I was going to say, the diffuser isn't down yet, but Diaz is changing that very, very quickly. Third with it all to do is looking completely the wrong way. A bit of a, I don't want to say a smash and grab round by M80 because they played it well across the map, but Reek's got a 2k hitting on the flank, for example, and they were coming in from around shower side. Turd was in the dream position to do some real damage and just open the round up entirely for his team, but opted to do nothing instead, and M80 have capitalized. Just a spot where Bleed really could have turned the round or on its head for M80. He's able to maybe get the timing a little bit better. Luck is a little more on his side. Or maybe try to take the initiative. There's a couple different ways that could have gone. But it ends up going M80's way. They get the win on the tertiary bomb site. But if they want to end this in regulation, they will need to win one of these primaries. Whether it be basement, whether it be dorms. They want to stop Bleed from getting match point And then forcing an overtime game out of M80 on Bleed's pick. Either here or the next bomb site will need to see an M80 win. 2-0 is in fact on the cards. And know now, I imagine, M80, that they are dealing with a lot of roam play coming out from Blade. Total antithesis yeah, to what we saw back on Consulate. I'm seeing the KB. I'm seeing the Lion. Not a Jackal. We did see Spoit bring that along on Consulate earlier on. But at least see having those globals on site is good for suppressing those roamers, for forcing them back in towards site, or for the Execute just completely overwhelming the other side. So much that you can do with those two operators. Aspi, I imagine, will be doing the same as last round, and that was rotating around to that third floor and causing a little bit of trouble out on the roam. Well, it did fall back, of course, with the assistance of two of his teammates through the basement. A bit quiet to start. 30 seconds in, trying to find that initial... Potential roam presence on the top floor. M80 not wanting to leave anything to chance. He's throwing roamers on that top. And Oven with a very late rotation into T3. Okay. Sometimes we'll see Turd, the, the warden, with those glasses that can blind him to flashes, or I suppose unblind him to flashes, take that spot. But he just immediately retreats back. So like, them do. just a fun little uh, venture, little vacation up to the top of Big Tower, but actually won't create any changes in the defense as... Right. Less than one minute in, we got all five defenders on the bomb site. Managed to get himself a drone. Hashtag worth. Got away with at least something off the back of it for his efforts. And rather than sitting on site, twirling your thumbs for the last 45 seconds, at least there's something being brought to the team. Iconic kind of treading that ground where Hoven was not 30 seconds ago now. Him and Yarg working their way down to secure Big Tower. And it's been done. Now it's about trying to gear up for the execute. When you start thinking about the rest of the map being clear, at least they're assuming that it is. They can start thinking, okay, where do we want to hit? Is it Big Tower? Is it Laundry? Is it Freezer? Is it all three of those things? Is it through construction? 
There's a lot of options to play with here, realistically, and Bleed, I think, have given them a lot of the map to play with very early on. They have. DS Lucas can open up as many of these hatches as you want since the Cade is banned. So whatever you want to consider, as you said, it is perfectly available to them. But in terms of the tools to actually use to maybe make one side better than the other, there aren't that many. Nades obviously are not what they once were. And without the Ying on the board, going for an E-Box drop can be made or broken by the combination of team play and flashbangs. That seems to be where M80 want to go for. There's three different players surrounding that E-Box position. Gomez using likely all of his Rotero drones to try and burn that utility. Bleed contemplating a flank, and they end up downing Gomez, but Aspie down in turn as Spoit hunts him down. M80 realized that flank was coming out. All the E-Box players turned around, sprayed through the wall, go for the finisher. Man advantage for M80 going into this execute. Yeah, it's a nice attempt, but ultimately M80 just a little bit more aware this time around of what's going on. He's looking to be at least part of the push that you have got a contenders. We're also used to seeing by now with a smoke that's playing nice and tight. Rather than trying to push their way down, they're trying to go for a drop shot here All as right. well. And Reaps is having absolutely none of it. Spoit removed. Now they've got to try and clear out highway. A smoke comes on through. A flash comes on through. And Hoven is forced back at least temporarily. But no drop comes in. And Gomez on one HP as well to try and apply some release pressure inside a bunker. Player ro reinforcing off the elbow position. Hoven goes for the swing. Two players fly bleeds way. A third! Is that a hip fire headshot on Niyaga? Oh. I can damn well tell you it's a 4K for Hoven inside a pillar. Completely shutting down the front and the back side of M80's take. That's a little bit ridiculous, isn't it? <laughs> It feels balmy, and this is why I didn't want to get too excited for M80 in the previous map, or even really throughout this one. Uh, they had two minutes. They had full coverage of the map. The only time they had someone poking their head above the parapet was up Big Tower very early on when Hoven got rid of that drone and immediately dropped down to sight as soon as the EE1D catch scan came in from the Lion. But the actual execute itself can't take too much away from how frustrating it is to push into a powerful operator like the Fenrir. They could barely see what was going on. But you know, even Spike going in for a kind of a Hail Mary dropping towards Freezer, almost getting kind of hit on the flank by Aspi as he popped up as well. Thankfully, they got away with it. They got Gomez back on his feet. But the way I just think about it is it feels a little bit uninformed. Like drones aren't really being used to get themselves moving in. There isn't too much like two man stacking onto a one man isolation play. And it just feels a little bit rudimentary and unplanned in terms of siege from M80. I think also given the changes and the lack of certain operators brought by M80 makes an e-box drop a lot harder. You can't rely on nades to clear out pillar like you could before because yep. if you don't balance it properly, if it doesn't balance at all, you might even get a kill or displace anybody for that long inside of pillar. And plus a Ying is banned, you really have to rely on flashbangs or some other utility. They could have brought a Grim, but we didn't see any of those bees flooding down inside a pillar, did we? So all we really have are those flashbangs to make the e-box drop work and Hoven can either dodge all the flashbangs entirely, or recover very quickly, you might as well just give him the 4k if you aren't able to clear him out from pillar entirely. But now moving on to the dorms position, this is where we, again, need to see M80 pick a round up. If we want a regulation victory, or if you do at home, they need to win dorms or else bleed will send us to map point. Map 3 might very well be on the cards. Asfi rotates out of Attic extremely quickly. Oh, Ooh. almost caught on the retreat. I have to say, even though it doesn't work, I love that reactivity from M80. Almost catching the Fenrir on the rotation back. And now that they know he's gone, you hope we can see a very quick reaction to open up the Attic walls, a potential venue later on. It's really good reaction by M80. I thought for a second we'd see a fast rappel down and someone was trying to catch him as the reinforcement was going up, but... No, it was underneath that they almost managed to find their victim. But once again, they've wasted a little bit of time. Last time around, it was a single drone. This time around, it's more like 30 seconds or so. And then Afsi has still managed to get away with his life. So a very light roam by Bleed, but a roam that has achieved at least something, even if that's only 30 seconds off the clock. And they did end up uh, opening up the attic wall as well. And as I'm sure you saw earlier, one of the bedroom rotates or bedroom walls is open. So assuming that Bleed don't get off that pocket reinforcement, which they do still have one in pocket, a lot of the work for M80 is already done, but Reaps with a drive-by kill onto Gomez in the shower's hallway. It's the opening pick for Bleed, so some of these defenders can feel a bit safer rotating back and just forcing M80 to push on forward, because Yogg is creeping up from the basement right now. Not a lot of progress has been made for M80 in mounting some form of an attack. Uh, Yaga sees one, does make it a 4v4, so we can at least agree on that, and he's also cleared out the security position as well, so some bits required around the map. As for top floor presence, M80 need to start picking up something. I think the crucial thing really was getting rid of the C4 player below as well, who obviously can do a lot of damage if you then flood that top floor 
and it's Reach, who's been 5-1 and one up until that point. So a really good pickoff. But once again, at 40 seconds in, I'm really yet to see the machinations of an execute come together. Right now, it seems to be let's flood in towards Trophy and push from there. So far, it's worked as Hoven has been taken down. There's one more inside of Armory, removed. Yarg onto a two in the round. And M80 may have done enough here to get this over the line. But Mentalist still stands. He's got a good coverage inside of Pit here and onto Concrete as soon as you step in from Trophy. And that looks to be where Iconic wants to make this execute happen. It's free. Okay. You lost the play. You bl you literally just lost. Oh my god. Mm. They've just lost to that player, the exact position, their attic player. They've then opened the rotate, worked someone through from trophy into the same spot who's then died. You've then had the diffuser carrier run at the same spot, gun down. Like, this is why, and I feel like such a, to be frank, I feel like such a dick about M80. I don't want to be that guy because I am sounding like one. But these kind of things are why I think pretty much any other team. I mean, Bleeder about to win the map, for God's sake. It's why I said if every other team will punish you for mistakes like this. And these are such fundamental issues in team play. Communication. The most basic element of team play is missing. And they're paying the price for it. Attackers it's infuriating to watch because we know they can be so much better. So Bleeder I'm on done. that point. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Honestly. Uh, Bleeder up 6-5. This is, this is cathartic. I've enjoyed this. <laughs> I'm glad. Uh, well, about that round I am. <laughs> got another one to go. <laughs> Maybe you've got another four to go yet, Carter. Do you want to you take some deep breaths? Do you just want to... <sighs> breathing exercises. Deep breaths. Breathing exercises. Deep breaths. A drink of water. That's all. Deep breath. Oh, you know what? Hey, I'm going to have a sip of mineral water, water right now. Oh, very bottom. good. I've got, I've got a bottle next to me and it's nearly empty. I I've got one I'll of top these, it up. I've got one of these weird uh, cups. Yeah. I guess these are cups. They got these weird plastic lids on them. I don't know. Yeah, it's a, lot, it's a lot of plastic. There's a lot of plastic here. Definitely not. My carbon footprint has not been great this event. I'll tell you that much. But Bleed do, in fact, have map point, And that means that if M80 want to go to overtime, they have to get that win on meeting like they did previously. It ended up only being a 2v1, though, and par partially because Iconic team killed inside of Kitchen. And it seemed that Bleed were going to shut things down completely with a couple well-timed flanks from believe turd and reaps as well if i recall correctly but it ended up not mattering in the end as it was a lot of unrealized potential m80 wanted to go for a dining take not a dining excuse me a split take last time opening up the split wall and moving forward they're all on the complete opposite side of the map right now by small towers and by dorms so they are looking to fully clear out this presence on the top floor where there are quite a number of players from bleed looking to defend it okay we're back uh, We're okay. qu question for you. Overtime? Yes or no? I don't know, man. I, this is, <laughs> you can't call this it. Is, this is one of those games. I'm just okay. living, I'm living second to second. All right, sweet. We've seen a player inside of CC. What have we done? We've made the call across the team. There's a player inside CC. We found Bandit. We found Bandit. Cool. What next? We can ignore him and go straight up top floor and try and catch someone out. Good idea, Gomez. Do you win the gunfight? That's the next big question. No, but they are conscious of the player that may be stabbing them around from control. Maybe I stated that he's pulled back. Oh, no. Now there's a new threat. I've just been shot by an MPX from down on freeze the stairs. That means there's someone on the downstairs. Are we going to push him? Is someone going to go underneath him? I'm doing the talking because I don't imagine these things are happening for them. Well, I was about to say, I love this point of view perspective you're giving us. I feel like I'm right there in the action amongst <laughs> M80, trying to make sense of it as it's a quickly developing situation. Speaking of quickly developing, uh, M80 are flooding into split, and they've all died to Mentalist. Okay. So odds of overtime, Dez, I'm not a betting man, okay. but if I were to make one, we're looking uh, not great. There's one back. There's a vertical. They haven't cleared up the player above, so they've been stabbed from freezer stairs. There's a player upstairs. There's a player inside a site. There is just a lot going on here. And M80 seems to have communicated very little of it. And as a result, I have two players left standing. Bleed have four. I'm not a, again, I'm not a counting man either, but I don't like those odds. Four seems no. to be greater than two, if I recall correctly. But Yaga has gone upstairs. Wild DS Lucas is planting to try and make sure that he can't be shot from up above. But Yaga loses the gunfight, and DS Lucas does as well. Map three. Boys, girls, and NBs, we are so back. Another lengthy series for Bleed. And another 7-5 victory on Oregon for them. Dez, we've got Chalet coming up next. My man. Get me out. Dez, you okay? Get me out. Are you okay? <laughs> no, I'm not okay. Oh, uh, okay. Okay. Yep, Chalet.
I'm sure it's going to be great. I'm sure we'll see M80 have their best performance of the entire year and everything will be okay. I'm sure, Carter. Tell me it's going to be okay. <laughs> it's too much. Am I under oath? Uh, am I, am no. I under oath right now? I'm not under oath? No, you're not under oath. We're going to be very okay. We're okay. going to be so okay. We're going to be okay. Wouldn't even believe it. You might be wondering, like, why are we so pessimistic right now? This has not been a <laughs> very... Because two torturous this is, maps. <laughs> this has not been a great <laughs> series for either team. M80 have been showing a lot of problems in their play over the past year. Some of those problems are still very present. Bleed have also been showing some great moments and some bad moments. This has been a very mixed bag where it feels, it almost feels like Bleed have kind of lost their identity in a way, though they did regain some of it, I will say, in Oregon. <laughs> on the table, you get, you was get terrible. 30 seconds, go. We saw more on Oregon. We saw Rome play coming out. We saw a little bit of trade play coming out. We saw M80 pinching onto individual members. We also saw a lot of misdroning. We saw a lot of silly mistakes. We saw a lack of communication. There is a lot to fix in the break, and I really hope they do it. And in fact, with that, I need a break as well as the teams. We'll go to it when we come back. Map three. See you in a few. For themselves, as this man count will continue to more than likely dwindle. What a shot there from Citizen. I9 not choosing to open up the castle barricade just yet either. BG man trying to work his way in the top of East. And you can see every single Fury member in a line over here from balcony to stairwell. Yeah, this is going to be a very one dimensional push more than likely. Um, and that allows Sonics as soon as they recognize that, which they will have done by now. You can see, um, or I can see on my top down here, Grixer, for example, who's the man over on the bomb chassis looking, you know, sort of out towards West Breach. He's not paying attention to West Breach anymore. He's looking out towards archives. And as soon as that is happening, here you go, thank you. Um, Grixer, as soon as you can see that person taking up that oh. angle, that just screams, yep, we know you're all coming from the east side, so we don't need to worry. And that's a problem for Fury because it means all five guns are stacked up against them and they're just waiting for them opportunities. That's a great kill though. Arco is managing to pick up Citizen there in Fountain and it might just give them a little bit of space to oh. start fighting, but Gio hits him on the fadeaway. Looking like Clay Thompson from last night, man. Three point shot up and it's good. Two versus four now for Fury. A plant attempt, but it's all gone awry, folks. Sonics on the precipice to being able to take this in 2-0 fashion and this border looking so darn clean from them yeah. this far. Sonics have looked good. Um, I, you know, I think the reality is, um, you know, Fury have, have turned up and They've, they've had a bad day. It's a bad day at the office. They've not really turned up to the races. Um, I feel like, you know, yep, they've already done really well in the group. Uh, they're likely to go through, I think, at this point. I don't know how it stands mathematically exactly, um, but they've done a lot of the work that they needed to do to progress. Um, you know, I'm sure coming into it, Sonics isn't one of the teams that they'll have sat there and said, yeah, there's three points for us. You know, they'll have known that this was going to be a difficult game and that points needed to be picked up elsewhere. What I would say, potentially, Stokes, is look at it this way. I feel like... This isn't as maybe as, as rounded a performance as we have seen from Fury. Um, we have seen them be a bit better than this. If you're going to have a bad day, why not have it against Sonics? That's true. Th to be honest, you could, it, as Fury, you could maybe turn up and have your best performance, and it's still going to be a difficult game because the Sonics are great. So why not turn up? You know, if you're going to have an off day, it's not the worst day to have it on for Fury. You know, you lose to the Sonics. Everybody in the group has lost to the Sonics, so it doesn't really matter. And then you have your better days, you know, you learn from this, and you yep. do it against the other teams that maybe you can pick the win up from. So yeah. Yeah. you look at it like that, maybe it's not the end of the world. No, and honestly, it isn't the end of the world, because here's the I'm one trying. thing, here's the one thing, Ace, and here's the one thing that I always remind people about. Yeah, I'm gonna sit here, I'm gonna point out the things that are happening for Fury that they're doing wrong. Because at the end of the day, that is our job, okay? But here's the main thing. When it comes to series like this, you want to know how you get better at games, guys? You get your ass kicked. That's how. Yep. You have to lose. And you See, have that's to lose why somebody. I do that in ranked all yeah. the time, Stokes. <laughs> that's why I've been doing it for three years. There you go. Yeah, I'm just on the learning process. Oh, the learning Every day curve, now, baby. I'm going to switch it on. <laughs> the learning's coming out. <laughs> Exactly. You got to apply things. And really, I mean, that's why they say you got to turn those L's into lessons. That's why that's a statement in the first place. Citizen, 
Are you going to be handing out L's here? That's the real question. But yeah, for Fury, they're really going to want to apply this. And I mean, there's a lot to learn from the Sonics. They do a lot of things extremely well in the game of Rainbow Six, especially this roster. I mean, my God, have they looked good so far on this group stage. Yeah, they really have. Uh, Max, uh, you know, unbeaten for a reason at this point. They are going to be probably considered one of the top teams going through into the playoffs, I think, given their performances. And I think it's a, you know, it's a viewpoint well deserved um, because they have earned it. But uh, Fury not doing too badly here. They haven't managed to move anybody inside of CC. TV yet, but they haven't lost anybody either, so um, that's not terrible. They've got East Stairs control, which is something they can start working their way through. Office, Ambi is currently located in 90. Just going to have a peek around that corner, and that mirror window is going to make it a little bit difficult. He can see into Fountain through into Office, so Fury need to be aware of that, and Citizen hasn't been moved yet either. One minute 15 left on the clock, and Fury just struggling to get themselves inside, but if you remember right at the beginning, I said a great way to defend Border is to not allow the attackers inside the map, and again, Sonics are showing exactly why yeah and, and you can see why they also don't want to try and flirt with this either look at the amount of angles that nine has to worry about in general and that's exactly what i would have expected rexton sitting in behind a bookshelf making it really difficult to even see him in the first place and he finds a beautiful kill might be able to find a second one here as well as sporting back and forth with multiple targets he's gonna just try and play it on timing but it's actually gonna be fury that grabbed the reins here for just a split second and with 40 seconds remaining it's four versus three in their favor yeah good from them uh they've come away with the advantage there they've also been able to take cctv which gives them an opportunity to start working vertically it gives them access to site they can start thinking about a potential execute and getting that diffuser down um, and they, because they've got the vertical, of course, Sonics have been forced out of sight. Um, so it may just give them a little bit of space. I'm not sure if they're aware of Citizen's position, though. A couple of kills go away from them. Two versus one, however, as BG Man and Dark are there. Can Geo hold it down? He's got the Clutch Master Alder in hand. We know what this weapon can do, but there's one above and there's one below. And it's not going to be easy for him to fight ball. Three seconds left to go. Plant is going to down. He has to find Dark. He does find Dark. He wins it on time. There was no cover in place for Fury and that is wrapping up what has been a very very smooth performance from the Sonics impressive stuff and they go unbeaten in the group well for having the name Sonics you'd expect some rough waters on the ocean wouldn't you but as you said very smooth sailing my friend and across the board, looking so dynamic, even just from that defensive perspective. Three players with three kills, one with two, and then Citizen with that crown on his head. Six kills to his name as he was running a muck of nine in the gang over on Fury. But again, these guys still in pretty decent spirits. They knew how amazing of a roster Sonics was when they walked into this series. And obviously, like we were talking about, Ace, there's a lot to learn from this guys for Fury. So hopefully, fingers crossed, they can get a few things going for themselves, especially in the offensive perspective. I feel like, like if they iron out a couple details yeah. over on that end, Ace, they have a really solid roster here. I think the thing to remember is, you know, a lot of what happened, you know, yes, at times we've been critical of Fury's performance, but a lot of what happened comes down to Sonic doing a lot of things right and putting them in difficult positions. And for all those things, they can be forgiven. Um, you know, like I say, what they need to do is look at that and think, right, where are the bits that we can improve? What are the fundamentals that we've got wrong? And that's where they'll get better. Yeah, most definitely. Well, that's going to do it for us here on the casting desk, folks. We're going to send you down to Ginny to see what's going on over on the analyst desk. Thank you, Sam and Tim. We're back on the analyst desk after another dominance win from the side of Sonics. And we have Gio joining us. Thank you Hello. so, so much. That was an incredible game. You guys are basically fighting for that top one spot, which, you know, I do think at this point is secured. How was it coming into this tournament? Did you have the expectations that you were going to top your group? Uh, I mean, obviously, confidence is a big key. So we came in knowing, like, we wanted to top the group, but I think it's, it's, it's one thing doing and one thing actually like going in there and actually like it's like thinking about it. So I, I think we're just happy to be here and we're just doing really well. Yeah, well, you didn't just top your group. Yep. You had the perfect group. You 2 owed <laughs> every other team. You don't play tomorrow, so you're done dusted with the group stage now. How much work went into prepping for every individual team that you played in this group stage versus working on yourselves coming into this tournament? 
Uh, I think for us, it was mostly about making sure our map pool was good, including Ambi. So it's about switching up our play style and making sure he's included. And I think uh, apart from the prep, I think we came in here like with a lot of confidence and it worked out. Yeah, Jesse also had a specific round that he wanted to show you. And the fact that it's now ready, take it away. Yeah, so this is a round on board, around th uh, four when you had the Osa. A lot of people on this bomb site, they think, oh, Osa, I'm just going to walk in archives and plant. You do something kind of interesting. You go into office and it actually creates a great distraction, which gr uh, gets Grixer an opportunity to make some havoc. Um, can you walk us through kind of why you decided to do this and what the goal is? Yeah, uh, basically my team was saying, uh, hey Gio, we can't really take it easy. These guys have like everything open. And I was like, watch this. I basically just said, watch this. I walked in and then uh, this guy kept swinging. So I just uh, pre-fired and I got him. Uh -huh. Yeah, that's basically it. Yeah, really impressive stuff. Obviously caused a huge distraction. And then Grixer jumped in uh, oh, yeah. to archives right when you did that. Got the opening 2K for that round. Was that like pre I mean, Yo, that was for the plan. Apart from like the watch this and, okay. hold, and uh, hold my beer, it was basically uh, as soon as I put on the shield and make noise for you, jump in yeah. with the stuns and kill him. Awesome, awesome. Well, okay. Um, great stuff on border. Clubhouse was even more dominant for you guys. I mean, by the end of Clubhouse, you guys were doing some kind of crazy stuff, running out of garage, rexing around where he's ratting inside a kitchen. You guys were typing a lot. When you're playing that style of siege, how much of it is just because you're having fun and you want to enjoy the game versus trying to get into your opponent's head and play that mental warfare? Uh, I think the big thing for us is just tilting people. I think if we get to tell people, they start either rushing or they start just getting stressed. So for us, it's just making sure not to break them, but just kind of like put the pressure on them so they don't feel safe, whether they want to rush, they want to play the, they want to uh, basically bleed the round out, but it depends on how they react. But we pressure. Okay, w one last question for me. Um, answer it however you'd like. You said you have a big map pool coming into this. We saw that through group stage. Your first six games were all on different maps. Um, what do you have in store for playoffs? Are we looking to see every single map coming through? Or are we looking to see some more surprises? Because you played a lot of different strats here in this uh, group stage. No, I mean, we haven't showed Vink, we haven't showed Knight, we haven't showed what. And so the roller coaster ride continues. Chalet will be the third map between Bleed and M80. We came into this series with one hell of a story. Bleed, if they 2 0 here, would have not only seen M80 going home as the first team eliminated from Six Invitational 2024, but a 2 0 tomorrow for Bleed would have put Bleed top of Group C, regardless of any other results around them. As we've now seen it, that's not to be the case. Both teams have one map and there is one still left to play for. Even if it may take this win here, it can still get a little bit nervy tomorrow for them when they come up against Liquid. They will have one point. Liquid will have five, which will mean Liquid, M80, sorry, need to win 2-0, get four points, and then break the tiebreaker against Liquid to not be sent home. So it is far from done. It is still danger zone for both teams. <laughs> Fair enough, mentalist. Passionate. I rate it. I'm back with Carter. Here are the stats. And I think uh, as we want to look at the stats, uh, by the way, 8-0 and o just for the top three players on the entry. And then that's almost entirely undone by Turd and Asfi. Asfi, again, very poor on the entry. I don't have the exact numbers, but is that like 2-10 and 10 on the I entry? I think he's, he's like 2-20. and 20, He's like 5-20 and 20 in the whole series so far as KD. Ridiculous. But I think to summarize this series so far, going into it, it very much was a story in that we had a lot of romanticized expectations. A lot of, oh, what ifs? This would be such a cool scenario. Oh my god, how crazy would it be if M80 went home today? And then much like how life often is, the story is not representative of reality. It has been a messy game. It has been a chaotic game. Neither team really looking like they've got everything figured out. And that will often make for an extremely and equally in some ways chaotic and messy final map as we have had previously. We have, and I guess now that the game on the A stream is finished, you may be tuning in here to come and see a little bit of Siege on the B stream. It has been a testing series, is the best way I can describe it. We've seen a lot of mistakes, we've seen some high moments, no doubt, but it has been one of the messier games that we've seen at the competition so far. And my fear for both of these teams going into tomorrow is they're up against teams that, I mean, one coming up against VP, one against Liquid. I'd rather face Liquid given Liquid themselves aren't doing too hot at the minute, but they've just come off the back of a great game against W7M as well. So I don't fancy playing either team right no. now, and I think with how both teams have played so far today, it will not be enough to unseat either of those teams tomorrow. You're, if you're M80 going into tomorrow, win or lose, you're at risk of facing what could be just up. Oh, Cool. Nesk decided to drop 40 kills on us today. Isn't that great? Oh, Paulo. As he does. Paulo decided to drop 50. Super cool. And or if you're bleed and you don't fix a lot of those sloppy mistakes you might have been making today, or you're just playing a very slow game, VP, who 
don't really ever second guess themselves or the strategy will eat you for breakfast. So both of these teams in this final map could be in some ways a foreshadowing of what could come tomorrow, what might happen if this same performance faces some of either the best teams in the group in VP or a very storied opponent in Liquid. But at the same time, for the teams facing each other, this is still a must win in that, especially for M80. The success they've had in this group has been rare. This being the first map they won all the way back on Consulate. And for Bleed, we know you can perform better than this. You beat Liquid. You took a map off W7M. Losing here and being the team that gives M80 their first win, that's not what you want when the expectations are rising and rising for you. The thing what's really exciting about coming into tomorrow in general, not just for these two teams, but overall, is every single group has got an elimination game yeah. tomorrow. So every game counts for something tomorrow, whether it's G2 and DZ fighting over number one spot in their group, whether it's VRX and GK fighting over elimination, whether it's these two teams deciding who goes home and who could well punch their way up into second place in the group. It's still all to play for, which makes for a really exciting tournament. But here we go with Chalet. In terms of predictions, <laughs> you have mainly stayed with your boys in M80. There has been a little bit of a slip back towards bleed. It's essentially the it's the same numbers at the first map, just flipped. It was yeah. 54 bleed, 46 M80. Now, after the slight uptick in map two, we've gone back to those same numbers, but now flip flopped. Many of you still believe M80 have it in them to win this. And to be fair, they were the ones that had the more dominant victory in the series so far. A game on consulate that, frankly, it's not, at most times, especially on M80's attacking half, didn't look particularly mm. close. So starting Ying this ban. band phase, Ying ban. Ying I was ban. about to say, please. let's see please. it. I want to see it. We've called for it because M80 did terrorize Bleed with it on the first map, but oh. nope. Straight oh, on to uh, the, the KB. I mean, okay, fine. We've seen the KB used quite a lot in the last map as well, and a lot of teams have been banning her away. It is frustrating to play against this, so I'm not at all surprised. The Soul is also going to follow. Saw Iconic running around a little bit on that back on the first map. So again, not horribly surprised to see it taken away here. Do we see an Azami ban as our last one? No, it's going to be the Kaid once again. I imagine actually it's probably one of our higher banned operators in the competition. A good number of teams taking it away. Yeah, Kaid on just certain specific maps, I mean, Oregon, as we just saw especially, he can be such a powerful operator, denying the ability to go through those hatches at the time that you want. Have to use some secondary EMPs, use some primary EMP, EMPs if Thatcher is up. It's a bit of a problem, but I am I am a little worried because I get not I get not wanting to play the Monty. He's very frustrating. I understand. But when M80, at least domestically in North America, and guys, I don't know if you're aware, but um, M80's domestic performance uh, has actually been a lot better in their international performance. But when they were doing very well domestically, it was a lot of the time when Ying was up and when Monty was up, to be fair, but especially when that Ying was up. They were one of those teams that often relied the most on those big, crazy operators, and leaving the Ying in their hands is a bit of a threat. We will, unfortunately, have a rehost <laughs> as... As these things often happen when we uh, get late at night, yeah. in, the, in the hour of the wolf. We walked back out there in the break into the uh, talent green room and just saw that the other game was coming to a close. And I was like, I swear this stream was like an hour behind ours earlier. And now we're a whole map behind A. It's been one hell of a, a catch up by the A stream. And I guess in case you missed it, I imagine you are here again still watching because you've seen the conclusion of the A stream. Or maybe you'll be watching on the A stream as we picture in picture the B stream, in which case, hello, not the desk is still wrapping things up. Um, but over there, it was a 2-0 to Sonics over Fury. So quite a dominant performance by the North American side. Not quite been the case here. M80, again, although they've shown moments of strength, definitely lots of uh, avenues for weakness being shown to Bleed, who have capitalized and brought us to where we are now. Also for a uh, just quick aside about Sonics, I believe that also unequivocally secures their spot as first in the group without dro dropping a single map. Mm. I believe that's correct. Eight yes. and O, oh, because they 2 0 Los, the biggest, in my opinion, the biggest competition. Then they played Fury, 2 0 them today. Played Scars, very close, but still 2 0 oh, yeah. them I've as just well. Looked. They are on 16 points, and Los are next with seven. Hey, and you know what? Sonics were in this exact position last year when they were in that group with Eminem. Then Sonics went out very quickly. So this does not mean that Sonics will go very far in the bracket, but with this new squad, I'm quite confident in their performance. Quite the opposite, unfortunately, in M80, who are still looking to this series to really prove, hey, guys, 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 we still have it. I, I, I promise we've still got something in us if Atlanta and Copenhagen were very big disappointments. Does mean, of course, because as you said earlier, Derry, because, you know, dare, bleed, as Parker bleed, would say. bleed. Does he call you Dare? He goes, goes, Dare! And I'm just I, like, what I, are you doing? I didn't know you guys were cool like that. Yeah, sometimes. He drops off the Y? 
Parker's just a strange guy. He's a bit strange, isn't he? He just, he just comes out with it sometimes. He just comes out with his long hair and his band t-shirt. Like, hey guys, I'm having a great time. <laughs> yeah. I'm gonna play League of Legends. Yes. Yes. Anybody got Helldivers 2 running? <laughs> Al just disappears and then comes back halfway through the day like, hey, how's it going? Hey guys, I took a nap. Yeah. That's him. Shout out. We love Parker. We do love Parker. We don't love Tech Pause, but that hopefully should go out the way soon. There's, all the teams are back in lobby in the right order. We should be able to get things back underway relatively soon. We'll keep you in the loop. And uh, if we want to talk a bit about the history of Chalet between these two teams, we did see Bleed beat Liquid yesterday. Mm -hmm. Was it? Oh, hold on. I'm not looking. Not looking. 7 4. Did Bleed beat Liquid 7 4 on it? Uh, they Chalet. did. Yes. It was 7 4. Let's go. I'm so good. And what was the result between M18 and W7M on this map on the 13th of February? On the 13th of February? Mm hmm. Three days ago. Oh, I thought you meant last year. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. You said 13th of February. I was like, oh. oh, oh. Three days ago, though. All know. right. Well, we'll say three days ago. Forget about the 13th of Feb. It was to who? Not M80, because they haven't won a map, there you Des. Go. Your memory's good. See, the thing is. Trick question. You're young. Your memory's good. Mine's terrible. I actually have. That's why I have to write things down. Well, I have a very weird memory. And, like, I've noticed that if I have to, like, force myself to be present in the moment sometimes, because I'll just kind of retreat into the recesses of my brain. And I'll, like, start zoning out, having my own thoughts. And then, like, you know, my, my lovely partner will say something to me, and I'll be like, I swear to God, I was trying to pay attention, but I don't know what you just said. <laughs> I think that's for people trying to ignore you, Carter, to be honest. No, don't say, don't say that about my partner. What? Yeah, I'm, I'm sorry, man. It's, it's it's everyone. She comes home from a long day at work, working like, I don't know, like a like a real nine to five. And I'm just sitting there like, eh, you know, I made some TikToks today, uh, played with the cat, went grocery shopping. It was a great day. How well, was your day? And she's that, like, you know what? I'm stressed and now I've come home to you. And she's like, yeah, you know, it was a super great day with six 30 uh, minute long meetings, uh, projects looming over my head. But I'm glad your TikTok about, I don't know, Cons playing Fenrir on consulate uh, was a bit easier than normal. <laughs> do you feel guilty? I don't. I don't feel guilty whatsoever. If, see, I'd feel guilty if I didn't do a lot at home to make her life easier. To like, if I didn't cook or like clean around the house or did my fair share, I'd feel guilty. But I don't because we we share because partners are meant to split things 50-50 you complement uh, each other. That's days, that's real love. Two days late for that conversation. Valentine's was on Wednesday. Yeah, yeah and I was in Brazil for it. So I can't, I, I wrote <laughs> Trust <her>. me. <laughs> I wrote it to her all in a card I gave a week ago. I think every person that works SI each year knows that paying staff partners are always like, well, exactly. you just make it up to me. And it's like, okay, I wrote, okay. You know what? I'm even gonna say, I wrote, I wrote her a poem. That's a very cute card. Was it say anything nice that you want to share? It was a haiku, and I don't remember what it said. I didn't, I didn't memorize it. <laughs> Your memory's not quite that good. No, it's not that good. Lovely. How All right. Siege between them. Chalet, we are ready to go. Here we go with Dining and Kitchen to start things off. M80 on the defense, bleed on the attack. As we've remarked several times, if you've been with us since the start of this series, it hasn't been the cleanest series between these two teams. It has been scrappy. It has been full of mistakes. It's been full of sharp moments. Uh, how you want to take that is entirely up to you. I'm just hoping that on Charlie we get an epic conclusion to it to really set the stakes for tomorrow. As, as we've remarked, if this had been a 2-0 to bleed, it could have been M80 being the first team to go home tomorrow. They will still get to face off against Liquid, and that will be what ultimately decides their fate. Right now, it's just about it's just a contest to see who's the better team. Who can manage the best executes, the best defenses, or at least the be the most passable ones, depending on the trajectory this game could possibly take. Will be a roam on the top floor, as you often have on that kitchen dining defense. Dog of push very far up inside of office alongside Spoit inside a piano. Sometimes you will have the Azami playing inside over by a library to try and hold mezzanine. This time and media pulled a bit farther back. Bleed right now striking at the heart, the very heart of the defense with some of these Rotero drones flying in clear out some of that utility inside of the site it gets a similar feeling to you back on map one here where for the most part m80 are kind of waiting to see if bleed do something admittedly that's started on their attack back on consulate where m80 were pushing to an area of the map and think okay what's the response and there wouldn't be one they'd step forward in the 10 steps there still wouldn't be one and that often was the case also on the flip side of things when it was m80 more in control on the attacking side they just weren't really willing to push uh, push into them all that much but here at the very least Lead, it feels, have got themselves set up. They've got a player under the window. They've got some solar control coming on through. Just need to complete that and get someone on towards piano window. And as I say that, we're just going to see Hoven drop out onto that side of things now. So they've got themselves surrounding the site the way they need to be. And now it's about pulling that trigger. And what's going to be a big decider for how this map will go, what will influence the flow of it, is going to be how in sync the team are when they pull the trigger. 
Here that's, we go. That's part of the reason I love Chalet. You can see because of how small the map is, all the pieces sort of working together at run at once or being very disjointed, depending on what happens. Mentalist, Mentalist at least starts out we'll with the kill on the spoit. Yep, I was about to say, sitting on the bedroom window, able to find that first one. Such a powerful angle to cut the top floor in half and make those roamers' jobs very, very difficult. It also means Gomez stuck on one side, Yaga stuck on the other. Mentalist and Reaps are just cutting the top floor into segments at the moment. Yaga feels a bit of freedom and a bit of a necessity to try to get aggressive on that player, playing outside the bathroom window, going for gunfight, peak after peak after